Welcome to Manhua Empire Recap, your go-to channel for Manhua stories. Hit that subscribe button, ring the notification bell, and join us on our journey through the pages of adventures. Get ready for the magic of Manhua like never before. Enjoy watching. One day, the Dragon City has been attacked by the alien creatures. Because of this the Dragon City have been fallen after these alien creatures conquer them. A guy keeps trying to kill these alien creatures, but it's too impossible for him to eliminate them all alone. He trying his best to restrain the alien creature, but a golem caught him and severely damaged him. He was doubting if he can still fight these alien creatures after the damage he received. He wants to keep fighting these aliens but one of the monsters that he hit earlier attacks him with its magical veins. Because of this he can't do anything anymore and he's dying slowly. While he's being captive he tells to his parents that he tried his best and he wasn't happy about it. After this, meteors have been falling down toward the city resulting of the destruction of Dragon City. Suddenly an old professor was mad teaching his students because no one paying attention at him and also about the topic that he's lecturing. Just a moment, our protagonist named Meng Chao woke up at his classroom and he's confused why he has classmate. Along this he notices that he's not dead and he read the incoming entrance examination that will come in 50 days. This is because he returned as third year student. His teacher notices him and scolded for his disturbance of the class. All of a sudden he was so shocked that teacher Yan wasn't dead making everyone shocked from what he said. His teacher was so mad demanding an explanation about what he said. Meng Chao rushes toward his teacher explaining that he has a nightmare about the Dragon City being attacked by ruthless alien creatures even the Century Hold homeland has been destroyed. Mr. Yan was so frustrated about him dying and about the destruction of the Dragon City. Because of this he wants Meng Cha stands against the wall with a head up, chest out, stomach in and ass out. Meng Cha was skeptic how would he do that while he stands against the wall. Mr. Yan tells a story 50 years ago when the Dragon City came from the other world that had plagues tormenting them and zombies are rampaging city. After the zombie, a fog have arrives and the monster shows it appearance making the countless martyrs sacrifice their lives to eliminate these monsters. So, he asked Meng Cha if they submit these monsters and Meng Cha answered him respectfully that they didn't submit to these monsters and Dragon City was not destroyed. Mr. Yan told him that the earthlings are the most ones who are the most ruthless in the world. The students were so overwhelmed about this and suddenly one student stand up from what Mr. Yan said. He was motivating them to study hard to become superhuman and rise up the Dragon City. He encouraged the students that Earth will win from those aliens. Meng Cha notices that he might have grudge against him. In his previous life, he missed the college entrance examination because the class rep injured his internal organs. However, when Dragon City began the War of Races he actually fled from the battle and sold them out. He calls the class rep with a gnarly looking and suddenly he apologized for what he said and praising his class rep to point out his mistakes. After this in order to spare him by Mr. Yan, he needs to do the dragon hibernation stance until the class ends. Everyone was laughing at him for underestimating him and thinking he just acts cool. Even the class rep was expecting that he deserves the punishment. After getting ready Meng Cha started to do the dragon hibernation stance and did it so well. Because of this everyone was so shocked even Mr. Yan. His classmates that underestimating him notices that his stance was much better than the class rep. Meng Cha begs for excusing him to do that because his movement aren't perfect. Mr. Yan ignores him and he go back to his lecture. The class rep feels embarrassed after what Meng Cha did. While he is on his stance, he saw something from his eyes. A system that loads in his vision and suddenly the system showed up something. That kindling has been bound successfully and the host identity was verified as Meng Cha, the fire relayer. This fire reminds him from his nightmare when the dragon city is destroyed. This flame gushed out of the center of city and entered to his body. The system congratulates him on becoming the fire relayer of their civilization along with this he was rewarded with 10,000 initial contribution points. The system wants to automatically upgrade him at his best state. Meng Cha's injuries can't do anything about his injuries from the past years, but because of the system he was able to recover from his injury. Just a moment the system stops because he only has three contribution points left. He is confused how come he earned the contribution points. Mr. Yan dismissed the class and everyone was so shocked after he hold the dragon hibernate stance for long period of time. Meng Cha was so drained because the fire consumed his energy to repair his body and awakening of his skill. All of a sudden, his best friend named Chu Faixin came up to compliment him after thinking that he is training the dragon hibernation stance himself without him. Meng Cha forgot his money so he wants Chu to buy his food and pay it tomorrow. But Chu was skeptic from him being generous and thinking Meng Cha must tricking him. He encouraged Chu as his half-brother so he wouldn't lie at him because of this Chu was so happy and led him to borrow his money. Meng Cha eat a lot of food with Chu's budget. 
Because of this Chu was so mad tries to attack him. But all of a sudden Meng Chao's instinct worked. He accidentally hit Chu to stop him and Chu ran away back to their class. While walking Meng Cha saw a street sweeper spills the rubbish. He decided to help the lady and just a moment his contribution points increased by 0.001. This is due to protecting the environment and promoting Dragon City sustainability. So, he realizes that's how he earns contribution points. As he goes back to his class, he is so bored from the class. Chu asks him about killing Mr. Yan and about himself if he become a great general and fight until his last moment. Meng Cha explained that he didn't kill Mr. Yan indeed he saw him scattered by the monster and as for Chu he is doubting what would tell him. He either tell that Chu was a fat bear that in front line in the end or was the monster war that about to escalate. But he changes the topic and not tell him about what would he become. Both of them dreamy, Chu wants to get in military school to become a general while Meng Cha wants to get in college to become a superhuman. The next class at the language class everyone was waiting for their teacher Huang. Suddenly their class rep announced that their teacher Huang was sick and calls everyone to cultivation room for a self-study. As they walking at the hallway, their class rep was observing them talking to each other and all of a sudden he scolded them for chit-chatting. Xu was so irritated by their class rep's attitude but Meng Cha stops him to bear it for a while. They finally reach cultivation center to start their self-study. They must pick their own cultivation module and proceed to cultivating. Meng Cha wants to start a punching machine and as he starts to punch it, he become clumsy because of the energy that consumed by the fire earlier to heal his wounds. Meng Cha rests for a while he's watching Chu and suddenly, he smiled. Chu thinks that Meng Cha making fun of him, but Meng told him that he can't unleash his power in cultivation. Chu thinks that Meng Cha is just flexing at him but he misunderstood that Meng Cha wasn't picking at him. Meng Cha invites him to go at the toilet. When they get inside that toilet, Meng Cha demands to take Chu's clothes to research at his muscle. Chu was so shocked but he explains that his reckless bull force was circulated until it reaches below his rib. Meng Cha asks he feel sharp pain at the sole of his foot to his knees and Chu was so shocked that he knows about this. It means that he is halfway of the power running to his body when he uses reckless bull force and he keeps training blindly he might suffer to osteoporosis. Chu begs for Meng Cha to save him and Meng Cha actually going to help him with the fire. After a few minutes Chu feels that his power increases at least 3% and Meng Cha wants him to try it. Suddenly a fire spark showed up in front of Meng Cha. The fire pops up notifying him that Chu's basic technique along his learning progress at 10% and receiving 10 contribution points after helping Chu. This builds him an idea that he can teach the dragon citizen with a martial art to receive a contributed to civilization. The fire shows a list of skills that he may upgrade because this is the reward of his first contribution. After thinking rationally, he chooses the basic gun skill because it's the most expensive one and this upgrade was only free. They go back the cultivation to try Chu's maximum punching strength. Chu tries to focus his power, and all of a sudden someone stopped them to use the punching force gauge. It was their class representative who stopped them after they sneaking out the cultivation and suddenly wanting to test their punching strength. Chu was so furious about how Zuo acting like as their teacher. Zuo was downing him and wanting to show does the reckless bull force must do. Meng Cha stops Chu from being mad and must focus for the information that they could learn. Zuo was getting ready to do the reckless bull force and as he punches the punching machine, he lands a powerful blow with 225 kilogram force. Every girl was admiring her from achieving the class record of punching machine. After Zuo shows his record to Chu and Meng Cha, some of their classmates stopping him to try the punching machine. But Meng Cha persuade him to try it on his own. Chu was so furious that even Zuo stop him he don't hold back. Chu throws away Zuo after blocking way to use the punching machine and Zuo was so shocked he gets stronger. Chu charges his punch to do the reckless bull force, and as he punches the machine, he lands powerful punch that even the machine lift up. Chu overtook their class rep's record and also, he achieves class new record. He can't believe that his punch was so powerful than before. Suddenly Meng Cha acts to praise Chu for practicing the super reckless bull without him and promote him that he overpowered their class representative. Meng Cha asks Chu for teaching him the super reckless bull even though he's the one teaches it to Chu. But Meng Cha tells to Chu that don't tell anything that he know to everybody before the exam because he want to use cultivation resources to pay their fee to Chu. So, Meng Cha still begging for him to help him and the other encouraged to learn from him. By spreading the his influence the contribution of Dragon Citizen also increases so he would be benefit from it. This way it results of his suggestion becomes the classmates more united and his classmates are urging to learn which could lead to more scoring good grades. All of a sudden he told to everyone that Chu was so unselfish and not elected as class representative because of this duo's reputation starting to fall down. 
Meng Cha was trying to help him and apologizing from what he said but didn't take it. Zuo swears that he will make sure that he won't be able to enroll to any university. After the class they split 30% for Chu and 70% for Meng Cha. Chu asks about where he obtained the skill but Meng Cha doesn't want to tell the truth about him so he tries to make an excuse. They split their way back home but Meng Cha stays because his past life he didn't like the mist because the mist sealed Dragon City and stop humans from Earth to go around killing monsters. Along with this he doesn't really like the city. Building is way too dense. Streets are also crowded and lastly cultivation stress was too large. The youngsters secretly read books regarding Earth and watch the movie about Earth. The students every day only have two lessons of physical education, but can get countless language and math lessons. The adults needs to work for eight hours every day to earn large amount of money, live in a big house, and eat luxurious food. But it was the earth that they can't return and a hellish nightmare about to come at them. Just a moment the reckless bull is being passed down throughout citizen, and the whole dragon city's overall power increases. All of a sudden an announcement was reported for them that the city will be entered by monsters on an urban area. The monster will be predicted at north side where factory area was. When he's on the home a bus came up and unlucky for him the bus was bypassed him. He got hard time to tie the bus but lucky for him he caught up. He finally arrived at Hu Lin area where he lives. Suddenly her sister came up asking for help to carry the bucket full of meat. As he greeted her his nightmare came up again. He saw her sister with menace looking creature as a black darkness witch. This girl steps at his face and suddenly he woke up from his nightmare. His sister was so mad after he make an unexpected reaction to his sister. Because of curiosity he asked her sister if she will step at him if she obtains her power. Her sister denies that she won't do anything cruel to his brother but in inner self she will step at him as hard as she can. Ming Cha asked again she's satisfied with him or mad and answered again that she's satisfied at him and again at her inner self she's unsatisfied at him as a bad brother. Ming Cha was satisfied with her answer so he's confident at her. But she's curious who made her sister as Black Darkness Witch. As they got home he's surprised by her mother with a spring roll. Because of too much joy he cries while eating his food. Because of the noise outside of their house his father demand to check the news at their television. At 8.50pm the Battle Crab team will complete North City's arrangement. Their large metal crab is Dragon City's most advanced battle machine. As they watching suddenly their TV turned off itself. All of a sudden, an earthquake happens at their place. This was caused by the monsters that coming at their area. A bug type monsters arrive at their area. For a short period of time the machines restrain the bugs movement. Unfortunately, the monsters manage to reach the machine that protects them. These bugs suddenly evolve into a flying flame bug. His father gives him a gun to protect themselves from incoming intrusion. Meng Cha was ready to shoot the bugs but all of a sudden the fire shows up again with an indication of activating the first combat mission where he needs to kill 10 fire flame armor bug and 3 flying bug. He agreed to activate the mission and he used his skill basic shooting skill. He started to aim at the bugs and shoot it simultaneous. He managed to kill some of the bugs and he received credits along the proficiency increased by 0.8%. Time to time he keeps killing the bugs without an ease and his previous life's shooting sense gradually coming back. He remembers that there's one more mysterious monster that didn't appear yet. He keeps looking for the monster and as he find the monster it was too late for him. Since his current basic shooting skill level, it can't even hurt the beast bug. The guards are trying to restrain the movement of the bugs to stop them reaching the resident building. Meng Cha trying rushing to kill the bugs to improve his shooting skill before the monster awakens. His father calls him to evacuate but he insists to stay at the building because he knows what was that beast bug. The beast bug empowers the flame bugs to be more powerful. After killing several flames bugs, he finally completes his first mission and obtained 15 credit point. He makes his proficiency max to upgrade as his basic shooting skill to be master rank. His first mission's reward is confirmed and his basic shooting skill upgraded to perfect rank. Because of this skill he can finally see the weak points of the bug. He reloads his gun with armor breaker bullet. Unfortunately, he can't reload because he forgot to refit the gun. The monster spotted his location it's about to attack him. While the monster attacking their place he remembered that Sayo Kao was helping to kill the monster, but her loud gunshot attracted the beast bug. Because of this her mother was seriously injured and hospitalized and followed by bad luck so Sayo Kao becomes guilty, and that time he planted the seed of blackness. Because of desperation he shoots the bug multiple times. The bug was so pissed and started to charge its power on its mouth. But Meng Cha was waiting this perfect time. He used his basic gun technique perfect level while the monster charging. A huge explosion happened to its face making the monster fall. 
The guards reported that the beast bug was be killed by Meng Cha and ordering to kill the smaller bugs. Meng Cha slowly fall unconscious from what he did. As everyone trying to help him, he thinks that his nightmare won't happen again. But he realized that the kill message wasn't show up after he shoot meaning the monster was probably alive. Even he is so injured after what he did last time he stands up and desperate to kill the monster to change the fate. As he going to use the reckless bull to kill the monster someone pierced the monster's head leading to its death. It was the super being that arrived to the city before the destruction happened. Because of what he did for stalling and making the important role in the defense he was awarded with 1978 credit points along the awaken of his basic skill dragon snake aura and a beginner harvest skill. Because of the nutrient liquid that he eats from his mother cooked he can move. He wants to be stronger as soon as possible to avoid chaotic things to happen. He opens the tender to see the exchange list. He saw the harvest skill that he can afford from his credit points. He exchanges beginner harvest skill. Just a while he learned the harvest skill along with this he upgrade his beginner harvest skill to profession rank. Profession rank of harvest skill and perfect rank of shooting skill is a good combo for his situation. In his past most of the monster wasn't evolving yet means he was the only person who understand the most in Dragon City. After the battle against the monster, the resource recovery team goes for the corpses of the monsters because this is the strategic resource to sustain the development of Dragon City. Within three or five years, the Dragon City will run out of resources starve to death and die of being entrapped. The superhumans can execute a large number of monsters with cold weapons, and the corpses are preserved intact and many resources can be recovered meaning humanity always depends on the superhuman. Being Harvester was not easy job because he needs to be bold and careful. But Meng Kao insisted that he's not nervous to take this monster. His father keeps teasing him and wanting to use him a diaper to avoid peeing himself while harvesting. They've finally arrived at the location. Shen Rong for the general manager of Prosperous Resource Recovery Company. Due to Meng Kao's injury from the last year, the manager doesn't want him to take the job but he considered him because of his father's team was good lately. His father promised that they won't cause any trouble but Shen Rong for wanting to be brother-in-law Vex. Suddenly Meng Kao's father feel uncomfortable from what he said. Because of this Meng Kao got furious for making his father life being miserable from his previous life. After this they go back to work. Since Meng Kao goes back from his past nightmare he decided not to rely on other and wanting to build his own power to change his fate. Their work has been started to harvest the monster's corpse. One of his uncles teaches him how to extract the monster's body and explains every part and anatomy of the monster to use as resources for their economy. Later on, it was his chance to try on his own. Meng Kao started to dissect one of the monsters after he separate the central nervous cord. He put it to nerve cell activation solution with a density of 37% to keep it fresh. The arc of the no. 34 butterfly blade was perfectly peeled off the fleshy and carapace so he used vacuum container makes it easy to collect and store the scorpion meat intact. Lastly the mucus is aspirated using a vacuum aspirator. Finally he finished extracting the monster and he received a notification from the fire saying he complete the first standard gathering of materials as fire relayer. So, he gained contribution points and his skillfulness of specialist level basic harvesting skill increased by 1.1%. His uncles got shocked from being skillful and vigorously of Meng Kao even though it was his first time. Eventually he told to his father and uncles that all this time after having the injury, he was dreaming of coming an ace harvester after losing the chance of getting into the university. Meng Kao's father was so proud at him. They continue their work to extract the monster and Meng Kao works flawlessly. Somehow, he noticed one of the monsters was a golden spirit due to his harvesting skill, and one of his uncles was surprised that he can identify a golden spirit. He tried to explain that he just learned it from his biology teacher. He prepared the equipment that he'll use to start the extraction of the monster and he's expecting to a high-grade material from a golden spirit. So, he needed to preserve it properly. He remembers that the internal structure of the golden spirit is complicated and must be handled by supervisor goo or superhumans. Since the nerve cord and neurosphere of the monster was exposed, the flesh will start to change and the spirit energy will be ruined can be result of blowing up at any moment. He didn't waste any time and he removed the carapace of the monster but someone stopped him. His father came in to act for his son. He wanted to take all the responsibility of Meng Kao fails since it's a high-grade monster. His uncles didn't really want to stop him but they want to educate him further and supports him. So they decided to let him on his own and if he fails they will take the blame to protect him. Meng Kao started to dissect the monster and a few moments of hard work he finally got the high-grade material from the monster's body. He ordered to his dad to use mithril-based cooling and stabilizing solution. They've noticed that this is etherealized nerve ball. 
His uncles were so amazed after extracting the etherealized neurosphere even he's just a high schooler. Ming Kao seemed planning to do something about to the neurosphere, but his father noticed it and stops him for admiring the neurosphere. He insists the allegation of his father and he's not desperate for this. While leaving he is planning to find a way to persuade his father to set up his own business. So he go out to check the other location to find a high-grade monster. Somehow, he heard a seven-eyed wolf spider and run into it. Unfortunately, someone else got ahead of him already. He saw an old man and a girl trying to extract the monster. She said that she only needs eight minutes to finish the extracting at the monster. Meng Kao was wondering if they know the condition of the seven-eyed dragon wolf spider. Suddenly, he stops them from extracting the monster. He introduced himself from them, and the old man was so shocked about how he knows the harvester's etiquette. Meng Kao stopped them because of the status of the monster in evolving state from being stuck at rank 1 and rank 2 super beast. He explains that the current inner structure was very weak and the new poison sac was very thin, and there's a possibility that the material might be spoiled. If the woman used her method there's a possibility that the harvest would fail. The woman notices that he's a trainee harvester and no idea who was her grandfather. The old man wondering how can he confirm that the monster was evolving by only watching it so he replied that he study on his own for a few years, and he considered himself as a veteran harvester. Because of this the woman got furious from what he said like he was underestimating his grandfather. Meng Kao wants to prove himself and he ordered to the old man to open the super beast shell and examine the body because it was starting to mutate. The old man decided to do the extraction on his own. He wants to show his skill to add this knowledge for his own and Meng Kao was so excited. As the old man started to take the equipments, he noticed that the old man's hand was injured that's why he wanted to do the extraction on his granddaughter. Somehow, he asked the woman if she had a 300,000 cash to assist them because if they fail the extraction, it only worth 30,000 plus. So if they add his experience and skill to extract the poison sack perfectly it will be worth at least 100,000 plus. But since they just met, he wants to charge them for only 30,000 for his skills. She got furious after what he said thinking that his grandfather was being belittled by a trainee. All of a sudden, her grandfather stops her for some reason. It is because Meng Kao was right about what he said about the monster condition. She asks Meng Kao if he can really help his grandfather complete the harvest for 300,000 cash, but the old man wants to pay him for 500,000. Since he is not a superhuman yet, he doesn't have enough strength and senses so he can only serve as the old man assistant. They decided to team up together to extract the monster's body, and they prepare to start. The old man requests for number 3 hilt but he gives a number 7 rhombus-shaped blade with number 4 hilt. Meng Kao expected this that he would ask for number 3 hilt with a number 12 pincer-shaped blade to separate the book lungs, but since this monster was evolving it might damage the appearance. They started to clear up its surrounding before they deal the book lung. The old man got impressed by his skill of thinking. Because of this Meng Kao received another contribution points after giving guidance at elite citizen Ning Shuo. They've been containing every organ that they could take from the monster time by time. Ning Shuo got so comfortable to Meng Kao as his assistant so he wants to teach him the seven dissection method. After teaching the seven dissection methods, Meng Kao tries to do this method making the old man amazed because he upgraded the seven dissection methods for reducing the harvesting time for at least 5%. Meng Kao receives another contribution points after performing the seven dissection method perform. Just a moment the old man asks who was his master, but he doesn't want to talk about who was his master yet. Because of this Ning confused at him for asking a 300,000. Meng Kao wants to start a capital to form a team for himself and contribute much more to Dragon City. They didn't expect these answers at him from being kind of heart person. After this he rushes to do the final operation to extract the poison sack because he needed to go back to his father as soon as possible. Finally, he successfully extracts the poison sack from the monster in a very good condition. Unexpectedly the old man wants to send him a 800,000 and Meng Kao was so shocked from their agreement on 500,000. The old man pays him more because of the knowledge that he received from Meng Kao. However, he asks how does Meng Kao know about his injuries. Based on the condition of his hands, he assumes it was caused by the venom of the purple crown holly's viper that infect the ulnar nerve. Radial nerve, median nerve and lastly the optic nerve. Miss Ning asked Meng Kao if he can treat her grandfather's injury. Suddenly the tinder showed up asking if he wants to activate the first treatment emission type with a duration of one month, and he accepts it. Suddenly the old man propose a contract from the Thunder Squad as his harvesting team. But he wants to think about it and they must be hurry because the poison sack isn't able to be kept for a long time. At his phone he receives an $800,000 after helping them. He rushes to go back at his father to surprise him. 
He got so shocked after seeing his father in front for Mr. Shen with a broken container that has the interiorized nerve ball. His father goes for Mr. Shen to buy the nerve ball so he can use to enroll Meng Kao in a university. Unfortunately, Mr. Shen was so greedy ending up slipping the container at his hand and put the blame to his father. Meng Kao helps his father to get up and he observed the container for possible reason. Upon check he saw oil at the glass from Mr. Shen's hand that's why he didn't hold it properly. He wanted to split the payment from each other since there's no witness of who dropped the container. Mr. Shen thinking that Meng Kao's father was so greedy to take the material for himself and dropped it and he refused to blame himself while he is slapping Meng Kao's father. He agreed and his father must sign three years of second grade contract. His father left no choice and he wants to sign the contract. Meng Kao was so sick about Mr. Shen for making his father suffering so he pushed away the contract form. Because of this Mr. Shen ordered to his bodyguard to attack Meng Kao. His father tries to protect his son from them but someone hit him. One of the guards has a bat and swings at Meng Kao, hitting his shoulder. Because of this he engages them with reckless bull technique and he fights them with his martial arts and manages to slam one of the guard. Suddenly he activates ripple force and he wants to push to specialist level. Mr. Shen was one of the reason why his father's life became miserable after signing the dangerous second level contract. He didn't stop even though Mr. Shen begging to stop and have a talk with him. Because of his anger he slaps Mr. Shen for changing the contract in his past life. He punches him for making Xiao Kao stop believing in legal justice that make her take the dark route at his past life. Mr. Shen peed on himself with a severe injury from his attack. He wanted to attack him more but his father stops him to avoid being imprisoned. His father keeps stopping him but he wants to kick him for the last time. Suddenly the Guming Prosperous Resource Recovery Company business executive came up at the situation. One of this was the Master Tiger, Kin Hu the Prosperous Resource Recovery Company Big Boss. These are the business executive of all harvesters boss. In his previous life, these peoples along Shen Rongfa did many dirty things together at them. The bodyguard put the blame at them for destroying the rare material. Because of this, one of the executives wanted to give punishment from Meng Kao did. He talks at him for having the possibility to be sentenced imprisonment for many years and having a possibility to ruin his life. However, Meng Kao seemed fearless by wanting them to call the police and send Mr. Shen at the hospital to scan his injury grave. One of the executives was so shocked at him for being brave. Mr. Hu checks Mr. Shen's injury to scan his damage he took from Meng Kao. He was so amazed of how Meng Kao managed to hit Mr. Shen without injuring any bones and organs and even if they sent him to scan, it won't even count as a light injury. So Mr. Hu throws away Mr. Shen even he is one of his executives of the company. Meng Kao manages to take the interest of Mr. Hu for being skilled high schooler. Meng Kao wanted to negotiate at Mr. Hu for the interiorized nerve ball. Since there's no determination of whose fault it is, he wants to pay the both sides for the half of the price since it was a rule from the company. The executive got furious after he thinks that they don't want to pay the medical fee from the damage he made. But he fought for his rights after him and dad took an injury from the bodyguards that used ancient martial skills. He shows the damage he took from the bodyguards to be equal from what he did from them. Mr. Hu got interested from him for being a witty person. So he asked them if they want to resolve it with his negotiation. The executives offer a $300,000 since it was the market price. If they paid $300,000 they can leave as they want. He underestimate Meng Kao thinking he lack of money. But he confidently paid them as soon as possible to finish the negotiation and to end the chit chat. The executive was so shocked for having much money as a high schooler. After paying the interiorized nerve ball was belonged to him this time. He took the nerve ball and ordered to his father to take a silver nitrate solution so he can preserve it in. After he put it in silver nitrate solution it evolves and now it worth a million dollars. Mr. Hu got furious for knowing the price of the item increases. Meng Kao discovers that there's something inside the interiorized nerve ball so he got curious and take research for it. He used the conflict to get the price split in half so he could buy it a lot cheaper. Because of realization of being tricked he got mad and wanting them to leave immediately with the item. Everyone was so happy from Meng Kao's success for making a risky decision. Finally, Meng Kao told to everyone proposed that he's going to make a new resource for themselves since he has the capital. Mr. Hu got mad again for thinking he's underestimating him and he doesn't know about the outside world. Suddenly the old man came up at them that makes the executive shock. Ghost Han Ning came up with Shen Yupeng the Thunder Combat Squad's co-leader. All of a sudden Mr. Hu act like a tame cat. Shen Yupeng came for Meng Kao to seek any opportunity that he could work together. After a long conversation Meng Kao goes for Mr. Shen to resign himself 
and take what belongs to him along the other's insurance that he scams. Mr. got so furious after knowing that he eat all the employer's insurance costs. He slaps him as a punishment for making Mr. Shen involved through the conflict. They leave immediately to trade the crystallized nerve ball. The next day Meng Keo goes back to school with his new friends. Suddenly someone came up to announce that the study group will be cancelled and Meng Keo got mad. He assumed that class representative Xu was the reason of this. Everyone got mad for class representative Xu for thinking he doesn't want to be any students to exceed from him. But he tries to clear himself from them saying he has nothing to do with it. Suddenly another notification from the Tinder showed up saying the normal citizen Wang Long Jun received guidance from him after learning portion of Reckless Bull that makes combat, ability, and knowledge of Dragon City citizen increases. Just a moment Xin came to the classroom to tell to Meng Keo that Leaning Group will be cancelled in exchange of expanding and spreading the Super Reckless Bull. Because of this Meng Keo got shocked after knowing this report at him. He confidently announced to the students that the reckless bull will be teached to the others and will be guided by Qing and Meng Kao. Because of this everyone was so happy and excited knowing that they will learn the reckless bull. Their teacher announced that there's three rounds that they must pass. The first round was the physical test to test the limit of the fist power, 100 meters sprint and shooting skill. The second round is revision where the students using super brain virtual system to test the mental spirit of a student. Lastly the third round is combat battle exam which is their final exam where the students will go near at the mist where a true battlefield happened. One of the students complain about the 100 meter sprint seems unfair. His teacher got furious stating that the world never been fair. He told to the class that Dragon City had nothing when ice guide than facing monsters and zombie invasion. Only the super being are born in danger and higher up and to have all sorts of authority. It doesn't drop free from the sky and they must use fist, sword, even teeth to obtain the freedom from the monsters. After this their teacher calls them out to do the first test. The students trying their best to pass the first test and so motivated to do thing to fight their city. This youth is a new generation that will be fought the monster to change the fate of their city. Shu got a new record of 233 from the punch machine making the whole class shot. Their teacher was happy about it for seeing the improvements from those students who joined the study group. Meanwhile Zhu talking trash to other students while he's observing the other students. He remembers this scenario where he lost temper leading him to challenge Zhu into a duel. Their fights result him to get injured badly and having a wound left behind him because of this his body hurt, and he failed the exam. Meng Keo finally used his turn to show off from the whole class. Zhu sarcastically want to cheer to Meng Keo since he knows about his injury. Meng Keo insisted that stop for complimenting him because his body was still too weak and can only exert 50% of his strength. He starts to take his position. He's been using Ripple for throughout the past year to treat his wounds so he wants to try use this time. Meng Keo charges the Ripple force to maximize his speed. Before he run, he warned the class representative to step aside since was about to move. Meng Keo was unexpectedly run so fast, and because of the Ripple force it helps him a lot to improve better. He managed to run a 100 meter with 90 miles per hour within 8 minutes and 50 seconds. Everyone was so startled after seeing their last year top student coming back to top. His teacher got shocked and asked if he recovered from his wounds. He replied that he wasn't fully recovered and he's been practicing ripple force for over the past years so he found some new style and learned from it. Meng Keo started to offer if they want to teach it. They only need to give him some gene medicine high-grade nutritional fluid, cell growth fluid, monster materials or give him a discount on stuffs. Xu asked Meng Keo if he can maximize his punches force just like maximizing his 100-meter dash. So, he wants to try but he didn't assure his full force since his heart got numb after harvesting for the whole night. As Meng Keo punches the machine, he blows a powerful punch with a 200-kilogram force that make everyone so shocked after he wasn't fully recovered from his injury and some are happy for the comeback of a student Keo. After this he told to everyone that he was humiliated by Zuo Heoran multiple times and this time he won't tolerate him. Zuo insisted that his tone is just little stern and he only want to motivate Meng Kao instead for a good reason. Suddenly he reveals a recording pen and play it to everyone that Zuo was saying that Chu will be forever trash and he would never get into the college. Because of this everyone was so horrified from what he said even they know that Zuo was a good person before. He furiously replied that he just framed up by Meng Kao and there's no way a normal student would bring a recording pen as a daily basis. Meng Keo acts so pitiful by saying he was humiliated and cursed for multiple times and did he think that he wouldn't learn his lesson. Zuo explains that Meng Keo trying to throw dirt at him and he only trying to put a stain on his name. Because of what Zuo did to him he was trying to learn the reckless bull force and ripple force so he can't be useless. Because if he fails, Zuo would laugh at him for being a trash forever. 
Meng Kao wants justice for himself and he broke the recording pen as the evidence. He challenges the class representative to obtain his justice. He wants to challenge him for a replacement of the class representative. If Meng Kao wins, he will be the class representative so his teacher must don't worry at him. He wants to compete with their overall results since it wasn't against the rules in the school, and Zio accepted this challenge. Their teacher calls for the class representative to follow him. As Zuo passed by he warned Meng Kao that he has one week left and he should practice his gun technique properly. Everyone tries to comfort Meng Kao after what he was dealing at Zuo. Someone said that Zuo Heorin is a member of Falcon Gun Club so he does target practice. But they must worry since Meng Kao's gun technique was pretty good. So, he was confidently it was a perfect timing for himself against Zuo Heorin. However, the woman with a blue haired running away from a hand. It was Meng Kao hands and he was trying to adjust her muscles. All of a sudden Chu came up wanting to adjust his muscles to but Meng Kao wanting him to get lost. After the class he thought of helping his classmates to study but most of them thought as he's about to do something bad and he must adjust muscle stimulation naturally. But he decided there are more ways to contribution and if didn't manage to get more contribution he might not cure his past injuries. Meng Kao goes for Chu to have a talk while they're going home. He ordered to Chu to look the demon Yan and ask him to teach the super reckless bull. But Chu was hesitating they might get exposed. But he explains that their first benefit, since Demon Yan comes from the military communicating super reckless bull with him will make him look at Chu in a new light meaning in the future, they will have an easier life in the military. The second benefit is Meng Kao preparing to find a chance to cripple Zuo Heorin, so he needs to find someone who is as strong the teaching director. Their class's incident can't be concealed rather than letting them come to steal and learn from them so he got an idea to teach Team 2 so they must get a good impression from Demon Yan and the principal to earn some benefit. So, they must find Demon Yan and if the time comes, they can get into military school together. After this Meng Kao hardly needed to find an expert for Ripple. Chu suggested the Ripple Princess, Yi Zushi Rong, since she is specialized in teaching teenagers with beginner Ripple. So Meng Kao takes this as a good idea. They go at Ripple Princess's livestream to disguise and take her attention. While the people trying to make a comment about their experiences he tries to oppose and giving them a tip to improve their Ripple. Some of the viewers thinks that he was just trying to ruin her reputation after hiding in a fake account. He tries to explain to other that he has no ill intention and only wanting to contribute to the society and let the whole city's citizens increase in combat ability. Because of this he decided to privately message the Ripple Princess to avoid any intrusion of other people. After this he sent a million spacecraft gift at her to get her attention. She thanks him for the support that he gave and willingly to improve her Ripple since it's not perfect yet. After this her sister peeked at his room for noticing him having much money. As she peeks, he saw his brother holding a meat. Because he was filming himself doing the technique for the ripple so he can show how to do this. The next day after practicing the ripple he receives a message from the Tinder old man. She was so shocked after he saw the message that the Tinder old man sent to her. She can't believe how is that possible to this such thing so she called her senior to help her out. As her senior came up at the location, she shows the video that the old man sent to her. They become skeptic because of the uniqueness of the process inside the message content. After thinking on such thing, she wanted to show the video that the Tinder old man sent to her. An anonymous holding a meat and a tofu at the same time. All of a sudden the meat become liquefied like while the other hand he was holding a tofu but never broke down. So decided to told this to their master. At the same day Meng Kao and his father talking about him for growing up soon. Zio Kao told everything to their parents about what she saw. So, his father makes this short while saying all the things he wants to say. First, he was about to take the exam so he must focus on cultivating and after he finish his exam if he had any girl he liked, he can bring her home to meet his family and his father support them. Second is the Dragon City's environment is bad so he must take note of hygiene and safety protocol. After this his father leave immediately. Suddenly the tinder showed up receiving the contribution points because Izushi Rong understand the ripple little by little. While the elite citizen Izushi Rong started to spread the new version of ripple toward the normal citizens, and he received the contribution points from Izushi Rong influence. He was thinking of what characteristics should he give his tinder old man disguise. So, he came up with an idea of deviate characteristics not just strong but also crazy when it comes to cultivation. He made comments to everyone's post about their progress of themselves and criticizing by giving of information to do this properly. So everyone would be interested at Tinder Old Man after being the social critic. After this he received a bunch of contribution points and manages to obtain 3000 contribution points after all he did. Meanwhile at the Zushi Yi building, 
She goes to her father to ask how strong was the demonic changed Ripple. He replied that of course, how can you lie to the Ripple princes? They've been skeptic from the thing that Tinder old man. Rumors have been spread after the Tinder old man teaches the demonic changed Ripple. Because it's ahead of Yira by whole three steps. Unfortunately, it uses the 20% oxygen of a person that can lead of exhaustion. So it's not recommended for the citizen. Due to its huge modification of style, it can affect the whole body. Because he tried to use this multiple times and the more, he practices the demonic change ripple. The scarier he feels so he assumes that the tender old man created the skill and wasn't a genius and probably a maniac demon. The set is designed for a more crucial era to provide them with skills to become 10 times stronger and face 10 times more ruthless and ferocious monster than the present. He came up with an idea if they spread this, they will affect the military and by teaching the departments they can take their trust. The next day, Meng Kao was preparing to go at the school, and he receives a 1,443 contribution points in just one night. He immediately leaves the house so he can practice the cultivation foundation. As he checks his phone, he saw a live stream of Ripple Princess warning the citizen from the new Ripple skill for possible unexpected consequences. She insisted that the demonic Ripple use their name to scam their reputation towards the citizen so she begs to stop the action of the inventor of this set. Meng Kao was so shocked after hearing these words. After this he decided to increase his beginner rank harvest proficiency for the upcoming material tray. He goes at the bathroom and thanking that he received a 1058 contribution points. He finally upgrades his beginner rank harvest skill for more proficiency. He found the possible cure for the ghost hand name. A 100-year etching grass root and blood color female queen bee's wing. He needed these two important hints. Elder Ning should be able to roughly figure out the cure method. Luckily, he still has 1,200 points to upgrade some of his skill. Meng Kao used this in exchange of beginner cure technique. He goes for the Ten Yun building since Elder Ning told him that the material trade was held there. As he finally arrived at the Ten Yun building, he didn't expect the different of the material trade in than his imagination and didn't change his cloth. But he doesn't care about this so he still goes inside the Ten Yun building and shocking the rich people with elegant clothes. Unfortunately, as he gets inside, he got stopped by the bodyguard since there was a high material trade center and he can't get inside without an invitation letter. He insisted that he was invited by Eldern, but the bodyguards insisted that they don't know who is Eldern and he can't get inside without invitation letter. So, he got no choice than leaving the place. He calls for Mr. Ning to come out since he didn't give him an invitation, but Elder Ning was 10 minutes late from the convention, so he ordered to Meng Kao to give the phone to the security guard to tell it them. Elder Ning gives the invitation number at the guard so they can let him in. As Elder Ning apologizing for the inconvenience Meng Kao was in it and happy go inside the trading center. Everyone have been flexing themselves inside the trading center, and he saw a guy from the Bobcat team for being most trusted harvester. After hearing egoistic people, he got some flashbacks from his past life of a skeletal people while saying the peerless fighters who stood supreme above up and had the entire city at their beck and call became ants who struggled to survive meaning no matter how high a person's position was in society, how matchless their martial art was how rich they were, all of that turned into a dream and meaningless. He decided to eat since it can be transformed into a real power against monsters. Suddenly he heard people judging him for eating too much like he's starving. He also heard some people talking about the powerful humanoid creatures. Meng Kao can't stop to laugh at the people because of being ignorant and being weak. Finally Elder Ning showed up and he calls for him. While Zushi looks so elegant with her outfit that makes everyone shock and admire her. Both of them got shock after they saw Meng Kao dress like a country bumpkin. Zushi said that he always dressed like this way intentionally to make other look at him in disdain so that he can look for a chance to stomp on them and become famous in the harvester field. Meng Kao replied that he just doesn't like to be in the limelight at all. Elder Ning asked Meng Kao about his master telling about this such things. Meng Kao confessed that he don't have a master and explained that he got into Mysterious Senior in the deep web and his name is Old Fire Relayer. Both Ning and Zushi confused after not hearing this name inside their field. Meng Kao told them that he was a man of great strength and character that free from the low life and intent on making a difference. He was a man of great wisdom visionary and able to see into the future and everyone's knowledge, he's already subjugated, affecting and saving everyone. But still they got confused. Somehow the executive earlier was whining after being humiliated after Elder Ning supports Meng Kao. The guy point at Meng Kao for clarify if he's the one that the executive talking about. Meng Kao explains that Elder Ning's injury was already acknowledged by the old fire relayer and gives an idea about the cure for his hand. 100 years heart corrosion weed and bloody queen hornet are both incredibly poisonous ingredients. 
The properties of their poison are also very close to that of the Purple Crown Holly's Viper poison. So it produces a peculiar muscle sclerotic toxin that causes the Purple Crown Holly's Viper to die of cardiac arrest. The poisonous properties of the 100 years heart corrosion weed are just beyond the limit of stimulating the activation of muscle tissue so as long as the ratio of the three is reasonable. The right steps and other materials to soften the reaction speed can achieve the effect of detoxification. Elder Ning was happy for this after knowing the possible cure for him. He receives a 43 contribution points after elite citizen Ning Shuo has gained a whole new understanding of toxicology. Meanwhile the executive still grudging at him after what he did from their company. It turns out that this guy was Ning's brother and he heard of rumors that his brother has been poisoned and injured so if he go to the challenge at this time he will be suspected of taking advantage of his disease. So, they are planning something dirty from them. Elder Ning understands his explanation the further he explains everything. Suddenly Elder Ning felt something at his chest and possible from the poison that he had from his body. He insisted that he's fine and started to ask about performing the seven dissection methods in reverse. Meng Keo told him that the old fire relay didn't told him everything. He just said that old fire relayer was waiting for him to get recover his hands and eyes so he can learn the brand new seven dissection method in reverse to improve his harvest to create better future with all dragon citizens. Somehow Elder Ning goes to socialize from the trading center and leave everything to Zushi to take care of Meng Keo for a while. Zushi got blushed out after this because Meng Keo was still in high school and three years younger than her. They got shocked as Meng Keo finished taking the food that he wants. Meng Keo and Zushi talking about everything from their experience while someone was right behind of Meng Keo. The guy and approached them both as in why she was there. Also, he asks who's the weirdo beside her. The executive came up saying that he knows Meng Keo. He was a poor kid who lives in Dragon City and he don't know how he got in. They teased Meng Keo after being the new disciple of the Elder Ning. All of a sudden she pours a glass of red wine at her face after getting mad from what he said. She was so furious after this and wanting him to get out of her sight. The guy was so mad after being poured by a wine inside the convention while one of his executives trying to comfort him out. This made his mind to give a reason to make an attack at them while leaving them up. He told them just wait and see what will happen at them after embarrassing him. She apologized to him for what Lyo Fajin did to him so she wanted to ignore him but Meng Keo replied that he's fine and he didn't expect that she'd be so feisty and just went to pour red wine at him. She blushes as Meng Keo replied this at her that she makes her felt something. Just a sudden someone called out all the people when the trade fair was about to begin. He wishes that the trade fair might be enjoyable for the audience. He shows the crystallized neurosphere in a good condition with 70% or more and starting price will be 900,000 so they can start bidding now. Some of the rich people started to make biddings from starting of 950,000 to 1.3 million. Two hours later, the most awaited unknown material identification session came and they welcomed the bloody wolf and their unknown material to the stage. The guy told that three days ago their fighting squad found an unidentified material in the depths of the fog so they don't know its worth that's why they brought it to trading fair. Suddenly Lai Ophagin told to everybody that since Elder Ning has recently taken a new disciple why don't let his new disciple Meng Keo come up to identify the item. This makes Zushi got furious because he has nothing to do with their family matters. Lyo replied that Elder Ning was poisoned by a snake and it seems like that he has reached even greater heights becoming friend with just anyone. But Elder Ning decided not to enter to his argument because he doesn't want to lower his status. Just a moment Meng Keo stands up while confidently saying all right let me see this material. He was worried that he won't have a better way to increase his fame than this so since Lyo decided to put his face under his boot willingly he have to stomp on it a couple of times or else he'll be disrespected. Lyo can't hold himself wiping out Meng Keo's face and he thought of this as the price that she paid for splashing the red wine at him. The guy with the suit told to Meng Keo to appraise the material. As he removed the cover of the material, a bright pinkish glow up the material. Everyone has no idea at this material since the spirit energy was so thick and the super beast must have used this for decades or even a century to gather this amount of spirit energy. It turned out to be the material was the eye of the mosquito dragon and the blood wolf team was really lucky to have this. So, he acts to investigate the item. Just a moment he announced that he don't know this material that makes everyone so mad for wasting so there's so much time. Lyo bump him up and he wants to show off his skill after having a little knowledge about this material. The old man wonders if Mr. Jun is willing to solve the problem for everyone. In the fog to south of Dragon City there is a kind of single-eyed grass which bears fruit once every three years and has a very small chance of producing the mutated ghost eye fruit. When golden furred pigs eat this mutated fruit they aren't able to digest it thus turning into something similar to stones in their body. 
Golden furred pigs are grade 3 super beasts red-tailed golden pythons favorite food that once red-tailed golden python eats a golden furred pig with a ghost-eyed fruit in it. Thus, the ghost-eyed fruit will be stimulated by the digestive fluid from the red-tailed golden python and will be refined into the red-tailed golden python's crystal core also known as aquatic dragon's eye. So Lyo assumes that this material was aquatic dragon's eye. This assumption supported by the guy with a suit that you master Jun said that this crystal core is indeed something they obtained from red-tailed golden python. The people compliment Lyo for knowing this crystal core and some people thinks that Elder Ning must be desperate for looking his successor. This makes him shocked that everyone thinking Mankeo was his successor. He scolded Zushi after becoming enemies with Lyo Feija and dragged his young friend which is Mankeo into this mess. Elder Ning being skeptic of him being a high school student that even he had a lot of guidance from the old fire relayer. There's no way he could identify all the materials in the depth of the fog. The negotiator asked him if how much does the aquatic dragon's eye worth since this is the important question from these people. He told to everyone that this material was worth of 5.25 million. So the old man asks him if he had explanation for this such a huge amount of number. He replied that it must have been harvested in a rough manner that results on losing the flaw of aquatic dragon's eye that made at least one third of its spiritual power otherwise a perfect aquatic dragon's eye would worth 10 million. After this he advised the bloody wolf to look for a professional harvesting team to work since they are getting stronger lately. Lyo calls for Master Nai because this guy trying to become a three-star superhuman and the aquatic dragons matches for him and he offers this for 5.5 million. Master Nai accepted the deal with a 6 million in stake for the material. Vice Captain Zhao approved this price to be sold for him. While Meng Kao looks spectating the material, Lyo give him a word that if he wants to become a good harvester, he needs to come from a family of learned scholars. He belittle Meng Kao for living in a public rental house and have no access to exotic treasures. He had no idea why would Elder Ning chooses him as successor, and he keeps teasing him. The audience gone shocked after knowing that Meng Kao only live in a public rental house, and there's no way like him be qualified to attend such a trade fair. The executive earlier studied Meng Kao's background as he stays in a public rental house while his father live in low-ranking harvester in Prosperous. Before leaving Lyo had thought of Meng Kao had never seen the world before. Zushi was so angry wanting to beat down Lyo while Elder Ning wants to go up and help Meng Kao to get his dignity back. Just a moment Meng Kao stops Lyo while asking did I allow you to leave and ask is he really sure that this is an aquatic dragon's eye. Because of he Meng Kao mentioned that he didn't know what was this item was so he might just trying to avoid getting embarrassed this time. But Meng Kao replied that he really didn't know what was this but he's pretty sure that this isn't an aquatic dragon's eye. Elder Ning tries to stop him from trying to preserving his dignity and calls him to go down from the stage. He explains that at first glance it would really like aquatic dragon's eye however the second time he look at it, he was pretty sure it was a monster dragon's eye and he observe it for another five minutes. Lyo opposed to his speculation to this material that he probably made up a monster dragon's eye. But Elder Ning knew that Meng Kao didn't make this thing up because he's not that kind of person. So Meng Kao explains that every three years the single-eyed grass bears fruit, and each time there is a certain probability of producing ghost-eyed fruit. Further that the ghost-eyed fruit can also mutate when it does it turns into rarer monster-eyed fruit. When the monster-eyed fruit is eaten by a golden-furred pig which is in turn eaten by red-tailed golden pine, the crystal core will eventually produce end up as monster dragon's eye. So he called Master Nai that if he used this monster dragon's eye as aquatic dragon's eye and make it into a genetic potion he can use it to reach higher level. But the only result was a violent death on the spot. Meng Kao asked if they supposed to wait for young Master Nai to turn this monster dragon's eye into a gene medicine that could lead to his death. But Lyo still insisting he's just trying to save himself from embarrassment and talking nonsense. But Meng Kao fights for the harvester's lack of work for being half understanding to talk nonsense that going to be a big thing. Lyo still insisting the argument that the crystal was definitely an aquatic dragon's eye. He explains that ever why monster dragon's eye has faint bit of poison so if they drill a hole and get some powder from it and put it into poison testing they will able to get the reaction. This makes Lyo get his interest because he assumes that he knows that they can't conduct a test like this that's why he fearlessly saying this thing. So Meng Kao replied that it's up to him to verify this and wait for young master Nai to bleed and go crazy before accepting his mistake. Because of this he asked young master Nai if he don't trust Lyo and he's going to trust Meng Kao who lives in a public renting house. But Lyo wasn't the one who will eat this crystal so he'd be fine. Suddenly a guy calls for an 8 million. It turns out it was Elder Ning wanting to pay him for 8 million to buy the unidentified material from him. This makes everyone shock for supporting Meng Kao's assumption from the material 
and young master Nai agreed to this offer. Meanwhile Lyo got so mad after wasting a few millions just for Meng Kao's words. They brought the equipment to start the conduct the testing through the crystal. Elder Ning started to drill the crystal and used vacuum to collect the powder from it. Just as sudden the crystal leaked out an aroma that smells so good. Everyone notices this also and starting to doubt if is it really a monster dragon's eye. Elder Ning puts the powder in a flash and started to pour some solution, and he took a drop of poison testing. As he put the poison testing, it was positive that the crystal was poisonous meaning it's really a monster's dragon crystal. Elder Ning and Zushi felt comfortable after knowing that Meng Kao was right about this. On the other side, young Master Nai was so mad knowing he almost died from trusting Lyo. Because of this Meng Kao receives a bunch of contribution points after helping the trade fair community. As Lyo was going to leave the stage, he got called out by Meng Kao for being impolite for reciprocate when he's given something and he gives a few words that Elder Ning and Meng Kao are only friends. No matter how great a harvester was it's fine for him to admit that knowing nothing of an item just like what happened right now because of his ego young master Nai would have died for this ignorance. So, he advised him that he mustn't misunderstand him and this might change his life or else he remains arrogant he might end up dead. After hearing those words Lyo gone mad after taking these words as threat. But Meng Kao told him that he's not trying to threaten him as he keeps talking. Someone blocks his mouth from talking and someone hold his hand to stop making unnecessary movement. It turns out Elder Ning and Zushi tries to stop him from talking to prevent him destroy his reputation after he done too much. Lyo was so mad saying how dare you let this mad dog and allow him to cause trouble are you seriously not paying my grandfather any respect. This made Elder Ning got so mad while replying that are you even someone worth of calling me by my name. Because of this Elder Ning thought that he just want to provoke him so that he can get into trouble with his grandfather so that his grandfather can step on his head while he's poisoned. So Elder Ning wants to give what his grandfather wants, and challenges his grandfather to have a public competition against Poisonous Hand. Lyo was so confidently accepted this challenge he warns him to don't dare say that his grandfather bullet a cripple with trembling hands. But Elder Ning was so confident that he can deal with Lyo Santong even his hands are crippled. After some people heard their argument they got excited that the poisonous hand and ghostly hands will having a competition for the true legacy of jade assessment skill. After three hours the trade fair ends and Elder Ning will send the material to Meng Kao as soon as possible before splitting. Just a moment young Master Nai stops them because he was actually waiting for Meng Kao all this time. He gives a Dragon City Bank card that has 300,000 appraisal fee with 5% of the transaction amount as a rule which Meng Kao entitlement along this he gave a name card if ever Meng Kao run into any trouble he can help him up. Zushi told him to keep the card unless he absolutely need and warns Meng Kao to never approach him because Nai Waigao was a son of a rich man and he helps in a way that you may not be able to accept. Just a sudden the tinder showed up another notification. He received a 333 contribution points after saving elite citizen Yan Jen that made him confused how he saved the Princess Ripple's old father. Ten minutes ago, from the deep in the fog forest there are three superhuman which is Hu Hu, Zhu Yan and lastly Yan Jen. They are fighting one of a green huge monster from the deep fog. Just a sudden its mouth released something. It turns out this monster was going to mutate while fighting them. The monster turns into a flower-like monster, and they are having trouble since it became much powerful. One of his comrades got hit by the monster, while the other one got hit got entangled while in the midair. When he was entangled he tried to swing his axe and used the boost to add more four to his swing. But he was so shocked after hitting the tentacle it broke his axe because of the sturdiness of its skin. However, Yan Jenin was running and a tentacle was about to approach him as he tried to take a his position. But luckily, he manages to block it with his power. He parried the tentacle and he started to lunges at the monster. He was so fast that flawlessly managed to dodge the simultaneous attack of the monster and as he came close to it, he holds it. He made an opening to dash closer from the monster while his eyes glowing. He punches it multiple times and do one of the ripple technique to this monster. The attack was too powerful that even the monster didn't manage to withstand the powerful blow. This made him shocked because the ripple technique he did was the demon ripple force that increased his combat power by two times. Both of his comrades were so amazed after seeing this strong ripple force. He can't believe that he seems to offended an old and unfathomable monster. They approach him after being speechless from what he did even though the monster was already dead. This is because he was doubting that the Yan family is going to face a great disaster. The next day, someone kicks Yan Jenin's face. He flew against the wall with his back. 
This is caused by his grandfather was so mad after modifying the ripple force. Luckily Fei came in when his grandfather takes his gun and wanting to kill Yan Zhenin before he ruins the Yan's family. Fei blocks the gun to stop her grandfather to kill her father. Her grandfather lowered the gun while saying that his father had no idea what a terrible existence he had offended. Fei asked her grandfather, although our Yan clan is not the strongest in Dragon City it's not something that can be taken lightly. This is because her grandfather was afraid the old monster who created demonically modified ripple force is really angry, and the Yan family would be wiped out. It was pioneers who survived the initial raging zombie disaster and explored the path of superhuman at all costs. Dragon City executives have long discovered that there are more terrifying monsters in the depths of the fog. In order to deal with these monsters those old monsters have been studying how to upgrade their current martial art. Meaning the demonically modified ripple force is likely to be born like this. Because of probability of seeing the Yan family's little princess cuteness they gave opportunity for the Yan family. Otherwise the great opportunity spoiled by his son and kicks him for being like this. Fei tries to convince his grandfather not to beat his father and settle this down from talking. He replied that the level of seniors is not simple that the Yan family can contact unless the seniors forgives them. Fei made an idea to make in public apology from the old fire relayer if he was angry to prevent dragging down the Yan family. The Ripple Princess made a live stream to apologize in public like a typical influencer about the demonically modified Ripple Force. Fei the Ripple Princess made it clear that she only smeared it without researching it clearly, and it caused extremely bad influence in Dragon City. She then mentions everyone who watches her live broadcast and speaks from the bottom of her heart that she deeply realized her mistake and hopes that everyone could still give her a chance to change. Xu who has been distracted by the Ripple Princess beauty and did not think of the context of the live broadcast. He was so mad thinking that someone who is a goddess of his eyes has been scared by someone and is willing to hurt anyone who crosses the line with the Ripple Princess. Meng Kao looked at Chu like he's acting all ridiculous for a woman. Meng Kao then received a text from Fei who sincerely apologized and begs. But deep down, Meng Kao with a perverted imagination pictures Fei who looks submissive with her breasts out that constantly begs. He immediately thought of letting it go only because he pictures Fei in his wild imagination. But all of a sudden, his imagination became a remix and pictures himself as the old man Tinder who looks down on Fei as she begs. It became weirder that he went back to reality. He then checked his phone and typed his response to Fei with pride and a little sarcasm to just use money and cultivation resources to humiliate him as much as she wants. He then realized that it's a bit weird to put on the image of a mysterious and aloof senior which is the old man Tinder in his imagination. Though Meng Kao changed his mind about the response he wished to send and instantly deleted it. Meng Kao who's been busy with his phone suddenly sensed that someone is judging him with hatred. As he turns, he saw Zhu. It reminded him that Zhu Horan's family has a small company that they must prevent from using the family's power to harm his parents just in case. Back to the old man Tinder and Fei's conversation. Meng Kao replied to Fei's message that in three days, she should help him check the Great Waves Corporation. Fei was curious about what will they do in the Great Waves Corporation, but Meng Kao just responded that it would be a little troublesome. Fei wonders what it will be about but then she just accepts the offer. As Meng Kao about to leave his place, his sister mocked him that if he gets poor grades that day, she will laugh at him instead of pitying him. Meng Kao replied sarcastically that he will make sure to not let her sister's dreams come true. While Meng Kao walked his way to his school, he talks to himself with the thoughts he had for the past few days. That day the exam was finally come to test both of them for class representative. He also remembered that it has been a few days since Yi Fei Rong admitted her mistake through a live broadcast that made him also perceive that with Yi family's help or the demonic changed ripple, every day can bring him a few thousand contribution points. While Meng Kao minding his own business as he walked to school, there are students gossiping and tries their best as they prepare for their first round of exams while Meng Kao on the other hand who still talks to himself mentioned that his body's wound has also completely healed. He has exchanged most of the skills and techniques. Before Meng Kao entered the school ground, Zhu's car coincidentally dropped him off with Meng Kao being in the entrance. Zhu started to talk trash as if he was provoking Meng Kao that he is a trash that will forever remain a trash. He then attempted to offend Meng Kao by saying to not even think of leaving the garbage heap of Tian Fu Street. But Meng Kao who does not want to be bullied nor pity by someone like Zhu told him to treasure his last days as a class representative with a smirk on his face. Meng Kao then leaves with pride. On the top floor conference room of the cultivation center, there was a man on the stage making a clear announcement for the students. He states that the test is not only related to the honor of the Nine Dragon High School, but also the lives of the candidates. This man appears to be a teaching director named Ma Kingyun, Zhu Hao Ran's uncle. 
He then advised the teachers to strictly supervise the students and raise any problems in a timely manner. The teachers began to gossip about the state of their classes. One teacher with a maroon shirt mentioned that his class this year is not strong and there are only 30 who are able to outrun Bolt. As for the teacher with eyeglasses, she mentioned her class is much worse that barely able to win against the Olympic weightlifting champions on earth. It was pretty distressing for her while Lao Wang in the middle being chill and humble at the same time. They were cut off in the middle of a conversation when their co-teacher from behind proudly pointed Lao Wang's student who appears on the screen. The student appears to be Chu Feiqing of class 6 with a maximum punching strength of 249.5 kg and with his punching strength ranking in 21st place. The teachers beside Lao Wang were baffled. The woman with eyeglasses asked him if he has any secret of some special skills that his class student even won the rocket class. Lao Wang just humbly smirks with a proud heart that it's just his students working hard on their own. The next to appear on the screen is Menkeo who's also in class 6 with a maximum punching strength PF 240.9 kg and with a 100 meters run of 8.55 seconds. Both the teachers were all in awe as they saw another student of class 6 especially that it was Menkeo. The teacher who wears the maroon shirt mentioned that if Meng Keo hadn't been injured in his second years then he would have been in his rocket class and it wouldn't be Lao Wang's turn to pick up the slack. As for King Yun being with the principal Sun Da Zing, they together observed the screen and the principal was proud for its results but for King Yun. He was irritated and believes Meng Keo is a brat who dares to pick a fight with his nephew like Meng Keo is some sort of menace to the society. He was so sure that if Meng Keo hadn't been injured then he would have been dealt a long time ago. But King Yun's frown has changed into a smile to his face as soon as his nephew Zhu Hao Ran appeared on the screen. The teachers again were hyped up as they saw another student from class 6 appeared on the screen. Zhu Hao Ran on the screen with a maximum punching strength of 250.1 kg and with a 100 meters run of 8.49 seconds. The teachers were all amazed by Zhu Hao, and they expect nothing less since he is from a Zhu family. And Lao Wang in the middle acting all humble like it was all nothing but deep inside he's super proud for his students. Students in the audience whisper to each other while they communicate to avoid distracting everyone in the task. A gray-haired boy gossips about Zhu Hao who is way too strong and is ahead of Meng Keo by 20 points with first two tests. They seem to be on Meng Keo's side, but they also do not underestimate Zhu Hao. The orange-haired boy then replied that Meng Keo could get more points in the first two tests since in shooting he's a bit sure that it won't go badly. The test started with a mentor on the front who wears goggles calling out students in class 6 that had finished maximum punching strength and 100 meters dash test but only those who's in the result. He then told the specific students to queue up and head to the indoor shooting area. The first one to come forward is both Meng Keo and Zhu Hao who hated each other. As they went forward coincidentally, both gave a side eye to each other. All students came forward to the principal and teaching director to hear the instructions of the test. The mentor announces that the first team test would be Zhu Heorin and Meng Keo with the following description of the shooting test. The shooting test will last two minutes, with 10 rounds of pistol ammunition, two rounds of semi-automatic rifle ammunition, and 30 rounds of submachine gun ammunition. Students who will take the test will assemble their guns on the spot and fire them from the start of the clock. There are 10 fixed targets with 1 point, 9 moving targets with 3 points per ring, 1 gold target with 10 points per ring. The mentor told to his students to prepare for their position and started to count begin the test begin. Zhu took the gun and reload the gun immediately. Zhu was so fast that he already has two guns at the same time while there's a 1 minute and 7 seconds at the time clock. Meanwhile Meng Keo was still assembling his gun slowly and looks not panicking even though Zhu already done for assembly. Zhu started to shoot the machine gun and pistol at the same time to have a lead against Meng Keo. Everyone was so amazed at Zhu for managing to be accurate with his submachine gun. But still Meng Keo was still on assembling his gun even his classmates he's already doomed for only having 40 seconds left at the clock. As a sudden Meng Keo almost finished for assembling his gun and put the submachine gun stabilizer for more control at the gun. Principal Sun silently happy for Meng Keo for spectating being not that bad. As soon Meng Keo finished the assembly of his pistol, he immediately shoots this at the gold target. Meng Keo landed three bullets at the bull's eye at the same that made him scored for 30 points. After using the pistol everyone thought that he's going to use the submachine gun, but he used a semi-automated rifle to earn points while the other think that Meng Keo has decided to completely give up on moving targets so that he can use all his bullet on fixed targets. He started to aim at the targets. As he shoot the target he hits another long shot but he was running out of time because there's only 20 seconds left. Finally the moving target was about to start. Meng Keo uses the submachine gun for this part while Zhu used the semi-automatic rifle. 
Their teacher thinks that Meng Kao is not in a very stable state of mind. Meng Kao was the student who searched for deviant martial arts and ended up being sent to the hospital and principal's son was sleeping while observing the contenders. He woke up for a while but he still sleeps again. At last 10 secs the moving target starts to show up for much difficult part of aiming practice. Meng Kao can't hit a bull's eye ring from these moving targets that even Chu thinks that he's done to lose this exam against Chu. Meanwhile Zhu manages to hit some of the ring with his semi-automatic rifle. Just a moment he hit the ninth ring of the moving target. After using all the bullets Xu Heorin's test is already completed. Because of this their teacher was happy that Xu did well from the exam. Somehow one of the student notices that Meng Kao. She noticed that Meng Kao's eyes was closed that she thought of he's giving up from the test. He actually closes his eyes to focus himself from the moving target that has the highest point. As he opened his eye, he simultaneously shoots it immediately with his submachine gun to gain much point. Time's up shooting time is over. Some of his classmates thinking that he was mentally collapsed and they shamed to see Meng Kao hitting the golden target at the end. Zhu was starting to get excited as he assumed that Meng Kao overestimate himself. This made the mentor thinking that they are just wasting bullet after the exam ends. Xu asked him if how was it and he replied that it was pretty good after surpassing his limits. Just a moment they started to announce their point. Zhu Heorin obtained 515 marks for the shooting test and his total was 1014. Everyone expecting this score after he's being in a top class while thinking Meng Kao was miserably after him. After this they announced that Meng Kao obtained 588 marks for the shooting test that made everyone shocked that he surpassed Zhu even though he's in weapon club. Principal Sun was still sleeping. Meng Kao becomes the rank 8th in school that made Zhu unbelievable. He was mad that his score was so high even though he missed targets so many times. So, he assumes that they probably mixed their points that why his points was so high. Meng Kao tried to tease him that if didn't miss a few shots during the moving target he probably have better score. After hearing these words Zhu got mad at him with bizarre looking at his face. But someone tries to calm him up while their teacher wanting both of them to go back to their classroom. They are walking together to go back at their room but just a sudden Zhu stopped walking. He told him that he's not convinced from what happened. So, he asks Zhu if he have guts to fight with him on one-on-one. -on -one. Meng Kao replied him yes, I can with a smile at his face. 20 minutes later behind the eatery, Little Forest is a place where students resolve their personal issues because the school won't get involved in such private fight. This remind him in his past life that Zhu Heorin had the advantage and he used mere words to piss him off that made him fell into his trap but this time he will pay back from what he did from him. Meng Kao offers a fair spar since they are going to enroll into college. Zhu Heorin agreed at him that no matter win or lose their grudge will be settled after this. But deep inside of Zhu he wants to Meng Kao never appear in front of his eyes ever again after they settle this fight. Meng Kao remove his clothes to prepare himself and calling Zhu to bring it on. He stomped on the floor the resulting to break apart while he lunges at Zhu. He smiles as Meng Kao started to lunge at him. Zhu counters him from his attack while complimenting Meng Kao from being good for both Ripple and Reckless Bull. He used his elbow to attack Meng Kao but luckily. He dodges it. Meng Kao swore that this time he won't lose at him. So he simultaneously attacked Zhu Heorn, but Zhu manages to block all of his attack with his martial arts. Meng Kao started to tremble due to exhaustion, but he still wants to fight. As he strikes Zhu dodges it and used this opportunity. He saw an opening to get closer at Meng Kao. He landed a strike while saying that Meng Kao's ripple force was full of flaws. Meng Kao flew away after receiving this blow but he still manages to land at his foot. Zhu told to Meng Kao to give up because he can't never beat him. He wanted to insult Meng Kao to get mad and wanting to try his new move devastated punch that was a killer move to destroy him. Meng Kao beat him up after he dashes at him while asking what is he planning to do at him. Meng Kao wants to check his wounds. He searches Zhu's body that hoping he could see something. It turns out that Zhu actually secretly recording them to frame him up but Meng Kao knew it all this time. He took it and put in his jacket while Zhu's spine was temporarily broken and he will feel his back but he won't die. He suggested that in Dragon City's medical skills he can hire a famous doctor to perform surgery at him and wait for two years for the recovery to move around like a normal human being. This made Zhu so mad. Meng Kao removed his chances of becoming a super being, but he wants Zhu trust him because this is a god thing for both himself and Dragon City. Zhu curses him out but he can't do anything after being paralyzed. Ten minutes later everyone came up at the scene to help Zhu. His father was so mad after seeing his so beat up so badly. He wants the politics department to capture Meng Kao after committing a crime toward Zhu. The politics police are going to keep him after doing such things. His teacher told them that he doesn't act so recklessly even they have an argument. Meng Kao turns around and was about to retreat. 
Zhu's father got mad thinking he was going to resist. He replied no, I was going with the politics department and I don't want to escape from my responsibility however some evidence must be shown when everyone is here and was just scared that someone will secretly destroy it. He wants to teach her Yan to look around the surrounding that has a cloth covering the tree because he placed eight ultra clear resolution micro camera. His father confused why did he place the micro cameras. He replied that he didn't fight Zhu for personal issue indeed they sparring to become stronger together. But since sparring Zhu was rare, he recorded it for himself. Afterward he's going to analyze and see how he can improve to increase his score for the future test. Teacher Yan took the cameras to check it out what actually happened. Meng Kao asked his teacher Yan and teacher Wang after being curious of how did he injure the class representative badly with just one punch even though his legs and arms didn't have much strength due to his injury. So he demanded to check the video properly to make an answer for his curiosity. As they watched the footage, they saw Zhu Heoran seems going to do one of the forbidden and deadly technique that if you used it against a person it can kill. All of them got furious after seeing him doing this technique that probably unforgivable. Teacher Yang got so mad after seeing this footage and wanting an explanation for this such unhuman thing. Teacher Yan was so mad after he saw this kind of technique that could actually harm someone if they got hit by this. He replied that he'd use Dragon Viper Force. But Teacher Yan was so furious because he knows that this is not Dragon Viper Force. So, he threatened Xu to rethink a better reason or else his whole life would be ruined. He got terrified that he told that he used Devastated Punch at Meng Kao. This made his uncle and his teacher to got shocked after he used the devastated punch toward Meng Kao that could actually end Meng Kao's life. Xu was curious what did Zhu Heoran get that may cause this injury that could lead him to this kind of injury. Teacher Yan wants to principal son to explain this but he was asleep. So he did the explanation that in the battle of student Zuo Haoran used a killer move devastated punch. Because he haven't mastered it yet, the moment of Meng Kao strikes him first the devastated punch detonated to his own body causing his spine at his back to crack. They are so flattered after hearing that Zuo being ruthless student as their class representative. Xu was so mad that he stated he deserves it and it wasn't Meng Kao's fault that he ended up in this kind of situation. So teacher Yan asked head teacher Ma if does he have any opinion regarding to his judgment. But he insisted that this is caused by their personal spark, and it might be Meng Kao who provoked Zuo upon his assumption. But Meng Kao wanted to clarify that this is a spar not a personal fight. And that includes Zuo Hao Ran's devastated punch that he already aware, but stated this is only demonstration and Zuo told him that he's going to teach Meng Kao this technique. So, he had a thought of this case will be regarded as an accident. Head teacher Ma was speechless after he heard this. Since class representative and Meng Kao had argument he didn't expect that he will use devastated punch over something small grudge to each other. He even suggested that if he landed the devastated at Meng Kao and die from it, the school might be looked bad publicly. Head teacher Ma think that this is a checkmate for him that he has to force himself to help using his position, but if things get bigger his future career will be destroyed. Just a sudden principal son woke up. He notices Zuo was lying down for the whole time and must send immediately to hospital to avoid affecting his future. So, head teacher Ma agreed to it. He also ordered to teacher Yan and Meng Kao to stay to investigate why the accident occurred and wrote it for the report. Teacher Yan agreed into it. After this principal son goes back to the school. Teacher Yan asked if how much strength he still got after taking the morning exam. He replied that he still had almost 20 to 30 percent. Teacher Yan curious of it but he replied that he's not interested in challenge. He started to question him along the incident if he did this intentionally. He answered it that yes I did it on purpose and it was intentional. So, Teacher Yan demanded an explanation, but he only told him it was for self-defense. Teacher Yan wasn't satisfied with his answer so he assumed that Meng Kao planned this beforehand to get rid of the hidden threat. Meng Kao had thought of Teacher Yan trying to as if didn't make a plan to lure him Zuo would not have to try to attack him. So Meng Kao wanted to clear that why would he leave his fate in the hand of other with uncertainty. It's like a mad monster standing in front of you. Do you stand still and clearly determine whether it's hungry or not whether it will let you go or not? What he can do is stand behind the trap he made to see if it would jump over or not. It chooses to kill him thus it fell into the trap so he can't make it kneel from jumping over. Teacher Yan seems he understand his explanation. So he accept his explanation and wanting to leave the rest of the trouble at him while patting at Meng Kao's head because he teacher Yan wanted Meng Kao to focus on the test. After this he complimented him for being most just a sense and kind teacher. But teacher doesn't want Meng Kao to flatter him so he follow a question if Meng Kao had thought of taking military school. But he refused it while suggesting Fatty Chuxing was the wants to be a general and charged to kill the monster. This made teacher Yan got confused of refusing his offer. 
He stated that being a solder is too rough since every day you have to fight monsters, but able only to get 3% of the resources, but his style was different. He likes to slice monsters' skin, wash their vessels, slowly touch their organs, collect every drop of their blood, dismantle all the organs without damaging them and carefully store them, and lastly turn the scary monster into shining arts. So, he wishes to become such an artist. Teacher Yan got flabbergasted as he thought the high schooler nowadays looked like this. Just a moment Teacher Yan was going to ask the last question. It was about the day of the dream about Teacher Yan died at the future. He remembered that day when he got reborn, but because he doesn't want to Teacher Yan to find this out he tried to tell to Teacher Yan that dreams are always the opposite so he must wouldn't mind that. It turns out he was once Dragon City's official military flame dragon team member. When he was in the team, he had a thought of human will die sooner or later so he must be a warrior, and who die on the battlefield. Meanwhile Zuo and the medical team was carrying him to take at the nearest hospital. Zuo looked so pale and sad after being crippled from what he did that leads to this day. But his uncle trying to comfort him because the medical technique is much better compared to Earth's era. He was planning to use a monster's nerve cells, xenogenic growth hormone excite that even a crippled person can be cured in just short period of time. But in order for this Zuo was unable to participate in the exam and can't become a super being. But his uncle wanted to forget this year and must take care of himself until get cured. Because of this he got so mad and wanting to kill Meng Kao, and he's begging to his uncle to help him up to be dead. But his uncle doesn't want to be involved of this since this was so confidential because the others are keeping a watch at him. So he suggested to Zuo to call his father to use society's method which is more dangerous and better than school. He swore that he could take his revenge to Meng so he wanted to his uncle to order his father to keep Meng Kao alive. He is so desperate to see Meng Kao's death with his own eyes to suffer ten times from his pain. Meanwhile at Dragon City's finance central Bing Jong City, a woman walk getting hard time to get inside the meet Zuo CEO because she got stopped by Sio Liu for a reason Zuo CEO doesn't want to see anyone for a while. Just a moment from the telephone, Zuo CEO ordered to Sio Liu to let her in since he's done cultivating. Finally, she arrived at CEO Zuo's office. She started to cry about having concern at CEO Zuo's brother which is Lao Zhu who's been through life and death battles with him even saved his life. And now he's has gotten the crazy side effect from cultivation lying down in the hospital. Although he remembers it from the bottom of his heart so he used 20 million to buy cut from his brother's interest and benefits to able save his brother's life. This made her so mad for Lao Zhu word hard for Zuo Hao organization for 30 years and wanting to kick him with just 20 million. But he calmly replied that these few days after I'm done handling the company I'll go to the hospital and visit Lao Zhu. He understands her feeling but he can't blame her for thinking how she thought about him. So, he demands that she must go to brother Zhu because they need to act fast due to Zhu's illness won't wait. So he go for his telephone to tell that she was going to leave and send her away. Lady Zhu was eagerly mad at him, but he had to hold bad so he leaves the building immediately. He was thinking that once Lao Zhu is settled everything then he can finally dominate Zuo Hao organization and become a true king. Zio Hao has potential in the future so he must be stronger than him and that time they will work together. All of a sudden brother Ma King Yun called him. So he pick it up and asking what he needed. He got so shocked when Ma reported that Zuo Hao Ran was crippled by someone. As he heard Meng Kao did this he remembered this poor kid that lives in a rental flat. He got furious after knowing that his son's future had been ruined by Meng Kao. And now he wanted to regret Meng Cha's decision by punishing his whole family until they die. Suddenly someone came into his room rushing to report that there's bad news because the underground black workshop produced products and being reported at Dragon City Line. This made him matter after hearing this. So he demanded to handle it by his assistants to find the solution and wanting who's in the public relations department. The guy got so nervous and just a sudden another guy showed up stating that the Food Hygiene Bureau and Special Medicine Authority team has come. Along with this another person came in with a report of three bank wants to rejudge their load and they might have to find another possible loans. Another one with a guy in a mask reported that their provider black workshop is being investigated and their matter has been exposed. Lastly the guy stated that his brothers can't stop the reporters. After receiving multiple bad report he's speechless that this might the downfall for him. He can't believe that this is happening to him and wondered who's behind this. On the other side Meng Kao was staring the floor while waiting for a transport vehicle. He looked so dead inside that he almost seemed so down and tired. Just a moment Chu calls him from out of nowhere and running toward him. It turns out he noticed Meng Kao that he seems having trouble from the incident that happened on the same day. He replied that it will be alright you better just go home. While Meng Kao pushing him away to go home, Chu offers his help to call him out if he needed. Then after that Chu leave him immediately to go home. 
While Meng Kao was walking on the sidewalk he doubting of something that he uncomfortable. He was thinking of even though his dad has connection with Thunder Team he don't know what crazy things Zuo Hao Ran's father and mother will do against him. So, he had a thought of he needs to find young Master Nai. But he doubts because he was still far too weak and he must have quickly become a super being to have his own power. Just a moment the tinder pops up and notifying that under his guidance, the criminal group Hao Han organization that was involved in despicable fade and illegal restricted medicines making got destroyed. He got confused as he received another contribution without knowing who did he guided. And this is so many contribution points so this must be many people hated the Hao Han organization. Suddenly his phone vibrates from a notification. He received a text message stating senior it settled that made him shock. It turns out that Fei organization was one of the reason why this is happening. The Fei organization started to investigate at how Han organization as Tinder old man told them that this organization would trouble for them so Fei organization executed. So, he asked her so no more as into which standard. She stated that how Han organization got exposed, loan cancellation, bankrupt, debt, need to shoulder law responsibility, all sorts of media spreading it, reputation damaging, meaning they can no longer make a comeback because this is their downfall. But still old man Tinder was still confused. She explains further that if he didn't check the Hao Han organization, they wouldn't be known but as she checked them, she got shocked. She never had thought that Hao Han organization is secretly using corrupted mutated monsters blood as super beasts blood and they've committed such a huge crime. Meaningly if they didn't expose the Hao Han organization many innocent people would have get killed by this organization. She also mentioned that she know that he hate them from what happened earlier about hurting his reputation as tender old man after teaching the demon ripple technique. She apologizes and this time the super being towers people have interfered resulting that Zuo family will have debts over billion dollars and his son won't go pick a fight with his disciple which is Meng Kao ever again. Because of this he got speechless after these words. He can't believe that this happened while doubting what else they can still do. But he replied that that's all enough and end this matter here and don't spread it because he prefers to be humble. He Fei agreed at this because they can't let the Hao Han organization to continue their dirty business toward the dragon citizen. The matter had been solved by Yishi organization. But even though this happened he felt guilt and burden at his heart that make him feel weird. Meanwhile at Yishi organization. All of them taking a rest after the exposure at the Hao Han organization. Fei assumes that old man Tinder's reply never mind enough was meaning of they got forgiven by old man Tinder. Jen Nan stated that just like their grandfather assumption the old man Tinder was very kind and they are lucky to meet him to help them to expose the Hao Han organization. But still he was had a thought about this old man Tinder for some reason. Suddenly his grandfather kicks him while stating still want him to not forgive us, right? Fei asked his grandfather how was he sure about this old man Tinder. He replied that he had an old friend white ghost Han Ning Shi Wo. Lao Ning was about to retire that day but two days ago he suddenly said he got a tender senior's guidance that found a new recipe and asked for some rare material at him. So, he assumes if this tender senior and the one they offended was the same person which is the tender old man. And upon checking more he found out something. Fei understand his conclusion that this was the same person. Otherwise, Jen Nan still opposing and skeptic from this evaluation from their difference. Resulting that his father kicks him again for not being smart to think what he's saying. His grandfather mentions the demonstration video that he received from the tender old man and she replied that by looking at his uniform he's either from 3rd or ninth school and his room was so small and discorded also rental flat. Because of his granddaughter was the only person that understand his conclusion he kicks his son again. From the information he heard from Lao Ning is that tender old man had a disciple called Meng Kao that currently studying at ninth high school that lives in rental flat. His son replied that even if they're the same person this old monster with great powers but how do you know he wants to deal with the Hao Han organization? He replied after flicking his nose that it is because of you because Meng Kao and Hao Han's organization CEO was in the same class with bad relationship. So, Fei realized that all these details are connected to each other that makes sense for her. His grandfather assumes that the old man Tinder's disciple wasn't someone who can be bullied however the others like what happened to Hao Han organization. Zhen Nan finally zips his mouth and just agreed to his father what he said for its linkage. Fei asks his grandfather if the tender old man is so strong then why he still need their Yishi organization to deal with the Hao Han organization. So, he wanted to explain what was the tender old man foreshadowing about trouble that he said. It turns out the Hao Han organization was going to do something with him after he had conflict at the sea. So, he asks his these two if they could sleep when they offended the tender old man. Because of tender old man he gives Yishi organization a way out of the situation to allowing us to not worry so much about the incident. 
Because of this personality he handled it all well that leading them to successfully put the Hao Han organization into their downfall. Otherwise, their family would have been destroyed by their ignorance as a kid. Because of they had many investigations on Hao Han organization and includes Meng Kao's intent to handle the trouble he asks if this will cause tender old man to get mad. Based on his assumption that he studies on the tender old man doesn't want to hide Meng Kao's identity to spread his new martial knowledge and technique and the things that his disciple does things on his own is also counted as a training. Meaningly they still count it as friendly forces for them. Because if he don't have deep understand and feeling of Yishi Ripple there's no way he can customize it and refine into a perfect ripple technique. Therefore, he was dreaming to meet this old man Tinder to taught him one or more things. His father wants Fei to take Meng Kao to their office and get a chance to talk to him for some reason. She got shocked after hearing a ninth-year student was going for their building to have a talk to higher-ups. So he got no choice than following this order. She was going to find a perfect chance that's not obvious to get closer to Meng Kao so she can interact with him. Because of her determination his grandfather was so happy for her unlike his father who can't even differentiate things. Because of her daughter was going to take the first stage of national college exam. Her mother was going to prepare their food for dinner. And her mother was doubting for Meng Kao wasn't telling anything about his exam that made her mother think he wasn't doing well. His daughter replied don't worry mom if my brother can't get into college, you still have me and confident that she's going to be a superhuman. She imagined that she's a superhuman and under her feet was his brother apologizing for underestimating her and doubting at her from the first. But her mother scolded her for being not showing respect towards his brother. Suddenly Meng Kao came in at their house. He was thinking about the Yan group being ruthless and because of the word trouble they made a thunderous method. He also had a thought of the identity of old fire relayer needed to be used carefully to hide his disguise till the future. Because of Meng Kao's action her sister and father think that his brother didn't do well from the exam based on his expression. Finally, their mother was done preparing their food to feast with. Meng Kao was so shocked after thinking that they got a major discount after having this such feast. But his father told him that even if there's no discount for it, he also going to eat it. Meng Kao feels there's something strange that cause of this things to happen. It turns out that their business has been flourishing lately that made them to celebrate this such things. Suddenly her sister came up at him stating that he doesn't need to worry because she will be the pillar of the family soon. This made him to look a lot more anxious. Meng Kao told to his parents that he had something to say about the first stage of the national college exam and he thought he ranked around 8th or 9th in their school. He also stated that he passed and 10 days later he's going to be the regional education department for the second stage. Then his family got happy after hearing this news. But all of a sudden, they realized that their doubts had been opposed from with thoughts. But Meng Kao was so chill and confused what was with them to act like this. His family was so speechless because of his achievements that he did all this time. Her sister was assuring his brother that he really says that he got eight places in the class, but he replied I said in the school. He teased her up after while saying that her ears was already failing at her in a young age. Then she asked Meng Kao if he could actually get into college and become a superhuman too with tears in her eyes that made Meng Kao confused at her for what she's crying. She got jealous as her brother was basically can get into college and could also become a superhuman. Meaningly her dream was going to be shattered and she's be able to bully by her brother. However, his father was curious if his injuries already recovered so he asked Meng Kao if he already recovered from his injury. He explains that because of the cultivation of ripple force, genetic potions and nutritional fluid that he obtains from Elder Ning he finally recovered before the first stage of the national college exam comes, but his father that everything that he said was from the dark web. So, he replied that his father mustn't hung up on details however his father should not worry because he will be able to get into college. His father compliments him for this such huge achievement that their family may finally become rich. Her mother was so amazed for his son to be able to reach at this point all his own. So, she took a picture of Meng Kao as a remembrance for this such huge day. She took a picture of her son for looking handsome at the moment and she also stated that what's wrong with taking a picture of him. Zio Kao was so happy as he saw her mother's post about Meng Kao. It stated that she complimenting his son for barely managed to get into the top 10 in 9th high school and continued to get to work harder to get into Dragon City University. He ordered to her mother to delete his photo because he wanted to preserve some of his dignity. But his mother doesn't want to delete it because it's not about and just being proud that his son managed to this such things. Because of this she got mad at Meng Kao because she is a plum lady in market, and she's was just happy for her son to get into the top 40 in 11th high school. Meng Kao tried to call for a help at her mother being mad but even his father was so scared to her angry wife so he can't help him up. Somehow his father told him that his mother has spread the word about their company a long time ago. 
She said to everyone that he's a chairman of some major corporation that made him too embarrassed to meet their neighbors and relatives. Suddenly his mother began to blush out after 15 people already like her post in just a minute. So, she showed to them this to make the to take a look in this. Many people started to complimenting Meng Kao to reach this such achievement while other thinking if he already recovered from his injury. Because of being frustrated to be the center of attraction he wants to make a more money as soon as possible to move out because he can't stay in their neighborhood anymore. Her sister told him that he's going to have a name in their blessed heavenly garden. After hearing those words, he was so motivated that he wants to make money and to move. After dinner, his father and sister were so curious as their mother was so happy, and this was caused of her post got another 30 likes. After this Zio Kao was so happy, and started to take the remote to turn on the television. Meng Kao told them that he's going to have an appointment. He is going with a famous doctor in Feng Shui Medical Center so that he can take a look at his mom's leg and he wanted to take them together. But his parents were hesitation because this hospital was so expensive also it's famous for its first class technology. Her mother replied that she's better than before so he doesn't need to waste money for her and just take a government hospital so she can reimburse. Meng Kao tries to pursue her because the government hospitals can't provide super alloy bionic joints. This made her mother got mad because of it's too expensive, and she's been living like this for over 20 years but she can barely walk even though she's a bit slower. Meng Kao knows that her mother was worried about the expense, but although it was expensive, he can pay it off once he becomes superhuman and earn more money. So, his father support this and try to convince his wife to come with Meng Kao, and trust their son. So, they agreed to listen to their son together that made Meng Kao happy. So, she finally agreed to his son because she realized that he haven't danced with his husband all these years that made her blush. Meng Kao tries to cheer her up. He told her that once her legs treated he's going to book a hall in the biggest and most lavish hotel in the city. So that they can enjoy a candlelit also he's going to hire a band to serve as their accompaniment. And they can dance whenever they want to. After she realized that her brother was being domineering. Her inner demon self was scolded herself and stating that this is just an illusion and she refused to admit that this demon can be domineering. The next morning at the Feng Shui Medical Center, a doctor had reviewed Masai's Meng's treatment file, and mainly her injury caused of joint necrosis and nerve atrophy due to prolonged compression of both legs under rubble because of their current technology there's no problem for them. After that he checks her current condition and he demanded that she need to tell it him if she felt discomfort. Suddenly the doctor starts to focus and a green ore and vein started to appear at him. As he opens his eyes, his pupil doubled. He touches Masai's Kao foot to check the check her current condition. Meng Kao's mother said that she felt a wave of Kai running through her legs and she felt good about it. Zio Kao and Meng Kao was talking about Dr. Su Yun for being weird looking but Meng Kao scolded her because it's normal. He explains that when a spirit energy gathers in a human body, it flows through the blood vessels and nerves also it can even show up on their skin to turn into profound, complicated, and beautiful marks. This is called the spirit tattoo which is the mark of a one-star superhuman. When a superhuman reaches spirit transformation of the two-star superhuman their organs will be stimulated and they'll go through all sorts of amazing changes. Meaningly Dr. Sue is giving all he can at this moment to cure their mother's foot. But still she was confused for not sending their mother to take a scan from the MRI scanners because there are loads of machine in government hospitals. Meng Kao explains again that a three-star superhumans reach a state called spirit gathering that can enable to see through the organs and gain through understanding of their own body. At the spirit-wielding state of the four-star superhumans, one can consciously manipulate spiritual energy to produce control, stable, and precise vibrations that extend the range of the life magnetic field. Along with this they can even reject the magnetic field of the planet which lets a superhuman float. Lastly a five-star superhumans reach a state called spirit gaze, and they can use their magnetic fields to sense other people's organs, blood vessels, nerves, and bones. Since Dr. Su was a five-star superhuman he doesn't need x-ray machines or MRI scanners. After having this kind of knowledge Su Shi got amazed how superhumans are truly exciting for being so powerful. Dr. Shu reported that her condition was pretty good but no matter what it was still a 20-year-old injury and she needed some time to fully recover. Somehow about Meng Kao's condition he advises him for some treatment plan. He proposes a bone and nerve reconstruction that could help his spine injury to recover. Since this is the latest technology promoted by the Monster Research Center, they can utilize the high regenerative and growth properties of monster cell to activate the genetic potential of the human body. The newly grown bone cells and lower extremity nerves are perfectly integrated with the human body, and there is absolutely no rejection. This can help him to be able to perform heavy physical labor, and even cultivate and fight if he wanted. But his mother was hesitating because it might cost expensive, 
and Meng Kao was curious if this is dangerous because it's a top-tier technology. Dr. Su replied that no one can ensure that it's completely foolproof, but this is tested by Supernatural Tower and the army who's wounded at the battle but regain their strength to go back into battle. After being rational, Meng Kao wanted to take this treatment for himself. Somehow her mother asks about the price of this treatment plan. Dr. Su advises her that he can help them to apply a special approval for promotional plan, and they will able to get 60% discount for and the entire thing will cost around 3 million. As they heard the price, they got shocked from this such huge amount of money. Somehow the promotional is around 3 million but he's going to take 2 million from them if Meng Kao was willing to demonstrate to him the 7 dissection methods performed in reverse. Without any hesitation Meng Kao agreed immediately that made his parents and sister jaw dropped. He explains that they don't have to pay him in one lamp because the entire plan is paid in 4 different installments, which the fee for the first payment was 500,000. Meng Kao want to settle it as soon as possible to recover his spine. His mother was doubting that this was too expensive and advising him to use super alloy joints because it's much cheaper. He replied that if they don't want him to be distracted by the college entrance examination, they have to listen to him no matter what. She was surprised that from now on her legs are worth a lot of money. Since Meng Kao focused for his family, he wanted them to have a good life so he told that even a single hair from my family is priceless. Because of this they got fascinated as he was focused to his family. After a few hours they are going to leave the medical center and Dr. Su advises to take her mother on time for the treatment. Dr. Su also thanked Meng Kao for helping him to learn the seven dissection methods in performed in reverse that helps him a lot. Just a moment a tinder pops up again that he receive another contribution points for teaching citizen Su Yuan the seven dissection methods in performed in reverse. They finally leave the hospital. Just a sudden Zio Kao noticed something about the car beside her. She admires this immediately for being antique car from Earth and it called Wiling Hongguo. In this era a private car is a symbol of nobility, and there's no private car in the entire blessed heavenly garden that makes normal that Zio Kao to be fuss. Suddenly he asked his father if he wants to get superhuman car if he became superhuman but his father was so practical. But he teases his father because he need to go out and make business deals and have a good impression. So his father was admiring Mighty Dragon so much that even Meng Kao managed to break through the limits with identity as reborn human, driving a Wuling Hongguang would be too flashy. Suddenly his sister's eyes glow up after he had a though of something. She lunges at his brother and Meng Kao was so shocked as she interacts like this. It turns out she was begging to receive a gift after his father and mom helps them both. But his brother just teases her up again because he know he's just going to trick her again. Two weeks later the regional education department for the second level of undergraduate testing. Meng Kao was observing his skills and looking for possible way to earn more and upgrade his status. With more than 20,000 points he was being speculate for not having a problem for passing the college entrance exam. From out of nowhere a guy complimenting him for having a 290 kilogram force. Xu was telling to everyone that Meng Kao could actually have a punching strength much powerful and can also make a more than 300 kilogram if he don't act weak. Everyone got furious after thinking everyone that it's his max and just acting all this time. Meng Kao was getting hard time to keep his profile these few days. Suddenly some stops them from talking. Teacher Yan had been announcing them to take compose of their emotions and spirits. He told to his students that speed, strength, stamina and strategies are all very important but if they want to become a superhuman the most important thing is their spirit. He was motivating his students if they don't have the spirit of a superhuman. Then even if they're lucky enough to get power they will become a slave to power, and they're going to turn into monster. Along with these the students must be remember the flower of their spirit will bloom from their body, but it is an existence greater than their body. Without facing life and death they'll never know. Whether they are just a coward and brute strength a rascal who will bully the weak. From the flashback an image of teacher Yan splitting a monster in half after being a powerful superhuman from the future. After a moment of reminders, he called out the students to move at the regional education department. The students had begun to explore the area if there's something new. As Dragon City grew stronger, the other ruins were cleaned up so that they could be rebuilt into tall, study and large steel fortresses. But this place retained its original appearance. The government even specially hire architects and artists to solidify the ruins so that they would turn into a memory to remember those dark days. They are walking into different statue of monsters like a museum. Somehow Meng Kao becomes so serious as he remembers this scenario, when everyone dies. He swore that he will never let the demons and ghosts again invade this land that is sprinkled with the blood of his compatriot. Meng Kao and Chu was looking an image of a superhumans that helps an innocent civilians. They are admiring that someday they will be like this image. 
They keep walking and reaching the crossing memorial hall to take the cultivation exam. A presentation of people lost of their energy resources and industrial abilities. Societal order and the nation's organization were ruined. In order to survive, many of the finely dressed civilized people turned into ruffians who only cared about preying on the weak they lived the lives of savages. There was also a mysterious virus that spread among the citizens and quickly became worse and turned into a pandemic that swept through the entire city. All the people who hid deep in the forest of broken walls shuddered and asked if this is the end of the civilized dragon city. As the mysterious virus created by the zombies they also created a new antibody. Gene shakes will be unlocked. Because of this the humans will be able to absorb spirit energy directly and start the super being path. Chu was so amazed when he saw Lei Zong Kao. The next was the riches from the dragon city Yunfei Dian. Meng Kao realizes how much depression in these dark hour happened and if their ancestors had created a blood path through killing monsters. He just realized how useless was he even he got tender for not doing this such things. After a few moments of roaming they decided to continue advancing to the upper floor to move forward. They finally reached the second decade after coming to the other world. This time was the hero's era. Even though they are facing new monsters that are ten times stronger than zombies they both have to work in order to protect Dragon City. At this time Dragon City people is no longer the same confused and weak ones. Somehow Chu got mad while punching Meng Kao stating that the earthlings are definitely the most ruthless and cruel but also the strongest presence, and they only have to qualify to become one of the superhumans. He teases Chu if he's patting his shoulder or trying to take a revenge after being beaten so bad a few days ago. Chu actually acting like this after Meng Kao beats his score from the exam that they took earlier. Since Chu didn't answer him so he assumes that he was right that he's acting like this since that day. The third decade, Dragon City had to start the expedition and discovery era. Martial art cultivation and spirit energy technology was getting more and more proficiency. Red Dragon Army's combat ability is higher than any Earth's army. Down deeper at Dragon City they will discover ancient ruins and built super being tower above the ruins. All sorts of new martial arts, technology, new rune, new virus, new antibody, new monsters and a whole new world was waiting for them to explore and discover. Chu notices something from the flag beside them. This flag is the only district level high school in their forest tiger region. They heard that the parent of the students in construction high school started out as four-star superstars that made them look so lower class students. Chu got confused that the four-star superhumans are divided into stars that made Meng Kao look confused at him. So, he replied that don't you go to deep web forums. So, Meng Kao explains how does stars and superhuman work. The transcendent is divided into nine levels. One star to three stars is earth realm. Four stars to six stars is heaven realm. And lastly seven stars to nine star is deity realm which has common knowledge in the deep web. Chu's mother warns him that deep web is full of unhealthy information so he didn't go for it anymore. Just a sudden teacher Yan snaps him to shut their mouth because the event was about to start. A man in a huge monitor calls out the all students for being all outstanding people in Tiger Forest region. They are also the future hope of Tiger Forest region. He wanted to acknowledge the students that the road to superhuman is not just a road to prosperity and wealth. This is a road of their guardianship and this is related to the life and death of thousands of compatriots and even the rise and fall of the Dragon City. This means that must have felt a lot during the way here from this moment and he wanted every to calm down and think about this seriously. He demanded every student to find every answer from their question otherwise the mental test was too impossible to pass. Just a moment teacher Yan came up while pushing a cart that has activator in it. This was a special brain cell activator fluid that develops the brain and allows it to receive more information from outside so they must take this and start the test in one hour. He wanted everyone to rest at their place and for the next hour they are going to introduce the best undergraduate programs at university. Just a few moments Ning Zushi the president of the student council for the environmental sciences and the resource recovery faculty at Dragon City Agricultural University and she was going to introduce the best major of Dragon City Agricultural University resource science. Meng Kao was confused as Zushi came in. Ning Zushi started to explain that the resources are the most important thing in the development of a civilian and it is special from the case for Dragon City regardless of their survival and development so they need to excavate resources, use them and develop them, such as planting etherealized plants, modulating biochemical beasts, gathering active minerals. In truth the direction of their worker isn't as simple as being harvester because there is no limit to the future if they go in any direction to the top. Meng Kao was confused as they decide to publicize their majors at this moment because they are making everyone restless and can't calm down at all. The guy told him that this is an old tradition of the mental test but there are real money 
and material that can stimuli someone which can lead to path of transcendence. Meaningly this is also part of the testing their mental stability. So Meng Kao assumes that this is true that they are all very good at mental training. The guy beside him was looking for someone from the city's top two high schools which is number one and number two. The students from the ninth high school was wanting to get into Engineering University's machinery course in the future when Dragon City conquers the other world. Xu trying to convince Meng Kao to come with him from the military school and join the Heroic Spirit course and because of their strength and moral integrity they are definitely able to summon at least 100 heroic spirits. Meng Kao doesn't want to be confident about this because he was planning to climb up to the undergraduate line fist and the Heroic Spirit department is the ace course of the military school. Because of this Meng Kao was thinking of taking the martial art course or agricultural university's resource recovery course. However Meng Kao notices something around the students of construction high school from what are they doing. It turns out that this is also another old rule. After the mental test the region will distribute the cultivation resources for the final push to each school based ranking. That means the competition between high schools is very intense because of the show-off by the ace of each high school to break the spirits of others. Suddenly Jin Jinping from Construction High School was calling out Meng Kao disrespectfully. Meng Kao feels so anxious as someone tries to call him out from out of nowhere. Jiang Lei tried to defend Meng Kao from him because of his unnecessary actions that he made publicly from the school. Jin Jinping recognized him as he heard of Zhang Lei training with the secret art Thunder Rapier was good and even managed to injure the weakest student from construction high so he demand to compare their spirit test score. So, Zhang Lei wasn't scared of him and he's up for comparing his spirit score with Jin Jinping. He replied to him sure then I'll wait and see the strength so-called main point of that area. After saying these words Jin Jinping takes his position while holding his fist. Because of this Zhang Lei retreated because of how powerful Jin Jinping was that even Chu tried to hold his back. Jiang Lei was so frightened as he think he will die from this after Jin Jinping tried to scare him. Because of this he felt embarrassed after having a thought he's going to die. Meng Kao sighed and came forward to insult him for blatantly showing their power are arrogant but they at least think this is an honorable way. So, Meng Kao tries to provoke him up to come at him to find out what was he looking for. He came close at his face to trigger him up but Meng Kao gazed at him calmly while Jin Jinping recognized him from being disciple by name. Jin Jinping looked so furious at him. But Meng Kao suddenly slaps him even though Jin was from construction high school. He told him that Meng Kao wasn't used to fight with only gay. And this makes everyone so shocked for disrespecting in construction high school student. Jin Jinping can't believe that Meng Kao manages to ignore his gifts while unleashing 70% of killing intent. Just a moment a student came into action to notify Jin Jinping that Zushi was about to coming over. So Jin Jinping immediately pull himself together to get ready to meet Zushi. Then they immediately leave to go back and listen to the agricultural explanations given by senior sister Nei. Zhang Lei thinking that Meng Kao was triggered by Jin Jinping and trying to calm him up. But he didn't even budge even though Jin Jinping tries to provoke him. Just a moment Zushi greeted Meng Kao. Everyone was so speechless and can't believe that one of the construction high students just got ignored by the Zushi for a ninth schooler. Because of this he felt heartbroken for assuming that Meng Kao and Zushi was dating. His ego got hit so hard. Meng Kao asked Zushi if what was she doing here all by herself. It turns out that she was looking for Meng Kao for the district's spirit test. Somehow, she observes Meng Kao's clothes always the same. She realized that Meng Kao weren't dressing like this to pretend to be weak so that he can show off later. Along this she told him that his nine high school's uniform only he wear it badly. Jin Jinping was trying to take Zushi's attention. But she just smiled at him while asking if he has any business with her. Because of this he got broken again for the second time for being rejected twice in a row. Meng Kao was still confused as Zushi was looking for him all this time. She stated that about filling up his course choice he'll definitely try to get admitted into their agricultural rescue course, and she's willing to help him out with some information. So she offers him to eat with her so she can pass the information during that time then introduce a few seniors for him. Somehow Chu was so jealous at Meng Kao for having interaction with such a famous people. But Meng Kao wasn't decided yet whether or not he's going to try to get admitted into agricultural resource course. This makes Zushi so shocked after hearing this. She was curious of what course does Meng Kao going to take and without choosing their course there's nothing else anymore. While they are talking someone calls for Meng Kao again that made everyone to get startled again. It turns out that Fei Yan was the ripple princess calling for him. Zushi was so curious how does she knows Meng Kao even though they not meet yet. She sudden hold Meng Kao's hand that made everyone shocked and mad at him for being lucky. But Meng Kao insisted that she can't do this in broad daylight. Everyone was so furious at Meng Kao. 
She reminds him that in the video, he's the one practiced the demonic change ripple. She thanked him and for the tender old man for unselfish contribution toward Yishi organization. But Meng Kao noticed that she holds his hand like she's trying to confirm his identity. Somehow the only problem he was concerned was she's touching his hand in publicly that made him his center of attraction. Jin Zhenpeng crying as he got rejected by the most known and famous from the Dragon City even though he's a construction student. Zushi simply trying to push her away from Meng Kao but Fei Yan doesn't want to leave yet. Fei Yan was going to pass some information to Meng Kao with his situation because he's more suitable for their Dragon Great Martial Art course. Zushi was curious if they know each other. Last year Meng Kao got injured when he had a cultivation accident. Her father was creating the Ishii Ripple 2.0 version but his wounds is complicated so they used to test out to achieve the agreement of working together. Then she winks at Meng Kao to confirm that this was real. Meng Kao nod at her to confirm that this was true. On the other side Fei Yan's plan to help Meng Kao to hide his strength source was succeed. Somehow Zushi told her that even they know each other. This doesn't mean Meng Kao should also try to admit into Dragon Great Martial Art Course. Because she knows that Meng Kao really wants to cultivate martial arts and Ning's organization also had martial art course. But she just laughs at her because of the agricultural martial art course. Because of having a thought that she might underestimating their agricultural martial arts so she introduced their beast soul flow battle mode which part of it is worse than dragon great martial art course super kill flow. Because of this the two senior sisters started to fighting for Meng Kao in order to take him from their cultivation. Meng Kao tries to calm them up and demanding to wait for the spirit test and then start slowly chat. But he just got scolded by the two senior sisters for wanting who he going to choose. Everyone looking at him for thinking he took the two of the senior sisters. After an hour everyone was being called from the monitor for announcing that the retest will begin about three minutes. Jin Jinping called everyone from his class to remember Meng Kao's name. He was planning to do malicious after being heartbroken, and they want to see what he was capable of. The retest had begun and everyone was called out. They ordered the students to stand in the circle that has their information. Everyone needs to sit down and relax in order to enter into deep meditation state. One minute later, standing up, walking around or those who speak will be treated as the breaking the rules. The first time will be a warning but the second time they will be directly kicked out and Meng Kao began to start with dead wood stance. Meng Kao take a deep breath to do the meditation, but he notices a metal bar that showed up apparently. Suddenly it turns into something. He had a thought that this is the super brain but looked different. A mask was about to go at his face and since it's tied with gene martial art, spirit technology as Dragon City's three pillars then he got problem into this. The must started to fit at his face to start the retest. The simulation had begun and a woman was getting eaten by a monster from this situation. Beside him was a dying person who got eaten by the rat monsters. The teacher was observing everyone's progress from the outside and they actually noticed the difference of the last year's spirit was different at this moment. They had 120% pain and fear sense, although this is Red Dragon Army Elite Special Soldier Standard. They made this because this will be hard for them when they deployed if they face a weaker monster since the war was upgraded. Xiaohe High School 5,501,342 student Ren Fei with spirit index is lower than 40%. When a student reaches lower than 30% the warning will be triggered to be on alert line for more than 60 seconds. Graded as spirit test fail forcefully exit virtual exam when they can't hold it anymore. Many students had begun to forcefully exit it from the virtual exam because they can't handle it anymore. Many students began to struggle because of its high level unlike the last year. However, Jin Jinping manages to fight this such powerful monster because he already trained to as hard as steel. From out of nowhere the teacher from construction high school stating that this was nothing from their students. One of his teachers noticed the abnormality from Meng Kao's status window. She assumes that Meng Kao's data was quite weird. Even though the retest manager can't believe of what she saw from Meng Kao's data. Because of what he did he managed to be concluded from the top 10 ants he was curious if Meng Kao eat the monster brains while growing up. Meng Kao was so relaxed to fight this monster while saying that this monster supposed to be scary. Because of how he experiences he had a thought of many participants might be already pee at their pants after getting scared. Meng Kao thinks this monster looks normal for him. He also compliments the monster's eye for being nice looking. So, he assumes this kind of monster really scares some people from their retest. However, another same monster come into the action that lunges at him to attack Meng Kao. Somehow Meng Kao thinking that this test just like a game and there's might be a possible items to loot. Meng Kao used the other monster to lunges at the other one that leaves a damage into its body. Meng Kao landed at the monster's back and run away from the situation to avoid being stalked from the situation. Meng Kao jumps on a sword that sticked from one of the dog. 
Luckily he asked Teacher Yan to teach him a sword skill that allowing him to learn a few moves of 100 war sword skill evolution change. The monster was so mad at him with a menace looking at its eyes. All the monsters already take attention at him with menace looking to their eyes. But Meng Kao was so determined to this monsters to come at him so he can use of what he practices from his sword skill. The dog hound's monster started to lunges at him to make a movement. But Meng Kao kill it all easily and without an ease using the sword that he picked up earlier. Unfortunately, the monsters manage to land some attack at him that gives him some wounds. One of the monster attack him from behind and he got no idea when does this one came from his back. But luckily because of Meng Kao's current skill he manages to kill this dog hound easily. The dog hound monsters are keep attacking on him but Meng Kao doesn't get tired and he just keeps killing all these monsters. After killing some of this he wants a better one to practice with since they fought the small ones. He uses the 100 war sword skill from one of the monsters. But unfortunately Hit got hit by the monster's tail and lets to throw away. Suddenly of this he died again from the game. Everyone got shocked as Meng Kao died from the simulation and even his teachers pitied on him. However the observer notices something from his monitor, that's something abnormal about his status. As the monster turned around it got shocked as it saw Meng Kao revived after being be killed from its attack. After being revived he lunges at the monster again with the 100 war sword skill. Unluckily the monster eats him up and died again. Just a moment he got revived again behind the monster again. The monster was so confused how he was still alive even though he killed him twice in a row. Meng Kao teases him up while saying we meet again. Just a sudden the monster starts to attack again for the third time but Meng Kao used the 100 war sword skill again. His teachers can't believe that Meng Kao doesn't seem to have a high skill battle skill also he got a strong mental spirit along with his battle skill. Teacher Yan was so flabbergasted as he saw Meng Kao using this test to practice his unverified skills that Teacher Yan thought he's not scared of failing the test. Some teacher from the other school was so flattered as they saw Meng Kao died so many times yet. However, one of the teacher notices Meng Kao's 100 war sword skill was quite interesting. The monster was be killed by Meng Kao with an unexpected battle skill that he actually made slash through the monster. He was exhausted after battling this monster. Tinder showed up stating the 100 war sword skill had been spread among the elite citizens of future Dragon City teacher and student. Somehow, he manages to increase his overall combat ability that made him earn a lot of contribution points. The test wasn't done yet so he was thinking what he can do after he mostly perfect the 100 war sword skill. As he turns his head, he remembers that the spirit test must suit Monster Research Center's data. Along with this he realized that the virtual monster's organ was the same as the real monster's. So he smiled after realizing this exam will be interesting for him even though this is just a test. So he picked up the sword that he had because the war will be upgraded soon and he only have limited time. He decided to use the monster to increase his novice rank harvest technique to its perfect rank. He felt replenished after he took the monster's organs for harvesting in order to upgrade his novice rank harvest technique. After this he just look at the monster and he's about to upgrade. He had a thought that this place is like a treasure place for him to train his novice rank harvest technique. From out of nowhere he heard something coming from behind him so he turns around. When he turned around he saw a rumble coming toward his location where he killed the monster. It turns out multiple different monsters coming for him. This was the second wave from the exam and he need to fight these monsters to get into the next stage. He was confident to fight these monsters to upgrade his proficiency rate so he can be a lot stronger than before. Everyone was so speechless as they saw Meng Kao from 9th high school manages to reach this level. They are looking at Teacher Yan because they thought he did this to Meng Kao but in his though he had nothing to do with it. There are 5 minutes and 12 seconds left. Time's running up. As the time is up the exam manager announced that those who have not been eliminated passed the test but the remaining time is for individual challenges which will increase in difficulty so she advised to exit at their own discretion. Shu removes the mask to exit the exam for its discretion. He goes for the monitor where their score stated with their associated ranks. He was so happy as he saw his name was one of the list who passed the test. When he's about to call Meng Kao, he saw him still on the exam and still continuing the exam. Somehow, he got curious as he saw Meng Kao smiling lewdly. Lei also saw Meng Kao smiling even though it's not possible. Somehow some students from their class admiring Chu after he managed to get into the top 500 in the whole region of overall score. Chu responded at him that he didn't train that much and he remembered the two seniors competing for Meng Kao. So he pasted Meng Kao's face on the monster's head. Because of this he instant overcome with fury so he got angry that he immediately rushed forward and punched the monsters. Just a sudden someone called Chu's name at his back. It turns out that Meng Kao stopped playing because there were so many monsters that he can't be done. They got confused as Meng Kao called this exam as a game. 
Meng Kao decided to check his supernatural rankings. They got shocked as they saw Meng Kao ranks 21st from the overall scores that made his classmates so shocked. Lei had thought from those construction school who uses the virtual reality training has no match from Meng Kao. On the other side Jin Jinping got mad and he smashed the floor from the cultivation. He was so mad that he even so ashamed for himself. It turns out that Jin Jinping failed from the exam and a guy teases him for being a failure. This was Liu Hai from the construction school which one of the top students. He stated that he had a high hopes from Jin Jinping, but he didn't expect that his mental strength was so weak meaningly the resources that he used are just waste. But Jin Jinping this caused by someone. Another student approaches them while saying that Meng Kao manages to get in top 30 that's why no wonder Jin Jinping couldn't scare him. Because of this Liu Hai got his interest at him for having another troublesome from their school. So, they decided to take a look at Meng Kao. From out of nowhere Chu and his classmate was so furious while asking what was his relation toward the Ripple Princess and how did he got to know Zushi from the University of Agriculture. Because of this he became the public enemy after having a connection at the two senior sisters. Meng Kao explains he wanted to help everyone and asked the two senior sisters for the internal information of Agricultural University and Martial Arts University. He suddenly acts pitifully and asking everyone if he deserve it. Everyone pitied him after he act like this. Meanwhile Liu Hai and Jin Jinping was walking toward the Meng Kao's position to take a look at him. Because of the attraction of some students Meng Kao notices both of them. So, he greeted Jin Jinping because he had something to tell at him. Meng Kao approaches Jin Jinping while holding his hand to apologize about the misunderstanding that they had all throughout. He also added that it's only natural to have a little friction to be more competitive. He wanted to thank Jin Jinping because of him he strengthened his mental that made him to reach at this point. Jin Jinping started to blush out after having a feeling of embarrassment. Everyone from 9th class approves on what Meng Kao's doing in order to have communication toward the construction students. Some students who see what Meng Kao doing likes his attitude that almost wanting to unite with them along with this Meng Kao could also receive another contribution points after this. All of a sudden the two senior sister came up again and inviting him to eat with them while Fei Yan greeted him for scoring so well for the mental strength test. Unluckily Jin Jinping was around him that fall into a bad timing again. Meng Kao was so done with these two senior sisters after being so good at making people hate him that also affecting their unity. On the other hand, Liu Hai from Construction High School introduced himself toward Meng Kao. Meng Kao got confused after this guy introducing himself from out of nowhere. So, he also introduced himself as 9th High School Meng Kao and made a shake hand with Liu Hai. He stated that from this day Meng Kao's name will be known in Tiger Forest region. He was hoping that Meng Kao be able to get a good result during his national college examination. And if that happens, they have a chance to meet again. Meng Kao got excited because he become interested at Liu Hai. He also hoping that they do the same like what they want to Meng Kao as the construction high school students. The two senior sister drags him away from these students to have a talk with him. But while being dragged down he keeps talking about he don't like putting up a show to humiliate other and just like contributing on society. While being dragged away by the senior sister he yelled peace. Because of this Jin Jinping whispered that Meng Kao was arrogant so he asked what they should they do about him. He responded Jin Jinping with if you know the principles of competition and unity like he does you might be able to achieve great things. After Jin Jinping heard these words he felt ashamed because of failing the first exam. Liu Hai looked at him with menace looking that made him Jin Jinping felt uncomfortable. Liu Hai told him if Jin Jinping's mindset wasn't like Meng Kao then he can attack him if he wants to but he doesn't want to be involved. He made a bet of one buck that if he throws Jin Jinping while covered with armor and Meng Kao barehanded into the fog. He was sure Jin Jinping was the one who going to die from this situation even though he had a huge advantage. After hearing those words, he got startled that one of the highest students of construction high school had this kind of speculation toward Meng Kao. Meanwhile after Meng Kao dragged down, he demanded to two senior sister not to go for a dinner that made both of them curious of the reason. He explains that they are too pretty and if they go out for a dinner with them, he was afraid that his classmates going to kill him because of jealous. When they heard this, they looked to each other. So they made a lot more cuter expression to tease him up while asking do he still want the inside the information that they prepared for him. Meng Kao had no choice than agreeing so they moved forward into it. Ten days before the college entrance exam he distributed the inside information for everyone to help them up. Seven days before the college entrance exam the two senior sister teaching the students from 9th high school for important details regarding the examination. Three days before the college entrance exam they fight Meng Kao as the part of the examination to try their fighting skill but can't win even though they outnumbered Meng Kao. 
Using the Tinder Man Kao used some contribution points to heal his hidden injury during the training. In his life he didn't experience this but it turns out that before the college entrance exams there is a centralized management of detention. Because of this he miss his bed so much. Suddenly a special alert woke all the students. The students started to panic as they don't have any idea of what is happening just a sudden. When Meng Kao peeked at the window, he saw a catastrophe about to happen outside the cultivation. The catastrophe will be exactly going to land at the cultivation. Meng Kao can't remember some details from this because in his previous life he was in coma in the hospital when this day came. Meaningly he had no memory of this monster invasion that going to happen inside the cultivation. Thunder keeps up roaring on the top of the cultivation. Just a moment a tentacle like coming out from every hole of ongoing catastrophe. It spawned a monster that has multiple eyes on its body that could ready to attack the building anytime. They know this monster as the demonic air ripping eye which is one of the powerful monsters that they've discovered. Everyone running away for the safety. Meng Kao knows this beast for being skilled in mind attacks on multiple targets while running Chu suggested that this demonic air ripping eyes aren't fast also their tentacle are also weak. Every student started to cry when they don't know what to do and there's no superhuman coming to kill the super beast. Meng Kao advises them to focus and calm their breathing while entering into a sitting stance and meditate. A moment later a powerful wind came across them. It turns out that the armored airships arrived at their location to fight demonic air ripping eye. The airship started to shoot the monster's eye simultaneously. While the demonic air ripping eye was distracted, the superhumans began to show up to help the airship. One of the superhuman with a jetpack starts to lunge at the demonic air ripping eye with full force. He didn't hesitate to move forward at this monster so he keeps pushing himself to come closer. He charges his weapon to attack the demonic air ripping eye without any hesitation from his actions. As he landed a blow, the demonic air ripping eye began to pop out because of his powerful attack that even this super beast can't handle his powerful attack. On the other side a woman with a sniper specialty was aiming one of the demonic air ripping eye. She charges his gun while aiming at this monster. As she shoot the demonic air ripping eye blown up with just a one shot and killing the super beast without any problem. Shu was so hyped up and cheering them up to finish every one of the demonic air ripping eye. Behind him Meng Kao was looking at him speechless as he tried to cheer the superhumans. Just as sudden a woman points something about one of the airships. It turns out that one of the armored airships had been attacked by the demonic air ripping eye. The demonic air ripping eye tangled from the airship. Because of this the airship loses its balance so they can't control the airship anymore. Unfortunately, the airship landed on the cultivation that resulting to damage the building. The students had been burst out crying to think the steel gods had fallen and there's no possible way that the steel god be defeated. Meng Kao assumes that the collapse of faith has hit the ship so hard and because of the demonic air ripping eye mind control, everyone's brainwaves are connected as one. Since Meng Kao has strong mental strength, he can't easily be affected by the brainwaves that the demonic air ripping eye made. By the fear of the students' brainwaves is contagious like a virus. And if it continues there a huge possibility that they all collapse so they must stabilize their mental index and find a way to boost their morals. All of a sudden war song played and because of this Meng Kao recognized this as the one that will stabilize the student's mind. Everyone started to sing the war song that the speaker used to play with it to stabilize their thoughts. Every student participated to sing the song to avoid collapsing from the demonic air ripping eye. Because of stabilizing their mind they managed to neutralize the mind controlling effect of the demonic air ripping eye. So, they continue singing until they manage to defuse the demonic air ripping eye. The city had been attacked by the monsters and even a battle bug started to lurk. Luckily someone the superhuman being was ready to fight back in order to protect the city. A guy throws his spear from the demon battle bug to kill the monster instantly. Because of the distraction he didn't notice the monsters was about to attack him from behind him. It turns out that someone was already watching his back and shoots the monster that going attack his back. The monster starting to decreasing after being be killed by the superhuman one by one. Two superhuman was holding the monsters that trying to come inside the cultivation. Another superhuman with a red costume was ready to slam her sword. She slams her sword that made a powerful blast to clear the monsters in front of her. However the building started to preparing some of the defense machine to fight back the demonic air ripping eye. It shoots the demonic air ripping eye and made a powerful blast. Somehow the students still singing their war song to stabilize and motivate the whole squad. Because of the war song's side effect each spirit stats increase and become over 120%. While everyone was still singing the war cry someone asks, what are they doing? This guy was Teacher Yan wearing his superhuman gear to kill some of the monsters. Chu was so happy to think that Teacher Yan was going to help them to leave the area. But Teacher Yan told to everyone to go back before the daylight because no one is allowed to leave the school. 
Some of the students want to oppose this because the survival minister promulgate rule was once encountered a monster one should risk their lives to fight and protect and help out. From out of nowhere Principal Yan showed up too and he understand what does students feel toward this. For survival each of them has to sacrifice, but the sacrifice needs to be worth it. Means each human has blood to flow with their body, and each blood should exchange for something of the same value. So, Chu asks Principal Sun of a way to go out and kill all the monster all by themselves. Principal Sun replied that they already old and those who are injured, cripple, each drop of blood drains its fine even if they die. He likened the students just like 8 to 9 o'clock sun but also the future in hope of Dragon City. Principal Sun advises them if they are stubborn and want to go out, they won't stop them somehow the students who after him will pick their weapon and going to kill all the monster. When Chu was going to answer this, Principal Sun transforms into a bulky old man and he called his super being heavy cannon Sun Da Seng. As he saw Principal transform into this form he got an idea that every who dares to get hit by heavy cannon will an instant death. Principal Sun Da Zing introduced himself as he joined the army at 17 years old and became a solder at 40 years old along with this manages to kill a thousands of zombies and monsters. He tries to motivate Chu that in every scar at his body is a sign of qualification to either go and die because everyone will eventually contribute everything to Dragon City. Chu Ching realized that Principal Sun said to him so he started to doubt to fight with Principal Sun. He commanded the every students to stay and trust everything to the superhuman being that they will protect the city. After that they going to fight for the qualification to die reluctantly. Principal Sun and Teacher Yan starts to move to kill the monsters that scatter around the cultivation to buy some time for the student. Meng Kao remembered something from his past. From his previous life Principal War Hero Sun Da Zing died from a sneak attack by crack space demon eyes and dragged to the sky and ending up badly injured. Meng Kao immediately called for Principal Sun to tell something about some information about this. This made Principal Sun took his attention. So Principal Sun Da Zing asked him of what he wants. Meng Kao gives him information that he took from browsing in a forum that someone had saw someone bragging that he had discovered the crack space demon eye evolution. Because of this evolution it can use its tentacles to wrap a person and bring into the sky. So, he advises Principal to be careful of attacks that coming from above. Principal Sun Da Zing replied that he's going take it on his note and he ordered to Meng Kao to take everyone to their safety. Both Teacher Yan and Principal Sun Da Zing continued to move forward to help the others. Because of what Meng Kao did, he received another 199 contribution points after hero citizen Sun Da Zing took heed of his advice, and survival chances had increased. He noticed specification of an hero which is in higher rank than elite citizens. This made him curious after Principal Sun Da Zing's identity to be able to obtain the qualification to be called as hero. Shu approaches Meng Kao if what they need to do at this moment after Teacher Yan and Principal Sun starts to leave them. He responded that they are going back to the training room and obtain the qualification to die. Shu and some of his classmates made a confusion at their face for what does Meng Kao really going to do. But they trust Meng Kao so they come along with him in order to be stronger than before. Inside the training room, Meng Kao and his classmates are fighting to each other to train them up while the other superhuman being are buying time for them to fight the monster outside the cultivation. Meng Kao finishes everyone to spar with him, but he still calls everyone to try again to improve themselves to strengthen at this moment. But most of his classmates are so beat down that making them wanting to take a break. Because of this he teases Chu Ching for being scared of a little pain. But as usual Chu told him that he's just tired and wanting some rest meanwhile thinking of a way to defeat Meng Kao. That made Meng Kao decided to let him for a while. And he got happy that Chu got so motivated after this. While both of them watching the other student to train themselves, Chu told to Meng Kao that he's worried about his family. But Meng Kao replied him that he's not the only one feel this also the others. They are only just a normal high schooler so even if they go, they have no idea what could they could change even sacrificing themselves. Meaningly the only way they can do currently is to work hard and became stronger to surpass this such things. On the other side at the Tianfu city where Meng Kao lives. The Red Dragon Army are trying to protect them from the scattered monsters and because of this they need more manpower so they call everyone to cooperate with Red Dragon Army. Just a sudden a minotaur attacks them that they ended up dead and some of the crab machine got destroyed. Meanwhile Meng Kao's father was on the radio hearing this things and sudden cut the line on the other side. His father advises Zai Okao to follow them and never get to separate from them while evacuating to the Fuzai Road shelter. Zai Okao's grandmother took the responsibility for her to take care while Yishan could focus to his wife to take care of. Everyone starts to evacuate to the Fuzai shelter to avoid getting harmed from the battlefield. Unexpectedly a purple light glows up at the alley that they crossing that leads to Fuzai Road shelter. 
It turns out that this light was a portal of the beast monsters and a rhino-like creature appeared from this. Time to time they spawned and some civilians was unfortunately chased by these monsters. Ishan calls everyone from his family to come closer at him to avoid getting separated by the crowd. Her grandmother was so confident that she's going to protect Zio Kao so he mustn't worry about them. All of a sudden, these monsters appeared in front of them that make them startled as they saw the monster not alone. Both of them was so shocked that made them startled. Luckily Zio Kao saw a sword that pierced from one of the monster that Red Dragon Army fought before. She didn't hesitate to lunges at the top of the monster to save her parents and he charges her sword. Zio Kao stabs the monster's head to hit its brain since it was most vulnerable part of this monster. After piercing on the other one he jumps on the other one to attack it before it reaches her parents. She used the momentum of these monster and slashes to the other one to make her attack spread wisely. After that she jumps away from the monster and landed with a hero posture. As she tries to be proud of herself killing these monster, she didn't notice that there's still another one behind the smoke. Everyone starts to panic to call out Zio Kao's attention to respond the monster behind her. The monster opens its mouth and ready to eat her up. When she turns around, she saw the monster gnarly going to attack her. Luckily, she dodges it and she almost hit by its attack. Unfortunately, she loses her balance after dodging a sudden attack. Because of the shock, she can't stand anymore while having a thought that she's just trying her best to save her parents but now she can't even stand still. She starts to get anxious as she thinks she's going to die and losing hope. Her parents want to save her but they can't do anything since they were too far from her. As the monster dashes toward her, a huge blast happens into the monster's face. Her eyes are so wide open after thinking that this is her last moment. It turns out her grandmother shoots a powerful weapon. She teases everyone that she's not only for a show because she had a skill to fight also. She calls Big Tooth to attack this huge monster and even though at old age she didn't hesitate to fight this kind of monster. Big Tooth tries to get closer from the monster while the grandma shooting its gun. After passing through them the monster started to make an unusual turn. Because of this the grandma got curious why this monster was going on the opposite direction. It turns out that it turns around towards Zio Kao to attack her again while she's still in her position. So her grandmother ordered Big Tooth to save Zio Kao while she's going to intercept the demonic halberd pig. She jumps away from Big Tooth to split their position to save Zio Kao while taking the contact from the halberd pig. She jumps at the top of the halberd pig to shoot its head to make a final blow. Meanwhile Big Tooth saves Zio Kao and drag away from the explosion. Zio Kao panics at her grandmother to think that she's dead. When the fogs fade away they saw her grandmother laying on the dead body of halberd pig. She rushes her grandmother to check her up immediately while Big Tooth came back to its normal form also worried for the grand. Just a sudden her grandmother made a thumbs up while saying this is just a piece of cake. Because of this she got happy to think her grandmother was fine. But everything turns upside down as she realized when the fog's fully gone. She saw the monster blood dripping with a hole on its head. While her grandmother was on top of its horn and stabbed by it but her grandmother still smiles. She began to cry as she saw her grandmother at this position. After an hour of battle against the monsters, the city had been suppressed the monsters from the city and Meng Kao started to go back home. He rushes to go back to their house while crossing dead monsters and being harvested by the citizen of their city. As he got home he checked his parents' condition if they are all right. His other responded that they are all good and took a good harvest in their region with a depressed looking at their face. He also heard that someone had breakthrough in the battle and became a broken star superhuman. Somehow Meng Kao got feel anxious so he immediate asked about his sister if there's something wrong with her, as his father going to tell the truth. Meng Kao rushes toward his sister to check her up since he knows that she could be the one who will the demon queen if he don't help her. He knocks at her door rapidly because of the worried of being so down for herself. As he opens the door, he saw his sister covered from its blanket and shivering. He sits beside her to comfort her then Zio Kao calls for Meng Kao. Zio Kao was crying while thinking he's too horrible after being so weak. She tried to save her parents but unfortunately she didn't manage to save her Granny Wang from the battle. And right now she's going to die and their grandmother going to turn into a zombie. After hearing those words Meng Kao had been speechless and startled. Zio Kao repeatedly saying that their grandmother was going to die and going to turn as zombie. But Meng Kao wanted her to tell everything exactly what was going on. She cried so hard at Meng Kao's chest to lend out her sadness. So she told everything to Meng Kao what was happened on that night. Zio Kao blaming herself that it was her fault for being too weak that made her cause someone to die because of her. She keeps telling to herself that she was too weak. However Meng Kao pulls her to tell that their grandmother sacrificed her life heroically to protect their hometown. Then he comforts her that if their grandmother was still alive, 
she wouldn't want to see her be like this. Zio Kao swore that she's going to get stronger and much stronger so that this tragedy won't ever happen again. Meng Kao advises her that if her heart was strong then she will be truly strong otherwise she will be a slave to her strength. She won't be able to save anyone and she's only bring about an even greater tragedy. Because of those words she feels a lot more comfortable. Just a moment their mother came in to call Meng Kao to remind them that the Eternal Journey Army was going to come. This is because of their going to hold a joyful funeral for their grandma because of its customary to witness for a joyful funeral. Meng Kao wanted to go with Sai Okao but she doesn't want to go because of she don't want to see their granny Wang look like at this moment. Meng Kao tries convince her that if she wanted to go stronger then she must carry the weights to be get more courage for herself. She finally comes with Meng Kao and they are now going to came inside to bear witness to their grandma Wang. The doctors started to check her up and according to their checkup, Grandma Wang's organs are badly damaged and her pulse are now weak. In order to prevent the zombies from getting out of control the restraint lock has been buckled. From the corner Granny Wang's granddaughter Wang Xiao Hun was crying to see her grandmother's situation. Meng Kao approaches her that they are going to stay with her for a while. Xiao Huan feels grateful as she had someone that going to stay with her. Xiao Kao was about to apologize at her. But just a sudden Grandma Wang started to gain conscious and wanted to be freed. She's starting to mutate to turn into a zombie because of the stab that she received and reaches to her blood. Xiao Huan hugs Xiao Kao after being scared of that was going to happen after seeing their grandmother like this. 85% of the patient's brain tissues have died. The patient will lose 100% of her breathing functions in 3 minutes. And lastly the T35, T44 and R39 viruses in the patient's body are all above the threshold. Grandma Wang's condition was assessed to be beyond the possibility of resuscitation. Everyone was so worried as they saw Grandma Wang's condition. Grandma Wang's family agreed to corpse donation agreement so Meng Kao, and the others will be the witness for this. The doctor looks at Tsai O Kao to confirm if she's also willing for it. She responds, yes, I am willing. The next is they will allow them to watch the video of the donor has recorded beforehand, to ensure that their next procedure is in accordance with the donor's will. They played a video of Grandma Wang when she's alive to give a message and she also mentioned if they watch this she must already dead and even became a zombie. She started to leave a message saying first of all, don't cry because you've been a crybaby since you were a kid and not like the young Kao next door. Xiao Huan started to burst out her feelings that her grandmother leaves a message for her. Her grandmother tries to comfort her that she mustn't going to be sad because there are more than 50 years and many people she could have met entirely with her life. They've both experienced a lot of crazy stuff and she was fortunate enough to live until her age also she mentioned that at her teenage she already had a though about offering her body for the future. She remembered that when she was 14 years old and they hadn't reached the other world yet. The doctor said there are only three cases in the world and not only is the 100% death rate but the time from detection to death does not exceed one week. She decided to donate her body in order to make it possible for people who get this disease to be cured afterward. Later when her sister died the doctor gave her the painting that her sister had drawn with her last breath. The star with a smiling face looks like her sister. She folded the picture into a thousand paper cranes so she could carry it with her. So, their grandma wants to be a star too. She mentioned that Juan and Xiao Kao that she wanted both of them to be able to grow up safely and happily. Because of that they burst crying again as they heard their grandma's wills. She also mentions Big Tooth if he wanted to live in school and study. He can be leave with their uncle Meng and Kao from the next door. Xiao Kao promised that she's going to take care of Big Tooth. And that's all the message that she wanted to say. Grandma Wang didn't expect that his husband's luck would be so bad that he'd be torn to pieces by a monster instead she's the one who has the chance to join the eternal journey. She swore that if she sees the old man again, she'd like to see how he can still toot his horn. Suddenly she realized that she hasn't ended the record so this probably recorded as well. But she let it not to delete. Then Big Tooth starts to lick the camera and the video ended up here. The video had been played in clear so the doctors asked them if they had objections about this. They all replied that they have no objection about this. Since the family member and the witness had no objections, the conversion ceremony will be begun. Before they start they wanted to bow three times to the volunteer's corpse to show respect. First bow starts by Xiao Huan. Second bow do by Meng Kao and Xiao Kao. Lastly on the third bow everyone bows for grandma's corpse to show respect for her. The doctor will be injecting the virus suppression serum. They began to inject the suppression serum at grandma's body. They will also implant the memories of volunteers mutating cerebral cortex with the automatically generated video she made when she signed the agreement. The session had begun to start the process. Three minutes later they removed the mask and the oxygen mask. 
Next step they will conduct the final test witness so they ordered to the family member to go out from the room for a while. So everyone leaves the room to let the doctors do their job. Zai Okao was still worried about their grandma Wang. The doctors started to get ready to start the eternal mission. They remove everything that restrains the body of the zombie. Just a moment she sits down with a mutated body. Her nails grew into a sharp claw. As she wakes up, she suddenly lunges into one of the doctor that curing her up. Zio Huan starts to burst out her emotion as she saw her grandmother going to attack someone. However, the guy doesn't seem threatened while pointing his gun even though she attacked him. He confirms if they remember their oath when they requested to join immortality. Because their will can defeat any form and all type of enemy even if they die they also won't let germs and viruses control them. Then the doctor began to show his power tattoo while reminding them. Meng Kao thinks that they are the super being who is specialized in spirit techniques. Grandma began to be a lot wilder because of the side effect of the serum that they inject at her. Zio Huan tries to waking her up and telling to fight back the sickness while being frightened. She cries as she sees her grandmother suffering because of the sickness. Just as sudden her grandmother teared out. Along with this he smiles at her. It turns out that her brain cell's mutation progress is now controlled. The central nervous system of their grandmother was perfectly maintained and never gets eroded by viruses. And everything backs to normal. The doctor assumes that her surviving memory fragment was deep in the brain cells that helped her control herself. Right now she's no longer a zombie anymore and she's someone that is willing to die for the city and loved ones. She is now having immortality, and everyone starts to salute at their grandmother for being immortal and now she's going to rest in peace. Some people stayed alive but they're dead long ago. Some people died but are able to stay in fire for eternal life. The doctors guided their grandmother to move forward in the van. Zio Huan yelled at her grandmother before leaving that she must protect herself along with the Dragon City. She now moves to be transferred. Zio Kao apologizes at Zio Huan for being weak that resulted that their grandmother Wang's death. But she responded that she must not be like this because when their grandmother still had her consciousness, she told at her last night that she's actually very strong. Zio Kao was confused on what she said. Zio Huan also added that their grandmother was so proud for Zio Kao for being the bravest girl, and this trait must be learned. She feels relief after hearing those words to remove her burden about herself. After that Big Fang came up, since Zio Huan has to stay in the school she calls for a help to take care Big Fang with Zio Kao. Somehow, they remembered that their grandmother placed all the password and other important things in the Big Fang's collar. As they open the bone collar, something falls from it. They picked it up immediately. As they opened the red paper, they saw their grandmother's marriage picture. On the other side a drawing of a little star by their grandmother. They decided to guard their grandmother's marriage picture and little star. After that incident, they came home night time. Meng Kao and Zio Kao was talking about Zio Kao's disagreeing to live in Dragon City Ace. She told that she doesn't want to live at Dragon City Ace even though the environment is much better and there's more spiritual energy there. She only wants to still live at Tan Fu Fanyuan which is their native home. Meng Kao supports her decision and wanting to support her while growing up and because of that Meng Kao receives another contribution points for decreasing by 5% the darkening chance of Zio Kao. She wanted to cultivate and become stronger because she doesn't want these kinds of things to happen again. Su Meng Kao swore that from now on she will do two more hour of stance to help her to become more stronger. Zio Kao screamed because she needs to do the stance again. One day before the exam Meng Kao was so heavily asleep after the encounter from the monster later that day. Somehow Zio Kao shouted at his ears because there's only two days away from the entrance exam that making him shocked while having a peaceful sleep. Zio Kao was happy to leave the house to go at her school while Meng Kao was so mad from what she did. Their mother prepared Meng Kao's breakfast and being scolded for being fierce towards his sister. Meanwhile Meng Kao was watching television while Elder Ning interviewed by the reporters. He stated that he will start to provide free lessons online and teach everyone who wants to learn everything he knows. He added that a while ago he was heavily injured but luckily he got guidance from a mysterious senior that allowed him to feel reborn. As Meng Kao heard this, he got shocked. So he immediately checks the tinder for some report from what is happening at this moment. It turns out that his first mission completed elite citizen Ning Shi Wo's hands are 93% healed and recovers advanced functioning. He receives a contribution point also beginner harvesting techniques proficiency increased by 50%. And lastly profession stage has increased to great master stage. This time he got more motivated and determined to become one of a hero rank citizen in no time. Tinder suggested Thunder Cross Sword. Because of Elder Ning's contribution points, Thunder Cross Sword can also reach profession stage. Among the monsters in this word there's a rumor legend to be said. A legend saying regarding a city suddenly appeared in the monster mountain out of nowhere. 
Around 20 years ago a strong diamond mine head Hydra grew strong in the monster mountain it has subdued many monsters. With the momentum fame and power give him the idea to destroy the dragon city to show all monsters his power. On that day it was 18th of June and it was said that it's the entrance exam day. Diamond 9 head Hydra had suffered Dragon City's resolutely attacks. Because of this a lot of environments had been destroyed from this catastrophe. With 10 God Realm super beings cooperation and even if the monster is an apocalypse monster because it can only escape after being heavily wounded. But this time the Dragon City doesn't seem to let any monster escape and those who dares to disrupt the entrance exam must be killed. Humans paid a large price after three months in exchange to kill the diamond nine-head hydra in its nest. However, those monsters who have intelligence and wisdom could feel humans' determination. Thus, this day on 18th of June is marked as a monster's restricted attack day. Dragon City's children can solely focus on entrance exam to use all they have learned and score a great score. They using tilted ground to examine the student's stance which is a moral examiner made this. The examiner announced to draw out Steel Armor Rhino Dragon's main organ structure diagram and point out the weak point. Multiple questions start to ask him while Meng Keo easily answered it all. After four hour of exam, Meng Keo starts to submit all his answers. Even though there is still one hour left before exam ends, he still submitted. He checked his answers three times so he was sure there's no problem and he also remember exam has prepared recovery medical capsule. One hour later the exam was done and most of the students was so exhausted and tired. Shu came out from the exam along with his companion and he was so mad that he even threatened the creator of the immoral exam. Shu calls for his classmates to take the medical capsule to recover their strength before they going to find Meng Kao. His friends start to think that they must follow him in order to get a good score from the exam. Shu approaches the nurse who set up the medical capsule but she was so shocked as she saw Chu so huge. His classmates were talking about to someone who submitted his exam paper one hour before the exam ends. And this was Meng Kao and they had no idea who was this. From out of nowhere Meng Keo exits the medical capsule. Chu and the others was so shocked as they saw him already finished from medical capsule while the nurse was admiring him so much. Meng Keo greeted Chu of how was his test. As they saw him they assumed that if he was the crazy student that everyone talking about while Meng Keo was so mad to think he beaten up again by him. Without answering his question they immediately go inside the medical capsule to start the recovery. Meng Keo was so confused as he saw them acting weird. After an hour and a half, they go inside the results counter to check the result of their exam score. Shu and the other was curious how much does Meng Keo's score have while being nervous to think if they pass. As Meng Keo call Chu to tell his score he closes his ears because he doesn't to hear it. Because of that Meng Keo had an idea. He used this to scare him up to have him a doubt of confusion to possible result. Somehow Chu decided to remove this curiosity and wanting to Meng Keo to tell his scores. Meng Keo said that he had 939 marks and currently ranking at 1,084 places in the city. Because of that they wanting to go straight to the front line and take the practical test even though they are tired and destroy. Meng Keo assumes that they must still need to strengthen their mental training for getting easily to shock. After a few hours they finally arriving to the next exam. One of the guards stops them to check. The guard advises them to get off the bus to change into armored train in order to cross the river. All the students of 9th school gets off the bus to be transferred. Everyone fall in line while Meng Keo and Chu was talking about the Red Dragon River from crossing the river from Jiangnan region. However, Chu's attitude changed again while talking at Meng Keo. Out of nowhere the guard starts to notice something under the bridge. Also, the students started to notice too that there's a monster in the river that made their attention got. It turns out that there's a fish-like creature monster on the river that was going to attack the city. Somehow an armored airship arrives at the area to execute the monster to prevent unnecessary things to happen. They attack the monster using the missile and land it into the river. A large blast explosion happened that resulting to the monster to break apart its body. Because of that the monster died after a large explosion pops up under it. The armored airship drops a net to take the dead body of this monster to harvest it in cultivation harvester site. Just a moment another sea creature monsters jumps out from the water to attack the armored airship. But they shoot it to stop these monsters and also, they will benefit by this to harvest all the dead monsters. The ninth students was so cheered up so see these such action that happen in front of them that resulting to admire these people. Beside them there's a people who was in the action that warning them up to use some diapers for the actual test to avoid wetting their pants. Shu got mad at these people for being egoistic people and teasing them so much. Just a few moments the train finally arriving for their location using the armored train to transfer them. Everyone was so excited to get inside without wasting any time. The train are now arriving for their next location. 
They are currently at Jiangnan region which a dangerous threat because of the monsters who live in this area. Xu was so amazed as he saw a torrent of steel in this region for being more advanced from their homeland. He even swears inside the train while seeing these such beautiful view. Dragon City Cannon was one of the powerful weapons of Dragon City that managed to kill a huge amount of monster in small area. A guy tells to their classmates that the engineers are now modifying the Dragon Cannon and now can even fire nuclear shells. One of his classmates can't believe that this possible, while the other admiring to kill the majesty of the Dragon Cannon at full power. However one of the student assumes if the Dragon Mega Cannon fires or even fires nuclear shells means that Dragon City is in the most dangerous situation. On the other side Mankeo had a headache just a sudden that made him can't focus to the details he needed. Somehow, he saw a glimpse of his past that a monster was lunging toward the Mega Cannon. And when it shoots a large blast happens from these monsters. The train stops after an hour of arrival. They are now finally landed to their location and Mankeo starts to observe the whole place. On the other side outside the Jiangnan region something was about to happen that a monster getting ready. Meanwhile the students came inside the cultivation to start their exam. The examiner advises them to they split depends on their gender to take their battle suits. In 10 minutes, they must gather at the same place and for those who are late will be treated as failing this physical test. And they dismissed. Chu was shivering so hard from the coldness of the water when they taking a bath. Meng Keo pours a bucket of cold water at him to tease his Chu for being so coward only in water. They finally wear their suits in order to start the training for the examination. Chu was wondering why was the battle suit so thin and has a bunch of wire interfaces. But Meng Keo scolded him for thinking too much that may can cause their delay. The time ends for waiting and the examiner announced that for those who are late will stay and wait for the physical test to end. He gives the students to play the four great battle profession introduction. The battle profession introduction starts to play. The captain of Red Dragon Army has introduced for having obtained heroic spirits recognition Black Steel Protector God the Spirit Guardian. They show the Black Steel Protector God capable using the machine gun. The Black Steel Protector God power is indestructible. They even fused with the Spirit Soldier to be a lot more powerful. After showing how much powerful the Spirit Guardian was, she now going to show how powerful was this in offense. She demonstrates the power. As she swings the Spirit Guardian did the same and because of being so powerful they destroyed the machine gun with just one swing. Chu got amazed again when he saw her so wildly strong. He started to dream to have a Spirit Guardian too for himself while he's shaking Meng Kao for being excited. Meng Kao explains that in order to become Spirit Guardian he must have to be good in all stats such as wisdom, personality, character, strength. Just a sudden multiple armored van and airship arrives that caught their attention. It turns out this was army by someone superhuman being named Mechanic which has a fighting robot. Meng Kao had a thought of Dragon City technique getting better. Armored drone with thinking brain along with enhanced outer bones armor flow battle more that increases Mechanic's position. On the other side a woman was approaching a huge monster. She stated that she can summon. She uses her power to call insect groups to fight this monster. A bunch of insect groups starts to dug out under the land. It turns out that she was a tamer that could tame monsters to control for fight with her. She used this monster to fight another monster and this is the specialty of a tamer. Meng Kao and the other students was preparing to start the examination. There are many resources to this place so he must have to think an effective way to fight. When tamer controls monster at the same time some brain's nerve will be opened so it will be easy to get invaded by monster however his brain has many secrets that he must protect. Jinping was also fighting some monster and his specialty is the energy that flows in his body and uses traction to heaven and earth as spiritual energy. He unleashed shocking ultimate move to try this out since he was trying to observe how much effectiveness of his new move. Jin Jinping's specialty was martial artist and he's one of the four great battle professions. The video ended after that and Meng Kao got excited after watching the martial artist has accurate punches, making use of own body, and burst open a golden light path that made him interest. The examiner puts a helmet to guide them through their journey. He announced that successfully connected all communication devices had been already set up. All the student body's stats are became normal. The physical test had been announced to begin. Their mission is stated that the army has discovered an earth building in the deep part of the fog which has very likely to have important things or battle resources. While the other army 5523 team's mission is to clean the Liming mechanic factory area and slaughter all the monster with the factory and claim the factory while getting their civilization back. At 12 midnight physical test officially begins, and they began to fight some ferocious rats. Some students managed to kill some of these monsters without an ease using their different type of specialty. However, Meng Kao was planning to avoid ferocious devour rat escaping from the exam area. 
From the outer area has Dower Rat Natural Enemies Ferum, which means there's a limited amount of Devour Rat near the outer area. A guy telling to the other that let the newbie waste their time near the outer area. Fang Da from first high was confused why they don't fighting with the others. Zai Feng from second high responded that facing Devour Rat and the others aren't interesting for them. However Liuo Hai from Construction High was observing Meng Chaos and he was determined that he must not underestimate Meng Kao. The ferocious rats start to climb up toward the Fang Da, Zai Feng and Luo Hai. Somehow, they are planning to move forward when Meng Kao was near from the finish line while trying to sustain the monsters that trying to attack them. While Luo Hai also trying to restrain some ferocious rats, he was thinking of what does Meng Kao currently doing. On the other side someone was planning to dug out. He was putting the white sugar, chocolate and high energy nutrition on a container. After putting it all together he stirs it up and put it into his chemical combinator to mix it. It turns out that this guy was Meng Kao and he successfully a ball of chemical that he mixed earlier. He put it into the hole that he dug earlier. As he put it into the hole, a bug monster starts to lunges to the ball that he put in the hole. However, he picked up one of the bugs that he needed using a tweezer. He immediately sliced it in half. Then he immediately extracted the bug's oil and put it into the container. Meanwhile, the teachers are watching Meng Kao's doings that they made them confused at him for playing bugs instead killing some monsters for some points because he hasn't even earned a single point. However, Teacher Yen notices Meng Kao's harvest technique looks so familiar for him as he watching him. Going back to Meng Kao, he was still harvesting for some materials that he needs to make his plans to work. Unfortunately, a monster was spotted him. It lunges at him and he luckily managed to dodge it attack. Even though the monster keeps attacking him, he didn't care about it and still doing his experiment unbothered. After putting the extracting the oil, he started to kill the monster that trying to attack him. Killing these monsters seems easy for him even though he's doing more than this. He stabs the ferocious rats and he manages to hit its vital points that resulting to kill of these monsters in only one stab. The teacher is thinking him to be naughty for his action and some of the teacher amazed for him to manage kill the rats for only one blow of his knife somehow one of the teacher notices him for sitting down again. Meng Kao sits down again to open the container that he had even though there are too many ferocious rats lurking around the area he didn't care. He puts a cooking pot into a portable stove that made everyone confused and then Meng Kao extracted the female rat's reproductive gland. Along with this he put the crawler liquid that can stimulate the nervous system. He also added acetaminophen and cardiotonic drugs, so they assume that this drug will not be used for humans instead for something. After finishing his experiment, he injected into a rice ball. He finally finished his experiment and he called this a special rice ball. Meng Kao now started to rush to do his plan and he stated that he's going to prepare the dinner. Meanwhile the teacher's lobby, they are amazed how Meng Kao become a science geek at 9th grade that made everyone from the lobby shocked from his doing. One of the tower was someone observing him far away. This was Principal Sun and he was curious why Meng Kao running toward the sewer line even though there's full of traps but he assumes that he will go to the core and going to surprise him from his plan. Inside the sewer line, Meng Kao put the special rice ball all over the sewer line while the strong smell of this food are scattered around. One of the teachers had no idea of what is he doing. So he called from one of the observatory staff to turn on the thermal scanning to take a look. As they opened the thermal scanning, they got shocked that a bunch of rats have been attracted to the food that he throws all over the place. Teacher Yan assumes that Meng Kao's plan is working. A bunch of ferocious rats had been scattered all over the place. It turns out the Meng Kao's plan was going to lurk all the ferocious rats to the food where he set up a bomb and where he can use a bunch of grenades that he bought earlier and his plans works well. A large explosion happens that made everyone so shocked as they felt the huge explosion. Tsai Feng confused who bought so many hand grenades in this exam and Luo Hai explains that Meng Kao must planning to kill the ferocious rats in just one blow. Because of this they got their attention to Meng Kao and motivated to kill more monsters. The leaderboard showed up for leading up with Fang Da, Luo Hai, Zai Feng and lastly Meng Kao. They came together to fight the ferocious rats that are attacking them. Fang Da got flattered as he saw the leaderboard that Meng Kao manages to kill a 700 rats in an instant. Zai Feng doubting Meng Kao was the one who did the large explosion. They are confused how Meng Kao manages to kill this much rats even though they are in the most densely populated area in the whole factory. Lu Hai calls for their attention to focus to kill some few rats because the main show will be happened during the midnight so they must focus their attention. They agreed at him because the midnight's ferocious beast are much 10 times stronger than the ferocious devour rat. Fang Da advises them he remember Meng Kao's cheapest sword which is lightning battle sword since it was cheap he assumed that Meng Kao won't participate for the next test. On the other side Meng Kao was observing the hunt statistics and he saw the result for being not that bad. He jumps down on the tree and he was aiming to give all he can in order to enroll in the best profession. 
Because of the explosion under the sewer line, some of the bugs had been affected from the explosion earlier. He picked up a scorpion bug in order to proceed for his next plan. Everyone shocked from this, so they had a thought that he might make another rice ball but he doesn't have grenade anymore. But female teacher notices that he picked poison insect black tail bullet scorpion and red gigantic centipede that's suitable for wild area battle. One of the observer staff assumed that because of his unusual plans he seemed veteran from the fog for many times. He got interested for Meng Kao's skill. Meng Kao extracts the scorpion and centipede's poison sack and harvests it without any problem. After this he mix everything inside the container for the next plan. It turns out that he was going to apply the poison to his sword in order to make it more useful even though it's cheap. After applying the poison, he decided to make a test. Test 1 is poison stickiness and it was excellent. Test 2 is the time until poison take effect and also excellent. After this he lay himself from the dead ferocious rat to put the blood on his entire body. The next plan of attracting illusion shadow cat's preparation and he already completed his preparation. All the foreplay he did is now done so he just need to wait for now until the arrival of the next wave. At 3 am, the releasing of the second wave of monster had begun. The monstrous wave was about to begin. Sharp long claw and glowing green eyes with a trait of a cat had been released for the next wave. The announcer starts to announce that the second wave of monster had been released through the area so they must prepare. Unfortunately, some students had no skill to fight these monsters. So, some of them immediately fails on the exam and wiped out. Principal announced that they must be alerted and take note of the student's stats to avoid a possible candidate to die inside the cultivation exam. Meanwhile Meng Kao seems calmly waiting for the second wave monsters. Even though he got surrounded he just keeps waiting for them. Just a moment the monsters lunges at him but he's still so calm under the tree without even moving an inch. As one of the monsters attacks him, he calculates this just in time and he immediately move when the monster was about to attack him. He took his sword with a poison in it and slash it to the monster. As he expected the poison can easily destroy their hearing and balance system. Some of the monsters are lunging at him. Because of his skill he manages to fight these monster without any problem. After kicking the monster behind him, another monster dashes toward him to attack him. The monster was about to attack him and he prepared to counter it. He used his knee to attack the monster and he successfully hit it. After that he decided to move for the next area since he was done with the testing, he needed from the sword that he made. Because of the poison that he put on his sword he barely manages to kill some of the second wave monsters without an ease. He keeps moving forward even though the monster was attacking him but he can kill them all. Because of Meng Kao's sword skill, the teachers got amazed at him. They had a doubt that Meng Kao was probably exceed the sword skill of Luo Hai but the other teacher told her that there's no way he would surpass him since Luo Hai's father was a 6 star super being Shatter Soul Sword. They got scolded by another teacher and wanting to watch Meng Kao going toward the inner area. They saw Meng Kao fighting the monsters all by himself and he manages to most of the monsters that trying to rush him. As he expected, the inner area has more illusion shadow cat lurking around. But something caught his attention when he saw the other illusion shadow cat. He saw someone that better at attracting illusion shadow cats than him so he checks it out. He saw three people which is Fang Da, Fei Zing and Luo Hai fighting the monsters together. As they saw Meng Kao, they think that he will steal their points from killing the monster that they lure. However, Luo Hai doesn't want to talk about the fact that stealing of points are not allowed inside the test. But currently from their situation, his lungs are about to burst and explode so he can't wait for Meng Kao to come and help them. Meng Kao gladly these three students are barely hanging in their position. But for the sake of the exam, he decided to help them and he pours another chemical into his body. Because of the aroma from the chemical that he pour from his body, the monster's attention goes to him. He prepares himself from incoming monsters. He was planning to buy some time for them to recover their strength while he was going to fight the monsters. They immediately sits down to meditate to speed up their recovery while Meng Kao attracting the other monster. Meng Kao was focusing to fight the monster all by himself. At the first wave of attack he only had one chance to make his plans to be successful. He simultaneously attacks the monster and each of them that trying to attack Meng Kao was dying one by one. Time to time he manages to kill every incoming monster from the area. The meantime the monsters that he slashed had been died from the poison from his sword. Even though Meng Kao helps them, Fang Da still underestimating Meng Kao for relying from the poison sword however Luo Hai had some conclusion from his mind. He was thinking if Meng Kao's poison sword got run out of poison, is he going to do other cards up to his sleeves? Meng Kao also noticed that the sword's poison already worn out. Somehow he actually have another tactic and he wants to teach Luo Hai on how to contribute to Dragon City. Just a moment an illusion shadow cat lunges at him while he's off guarded. Unexpectedly he used his hand inside the monster's mouth while saying bullets and swords aren't the only weapons. He added that in combat, everything around them is a weapon like the uniforms that they wear. 
All of them got confused as Mankeo giving them a guidance while taking the test and fighting the monster. They saw Mankeo draining away the defense of his gel fighting suit. Mankeo stating that it takes a lot of energy and strength to dodge the attacks of the phantom cats and to find the phantom cats hiding in the shadow. But they use the suit as a shield and a decoy, they will be able to hunt more efficiently. The monsters attack him immediately. But Mankeo was still so calm to giving them advices about the point of being deducted for damaging the gel suit. Fang Da asked him if what is he going to do after losing Poison Blade and the gel fighting suit. Fei Zing and Luo Hai just listening to him while Meng Keo giving them a guidance. Suddenly Meng Keo throws the helmet on the floor. He stated that everything is a weapon in a real battlefield. He removes his clothes because his current plan was going to fight these monsters using his whole body. He explains that the illusion cats are characterized by their speed and ability to hide themselves but since he's using his gel camouflage uniform as bait and intentionally letting the illusion cats bite him. Because of this it allows him to get rid of Illusion Cat's greatest advantage in a single stroke. Even if the monster is ferocious without the advantage, they will be still too weak for everyone. The monsters suddenly stopped to move as they felt threatened. Meng Kao took his med kit to cure some of his wounds to continue move forward. Meng Kao drinks the booster that he bought earlier to regain his cardio from normal. Luo Hai had no wonder that Meng Kao exchanged his written test scores for the emergency kit because he already planned to use the injury for like method of fighting. Fei Zing's martial arts had no match for Meng Keo and Fang Da's marksmanship also far ahead from him. But the only thing they can't surpass Meng Keo is the toughness from him. After drinking the potion that he used, he wanted to fight more and they were shocked as Meng Keo can still fight in this state it is because of the Dragon City's technology. He rushes the monster to kill a large number of monsters as their goal. He didn't waste any time to squeeze every bit of his energy from their body. Even his sword doesn't have poison anymore, he still manages to fight the illusion shadow cat without an ease and flawlessly. After he killed the monsters that trying to attack them, Fan Da asked him if he's not scared of dying and he responded of course I am. While the monster going attack him, he told them that in battle the more scared you are, the higher chance that you will die. If they want to live, they must risk their life and seek a chance to live. Then he slashed that monster that going to attack him while explaining that in world battleground, stronger monsters, space-time turbulence, countless changes could happen at any time. The only thing they can do is to end it speedily. Meanwhile at observation room, the military colonel Zeng told to their solder to investigate Meng Keo for being talented individual because he might take by Dragon City's military school. Someone approaches Colonel Zeng for not asking Meng Keo opinion if he's not scared to join from the military school. Because this guy observes Meng Keo personality that if he joined to their Dragon City martial art course, his future will be bright and unimaginable. However, someone scolded them for not spoiling their relationship because of Meng Keo. The woman was proudly introduced that Meng Keo's father was a harvester also in their academy with Elder Ning so she teases them up to give up their hope from Meng Keo. Going back at Meng Keo, he's now currently ranked 273 in whole city so he killed enough monsters and he's going to wait for the next wave. Luo Hai and Fang Da thinking a way to kill much illusion Shadow Cat because these monsters seem to be scared from Meng Keo. Somehow, they decided just to rest and wait for the boss that will coming in. A notification from their wrist hologram came up. The next wave was the Shatter Sword Python that going to be released. They got frightened as they saw the Shatter Sword Python because this is one of the strongest snake type tyrants among the super beast. However, Meng Keo seemed getting interested from the current year exam. Fang Da thanks him for helping them from increasing their combat experience but he was curious how is he going to face the Shatter Sword Python. He replied that he will do nothing since he had enough points already so he has nothing to fight for. Because of his answer they got shocked as they heard Meng Keo replied this casually. Somehow, Meng Keo was fooling around them and he will fight with his current state while waiting and taking the last few hits. He told them that he's just going to wait them until they run out of energy and wanting to leave the battle so during that time, he needs to find a chance to attack. Luo Hai realized that Meng Keo's reason for killing the illusion shadow cats madly it is because of he wanted to force his group to fight the Shatter Sword Python but he asks how Meng Keo knew the boss will be Shatter Sword Python. He explains that one month ago when the death and casualties of the test were posted, the test for the ability to gather key information started. Somehow he belittled the virtual battleground for fulfilling the student's goal without realizing they fall into even more dangerous situation. They realized that Meng Keo was right about it and somehow he received contribution points. Luo Hai got amazed at him for making a plan a month ago without getting inside the test. So they decided to listen for him since Meng Keo helped them from moral support and from life and death situation. After Meng Keo teaches them, he was hoping that they can heavily injured some Shatter Sword Python and let him fight after that. The Shatter Sword Python starts to lurk around the building. Zai Feng, Feng Da, and Luo Hai starts to prepare themselves for the incoming monsters to attack them. 
All of a sudden above Fang Da, one of the Shatter Sword Pythons breaks in from their location. Meanwhile another Shatter Sword Python came up from the front door. Just a moment another one showed up beside Fang Da. He was gladly that there's only three of the Shatter Sword Pythons that they could able to handle. Unfortunately, another one came up from the front door so there's total of four Shatter Sword Python inside the building. They charge at these monster and planning to split up to fight while trying to be careful of getting entangled by it. However, Fang Da has to fight two Shatter Sword Pythons at the same time because they are only three people inside the area. Fang Da panics so hard from the ferocious attacks of the Shatter Sword Pythons. As he tried to run away from the situation to seek for help from Meng Kao, the other Shatter Sword Python was going to lunge at him. Luckily, he dodges it immediately. He wants to Meng Kao to come out because there's a possible that he could die from this situation. As he trying to recover himself the Shatter Sword Python was preparing to lunge at him again. So, he had no choice. He picked up his sword to fight back since he had no choice to wait for Meng Kao anymore. The Shatter Sword Python attacks him. He tries to dodge it and land an attack with his sword. Somehow, the scales of Shatter Sword Python were too tough that he can't even pierce it. Suddenly, it goes to slam its body toward Fang Da so he immediately reacts into it. The Shatter Sword Python pushed him back while there's another Shatter Sword Python waiting for him. The Shatter Sword Python doesn't have any weak points so he was thinking of a way how can he defeat it. Unfortunately, he got slammed at the floor by the Shatter Sword Python. Even though how powerful he got slammed he still manages to stand up. He was still determined to fight back even though he don't have a weapon anymore. He dodges every attack of the Shatter Sword Python and there are 59 seconds remaining. The timer starts to beat down and 45 seconds left. 30 seconds remaining. 20 seconds remaining and he suddenly tripped into a rock. 10 seconds remaining, the Shatter Sword Python passed through him. Unfortunately, his foot caught by this. He became hopeless for being cornered, and he had a thought that he's going to die from this situation. The Shatter Sword Python attacks him immediately and there's nothing he can do after having no weapon and having severe damages. However, someone manages to cut through the Shatter Sword Python's backbone and saying away from the battle for one minute. This doesn't count as snatching. He added that now he will be taking the Shatter Sword Python. Fang Da felt relief after that for escaping from death. This guy took a Shatter Sword Python's blood. It turns out that this guy was Meng Kao who saved him from the death situation however Meng Kao asks him if he wants some Python blood. Fang Da was so shocked after being clueless for what Meng Kao doing just of a sudden. He explains that he's just refilling his energy since the Shatter Sword Python was precious monster so he doesn't want to waste it. While dismantling, he explains that the Python-type monster's flesh has many spiritual energy because it can excite central nerve system, unleash cell potential. The Python gallbladder can refresh brain, excite brain cell, excite life force limit and Python's heart have a few drops of blood for having effectiveness than normal snake blood for pure excite medicine. Fang Da assumes that Meng Kao was probably a barbarian to have this much knowledge. Just a moment Xi Fang and Luo Hai came back and thinking that he's the one who fought the two Shatter Sword Python. But he denies it in saying that all of this was caused of Meng Kao. Meng Kao drank the blood of the Python that he took earlier that made everyone shocked for this. Just as sudden their wrist watch alarm to notify them. Meng Kao thought that someone must have encountered danger so he invites them to move forward to rescue the other. They go at the riveting workshop to check the situation. However, they noticed the ambience from the area and felt something unusual. Meng Kao warned them to be careful because of having a feeling strange at the area. Suddenly someone calling for a help while being chased down by one monster. He got startled as he saw the monster bites one of the students' head and noticing that this monster wasn't belong here. This was a blood demon wolf. The Blood Moon Demon Wolf was king among wolves which a carnivorous creature that able to secrete a special hormone and forms blood fog and they often appears in groups with high wisdom. He's so shocked for having a boss rank monster in this test. And this kind of monster was a ferocious monster. Suddenly Principal Sun dropped somewhere to land a blow into this monster while telling to them that the test ground was dangerous. The physical test had been stopped because of the danger of the test ground so Meng Kao asks how bad the situation was that even Principal Sun had to come. Principal Sun explains that the test was temporarily stopped because the fog had been invaded and all students should immediately disperse. Liu Hai voluntarily told him that they could stay behind and help him up. Xi Fang and Fang Da also agreed with it to lend some help. But Meng Kao refuses them to help since they are not hunters yet also. He mentions that they can't even survive from the first wave so they must retreat immediately. They got speechless after Meng Kao looked down on them. Principal Sun agreed with him because these ferocious beasts aren't something for them to deal with. Principal Sun jumps away to notify the other students for temporary cancellation of the exam. Somehow a monster groaned behind them. 
They notice that there's one more thing they had to do before leaving. Main Kao advises them to avoid fighting near the cracked floor to avoid any problem while fighting. Main Kao gives them a ghost signal to lunge at the monsters. They manage to kill some of these blood moon demon wolves with the guide of Main Kao. Liu Hai was so motivated to fight these monsters to get better. However, Meng Kao was giving orders at them since he had more skill than them to avoid any unwanted things to happen. All of a sudden, the floor where Meng Kao stepping was suddenly split in half. Because of this he got distracted and a monster was going to lunge at him. He lost his balance because of that scenario. Meng Kao fall from the ridge because he can't do anything since a monster was going to attack him. However, he noticed that this fog was something he knew. It turns out that this is a time turbulence and he was about to fall from this. After falling from the time turbulence, Meng Kao and the monster have been teleported somewhere. Because the monster wasn't letting go his sword he using his mouth to bite but he has shoulder dislocated. He cursed this monster for acting arrogant at it and swearing that after he fix his arms he will slice this monster into pieces. Meng Kao slams his shit on a tree to get fix his dislocated bones. He explores the place and upon his assumption he thinks he got teleported into the forest. Luckily this isn't the worst situation on their position they aren't deep within the area. From out of nowhere, he heard someone swearing from this place and it sounds familiar for him. It turns out that Fang Da also teleported at this area. Meanwhile someone approached them after encountering space turbulence. It was Zai Fang and Liu Hai who'd also fall from the time turbulence and teleported into the forest. Suddenly he remembered from his past that after the entrance exam, the Dragon City's outer area's space ripple has often faced unpredictable small cracks space turbulence. He was so shocked as the tinder showed up again for an escape mission Blood Moon Slaughter, where he need to save many people from the blood. The Blood Moon Demon Wolves hunt and inspire and save as many participants as possible, and the reward will be start from 5,000 to 10,000. He got startled from the 10,000 contribution points because of this mission difficulty, and the danger is not going to be low. If he picks this mission, he had to do it for his sake or for the sake of Dragon City. Liu Hai asks what are they going to do at this time but Meng Kao advises them to wait for the reinforcement team to arrive and look for the other students. They heard a howl far away from their place. They knew that this was a group of wolves from the forest. Meng Kao explains that this was only caused by the blood fog that spreaded by the blood moon demon wolf to disrupt their sense of smell and hearing. So he warns them that they are just trying to scare them and attack them one by one. However, Blood Moon Demon Wolf's blood has a certain block function against such poison. He gave them a cotton balls to block their nose and reduce Wolf Howl's disruption to its maximum. They immediately wear it to avoid smelling the Blood Moon blood. All of a sudden one of the Demon Wolf attacks them from out of nowhere. But luckily Meng Kao was aware for it and saved Fan Da. He warns them if they panic and run toward the city, they will make the Wolf Group's hunting area. Liu Hai and Zai Feng volunteered to stay behind to fight the monsters while Meng Kao going to take care of the injured people. Luckily for them the wolves that they fought has low combat ability so they managed to survive. Meng Kao tries to gather everyone to take care while waiting for the reinforcement. He took the lead for a while to boost their morale and demanding to wait for the Red Dragon Army and Super Being to come to save them. Meng Kao receives contribution points for inspiring the other students' spirit status. He tries to stall the monsters while the other students running away to save themselves. Unfortunately, the wild environment is complicated and they have way too less people and due to lacking of light they can't find the other students in short amount of time. All of a sudden, he had an idea about light. He commanded everyone to light up a fire and let everyone come find them and they will also provide reinforcement with coordinates and marks. But Liu Hai thinking that this might cause the wolf group find them also. Meng Kao explains that even if they don't light a fire, the wolf group will always know where they are by their sense of smell. When they are in the dark and can't find each other, they will think they are alone and abandoned then become scared and depressed. The more depressed they get the more panicked they get, the more easily they breathe in the blood fog and fall into a vicious cycle and ending up to be crazy. Because of the fire's light, it can gather all students to increase their power and also increasing their surviving chance. The fire starts to light up and spread the awareness to other students. Because of this some students have been noticing this. They start to move forward for it for assuming someone must be there. They use this as navigation toward the other and starts to gather. Students have come and they are so gladly that there's people out here to save them. Main Kao calls everyone to have a feast since everyone was tired, and they must rest for a while before the wolves come. Suddenly someone seems a giant monster has appeared that made everyone panics. Liu Hai had no idea for its appearance and had to think this was a new monster. As Main Kao turns around, he didn't expect this. The person that they thought a monster was actually Chu with the other students. However, Chu was confused how did they manage to gather so many people with them than him. 
Meng Kao explains that this caused by his personal charms. Xu responded that he also relied on his personal charms. Therefore, Meng Kao gives him a food to replenish his energy and Chu was so happy about this. Someone asked Meng Kao why would he didn't run back to the city when he was thrown away. He explains that although the lights are close, it's at least 10 kilometers away and the fog is so thick that many monsters are on patrol in the dark. Rashly fleeing the trial and there is only one way to die. Just a moment they are preparing to fight again. The blood moon demon wolf starts to surround them and everyone starts to get anxious. Some students have been panicking so hard after being surrounded by these wolves and having a thought that they are going to die. The blood moon demon wolf starts to lurk around the dark to prepare their attack. Liu Hai starts to thinking of how they will possible able to withstand these monsters. But Meng Kao told him not to be scared because the blood moon demon wolves are not strong when they are alone so as long as they hold together they could survive. Shu supports this that he just killed two blood moon demon wolf all by himself to motivate the morale of the other students. The students seem start to calm down for a bit. On the other side, the wolves start to move on their way to attack them. Meng Kao told them not to be afraid because this is the wolves' plan to disturb the enemy as long as they hold their ground they can't do anything to them. From out of nowhere something fall from above Fang Da and one of the students. A dead body fell down at the ground and they got shocked about it. The student starts to panic as they saw a dead body fall beside them and they run away. They didn't expect that this was an actual plan of the blood moon demon wolf to scatter from the group. Luckily the skilled students are aware for that and manages to save them from the ferocious monster. Shu advises Meng Kao to gather the other students from 9th school and save as many as they can. Because of this he had an idea. He calls out all the 9th school students to come at him immediately. The Blood Moon Demon Wolf group starts to surround them and preparing to attack them at the same time. Meng Kao and the other 9th school students starts to form a line to plan something to fight these monsters. They prepare the 100 sword technique first style howling cutter all together to land a powerful slash to these monsters at the same time. Fang Da also take the lead for the first high students to gather to do the same plan as Meng Kao did. Along with this, Zai Feng also call the other students to show their guts and energy to let the beast know their power. However, Liu Hai was the only student from Construction High and he felt awkward that he can't call someone for him. The students have their own group to fight these monsters since the Blood Moon Demon Wolf's weakness was being along. Shu was complimenting Meng Kao for being good leader, but Meng Kao told him that it's not done yet because he had something that he could fear more. The Blood Moon Demon Wolf starts to howl, and the students caught their attention by this. These wolves start to act strange after the howl they did. All of a sudden one of the Blood Moon Demon Wolf starts to mutate that made Meng Kao shock as he saw this. Everyone starts to get anxious as they saw the Blood Moon Demon Wolf change its appearance. It turns out that this is Blood Moon Wolf King a nightmare rank ferocious beast and Meng Kao knew that this wasn't a good sign. Another bloody battle was going to happen after the Blood Moon Demon Wolf starts to have their king. From out of nowhere the Blood Moon Demon Wolf charges its mouth to attack them just as sudden. He warns everyone to run away, and watch out from the mind attack from Blood Moon Wolf King Terror Blood Flame and also there's no way they can survive at this situation. Unfortunately, one of the students caught off guard by the Terror Blood Flame. He saw the Blood Moon Wolf King so furiously in front of him. However, Meng Kao felt something strange that a mere super beast shouldn't be scared of them as bunch of students and they could actually attack them together and kill them in just a few moves. Although it's been spraying the blood mist but it doesn't want to join the fight and seems worried for something. As Meng Kao observes the Wolf King, he assumes that this monster was hurt even though it transformed. So he decided to announce that the Wolf King is heavily wounded so it will die any moment, and its only purpose is to disperse them and kill them when they are all alone. Chu supported this because of there's nothing will happen if they scatter around and only getting be killed why these monster. All of a sudden the Wolf King lunges at Meng Kao and the other students. Because of the Wolf King's agility, Meng Kao didn't manage to react from it and receive a severe wound from it. The Wolf King was so furious, it suddenly used the terror blood flame at Meng Kao. Unfortunately, normal human and nightmare ferocious beast's power level gap can't be close with just techniques. Because of this he begun to see the Wolf King a lot more scarer than ever. The Blood Moon Demon Wolves lunges at the other students. However, Chu starts to worry about Meng Kao's situation because he's in danger. The Wolf King was so fast that made him so shocked that the Wolf King was already close. But he doesn't care and he wanted to kill the Wolf King even though it costs his life. From out of nowhere Principal Sun came up to land at a spiritual energy blow at the Wolf King and resulting to got slammed at the floor. The Wolf King splattered blood from its mouth. It tries to jump away from the situation to avoid getting hit again. The sword that pinned down from the nape of the Wolf King earlier had been removed. Meng Kao startled as he saw Principal Sun helping him up all of a sudden. 
Principal Sun told him to protect himself as he going to fight this monster but in Mang Kao's thought he notices that Principal Sun didn't drag by the space turbulent. Blood Moon Demon Wolf starts to rushing toward Principal Sun to attack him. But he killed it easily by just wiping his hand to these monsters without an ease. The Wolf King starts to get angrier that he even makes a menace look. Principal Sun was going to approach the Wolf King. He jumps while charging his spiritual energy into his arms to attack the Demon Wolf. Unfortunately, the Wolf King dodges it because of having too much agility. Even after getting injured the Wolf King was still so agile. Principal Sun made another punch called Shatter Space Destructive Fist and landed it so well. He didn't stop here and made another follow-up attack. He used double and because of this the Wolf King receives a large amount of damage. The Wolf King becomes so mad again. So, it tries to attack Principal Sun for being burst out from anger. Unlucky for the Wolf King, Principal Sun dodges his attack and kicks him immediately after landing a strike. Principal Sun used Meditate Lion to jump while preparing his foot. Barrage as he called, and he successfully landed to the Wolf King. He moves closer after assuming the Wolf King being defeated so easily. However, Meng Kao warns him that the Wolf King wasn't dead yet and the Wolf King attacks Principal Sun. Principal Sun flew away after receiving the blow while Meng Kao got frightened for the nightmare rank ferocious beast for having this much wisdom. Even Principal Sun was a remnant star super being can barely fight against this monster. Principal Sun commanded to Meng Kao to not stay and quickly lead the other students and leave the area but Meng Kao worried about the injury that Principal Sun had. He told to Meng Kao that this type of wound is nothing for him. With spiritual flame to speed up his blood, it's nothing for him at all. Meng Kao got pushed away by Principal Sun to make him leave immediately because this kind of monster is not high schooler problem. All of a sudden something entangled from Principal Sun's hands. It turns out that this was the Wolf King's tail and it's planning to pull him close to him. Principal Sun dragged closer to Wolf King but he cast a spiritual energy to attack the Wolf King. The King dashes toward him he's pulling Principal Sun closer. As they about to engage to each other, Principal Sun used to send magic pestle to the Wolf King. Overturn as he said. A large explosion happened from the area where Principal Sun and Wolf King fighting. Meng Kao starts to worry about Principal Sun. Just a sudden he had a glance at Principal Sun. The large explosion starts to escalate the meantime. The Wolf King began a lot more careful as he recognized the power of the Remnant Star Principal Sun. They both glaring to each other after their collision. Somehow, the Wolf King and the other Blood Moon Demon Wolf starts to retreat from out of nowhere. Principal Sun apologizes for not detecting the turbulence and they encounter such accident like this. But he commended everyone for performing well to fought these monsters and he also mentioned that he already contacted the reinforcement team and in 20 minutes they will arrive. The students start to feel relief after knowing that they will be saved from the situation. Meng Kao used some of his contribution points in exchange for treating his wounds while everyone was busy. Luckily no one is looking at him so he can freely heal his wounds. Xu and Liu Hai were so happy to think they already won and they compliment Meng Kao performance. Just a moment Meng Kao notices something wrong about Principal Sun. He notices that Principal Sun's spiritual flame state seems unstable so he was thinking if he was injured. So, he calls everyone to rest and recover first because he had to discuss something with Principal Sun. As he approaches Principal Sun, he can't believe on what he saw. He saw Principal Sun's spiritual energy unstable, blood from his mouth and the worse is the wound that Principal Sun had in his chest. Principal Sun told him to stay quiet to avoid the other students get scared and also the group of beasts to discover and find out. Meng Kao starts to panic as he saw Principal Sun's life-threatening wound and he was confused why does Principal Sun bursting with spiritual energy. However, Principal Sun can't fight anymore but he can't sit down either because he must not stop circulating his spiritual energy. It turns out that he's planning to scare the beast while he's unleashing all his spiritual flame because these monsters are smart. He was planning to do this until the reinforcement team find them. But Meng Kao was so down because at this rate Principal Sun would die. With his body's current state, he must be resting in medical treatment capsule and shouldn't be even moving a single finger. Principal Sun told him that everyone will die sooner or later and there's no guarantee when you die. Be it Red Dragon Army's identity or Ninth High or Principal identity or on just a normal Dragon City citizen. All of they will die and there's no escape for it. He knows that Principal Sun wasn't afraid of death but he must not die here. Just a sudden Principal Sun asks him with me, a hero. He added, you want a hero to watch these students fall into danger and not help them. Does a hero will get so tired just by killing a few dogs? He suddenly coughs of blood and his wound starts to burst out for exceeding his body capability. Principal Sun's spiritual flame is now becoming weaker and more started to disperse. The howling of the wolf group suddenly begun and this caught their attention. The blood smoke was about to reappear again and moving toward Meng Kao and Principal Sun again. As the blood smoke was about to reach Principal Sun, he charges up his spiritual energy again to help him. 
Principal Sun used the spiritual energy force to make a pulse of energy to push back the blood smoke. Meng Kao are just observing Principal Sun while the wolf group retreats again. Meng Kao told to Principal Sun that he was willing to enter space turbulence to save them because in the students' eyes he was a hero. But Principal Sun still insists that since he was a hero there's even no more reason for him to retreat. Meng Kao was so speechless after hearing those words from Principal Sun. So, he tries to voluntarily to bring the other students into the forest and stall for the wolves while Principal Sun could rest for a while. But he only got scolded by Principal Sun, because he is just going to bring the students to die from this situation. Meng Kao recommending that they just need to rush towards Dragon City's direction and kill wolves along the way until the reinforcement team will arrive. Somehow Meng Kao realized that Principal Sun didn't contact the reinforcement team and only trying to easing everyone and stalling. He explained that the team isn't far away, if not 20 minutes they might took one hour to find their location and current duty is to scare the beast using whatever he can do until the reinforcement team arrive. Time to time, Principal Sun was losing blood from the injury and Meng Kao was starts to worry about him. He told to Meng Kao that he's not a hero and only just an ordinary normal human that must bet and risk everything in order to save everyone. Even if bones are shattered there are also things that need to be done as he added. So, he trying to comfort Meng Kao to eat some monster's flesh to recover their stamina because if he dies before the reinforcement team arrive, they will rely on themselves. Meng Kao didn't think twice and just did what Principal Sun told them since he was right about it. Everyone starts to eat monster's flesh while crying. Some students start to meditate while Principal Sun stalling them to regain their stamina. While Meng Kao was thinking a way to win from these monsters, a few minutes had passed. Principal Sun asks Meng Kao if in the future Dragon City, will it be still bustling like this day? Meng Kao replied that he must not worry because the future Dragon City will definitely be more bustling than today. Principal Sun was hoping that the future kids would live a happier life than these eras and also without having fear at these monsters. Meng Kao agreed to him that this would happen. Principal Sun starts to lose his consciousness because of losing stamina due to the wounds that he received. Meng Kao catches him up immediately and apologizing at Principal Sun for not knowing the future whether or not they can conquer the other world. As Meng Kao about to continue of what he's talking, he suddenly stopped, because Principal Sun replied him for being stupid kid. He told him that it's fine whether or not they can conquer the other world while grabbing him. He added that they just don't get conquered by the other world and monsters. After these worlds Principal Sun dies due to losing too much blood. Meng Kao was speechless after another person dies in front of him. Suddenly the Wolf King spokes to them that the old man finally died. The Wolf King was going to approach them. While Meng Kao holding the corpse of Principal Sun, the Wolf King told him to run and leave the corpse behind. Meng Kao starts to burst out his anger. He put the must and cotton balls to prepare himself to fought back the Wolf King while the reinforcements weren't arrived yet. The Wolf King spreads the blood smoke while demanding them to run back to their shining nest and sparing their life. But Meng Kao wasn't afraid of him and asking if he was trying to teach him how to do things. The beast is injured so it doesn't want to fight him back after he leave. The Wolf King will kill the other students and recover the beast fully. The Blood Moon Slaughter mission is he only need to escape alive and he can earn 5000 contribution points. With his points, entering the main course won't be hard for him since Tinders is a huge help. He reminds the principal son said to him that every human will do anything even though they die just to risk everything. Even this is reckless, Meng Kao decided to not join to the main course of the Tinder's mission. He became selfless and wanting to destroy every monster that going to stop him. He used Tinder to upgrade his 100 War Sword Technique Ultimate Realm Burst Boost. The Wolf King was confused for Meng Kao because he already offered to letting him up but he was trying to do something. He replied that the Wolf King only let him off but he doesn't want to spare the Wolf King. He needs to consume and use energy to increase his realm. After drinking the potion his energy berserker burst of which is enough to fight the Wolf King. Meng Kao and the Wolf King starts to engage to each other to fight. Unfortunately, the Wolf King was so powerful that made Meng Kao got hit at his abdomen. Because of the Meng Kao flew away so hard after getting hit. Everyone was fighting for their own survival and Meng Kao came across them. The Wolf King lunges at him while he's in midair. This made everyone panics as they saw Meng Kao about to get eaten by the Wolf King. Meng Kao's left hand got bitten by the Wolf King and he can't move by it. He got furious after this. Suddenly something broke free from Meng Kao's inner spiritual energy. Meng Kao's spiritual tattoo starts to appear while being bitten by the Wolf King. It turns out that Meng Kao break through during a near-death situation to become a superhuman being. Meng Kao tries to fight back and used his sword to swing it to the Wolf King. He manages to land a swing of his sword and the Wolf King endure the pain. Because of the pain, the Wolf King shakes him off and Meng Kao loses his grip from his sword. Meng Kao activates the Reckless Bull to make his shoulder tougher. The Wolf King was still so furiously swinging him up. Just a moment, the Wolf King slams him into a tree. 
the Wolf King simultaneously slamming Meng Kao on these trees while Meng Kao can't fight back. Meng Kao spits blood after being slammed so hard. He's so desperate to kill the Wolf King to avoid any chance to harm humans. So, he was thinking another way to fight this beast. Suddenly, Meng Kao notices his spiritual tattoo and energy raised up just a sudden. His spiritual energy exceeds his expectation because it came from out of nowhere. He had a thought of this might be Principal Sun's heroic spirit that helping him to raise his spiritual energy. He made a form of his hands like what Principal Sun doing when charging the spiritual energy. He combines the Principal Sun's Devil's Pestle and Meng Kao's Ultimate Realm's Hundred War Sword technique. He manages to pierce to the Wolf King's head with this combined technique. The spiritual energy starts so burst out inside the Wolf King's head because of how powerful this technique was. The Blood Moon Demon Wolf felt that their Wolf King died. So, they run away to retreat since their pack has no longer had a king. The students start to celebrate their victory and they are now gladly happy that they survive. However, Liu Hai noticed something strange from the Blood Moon Demon Wolf's movement for being to organized and the Wolf King's roar must have been an order roar. So, he assumes that Meng Kao possibly heavily damaged the Wolf King and the Wolf King had to summon the Wolf Group back to help him. He immediately calls everyone to chase the Blood Moon Demon Wolves because it will save the Wolf King. All the student rushes and didn't waste any time. Liu Hai was hoping that Meng Kao must be still alive until they come. The Wolf King told to Meng Kao to run away. But Meng Kao's hand was still inside the Wolf King's head. The Wolf King told him that his wolf group will arrive very soon and this was his last chance to survive. But Meng Kao insists that even if he got devoured by the wolf group, he won't let him escape from him. Meng Kao's hand was about to reach the Wolf King's brain to kill the beast directly but he was 20 centimeters away. So, he tries his beast to reach the Wolf King's brain to make a direct hit. Meng Kao succeed from his limitation in order to kill the Wolf King. So, he used Devil's Pestle again to dig deeper from the Wolf King's head. The Wolf King realized that this was the scariest part of human. Meng Kao was proudly calling Principal Sun that he manages to kill the Wolf King and before losing consciousness he had a glance of the Wolf Group. Meng Kao was so drained while his hand was deep inside the Wolf King's head. Principal Sun's spiritual energy patted him before it gone and Meng Kao lose his consciousness. The Wolf Group was rushing toward him. They are so furious as they saw their Wolf King already dead and lying on the ground. The students have been late because the group of demon wolves are now close charging toward Meng Kao. Liu Hai starts to panic since they had no time. One of the wolves pounces at Meng Kao, but all of a sudden someone slashes this demon. The demon wolves had been shooting by someone and dying one by one. It turns out the rescue team finally arrived at their location and going to help them up. Liu Hai felt relief as the rescue team finally arrived. After a week at Dragon City Underground Honeycomb Stereo Grave, Principal Sun's funeral happened. Teacher Yan starts to call everyone to bid their farewell toward the normal Dragon City citizen Sun Dazing. He is one of first batch of people who was living in the Dragon City but to protect humanity. And Dragon City, he gave up everything that he had. Even during his last seconds, he was still fighting hard for Dragon City's future. In order to save everyone and now he will definitely rest in peace. Teacher Yan was so sad after losing someone important for him. After the ceremony, Chu calls Teacher Yan. Teacher Yan told to Chu to visit Meng Kao since he was in coma for the last seven days. He also mentions that they will be enrolled in different university for possible much more chances where they can see each other. Chu thanks teacher Yan after this. On the other side Zai Okao was crying beside him while promising that she will get better and won't slack during stance practice anymore. She was complimenting Meng Kao for performing just like a hero even though she didn't saw him. She misses of how his brother Meng Kao debating and everything they go through. She was deeply sad that even Meng Kao was in coma, she was demanding to argue with her while holding his hands. She told him that Hero won't make themselves badly injured so they can slack on bed. Meng Kao starts to tremble while sweating too much while sleeping. Seven days later he finally recovers himself. He woke up and still at the hospital while beside him was Sayo Kao waiting for him to wake up. He assumes that he just had a bad dream after having a severe shockwave that affect him after killing the Blood Moon Wolf King. But he was curious of why is there such place in the Wolf King's memory that also has a blood pool and cocoon that made him think that the monster could be not born but are man-made. Even though he's someone who is reborn, he still has less knowledge of this world so he must go to find out those hidden secret. Suddenly the tinder gives him a message from its notification. He completed the Blood Moon Slaughter mission so he received 9999 contribution points. Kill the strong while being weaker by killing Blood Moon Wolf King with 5,545 contribution points. Inherit Hero Citizens will gives him 5,045 contribution points. Along with these rewards he obtained Super Being Ability Devil Pestle. He already has the will to become a hero like Principal Sun. So, he immediately looks for the new things that he can unlock after receiving too much contribution points. 
As he opens there is a list of Cicada Technique 8888, Magnetic Field Speed Up Technique 15,000, Advanced Shooting Skills 19,000, and lastly Intermediate Healing Technique 9,999. He was so shocked as he saw the amount of contribution points for every skill and technique after breaking on his life force limit. All of a sudden, he noticed Sayo Kao with a drawing of herself and him that trying to wake him up. Just a sudden she was asking for another meat from her dream. Meng Kao startled that the future darkness which snorts while sleeping. Meng Kao did so many things and it result of decreasing by 10% the darkening rate. And he was wondering of devil bloodline that he didn't notice in his past life. Because of too much stress he was having a headache. Luckily, he was treated from a private hospital that Elder Ning suggests to send him to Green Capsule Treatment Center to receive treatment. At private hospitals, the official only helped to pay the half while the remaining half are paid by Elder Ning and Yishi organization to show their gratitude toward Tinder Old Man. By Elder Ning and Dr. Su's hard work, they managed to make Meng Kao's body to recover immediately. Because of this type of treatment was way above normal human standards. Also because of the berserk spiritual energy, it has let him awaken and become a super being before and opened up his three main vessels of his right arm. But the price is other main vessels got damaged. Which means he become the so-called cripple super being and if nothing goes wrong, he will only be able stay at earth rank super being for the rest of his life. So, he thinks that there's always a path that he can take when he's alive and it's better being a crippled super being than dying. To praise his heroic action in the forest, Survival Committee Club, Red Dragon Army and Super Being Tower all give him badges. Intermediate healing can heal his main vessel, but it seems like each time it can only heal once and the price will continue to increase each time he uses it. The 108 main vessels are large number in front of him so he feels that even if he become Dragon City Mayor, he can't obtain so many contribution points so he's going to find another way. The next day he goes in Super Being Tower to report. He was so amazed to see that Super Being Tower being so spectacular for him. From out of nowhere, he was called by Liu Hai and happy to see him already awaken. He shows his spiritual energy tattoo at Meng Kao. He then stated that he barely opened up 61 main vessel, and now he can fight with those Dragon Martial Courses prodigies. He wants to convey with Meng Kao to thank him for saving his life from the test. Because if Meng Kao weren't encouraged him in the wild, he'd be killed by the Blood Moon Demon Wolf and never would become a super being. However, Meng Kao Loki humbled that it's nothing for him and thanks him for his father for giving a valuable material for his recovery. Yuo Hai also felt guilt for Meng Kao's unable to recover his main vessel. Then Meng Kao got speechless by this. Yuo Hai discussed the ancient ruin below the super being tower. Meng Kao had some background about this that the starry sky civilization's relic that they can't understand and it's been buried underground. Super being tower was built for the sole purpose of researching it. This place where miracle happens and where everything is possible, and they believe that as ancient ruins development progress speeds up that they can go across each technology difficulty. He believed that one day, they can solve his crippled super being problem and have a chance to rise up to the peak of super being tower. After that he planned that they will stop talking about all of this for now. According to rules, just awakened super being are need to come to super human being tower to register themselves. Even Meng Kao not having a feeling to any hostile intention for him. Instead he feel near Max's sincerity. Somehow, he was confused why he feel like Liu Hai asked him to come at Super Being Tower to come while having other goals. When they got inside, they met named Ah Hai and welcomed him for saving Liu Hai from the Blood Moon Demon Wolf. It was actual father of Liu Hai that gives him the resources for his recovery and he thanked him for it. Ah Hai patted him while he's going to tell him the reason why did he invite both of them. First, he wants Meng Kao to thank him for helping Liu Hai as a father. Second, he also represent the Super Being Association to praise Meng Kao for his heroic action. He was impressed for Meng Kao's sword technique for being fierce, ruthless and has a feeling of cutting apart everything. He explains that his technique wasn't that bad but before he shatters the monster's bone, his vessel, and nerve will explode first that's why he became crippled Super Being. He was going to show a way that could help Meng Kao to change and modify his technique. Ah Hai demonstrate the way of slashing of his sword in different ways and angle to maximize the force without damaging himself. Although the power was decreased by 3%, the stability and flow will increase greatly. Meng Kao was flabbergasted as he saw a six-star super being capable. Ah Hai assumed that the stab he used was combination of hundred war sword technique and devil's pestle so he also going for it. He was interested for Meng Kao that's why he's going to help him to improve hit technique so he shows it. Meng Kao starts to focus to take anything that could help him to improve. Ah Hai lunges while charging the combined technique of 100 war sword technique and devil's pestle. As he swings his hand on the wall, 
He manages to make a through the wall without his hand reaching and by using only the spiritual energy. Suddenly a powerful force hits the wall that resulting to breaking it using only the spiritual force that he used. Meng Kao starts to be motivated as he saw that he could possibly improve his techniques. Ah Hai told him that if a low rank super being made achievement, he could be qualified to get teachings from the high rank super being. They were shocked as the wall about to shatter even though the cultivation room wall is made up using macro molecule gathered energy absorbing material. Ah Hai told to Meng Kao that his turn this time to try what he learned from him. Meng Kao immediately take the form and gather the spiritual energy using the devil pestle. And he tried it out. After trying so many times he finally learned the super being technique to send devil slash with proficiency rate normal rank 1%. By Master A Luo Wu's guidance, he learned this to send devil slash immediately. He told to Meng Kao that who did contributions should be rewarded so the mindset can be pass on and this is one of the supers being towers tradition. Meng Kao had a thought of all Luo Hai saw his hundred war sword technique so demonic changes business road and decided to work with him and promote for free, and then through martial art techniques said to earn money. So, he assumed that they must heard something from Elder Ning that made the idea to build relationship with him and tender old man. But Luo Hai finally shown his true colors after asking Meng Kao for their future's cooperation. Meng Kao asks him if it was cooperation or recruiting so Luo Hai responded that if it was recruiting will he accept it. They live in an era where anything can happen outside of fog and no one knows how many benefits and risks so he was making sure that his business gets larger and strong. So, he asks Meng Kao if he was willing to be his co-leader to build his own super being team. But Meng Kao tries to think about it first since he was thinking that he's not suitable as co-leader. Liu Hai was trying his best to assure that Meng Kao would go at him before Meng Kao become famous and many offers for him to had come. But Meng Kao thought of that could be reasonable however he asks him why he's not the one going to build a team instead and Luo replied that because he was crippled. Meng Kao told him that even how many vessels are open and know how to fight or not it will be completely two different things. So, he explains that even crippled super being may have less techniques but they are still strong enough. Because of this Luo Hai offers a duel and if he defeated Meng Kao, he will join to his team and Meng Kao if he defeats Luo Hai instead. Both of them moves back to prepare themselves. Both of them lunges to each while Luo Hai used Break Soul Sword and Meng Kao used Descend Devil Slash. Their attacks had been collided. Suddenly a large explosion of spiritual energy came up from the collision of their attacks. Luo Hai expected that Meng Kao was quite strong to handle him so he got hyped up. Meng Kao thanked him for praising him up while charging at him. Luo Hai immediately reacted into it. He leans his back to dodge Meng Kao attack and luckily, he manages to dodge it. Luo Hai felt such pity at Meng Kao for being crippled super B and the changes won't be enough. He did the break soul slash again but this time using his foot. Meng Kao felt irritated since his spirit vessel amount isn't enough that making him can't continuously use the descended devil slash. However, Liu Hai was so confidently wanting to win at Meng Kao so he wanted to be his co-leader before he recovers his spirit vessel. Meng Kao decided to come closer since he won't be able to attack with long range. He charges his spiritual energy to make an attack. Liu Hai notices that Meng Kao trying to come closer to him to make up for being crippled super being weakness. So, Liu Hai launches a break soul slashes toward Meng Kao. But Meng Kao dodges all of it without any problem. Meng Kao was planning to make a supper killer technique and he even considered himself as mechanic, beast type even a military's shooting technique. Meng Kao's hand was close to Liu Hai's face. But Liu Hai leaned down again to dodge this dangerous attack. He got wondered how did Meng Kao manages to do this even though he had damaged vessel and by this he might have a better future than his father than could exceed into his realm. However, Liu Hai decided to try the open spirit vessels to attack Meng Kao. He got hit by open spirit vessel at his chest. Because of this Meng Kao spits a blood. The blood that the spit landed from Liu Hai's face, and it blocks his vision. Liu Hai was about to reach Meng Kao's throat while Meng Kao was about to reach Liu Hai's eye. Liu Hai assumed that Meng Kao's left arm can't shoot out spirit flame so he can't deal with him while he can directly activate spiritual flame to slash Meng Kao's throat. He assumed that he won their fight. Meng Kao replied that he had a fun fight with him while having more interest in his corporation. Meng Kao thanks him for a spare fight while Luo Hai asking him if he's now going to join into his team. But Meng Kao told him that he didn't win against him. This made Luo Hai got confused for denying his defeat from their fight. Luo Hai calls his father in voice call to tell him what happened because he didn't understand. While his father doing the training, he explains that if it was real battle, Meng Kao's hand will be not only poking his eyes either not going to be his finger. He added that Meng Kao's strongest part is his shooting technique because he shoots more than 10 bullets on gold target from the shooting skill. 
Meng Kao purposely took a hit so he can spit out his blood to disrupt Liu Hai's vision. Also, the hand with a weird gesture that he said was Meng Kao holding a gun and already aimed at his eyes that ready to shoot. If it was a real battle, Liu Hai would have died many times already and he got shocked after hearing this. Meanwhile Meng Kao was in the bathroom cleaning himself. He felt relief that this fight was worth it for him to help him recall many things. Human body is formed by 108 main vessels and 1024 support vessels. The killer moves need to active the 108 main vessels to mobilize the magnetic field to unleash strong killer move. But this is also making them unable to move and will appear as accumulate state. Waiting for killer move to form, but they will stay frozen. And to calm the vessels so they have to face the cooldown state but these three problems can't be solved. During the beginning period of the monster war, killer move type martial artist relies on strong power to defeat monsters and obtain achievements. But as the war progress many monsters grasp to near-death mutation and sudden revivability. Due to killer move, martial artists stayed either under accumulate, frozen or cooldown state and died. After countless price and sacrifice, experts and veteran finally changed their mindset and tried a new type of combat mode. This was the limit type which different from killer move with 1000 main vessels with our slender and weak veins as they're unable to instantly unleash killer technique. But once they get into attack tempo, Normal move with combo continuous technique still can cause great damage. Almost no accumulate, frozen, or the cooldown thus can attack and defend and this was the greatest advantage. In the later stage of the monster war using continuous technique to stun or make the monster get blown away, and by using of this period to unleash strong killer technique to end the battle. It's became the best battle method for a martial artist. In his past life, Dragon City wasted too many times and resources, sacrificed too many experts and veterans. So, he has to let limit type get known and let veterans change their style. Later that night, Meng Kao looked for the talented individuals who are currently researching on limit type. He saw a familiar name Gu Jian Bo which an under weightlessness state. So, he wondered who was this guy from his past life. Suddenly, he remembered something as he recalled from his past. He reminds the sword storm dancer Gu Jian Bo the limit type creator, and he was the ancestor of the limit type that was said that if didn't die he'd have reached god realm. He got excited to make him owe a favor or increase his favorability of him and hug his tight then he won't need to use tender old man title anymore. Zai Okao heard him saying that he had decided hugging the tights. Suddenly he heard her for saying whose tights are you hugging. Zai Okao told to their parents that Meng Kao was browsing dirty websites again. They had a conflict after assuming Meng Kao doing naughty things with the internet. Meng Kao told to their parents that not to always protect Zai Okao who spouts nonsense because she had to be punished. Somehow their mother told them to stop fighting for a while since their father was going to say something. His father has to think to saw, and the first one is good news. Because of Meng Kao's excellent performance their family had been offered by the survival committee to prepare their new home at the Hong Hu Garden tomorrow, and they were happy for it. The second this is Meng Kao's class teacher called and asked if Meng Kao has filled his ambition for the college meaningly. He had to complete it by this week and never forget it due to other things. Somehow, Zio Kao spout again saying that Meng Kao definitely forgotten about it because of browsing dirty things again. Suddenly her mother scolded Meng Kao for thinking that he's bullying his sister. Meng Kao told to his father that he must not worry about it because he already decided on which university. He would go so his father which one of the agricultural resources or dragon martial art. He responded the agricultural martial art course because he had seen his future from there. Tinder activated the continuous mission limit breaker. The mission notification is all new wars require a new battle mindset and let limit type replace the killer move to make the era of killer move change and let those monster get crushed by warriors. First round was helping Sword Storm dancer Gu Giant Bu to finalize the limit type combat mode while the complete standard was Tinder successor. Or Gu Giant Bu quench 1024 vessels to increase support vessel instant attack power and then create it to at least 1 over 10 main vessels. The first round mission reward will be 8000 contribution points along with repair and heal of 10 main vessels of Meng Kao. Meng Kao and his family finally have a new home after achieving a huge contribution throughout the elite citizens of Dragon City. Zai Okao was so happy after having a new home and a bouncy bed after staying at their rental house for too long. She even began to act like ignorant after seeing new things at her eyes. This was Hong Hu Gardens which is their new house and Meng Kao was so happy for making his family satisfied for new home. However, Zai Okao suddenly not speaking after being so excited from their new house. Somehow, she felt that she doesn't feel like changing their house and so Meng Kao asked her if what's the reason for it. She remembers what Meng Kao told at her about the monsters going to attack more frequently. 
The survival Kaminutes also have policies that family like theirs which have ability and a chance to move Tian Fu Fan Street. One day, if all those with ability move from Tian Fu Fan Street, it will be only be left with those older, sick and crippled people. Meng Kao thought that her words are reasonable about this issue. So, they look at each other to agree into something. Their mother was there for many years and suggested that this house was a good idea. So, Meng Kao asks his father. So, his father agreed with it. Therefore, he immediately comforts Sio Kao to avoid thinking unnecessary things. He made fun at her for being crybaby while telling her that this place will be better for them. She suddenly got mad after Meng Kao teases her up. Their parents were too happy to see them that they going along again after all the problem that they've been through. Under Elder Ning's recommendation, Meng Kao went for youth training camp to train harvest and hunt technique. Meanwhile, Meng Kao had to take a lesson from Lightning Team Youth Training Holiday class. He also has completed a few Super Beast harvests, with Elder Ning thus he gained some connection with Lightning Team's higher-ups. Not long after, agricultural notification letter reached their house. Fei Qing Chu got an additional mark during the test with extra point five point advantage after gotten into military school's heroic spirit course unlike his past life where he could only be a normal soldier. Because of their grandma Wang entered the Immortal Club, Sia Huan gotten special privilege to change to a better and closer to school's rental house. Since he was already teen, according to government policies he can request for 705 to stay the same. Even though they didn't go to Honghu Garden however their house became more spacious. After the busy holiday came to end and the time for their school started again. The next day at Chendong, Jiu Sha Area University City, Zai Okao suddenly got amazed again from the technology from this university. This was the Construction High's AI drone group that used to welcome freshmen and they have all sorts of disruption and attack system. They saw some students practicing their forms to enter for the entrance exam. Zio Kao was curious about the light fog above the student's head so Meng Kao explains that this was their war soul that formed with countless spirits. In front of them is the agricultural university. Meng Kao wants to move forward. All of the students gathered to start the freshman ceremonial to their university. As Zio Kao walking, she noticed something. She smelled something foul from this area. This was caused by the countless monsters that fertilized and mix of microorganisms. Zio Kao was speechless about this. Meng Kao added that this was agricultural, that's why they put everything in to help the agriculture. Before the army moves out, the food needs to be moved and without agricultural research on plant, they will only suffer from hunger. The ginseng sky tree is all high-energy bread tree not only they have high nutrients and also having the tree gum for being natural gel type of medicine that can improve and speed up wound recovery. While Zio Kao was amazed of the huge skeleton, Meng Kao told her that this monster was invaded the Dragon City 25 years ago and to suppress this lightning god beast they needed the work of five god realm super being. She was amazed of how powerful was this monster. It was so strong but ended up dead and the bones was useless and thrown here to use as school entrance. The martial artist course and tamer courses arena competition was trying to decide which was the agricultural university's strongest course. Meng Kao invites his parents to what over the martial artist course and tamer course to decide which one was the stronger. They were about this so, they decided to go for it. In agricultural university, even among the whole super being circle, tamer course and martial art course always fight because of different mindset. To encourage the students to work hard, the agricultural university will arrange freshmen to have a duel. The guy began to expand his powers to show the powers martial art course to all freshmen. However, the guy starts to cast his power while teasing the martial art course for being a group of reckless barehen fighters. It turns out that he was a tamer and suddenly summon a monster using his power. The martial artist course begun to jump towards the monster. While the monster and the guy were about to collide, they have did everything to land a powerful blow to each other. The martial artist student was confidently to kill this monster with his power. He then suddenly rushes toward the host while it's being off-guarded to control the tamed monster. The martial artist was so close to lunges at him while he was standing still. The tamed monster became aware of the situation. So, it uses its tail to attack him even though he crossed at him. He slammed him with his tail that resulting him to flew away from the host while standing still. He purposely shown an opening and yet the martial artist can't tell his intention that making him plain stupid by his action. Everyone cheered him up for being a good super being. Zio Kao becomes so excited after seeing the tamer course capable of what it can do. As they talking to each other, someone told them that Meng Kao has to pick the martial art course. She added that she was being curious of his talent and points and follow up a question of why he didn't join to resource course. Meng Kao can't talk about the limit type technique so he changes the topic that he wanted to fight the monsters barehanded since relying in gun and cannon mechanic wasn't fun. 
So, she decided not to force Meng Kao to choose the resource course since it's not too late. She invited him to go for the senior sisters to register them. They finally arrived at the registration area. She helped Meng Kao for their registration since they are fresh man from this university. Meng Kao thank her up for helping him to enrolling to the university that saves them a lot of time. They continue to explore the agriculture university to seek some information. Zhu Xi told to Meng Kao's parents that they couldn't go any further, but the canteen prepared many foods for them that they can buffet. Meng Kao supported this that the agricultural university's food was delicious that they might go try. Zai Okao immediately got excited for it. She pushes her parents toward the canteen while their parents were worried for Meng Kao. He got speechless for Zai Okao actions. Zhu Xi compliments Zai Okao's cuteness while Meng Kao agreed for it. However, someone called Meng Kao's name behind them. As they turn around, they saw Zai Feng from the entrance exam. Meng Kao thought that Zai Feng would be a cool guy that never talked too much but somehow, he's way too talkative. Zhu Xi wanted to leave him alone since one of Meng Kao's friends came up. She immediately leaves them both while Meng Kao and Zai Feng waving at her. Just a sudden Zai Feng wraps his hand to Meng Kao's neck. He wanted to guide Meng Kao from the Marshall College with him and introduce to their class. Meanwhile at the Agricultural University and Life Force Science Academy, Meng Kao was wondering why Zai Feng chooses the Agricultural University even though his points aren't enough to go Dragon University. Zai Feng introduces that the martial art course among the freshmen is only need to take note of three people. They are known as the Freshmen's Four Elite not only do their score rank top five also many main vessels are activated. She introduced Sunya which is a rank one in martial art course point with 77 main vessels activated and has great footwork, knows many strategic and extremely hard to deal with. The other one is Duan Lai in a rank two in martial art course point with 65 vessels activated and has strong skin and muscular and he advises him not to fight head on with him. The next one is Zhang Yu a rank 4 with 60 main vessels activated but 90% of the lower part are activated meaningly he was specializing with speed and jump power. But Meng Kao got curious why there's only 3 people that he introduced instead of 4 people. He said that he's with these 4 elites. He named himself as the rank 5 in martial art course point with 60 main vessels activated but unlike the other most focused on both arms. He flexes his energy vessels at Meng Kao. Upon Meng Kao's assumption. He definitely had higher points than Zai Feng so he assumed that he might be rank 3. He said that Zai Feng needs to know something which is common sense. There will be 5 elites among the 4 elites and that 5th one is the strongest of all so Zai Feng got confused. Somehow, one teacher had announced the 55th Agricultural Martial Art Corps students will be represented to welcome the freshman students. This guy was Jiang Ming known as Cold-Blooded Martial Art Course Instructor a 6-star Heaven Realm. The students were preparing for themselves as freshman students. Jiang Ming starting to call out all the students to split each other depending on their gender and change into their combat set. As Meng Kao expected of the agricultural university, the set is much more comfortable than the entrance exam one. He immediately prepares himself. However, each student's head cup has 2,000 starting monster coin. Meng Kao felt awkward after the weird design of the cup because of its ugliness. In agricultural university, they show the list of prices of what lesson they want to learn which means they are the one will be decided. The students begun to panic as they saw the amount of Zhang Ming instructor need while the other students thought that one meal is like a robbery for its amount. While Zai Feng was talking, Meng Kao burst out laughing as he saw him having this cup at his head that looking him way too funny for him. While Meng Kao had a doubt, Zhang Ming told the students not to worry so much. Because the school will provide as many chances to obtain monster coin to ensure that everyone gets treatment and things that fit their combat ability. The game rule was in half hour. Everyone who'll stay can freely interact. So, Jiang Ming advises them to think of a way to take other people's monster coin and put it into their cup. However, their combat set can protect them meaningly they don't have to worry about getting injured. Jiang Ming tosses a coin to indicate the game starts from now on. Because of the coin that he tossed, the students start to fight behind them for a monster coin. Everyone begun to attack each other to take others' monster coins. One of the students took the other student's coin. However, she used these coins to throw to the other students to make a distraction. She then trips the guy to fall off from the ground. She made a successful kick to make this guy turn around. She then made another attack from the guy to make all the coins throw away from the cup. This woman was Sonya that one of the elite students from martial art course. From out of nowhere, one student was praising her for being so good. But she didn't show any mercy and attacks the off-guarded woman while saying that monster coins can't be earned by praising others. Jiang Ming amazed for Sunya's performance for being smart and rules that making her fit to absorb wyvern dragon-type super beast's beast soul to cultivate. 
He assumed that she could become like Teacher Lai. Teacher Lai responded that she must need to gather 20,000 monster coin first because no matter how good a genius they may be they could still be bad after the game. This was Griffin, Lai Yingzai a martial art course instructor with 5 star heaven realm. The game rules may look simple for them but it's not simply to obtain sufficient amount of monster coin. Strong students who want to learn under Zhang Ming and Lai Yingzai could have to take initiative and attack before weaklings group could think. But defeating the student doesn't mean they'll obtain monster coins and there are also chances of third party that waiting for coins to drop and grab by them. The cup was especially designed when there are less monster coins it won't fall out but when the coin monster increase, a slight shack will make many coins fall out. The cup can hold at most 150 coins which means if someone wants to gather 20,000, they have to grab the other coin while fighting. Since Sunny is one of the freshmen's four elites, she manages to fight a huge number of students. The low rank students prioritize to attack the four elites together to remove any problem later. Because of the four elites' pressure, many will form small group to fight with them using combination and teamwork. For those that got their monster coins stolen are also not to be underestimated. However, someone approached Meng Kao while he's watching. It was Xi Feng that he wanted to work for him so he immediately asks him. Xi Feng confused what's with him to work with Meng Kao. Meng Kao told him that he must need to work with him somehow. This is because that Meng Kao's main vessels are damaged that cause his cultivate slow, and his limit wasn't that high. Xi Feng immediately wanted to work with him to obtain a 20,000 monster coins. From now on until the game ends, Xi Feng must listen to Meng Kao's order and they will split the monster coins in half. He called him out to come with him and beat Duan Lion and make all his monster coins then recruit him. After beating up Duan Lion, he is now targeting Zhang Rui who runs fast from for elites. Meng Kao successfully defeated Zhang Rui to recruit them as his pawn to work with him. Right now, they are now aiming to recruit Sun Ni to join to their team. Duan Lion insisted wanting to work with Meng Kao but he loses so he needed to stick for his plan. She belittled the other four elite for being weak and ending up to work with Meng Kao. However, Meng Kao teases her up for being not dumb even though being in martial art course. He explains that the plan was they had to snatch monster coins while Meng Kao was going to guard for it then they will split up equally. The four elite freshman students become furious from what he said and this was their genuine reactions. He told them at first, they have a competitor's relationship without him so they can't trust each other if they can't work together. Secondly, they must wear battle sets since there is limited place to keep monster coins. Lastly, they need someone to keep watching the loot so they can go for all out. Jiang Yu becomes skeptic about the four of them are the one snatching them, so why they have to split equally with a fragment of super being like Meng Kao. So, he explains that the basic foundation of working together is fairness. Jiang Yu begun to move after understanding the situation. They needed to work together to defeat him first and Meng Kao agreed with it. Somehow, Meng Kao suggested that he can't beat them all if they work together so he suggested that he can only hold Xi Feng and beat him until he loses the ability to fight. Xi Feng become nervous after Meng Kao targeting again even though he was talking to Zhang Rui. Xi Feng apologizes to Duan Lion for only dragging him down along with them. Sun Ya laughs at them after assuming that the elite four like them are the true stupid ones. So, she suggested Zhang Rui to calm down and try to listen at Meng Kao for a while since the time is limited. While they are busy talking, other students taking this opportunity to pick up the fallen monster coins from the ground. So, Sunya became mad for these people who loot from other people. She wants to enjoy herself. She immediately attacks those students who take granted while they are busy talking to their plan. Each target just gets around 10 as she said and she also added that firstly difficult would be lesser, secondly loss is lesser, and lastly, they won't risk lives to fight with Meng Kao and others. So, they are now agreed in Meng Kao suggesting that it was reasonable so they must keep their stamina sufficient. They now planning to begun and get along to the plan. Duan Lion and Xi Feng starts to attack the other students to farm coins while Zhang Rui had no choice than following Meng Kao orders. So he go along with the plan while Meng Kao doing nothing and just watching them to fight the other students. Jiang Rui was doubting at Meng Kao while hoping that his fist is also as strong of his tongue to protect the monster coins that they will spend effort and time to snatch. Meng Kao explains that he just need the Elite Four to work harder and beat all the people that are stronger until they can't stand up and naturally there'll be no one to snatch the monster coins. Zhang Ming got interested from Meng Kao after being a good and smart student. He's been amazed of Meng Kao's skill that manages him to convince to get interested to try and teach him. Also, Lai Ying Zai got her interest for being Meng Kao's personal instructor if he manages to get 19,000 monster coins. However, Meng Kao starts to do the dragon snake stance all of a sudden. He then starts to dug five different holes into the land as he liked planning to do. 
It turns out that these holes will help him to put all the monster coins to protect it while the Elite Four are fighting the other students. From out of nowhere, he suddenly yells about the 10,000 monster coins that was enough for them so they can come back. Sonya become furious of what he did after yelling about the monster coins that made everyone hear about this. Meng Kao didn't stop and keep yelling about the place that has 10,000 monster coins that Elite Four guarding. Meng Kao keeps giving a hint about the monster coins that around him while the Elite Four are busy fighting the lower rank students. Just a moment the Elite Four player starts to surround Meng Kao while they were trying to protect him. The lower class students lose their hope for trying to fight against the four elite students. Jiang Ming announces that there are only 10 seconds left from the exam so they must start to prepare. 9 seconds left. As the 8 seconds left announce, Meng Kao told to everyone to prevent someone change heart. The last 5 second everyone will take out the monster coin. This way everyone will be safe and Sunya agreed. As the timer hits 6 seconds, everyone begun to prepare themselves to take the monster coin. As it hit 5, everyone began to take their monster coins for themselves. However, Du and Lion began to get greedy after having a displeasure toward Jiang Yu. Meng Kao expected that someone could not bear this so he was already preparing from this scenario. So, he threw away some monster coins toward Du and Lion. He immediately reacted from this. Meng Kao actually used this to make distraction to make a move to punish Du and Lion from his action. So, Meng Kao casted energy to his hand to attack Du and Lion as punishment for his action. Meng Kao landed his hit at his face. Because of this attack, Duan losses his balance resulting of losing all the monster coins that he had from the entire examination. Meng Kao took all the monster coins that Duan losses from the event. Because of taking all Duan's monster coins, they got confused. He explains that they must not misunderstand for taking what belongs to him. Because of having beginner range harvest technique with extremely fast hand speed, Duan was so furious of what Meng Kao did to him. Jiang Ming finally announces that the examination trial already done. Duan was so mad for Meng Kao for being despicable after what he did to him and wanting to attack him. He teases him for breaking the rule if he attacks Meng Kao since the game was already ended. He is so mad at Meng Kao for treating him like that and this is caused by his action for being greed. Some of them start being confused for what actually happened. Meng Kao explains that Duan shouted Jiang Yu's name while taking the monster coins from the Hulk. So, Sunya and Zhang Yu got confused from calling out Zhang Yu's name by Duan. So, Meng Kao explained further that Duan used this distraction to divert Meng Kao's attention so he can sneak attack him. For being Duan as one of the elite's five, he knows that he wasn't so innocent that even have some tricks or scheme. Duan yelled at him for not framing him up to do this such thing at him and wanting to do what on the plan. Even though Meng Kao doesn't have evidence, Sunya and the other from the elite five students doesn't object these accusations. Duan knows that he's already done that ended up sabotaging himself toward the other students. Lai Ying Zai approaches Meng Kao for being first student in years freshman that accumulated 25,100 monster coins. The other students amazed from him while thinking he must be lucky, but some students are remembering him from the Blood Moon Wolf King. However, Meng Kao begun to look for someone as he finishes accumulating this such amount of monster coins. Lai Ying Zai assumes that he was looking for principal or the vice principal but she advises him that they were busy. But he suddenly thanks her for reminding these people but all this time he was looking for teacher Gu Jai and Bu as his teacher. She got flabbergasted as they heard about this. Everyone heard this that made them thinking that Meng Kao loses his mind for picking this guy. Lai Ying Zai asks him if there's any reason about this so Meng Kao responded that he thinks martial art idea fits him. Since Meng Kao already decided, she can't do anything about this so she told him where he could find teacher Gu. After the game, at the changing room. Meng Kao immediately changed into his student clothes. He goes out from the changing room. The students are approaching Lai Ying Zai and Zhang Ming for registering their monster coins. But Meng Kao didn't care about this to avoid trouble and moving forward to number 4 dining hall himself. Five minutes later, at the number 4 dining hall floor 3. As he enters, he got startled of what he saw. He saw martial students staring to each other while holding their food at the canteen. As he expected from the martial art course specialized dining hall. All the senior and sister stare at each other even during mealtime filled with hostile that means cultivate even during daily life. All of a sudden, the students began to fight to each other. All martial art course students are fighting to prove their power, while Meng Kao standing in the middle of the mess and speechless. From out of nowhere someone lunges toward him while he was trying to understand what is going on. So Meng Kao got aware from this person. He used his hundred war sword technique to chop his nuts while in midair. This guy name was Ma Hong which one of the known students and he was so mad at Meng Kao for what he just did to him. While enduring the pain, he was threatening Meng Kao that he didn't understand of what he did. He suddenly used his energy vessel 
and saying that after he beat Meng Kao, he will help him to find the person he's looking for. All of a sudden, Meng Kao flips a table. But Ma Hong easily destroys this table by his bare hands with a desire of attacking him. Somehow, Meng Kao already gone from his position. It turns out that he uses the table as distraction and jumping above Ma Hong while holding energy from his hand. Ma Hong had no idea of how Meng Kao manages get behind him that so fast. Meng Kao landed a devil pestle at Ma Hong, but he blocked it before it hit again at him. Because of the power of devil's pestle, Ma Hong moves out from his place even he was one of the strong students from the martial art course. Because of this, he got interested from Meng Kao of what he's capable for being strong. But Meng Kao gone again that made him mad. He began to look for him all over the canteen while Meng Kao was hiding because he doesn't come here to fight. After looking for more hiding spot, he saw a pile of table and chair from the corner of the canteen. So, he got for it to use this as his cover while hiding from the others. Meng Kao feel exhausted to fight Ma Hong so he decided to hide here for a while. From out of nowhere, there's a guy who eating a noodle behind him saying that Ma Hong was only because he was from Red Dragon Army's elite scout so he asks Meng Kao of what move he used against Ma Hong. He told him that he used Devil's Pestle and ask if he wants to try it. But he rejected this because he wasn't here to fight but to just eat. Meng Kao advises him not to fight and he asks if this guy seen teacher Gu Jian Bo. The guy suddenly asks him if what was Meng Kao purpose for looking at him. He responded that he wanted to become his disciple. The guy begun to acknowledge Meng Kao to avoid this guy for being scammer and just a trash who has no improvements. He explains that this guy has 1024 project which could be really impossible and he added that this guy was just a greedy. Even though this guy suggested not to pick this guy as his teacher, Meng Kao still insisted and trust his doubts about this guy. So, this guy asks Meng Kao if they know each other. Meng Kao only replied that he knows him for a long time that made this guy realize that Meng Kao really don't know each other. Meng Kao added that he believes that Gu Jai and Bo could definitely create a new battle mode that could change the real world resulting the humans will no longer to lose in any battle. After this, the guy pointed out Ma Hong that they were already found by him. The guy told him to act like they were fighting then as they fight, they will move to the window and jump out to escape the mess. The guy suddenly lunges a kick into him. It was so fast that he didn't even manages to dodge this because he wasn't expecting this to happen. He flew away because of this kick while Ma Hong got confused of what happened. However, Meng Kao recovered his position. He then starts to attack him to fight back this guy like what they are planning to do. The guy seems unbothered dodging Meng Kao's attack while he was eating his food and demanding for more speed from Meng Kao's strikes. So he teases him Meng Kao to stop acting easy for him even though it's just an act. Time to time, Meng Kao's speed improving and this guy liking it so much for having a feel that their fight making it seem real. Meng Kao losing his energy since he was already using all of his power. He got confused from this fatty guy for being so agile that make things doesn't make any sense for Meng Kao. Ma Hong becomes startled as he like saw two monsters fighting to each other. The guy noticed that they finally reached the window. So, he gives the sign that their next plan will be happen so he stopped Meng Kao's strike. They jumped out from the window to escape from the mess inside the canteen to avoid any conflict. Both of them landed on the land and tries to recover their momentum to avoid any fall damage. As they landed, Meng Kao was shivering while being confused from the guy landing so fine even in a such height. Meng Kao wonder his name and asking if where he could find him if they have a chance to convey more. This guy immediately running away from the question while suggesting Meng Kao to give up on finding Gu Jian Bo as his teacher. Suddenly, he bumped into Lai Zingyi while saying a name Gu Jian Bo. He immediately turned around while demanding for Meng Kao to move aside quickly. Meng Kao immediately did this while Gu Jian Bo running and thanking him to move aside. But Meng Kao had idea about this, so he trips him up. This leads to him to fall from the ground while Meng Kao whistling like nothing happened. He falls down from the ground with face first. Gu Jai and Bo begging for teacher Lai to be softer because there's a student around them. He was crying out for help from the others for being ashamed of what Lai did. Meng Kao startled after realizing this was really the teacher Gu Jai and Bo. Because in the official website, the picture was different and this is because of the picture was 10 years ago of him. He got flabbergasted after realizing the 10 years away from the present day. But he didn't need to care so much from his past life's memory won't be wrong since Gu Jian Bo was the creator of Limit Stot. All of a sudden, Meng Kao yelled that he wanted to teach her Gu's disciple. But teacher Gu can't believe that Meng Kao really wanting to be his disciple even though seeing him like this. All of a sudden teacher Lai demanding an explanation from teacher Gu. She is asking if why Meng Kao a first place student in the test was so eagerly wanting to be his disciple. But teacher Gu had no idea from him for being so desperate for being his disciple. Teacher Gu doesn't want to harm a talented individual but Meng Kao just came all by himself. 
Even though Teacher Gu indeed ridiculed himself, it still touched him very deeply. Teacher Lai asks him if why he was choosing Teacher Gu no matter what. Somehow, she realizes that Meng Kao is a fragment super being and the only place Gu Jai and Bo can attract this type of people. Teacher Lai suggesting to Teacher Gu to bring him along and swore that the Lai Fei Yu tragedy won't repeat again, and he responded that this won't happen again. So she leaves him immediately to have some time talking to each other. Teacher Gu having a thought that Meng Kao was desperately wanting to be his disciple because of the Project 1024. So he called him to follow him to show that truth about this project. They arrive at Agricultural Martial Art Old Building which is currently Agricultural Cultivate Class and Dormitory. Meng Kao had never thought that the Agricultural Garden still has such an old building. Teacher Gu opens up a gate that leading to their destination. Meng Kao was confused of they are heading in a basement. Something fell off after Teacher Gu told him that this basement wasn't been used for a long time. So, Meng Kao responded that it was okay for him then. They met a huge door with energy source in it and Teacher Gu put the passcode to open this door. Teacher Gu introduced the 1024 project starts but he also added that he didn't start this but Zhang Yi did. So, Meng Kao got confused from who was this Zhang Yi. He explained that Zhang Yi was the principal's son and he reached Heaven Realm at year 3 as Super Genie. But he died in the starting period of Project 1024 but previously he used a book to convince him and Ying Zai to start the Project 1024 to begin with him. But in the end Zhang Yi used himself for the experiment that result of got badly injured and later died in one of the experiment attempts. Because of the pain, spirit status exceeded to its limit that making Zhang Yi crazy before dying. Due to Zhang Yi's death, Ying Zai quitted and joined into Beast Soul Fuse Techniques research. But because of Teacher Gu's vanity, he decided to stay and continue the 1024 project research. As Meng Kao opened the book, he got startled of what he saw. Because in the book, there's a picture of several students who'd part of the experiment after discovering a new type of medicine. For absorbing that increases the main vessel spiritual absorb rate by 300% that made him a breakthrough in research. In the end, the last three volunteers all died because of the slight poison element deposition produced by the medicine. Even though they tested the medicine's safety they still weren't able to discover the deposition poison element. And Lai Fei Yu and other trusted unfortunately ended these people's bright future. Because of the frustration from the death of Zong Yu and Lai Tian Yu, he assumes that this project is a curse for genius B and he can't be master of Meng Kao. He then bows his head after thinking that he can't do anything about this problem. All of a sudden, he asks teacher if is that right while having a death stare at him. After Teacher Gu heard this, he got confused of what was his point for saying this. Meng Kao told him that this was Copper Calendula, Blue Silver Grass and Scorpion Venom. Meng Kao explains that this Cultivate Machine doesn't even have much dust meaningly it is often clean. He added that the Cultivate Machine's belt has blood and sweat smell that seems to be stained recently. After having all of these conclusions, he assumes that Teacher Gu only ended the project on the surface that made him all students leave but in reality he'd been secretly using himself as the experiment. He explains that he never did this and don't say things like this just a sudden. Because of this he suspects that Teacher Gu's ability was lacking that made him cause students more harm and despite being forgotten by people he was secretly proceed in the darkness. Because of the death of this project, he doesn't want to continue the project anymore but Meng Kao pursuing him to continue. Meng Kao gives him a hope to that they will do it together and let Senior Zhang Yi rest in peace and create a bright future. However, he became even more mad for being out of his mind and being crazy for this idea. Even this happened, Meng Kao still wanting Teacher Gu to work together with him. By using Teacher Lai as threat, Meng Kao finally joined Project at 1024. Using the Tinder old man's name, Yishi Organization, Neng Shiwo, Luo Wu three forces were convinced by him to support Project 1024. Thus materials, devices, finance and all the problem has been resolved. And by making use of Tinder's beginner healing techniques and intermediate rank healing technique, he replaced Teacher Gu and became the Project 1024 experiment target. Because of overly exert body that Teacher Gu couldn't fully unleash his power, and finally his fate changed by him. Teacher Gu set up everything to start the number 99 gene medicine as foundation, and he added 35 density silver chain snakes poison. Experiment target has been entered the cultivate capsule and everything seems normal for him. After 500 times, they finally succeeded. Meng Kao finally acquired a 61 main vessel to open and Gu was so shocked about this. So, Meng Kao encourages him to test the stats. Meng Kao stands in front of a punching machine to start the test. Because of the experiment, he exceeds from his limit and manages to blow a 1,675 kg force. Every time he hits, his force keeps increasing. Meng Kao did multiple punches in just a single time. 
Meng Kao's stats made a 264 punches each fist is around 1688 kilogram force, and his main vessel has activated super being combat ability, performance stable, and lasts long. Meng Kao then used to test his speed. He manages to reach 100 meters with 7 seconds also he can at least run for 5 kilometers. They are so happy that the experiment successfully succeeded after many students die from this. Meng Kao's Tinder system notifies him that the chain mission limit fight first round is completed. He receives a 3-star mission rating after helping sword dancer Gu Jian Bo to start a new cultivation path 5 years earlier to prevent it hero citizen Gu Jian Bo from accumulating too many wounds, extended longevity, brilliant performance. He awakens super being power, and Tinder also upgraded for having a rating system. Because of the rating system, he now needed to ensure the mission gets completed also need a perfectly completed 5-star rating. Meng Kao can't believe of what he saw from the limit fight second round that he needed to convince everyone to find the key of reason to limit types rise and he needed to defeat 300 people. The 5-star rating special reward was magnetic field heart spirit lighting structure with the description of can unleash spirit energy vessel blast at certain chance. Hit brain cells, unleash strong lightning's brain shockwave and disturb surrounding intelligence living things wisdom, make wisdom living thing that accumulate, freeze, cool down, time increase more than 10% appear more times, more opening. Meng Kao confused of the same rank means he can only defeat one star super being. So, he was planning if he done with agricultural, he was planning to find Chu to play with to convince from the military school. However, another mission pops up with a label of limit fight third round. The detail was he need to hunt at least 1000 normal beast, 100 rank 1 beast. Because of excitement, Meng Kao hugged Teacher Gu so tight. Teacher Gu got so paled after Meng Kao hugged him for a full three minutes. He suggested to Meng Kao to rest for a while after doing the experiment for three straight days but Meng Kao feels so very energetic. Just a sudden, Teacher Gu remembers something that made him look so scared for something. This is because the current day was the Tamer course and martial art course freshman battle date, and everyone in the course required to attend and starts from morning 9am but now was already afternoon 1 p.m. Teacher Gu told him that this wasn't intentional, so he told to Meng Kao to greet Teacher Lai if she's in a good mood and Teacher going to find her this night. Meng Kao told him that Teacher Gu already contributed so much for Dragon City, and he mustn't worry and leave the rest to him. Before Meng Kao leaves him, he advises him to fix his hair and change into a suit. Because of this Teacher Gu got confused. Few days ago, Meng Kao discovered a shortcut after passing through the forest so he can reach Cultivation Center's back door and he was hoping the competition hasn't ended yet. All of a sudden, a glance of an eye he feels while jumping from these trees. He saw a monster that was hiding from a tree. This was a special nether spirit leopard, and he was hoping to tear this monster apart and research all about its structure. Suddenly a jungle-like woman was about to drop in front of him from the top of these trees. Meng Kao didn't notice this girl's spiritual energy. He noticed her badge from a tamer course. She suddenly kicks Meng Kao but luckily, he was fully aware for this so he manages to dodge it. Meng Kao immediately jumps away from another tree to avoid any conflict. They stared to each other. Just a moment the branches that they were standing broke. So, they fall from the top of these trees. They both somehow manage to land without any problem while the woman saved by the nether leopard. Since he notices that this girl was also from the first year, he added him as a friend so they could get a chance to spar. But before he added her, she immediately run away from him. However, Meng Kao realizes that he was about to miss the competition. It turns out that this was Wu Wu from a tamer course. She added that she encountered a very nice smell person. A guy with blue uniform asks about this person who had a very nice smell. But she didn't give much information about this person and just said this person had only a very nice smell. She is now wanting to eat him after knowing this person. However, an agricultural martial art course cultivate center. Meng Kao had a thought of that the freshman course battle is already over. He got inside the loser's room and Lai Ying's eye was also inside this room to check the casualty. He was confused that they said that tamer course doesn't have talented individual, and martial art course has high chance of winning. He was confused that this martial art course wasn't way to upset even they lose. Meng Kao approaches Duan Lion while asking if what was going on from this room. But all of a sudden Duan Lion slap his hand away from him. He assumed that Duan Lion had a despair after losing. Just a moment Lai Ying Zai came up to approach Meng Kao for finally arriving and since she's not his teacher she no need to say much for him. But Meng Kao stop her for a while because he has something to tell her first. He introduced the Project 1024 that made a progress and finally found a way to fix Vessel. And to celebrate the progress, Teacher Gu got drunk and went crazy and dragged me and spoke with him for a few hours. 
So, she asks him if what did Teacher Gu say. He teases her that Teacher Gu still doing the Project 1024 because his love never changed toward her, and secretly doing experiments on his own body. Lai Ying Zai got startled after hearing that Teacher Gu doing dangerous experiment on his body all by himself. He explained that Teacher Gu was so scared that Teacher Lai Ying Zai might not be make her happy so he didn't dare to tell at her. Meng Kao added that before completing of Project 1024, Teacher Gu belong himself from the project but now 1024 was already completed. Lai Ying Zai felt guilt after knowing that Teacher Gu did this all this time. However, Meng Kao told her that Teacher wants to borrow his mouth to tell her that if she gets angry, he will make excuses again. Lai Ying Zai asked Meng Kao if Teacher Gu was still drunk but responded that he wasn't fully drunk so she can beat him up for a while. Without wasting any time, she immediately goes for him as soon as possible before Teacher Gu got fully drunk. Just a moment he saw Feng Zai in despair after losing the fight and trying to cheer him up for not being in despair as martial art course. While shivering, he responded that Meng Kao didn't understand since he did not fight with her on the arena and no idea what she just did. This time it was chain arena battle where Victor can stay on the arena. And that time there's the one only left from the tamer course while martial art course had seven people. Even though they were destroyed by this tamer Y course student, it was one versus seven people that was shocking and what's scary was the way of she defeated them. He added that she isn't a sudden or typically saying a not normal human. They assumed that this girl was more like a ferocious beast wearing a human skin. A ferocious beast with huge grudge against them. So, Meng Kao had a thought based of the details he spoken was the same type of battle style that he encountered earlier so he asks the same description at Fei Zing. So, Fei Zing immediately asks if he know Wu Wu but Meng Kao only knows she's Wu Wu after hearing what he just said. Meng Kao encountered her when he was on the way at arena so he had a spar with her then Fei Zing advises him not to spar with her without people behind him. However, Meng Kao was confident that he already has cultivated spiritual energy to all organs, all rigidity, flexible, and strong so get things in control. Fei Zing was still hesitating about since this girl was different from among humans. He added that if he often watching news, he will know that five years ago the Red Dragon Army Exploration Team discovered Satellite Town in Baishi Town. Five years ago, from Baishi Town, there are few years lost contact with Dragon City which was the Baishi Town's people that almost all turned into barbarians, and the rescue team also searched for a whole year and only found 400 plus people. Wu Wu is even more special because she was found in another spirit leopard den near Baishi Town and according to what the rescue team member said she was already that group of nether spirit leopards leader during that time. Wu Wu has high wisdom and she only used one year to learn how to speak and write even all sort of society knowledge she reached standard of people at the same age. One year later, all lesson that they were was easy for her. Because of her high wisdom and super cat type beast's affinity, she became a special recruit student and she joined the agricultural tamer course and currently she is tamer course's trump card. So, Zai Feng warned Meng Kao for her being a talented genius at this moment. But after hearing those words, Meng Kao starts to feel that he wanted to spar with her even more. Zai Feng disappointed after trying to recognize the power gap that Meng Kao ignored. From out of nowhere, Meng Kao patted him at his shoulder. He suddenly told to Zai Feng not to worry because he only looks down at him because of being weak. Originally Meng Kao wanted to join the match since it hasn't ended to use limit type and challenge some to do mission at the same time and make it famous and now planning to find Wu Wu and spar. Just a moment, someone called Meng Kao at his phone. Sister Shizu invited him to quickly come to the resource course because she had good news. He didn't waste any time so he told her that he will come. But before leaving, Meng Kao told to Zai Feng to slowly recover that made him shocked. He explained that martial art course will become the strongest profession and he mean it that made Zai Feng confused. Meanwhile, at Agricultural Resource Low Temperature Warehouse, everyone notices him and he was known as God Kao because of his performance. So, Meng Kao shows his gratitude from the workers for acknowledging him. He prepares himself and the next stage of limit type experiment scale needs to expand which requires more raw materials and genetic medicine and now he will work harder to build relationship with the resource course. As he enters a room, he was surprised that Senior Ning was there to guide him for the harvest time. Senior Ning told him that she heard about the Northern Offensive mobilized across the city, and this time is extremely rage and it's a rare chance for freshmen. She asks Meng Kao if he needed a help to get one slot in resource course. Somehow, Meng Kao told her that he doesn't need someone else to replace him and he's going to obtain the harvest using his own way. But she scolded him for always having a strong privilege. Meng Kao responded that there are some borderlines that shouldn't be broken. So, she ignores it and acknowledge Meng Kao that his grandfather and other will talk to him in person and ask if he learned about flaw detection. 
The flaw detection is the harvest technique which aims to discover effect of certain moves and the weak point of beast and study the best way for certain beast. Luckily his current ability and the 1024 vessel sharpened sense was open and it won't be a problem for him. He wants to try but Meng Kao didn't see the corpse source. She told him that this are not the monsters that they are going to harvest because there are more monster coming. Just a moment more monsters have been arrived from the Tamer Corps students. They took the dead beast since it was Sister Ning's responsibility after being these monsters got destroyed by the martial artist course. After this, they are wanting a hand to find the reason of losing. She told them that they come at the right time because Meng Kao's technique is a top-notch and resource course and by his guide, he will definitely can find the fatal wounds in the body of biochemical beast. He immediately approaches Meng Kao to ask some help and he immediately accept the demand from these students. They immediately put the dead beast to examine the fatal wounds of these dead biochemical beasts while Meng Kao asking Senior Ning about of what they doing. She wanted to put a respect for both martial art and team beast course. This made Meng Kao speechless. The tame beast is already put on a table to start the examination. The student become confused since he never heard Meng Kao before. Just as sudden, he told to the staff to stop for a while from the anatomy of Silver Fire Lion. He noticed that the belly was lightly built, softer to the touch than internal bleeding which is the result of proliferation of the Losat circularies in its body. He asks about the 500 milliliter volume of condensate to inject the needle from between the third and fourth rib and inject slowly to avoid explosion then slowly dismantle. Main Kao starts to demonstrate the technique that he know. Since a shatter blade python is not precious monster he draw a line to explain the sword trace slash that killed this shatter blade python. The student realized that Meng Kao was really strong. After the demonstration, Meng Kao decided to do the rest while stretching out. He approaches a rhino-like biochemical beast to begin the examination and extraction. But he noticed that the situation wasn't right and different. He put a thermometer to examine the wound that this monster took. He was so shocked after this monster's battle just about 2 minus 3 hour, its intracranial is still above 30 degrees. He then disinfects the biochemical beast before starting the extraction. He took his scalpel to pierce the rhino's tough skin to check the wound's status since it was unnatural. As he opens up the wound, he saw a fist mark that made wound erupted from inside out which caused by heartbreaker fist because of the abnormal high temperature inside the skull shows that the punch also had a strong flame attribute. Because of being able to use Heartbreaker Fist so well, he knows someone possess a domineering flame that made him think Duan Lion did this for remembering the Berserk Dancing Lion which was compatible with the secret technique. Based of the hit point, he assumes Duan Lion did this damage right in front while attacking. Upon examining the dead biochemical monster, he was thinking if this was a Heartbreaker Fist or Berserk Dancing Lion that requires a long time to accumulate and charge energy. So, he immediately asks if whose armor rhino was this to ask about when he start accumulating energy. A student from Tamer Course raises his hand to tell him that this was from him. He asks if he wanted to control and used Wild Charge as ultimate move to fight against another ultimate move and he told him that he did. Even the armor rhino toughness was torn out as an outcome with just one move. Meng Kao felt pity after a beginner accumulating too much time. When he finally had controlled rhino and accumulated power, and started to charge, Duan Lion also accumulated energy and used Berserk power. Because of the beast charge he can't do anything than seeing Armor Rhino suffering from Duan Lion's Berserk power. He realized that the Armor Rhino had no choice to take the one shot. After telling the story about this, Meng Kao was right after examining the Armor Rhino. Meng Kao suggested him to use normal charge to make Dual Lion injured to avoid losing control from the spiritual energy. Because of the 100 km per hour charge, there's an instance that Armor Rhino would be also injured. When Dual Lion's skill is cooldown and Rhino's corpse is damaged but in exchange, there's a possibility that Duan Lion might have few broken bones and took this opportunity to attack him. Everyone was so happy after Meng Kao guiding them to fight the martial art course. After a few conversations and guide he receives a contribution points. The next monster was the Seer Halbert that has many wounds but crucial wound in the left eye area. He had an idea that this move should be caused by Sunya from martial art course. Because Sunya opened over 80 main vessels and her body was so very agile to fight this kind of monster. She made use of chasing wind shower, unpredictable sword techniques and totally surrounded the halber. The tamer instructs to sear halberd to lower its head while charging again and again. She relies on the tanky specialty and forced Sunya to arena's corner. Due to panic got brought into Sunya's momentum, he instructed it to dodge. When the opening was shown to Sunya, she immediately attacked from the left eye area. So he suggested to the tamer to use Beast's specialty so they can at least win if not exhausted Sunya's energy. He also added that team battle when facing strong opponent to have less lose is equivalent to win. 
she shows her gratitude for taking Meng Kao advice. Besides, another monster was there and it was Demon Spider that died tragically while thinking this caused by Zhang Rui. Zhang Rui's kick technique was strong like two war axe, making him wear these sharp sword boot would make him scary. However, Crypt Demon's defense isn't that high even Spear Halberd or Iron Armor Rhino would get split into half. From what Meng Kao know, after Jean changed the Crypt Demon Spider's stickiness liquid, corrosiveness and productive should have been enhanced. So he immediately checked the internal organs. So he assumed that the tamer tried to aim for Zhang Rui's leg and wanted to stop it and the student agreed. The success rate was too low but he explained that it was his first time to encounter someone like Zhang Rui. Meng Kao advises him to just spray the stick liquid everywhere and surrounding to make the range larger and reduce their speed to lowest. But the student was hesitating if he can move but Meng Kao told him that he can't but the crypt demon spider can move. After hearing these advices, he was so happy for Meng Kao's guidance. After hearing all the Meng Kao's speculation about their tamed monster, they realized that martial art course wasn't strong and it's just their strategy was wrong. So, they are delighted to note that Meng Kao's combat method can increase their win rate against Wu Wu. While they are talking, Meng Kao interrupted them to suggest that they must use the strong endurance of Beast Tamer to fight with martial artists and make them use ultimate move. Because of continuous unleash of ultimate move, it will bring huge pressure to the main vessel. This will result explosion like a barrel. So, he suggested that they must attack when the martial artist course combat ability decreases. After saying this, Meng Kao shoulder tapped the student for giving more advice while the student was so happy that Meng Kao's opinions helped them a lot. One of the students from Tamer course was so delighted and assuring that in their next battle they will be better than before. Meng Kao refused to make a feast after they won because he has another plan. He was demanding them to split the beast's soul flow and martial art course to make them cry so hard. He suddenly introduced teacher Gu Giant Bo's limit type flow to achieve their win. Then they are so shocked when they realize that Meng Kao wasn't actually in martial art course. One of the students tried to convince him to join a tame beast course after the advices that he gave to them. Meanwhile, Sister Ning is just looking at him for his answer. But he declines for it since the control beast requires synchronization rate and spiritual index that could be violent because there is more beast that could be intolerable. One of the students got mad but Meng Kao wanted to prove it to him of what he said. However, he demands a spar to show the future main flow battle mode's effective supplement. Then he offers a 10,000 monster coin at most since these students like to bet. Last time, Wu Wu destroyed 7 students in a row but Meng Kao wanted to destroy 10 students meaningly every student can split a thousand monster coin if they win. The students become intense and trying to underestimate Meng Kao since they had no idea about him. Meng Kao wanted them to take a slot from the Beast Tame reinforcement for Northern Frontline if they lose. One of the mad students agreed from this offer. He calls for the other students to bring the beginner rank biochemical beast to prepare their fight. Then Sister Ning offers an arena since they are really wanting to take a sparring. Meng Kao was so delighted to hear about this. After preparing they go agricultural deserted warehouse to do the spar. The student demanded to Meng Kao to use any weapon. But Meng Kao refused for it since he fully prepared then he asks who will going to fight him first. A girl student wanted to go first with her biochemical tamed beast. He tries to motivate her to show what the tame beast's power capable of in terms of fighting against martial art course. She then introduced her new spear halberds biochemically changed than before so she thinks Meng Kao really need to use weapon to avoid any injury. But Meng Kao confidently wanted to do the sparring without any weapon. Without any hesitation, she starts to control her spear halberd. She orders his spear halberd to charge toward Meng Kao. However, Meng Kao stands still in front of the charging spear halberd. He got hit by the charge of spear halberd. The students are so happy and cheering their classmates since they thought that the sparring already done. Just a sudden Meng Kao landed on his foot like nothing happened, and they were so shocked about this. After the charge, Meng Kao relied on both legs' explosive strength to move back. He waited until the charge is over so both him and halberd's speed became almost zero to avoid any damage from the charge. After thinking of what Meng Kao did, he knows that he still had more thing hiding. Another charge happened but Meng Kao seemingly dodging its attack. He just smiling like its attack has no threat for him. Meng Kao was so confident because he knows that Spear Halberd's charge was too simple for him. So he had many method to counter this and he used a fire to attack the Spear Halberd. She was so confident that this fire won't even hurt the Spear Halberd so she orders to Spear Halberd to lower its head to protect the mouth and nose. All of a sudden, she realized something. The Spear Halberd starts to scream in agony from the pain that he receives from Meng Kao's attack that he did earlier. She thinks that something entered from Spear Halberd's body. Then her beast lies on the ground while enduring all the pain from the fire that it enters his body. 
Because of the shared sense, the beast tamer's five senses temporarily lost control. Vang Kao pointed the knife at her neck to end the sparring with her while asking why don't bring those weapons. He was so shocked of what just happened because he had no idea of what Mang Kao did. He then tries to connect to the spear halberd to avoid the beast to collapse. He then calls the medic to check the spiritual index to avoid anything happen to the beast. They immediately rush from the scene. They help her up to make immediate action to her situation to avoid any serious problem. Meng Kao explained the limit type flow could make an individual sharp body sense that's why he predicts everything. Because of this he can become powerful than normal people. After they heard about this, they feel that Meng Kao's combat method is scarier than beast soul flow. Meng Kao also introduced the powder that he throws and it called heart circular worm. Meng Kao just poked the spear halberd and the heart circular worm entered into its body to naturally heart broken. Because of sharing the feeling from the tamed beast, she didn't detect when Meng Kao appeared behind her. He realized that martial art freshman test's number was different from others. He then calls the next one. Suddenly a student with a hairband of a cat appeared. She was Wang Ting as the next sparring partner for Meng Kao. Her terror cat name has the notorious nickname and it is Human Reaper. Meng Kao knew that its sharp fang, sharp claw, length, size and all attribute target was its advantage but because of its super sharp sense of hearing it could be the biggest weakness. Meng Kao secretly pull his infrasonic buzzer. Wang Ting starts to cast her spiritual energy to command her beast. Human Reaper suddenly dashes. It's about to reach Meng Kao. The woman that loses earlier assuming that Meng Kao has no ability to dodge its quick attacks. Meng Kao are just standing still even though Human Reaper already close at him. She assumed that no matter which direction Meng Kao tries, she has countermeasure for it. Meng Kao didn't move that resulting to receive the attack of Human Reaper. Wang Ting was so shocked as Meng Kao didn't dodge its attack. They were so happy that their assumptions are right that Meng Kao can't dodge its attack. Meng Kao was about to fall after receiving the notorious cat attack. However, the infrasonic buzzer was already placed at her beast. Because of insensitivity from loud sound of her beast, it falls off the ground while trying to run away. They were so shocked as they saw the biochemical creature had a problem after attacking Meng Kao. Somehow, Meng Kao was standing still like nothing happened at him. Everyone trying to wake Huang Ting up but unfortunately, she was stuck from being connected from the beast. Meng Kao finally reached her up while pointing his knife at her neck. Meng Kao told her that he already won. Just a moment the intercept control authority was called out. Wang Ting collapses after losing control with her spiritual beast. The students immediately run towards her to her up. Somehow, his spiritual energy activated from out of nowhere. He loses control of his power. He then removes the control. It turns out that the control transfers at him with the notorious cat. As he checks the beast, he saw an infrasonic buzzer at its ear that causes the pain that he feels earlier. He immediately asks Meng Kao if when he did put the infrasonic buzzer from the notorious cat. Just a sudden he realizes Meng Kao plan. He told him that he can actually control his self-muscle to avoid any fang and claw hit him. Some student was so mad after Meng Kao only using mere tricks that made them think a wasn't fair victory. Suddenly, Meng Kao asks them to fight the eight remaining all together. They were so furious after Meng Kao told this that they assume Meng Kao looking down on them. Senior Fang thinks that Meng Kao wants to lose against many to glorious even defeated. But Meng Kao knew that Senior Fang think this way too much so he is assuring that he gonna win. Even Meng Kao loses or win. He is not going to say any word about it. Then Senior Fang call everyone to fight Meng Kao as he uses limit type. The duel begins with multiple beast tamer with their powerful beast. Senior Fang was so mad that he really wanted to teach Meng Kao a lesson. Controlled beast lunges at Meng Kao at the same time while he's just standing still in the middle. Suddenly, Meng Kao raised up a gun while saying to be careful. He rapidly shoots his gun at the top. Senior Fang got curious of what he was planning to do with these guns. It turns out Meng Kao wanted to shoot the bulb. He shoots multiple bulbs inside the sparring arena. Everyone became more defensive after all the lights gone out. Meng Kao was just smirking after he successfully turned off all the lights. He then jumps up while doing a twist mid-air. He then shoots again while turning around mid-air at the monster at floor that trying to attack him. Meng Kao targeting all the crystals that help the tamer to control the beast. After successfully destroying all the crystals, the sword halberd board had gone berserk. Also, the shatter sword python loses its control too and now both of them be gone berserk. Senior Fang was so flattered after Meng Kao only targeting the control device. The students tried their best to fight Meng Kao even though they slowly collapsing as a group. They all starts to panic after their beast loses all the control and began to berserk from the arena. Meng Kao was finally done with his mission, and now all he needs to do is just let the beast fight to each other until they done. Three minutes later, 
Meng Kao are just sitting at the top of the beast after a long fight. The senior Fang asks if this is the reason of why Meng Kao wanted to fight them alone. He assumes that by making use of the dark and destroying the control beast device, and making the beast berserk to make chaos to their number advantage to disadvantage. From the start Meng Kao picked this place to work with his strategy. So, he had a doubt that since challenge started, he already planned this. One of his students said that if they went into original order, they would have been no match for them. Meng Kao replied, I don't have 100% to continuously fight 10 tamer experts one by one. They are actually strong as he said, but they think this is just sarcastic way. Senior Fang wanted to ask Meng Kao a question. He asks about the bullet that he used because the biochemical beast's control device can't pierce into normal bullets. Then Meng Kao confidently answered that if you hit three bullets at same point, even control device isn't that strong. They were so shocked as they heard this. Senior Fang couldn't believe at him since it was too dark, and there's no way for him to clearly hit those shot. He explained that in normal people they can't do. However, the sensitivity of nerve ending and stability of muscle fiber has greatly improved that could help to make everything possible. Senior Fang had a thought of limit type flow which was so different from their combat style. Wang Ting asked if does limit type flow was actually good as he described. Meng Kao doesn't want to force them to listen to him, because they already personally experienced the limit type flow technique. From out of nowhere Meng Kao wanted them to volunteer, and participate in Project 1024 project experiment to learn a type of vessel cultivate method. They got flabbergasted as Meng Kao wanted them to teach the limit type flow. Meng Kao explained that he wasn't want to flex or fight for the monster coin because he had another plan. They are still confused at Meng Kao. Meng Kao was so disappointed that they can't still understand of what his points. I'm not greedy, I don't seek money as he said. He even doesn't seek for the fame. He explains that he's not a type of person with a vulgar interest and only wanting to make contributions. His hobby is to spar and chat with his comrades and student in order to grow bigger. Meaningly he doesn't want to provoke them. So, he was trying to pursue them to come with him while promising to teach everything. The Tame Beast course students were so speechless. Senior Fang tries to hold his composure to wake and won't fall from Meng Kao's plan. He introduced that the limit type flow mainly cultivates 1024 vessels so they don't have conflict with Brain's main 8 vessel. They were frustrated of hearing Meng Kao's words. A moment later, everyone was following Meng Kao and thanking him for helping them to learn a lot. They are so happy after Meng Kao guided them to be better. Somehow, some students were so pridefully doesn't want to call Meng Kao as their senior. Sister Ning suddenly came up to ask if they already completed the harvest homework. Because of the lose of Tamer course, Sister Ning wanted some explanation to avoid being a sore losing since she's not happy about losing. Just a moment she approaches Meng Kao if how he manages to fight them all together. Meng Kao replied that because I promised to teach them the limit type flow that I used to defeat them. After the exam, they finally had a feast at Tamer Canteen. Some students had no idea because they only hear Senior Fang was scolded by their own advisor for over an hour. Even the chef was frustrated for not coming for their celebration party. The rumors had spread that martial art course Meng Kao defeated 10 of their tamer experts. They talk about that experts had been weakened so they assumed that Meng Kao did a dirty trick to win. After the rumors that spread, the students always talk about this. All of a sudden, the chief turned around since someone asked him if Senior Fang was here. The chief began to panic like he saw a ghost behind him. It is because Meng Kao was holding Wu Wu with her beast while asking if this is the tamer course canteen. He asks if where he can find Senior Fang Lin. The students began to be mad at Meng Kao for provoking the tamer course. But a student stopped him to calm down and look closely at Meng Kao. They were so shocked as they saw Meng Kao holding Sister Leopard at his shoulder. The other student also pointed something behind him. It is because it was Sister Leopard's nether spirit leopard without consciousness. So, they ask what Meng Kao did to Wu Wu. Meng Kao seemed thinking an answer. Then he only replied that she might got food poisoning. They are curious if why Meng Kao looking for Senior Fang Lin. It turns out that he picked up Wu Wu and wanted to send her back to Tamer Course, but he only knows Senior Fang Lin. Then he immediately leaves at the place to let the students celebrate their victory against Martial Art Course. Then the students are so speechless after Meng Kao leave. It turns out earlier, Meng Kao had encountered with Wu Wu at the forest to have a spar. He dodges one of Wu Wu's attack. Meng Kao was so shocked to see the rock claw that Wu Wu did. It is because this attack can make a serious damage at him if it hits. Behind Meng Kao, Wu Wu lunges at him to attack. Luckily, Meng Kao dodged her attack with her sharp claw. Meng Kao jumps away from her since her agility was different from him. Meng Kao was happy that Wu Wu received his message that he sent from her. She agreed at him and replied that she received 10 messages from Meng Kao. 
Meng Kao assumed that she's the strongest freshman in agricultural combat profession so he wanted to make her recognize the power of limit type flow. Wu Wu rejected Meng Kao's assumption about being the strongest. She then become a lot more furious. Wu Wu jumps into the action again. While Meng Kao was standing still, Meng Kao swinged his arm with three blades inside of his fingers to counter Wu Wu attack. Because of that he successfully blocked her attack and only hit the branch of the tree. Meng Kao smirks at her to feel more hyped up. Leopard attacks him but Meng Kao reacted into it immediately while Wu Wu was stuck. After jumping out the situation, Meng Kao removed his jacket while casting his energy. Wu Wu was so mad that she wants something to do against Meng Kao. She wanted to eat him alive so he began a lot wilder. Meng Kao was so happy that he had a feeling of fighting someone as strong as him. So, he used limit type flow dragon to show how powerful was this technique. Meng Kao charges up at her. Wu Wu immediately reacted into it. Meng Kao throws some knife at her position. Luckily Wu Wu and Leopard dodges this attack. Leopard's tails was ready to do something. It hits Meng Kao's back but fortunately his dragon limit type flow was so tough enough to be unbreakable. He then charges to attack Leopard. Meanwhile, Wu Wu saw this as an opening to attack Meng Kao but Meng Kao knew it and she fell for it. She lunges while using Rock Claw but Meng Kao changed his target at her with the limit type flow dragon roar. Wu Wu knew that she made a wrong move. Therefore she got hit by Meng Kao's attack because of not expecting Meng Kao could do this. Because of Wu Wu's mistakes, she tried to shield her body by crossing her arms but, the little knives that Meng Kao threw still hit her. Wu Wu still managed to stand straight even after receiving Meng Kao's attack and even if she was wounded. She then glares at Meng Kao who is on another branch of a tree as she sips the blood that was dripping from one of her wounds. Seeing that Wu Wu got a little bit annoyed, Meng Kao even told her that he noticed that her rock claw is not that strong anymore. All of a sudden, Wu Wu shouted and she quickly removed the clothes that she was wearing leaving only her undergarment. Meng Kao did not understand what was she trying to do. However, Wu Wu was not done yet. She even grabbed her undergarment with the purpose of removing it. But before she became completely naked, Meng Kao immediately stopped her from stripping it. She then explained to Meng Kao that she was just stripping her clothes just because he did, too. Meng Kao was not expecting that that was her reason. He then reminded her that they should pay attention to appearance more than anything else. Wu Wu then agreed to him but she also complained that being human is so troublesome. After that, she asked Meng Kao to continue what they have started there. She then jumped from one branch to another twice. Meng Kao told her that the direction of her attack was too obvious. However, after launching a few times more, Meng Chu lose sight of her and she became faster. He was shocked at how fast she moved this time. All of a sudden, Wu Wu appeared in front of him with both of her hands raised as she told Meng Kao to eat her attack. She did it so quickly that she even got close enough to Meng Kao. However, it seems like Meng Kao is still smarter than her since he was still able to dodge her attack just by simply hanging himself upside down on the branch just before she gets too close. After successfully dodging her attack, he felt relieved because he also keep himself from being screwed. On the other hand, Wu Wu was not happy with what he had done. She then asked him to be more serious. But Meng Kao told her that he was being serious even if his face clearly shows he was not. All of a sudden, a gun hidden under Meng Kao's pants was revealed because he was still hanging from the branch. Wu Wu immediately discovered it without Meng Kao even knowing. She suddenly jumped off again from one branch to another. Meng Kao was a bit worried as he hung on the branch seeing that Wu Wu was up for another attack. Meng Kao complains about it telling her that he has not stood yet, but she kept on attacking him. Wu Wu quickly made her way to Meng Kao's pants to grab the gun hidden there without being noticed. While she was doing it, Meng Kao released a ball of energy around him making Wu Wu and Leopard to be thrown away. He then warned Wu Wu to be careful now that he was ready to fight along. He is going to use the limit type flow twin dragon roar this time. Wu Wu launches towards Meng Kao telling herself that she now finally caught him. However, Meng Kao just smirked and then threw his little knives again as she gets closer. The both of them successfully dodge each other's attack. Before landing on a branch, Meng Kao gets the gun he hid under his pants and then he aims it immediately towards Leopard. He aims to take out the control device at the beast, but when he fired it, it won't shoot. Little did he know that Wu Wu was already over him, ready to attack him from up there. When it is time, Wu Wu kicked him so hard that made him crash down to the ground. Because of that attack, Meng Kao fell to the ground. The impact of his fall created a huge hole where he crashed. Meng Kao thinks that the attack was so fast while he was getting up from falling. He wasn't even up yet when he noticed Leopard's claw on his side. He felt bad for himself for a moment, and then he moved as quickly as he could to dodge from him. Luckily, he safely got away from Leopard without a single scratch. All of a sudden, he felt something on the right side of his neck. Subsequently, blood gushed out from his neck. Then a few moments after that, 
he suddenly collapsed and fell flat on his face again. Meng Kao stayed for a few moments in that position. While he was there, Wu Wu was licking the blood that splashed out from Meng Kao on her hand. Then she told her that she did not control her power for that attack. Meng Kao agreed with her that it does hurts while he was trying to stand. He also commended her for being so cautious by forcefully attacking him just to destroy his gun. Wu Wu knew that he would use his gun to destroy a biochemical beast's control device. She then asked him to submit to her. She wanted to become another spirit and she wants him to be her first underling. She also asked him to eat the others together but she realized that humans can't devour each other. So she came up with the idea to lead all humans to eat all beasts. When Meng Kao stood up, he told her that they should talk about eating tomorrow because they first need to save lives. But Wu Wu already told him that he won't die. However, Meng Kao wasn't talking about his life, he was talking about saving her life. Then he removed something from his neck that resembles human skin. Wu Wu frowned when she realized that she has been tricked. All of a sudden, her body became numb and then she fell off the ground. She wondered what he did to her that caused her not to be able to move her body. Meng Kao explained that the thing he removed from his neck was an artificial skin that is filled with artificial blood with anesthetics, muscle relaxants, and a little nervous snake venom. But he advised her to not worry so much since he brought an antidote with him. He injected it into her while explaining that it will give her a nice sleep because of her physique. Before falling asleep, she realized the mistake she did which has something to do with his gun. Meng Kao agreed with her theory. The gun was the bait he set for her. He has no intention of using it since the school doesn't allow the usage of guns outside of the arena. He even dared to give her a smile as she falls asleep. He is, indeed, such a cunning human as Wu Wu said. She still tried to hold still even if she was having a hard time. But after a few more minutes, she finally lost consciousness. Meng Kao smirked after seeing her so helpless like that. All of a sudden, Leopard grew angrier, and then he rushed towards Meng Kao. Meng Kao bragged about humans spending a million years to evolve and get such a developed brain. And he believes that there is no reason to abandon it so easily. He then faced the approaching beast towards him and punched him hard in the face. The beast was easily hit like that because his combat ability plummeted after Wu Wu lost her synergy. He gave the beast another punch and then an uppercut. It seems like he wasn't putting so much effort into attacking the beast but still, the beast was helpless against him. He launched from the ground while Leopard was in mid-air. Then he kicked him down and kicked him up again just like a toy. He gave it a couple of punches again and again. The biological chemical beast can't do anything to defend itself because his master has lost her synergy. As his final attack, Meng Kao kicked the beast in the air toward the ground with so much force. The beast crashed onto the ground creating a thick smoke due to the impact. Finally, the master and the biological chemical beast lay next to one another after losing against Meng Kao. He thinks that he should help her wear her clothes back because it would be trouble when others see her looking like that. He then lifted Wu Wu on his shoulder while dragging the beast. He still has to send them to Tamer Course. He also complained that he only knew Senior Fang Lin, but not his dormitory. The night unfolds outside Martial Arts Course's old building. Meanwhile, Meng Kao was out in the woods. It was already past 1 o'clock in the morning when he checked the time. He wanted to rest in the medical capsule after working too hard. All of a sudden, he heard the murmuring just near him. Brother Ma was asking everyone to quickly come with him and return to the team. Meng Kao called his brother Ma and he was actually shocked for seeing him there that time. He then asked the other to go first because he will speak with Meng Kao for a moment. Meng Kao asked Brother Ma if they are going back to the team. Brother Ma confirmed it to be true since they are being recruited by the troops because they are short of supply. Meng Kao then asked about Teacher Gu and why he had not come to send them off. Brother Ma told him what happened that afternoon when Lai Ying Zai rushed there aggressively and stayed with Brother Bo for nearly an hour. An hour, indeed. And when they came out, the both of them were walking arm in arm. Brother Bo looked weak while Teacher Lai looked refreshed and radiant. Meng Kao and Brother Ma could not hold out the laughter after talking about the matter. After spilling the info, he returned back to the team. Before he left, Meng Kao told him that he is sure that Dragon City will win for sure, and he will also go to the front line after a few days. He was eager to get back the peaceful life that the hero citizen ever wanted. Meanwhile in the martial art course Old Buildings Underground Laboratory, the timer on the medical capsule turned to 7.30. It started to release blue steam as it opened slowly. After a few moments, Meng Kao arises from the capsule looking so refreshed and well-rested. He then immediately put on his uniform. He also realized that Brother Bo wasn't back yet. He wondered if he should send him a message to remind him that some things must not be done too often. While he was checking his phone, a message popped out saying that today was the announcement about supporting the North Front Line. They are asked to gather at the field at exactly 9 in the morning because there is an important thing to be announced. 
When the clock strikes the eighth o'clock, a few people have already gone to the field. Meanwhile, Du and Lion was telling the others that Meng Kao went to the resource course probably to find Sister Neng and use his connections after seeing that their course was lost. But that is not all, he even went to the Tamer course's celebration party last night. And if he's being honest, he really does think that Meng Kao is the traitor in the martial art course. He even thinks that he must be preparing to betray them all and go to the Tamer course. All of a sudden, Meng Kao appeared and interrupted Duan Lion while speaking saying sarcastically that if that is so, why doesn't he know that he is going to Tamer course? Duan Lion just smiled at him and called him God Kao. He then asked him whether what was he telling is true or just some allegations. Meng Kao explained that he just went to the Tamer course to help check the wounds of the students there, and that he doesn't have a plan to transfer there. Just at that moment, Meng Kao realized that Duan Lion was still hostile toward him. He still is bearing a grudge from the freshman test, he thinks. However, no matter what Meng Kao said, Duan Lion still doesn't believe him since helped the Tamer course to check the wound which, for him, is already a form of betrayal. Because of that, other students started to murmur around about Meng Kao's alleged betrayal. Consequently, Meng Kao explained to them that the Tamer Course's students are not beasts, hence, they are not the enemies. They are just rivals. Fortunately, this made the other students think beyond what Duan Lion has told them. Meng Kao actually has a point and he sounds reasonable, they said. On the other hand, Duan Lion still thinks of Meng Kao as the traitor who once helped the Tamer Course after all. All of a sudden, strong winds whirl around the field bringing a strange feeling to everyone there at that moment. It feels so sold. Some even felt like something scary was glaring at them behind their backs. Duan Lion felt terrified, too. He started to sweat after feeling something behind him. He turned his face back to check what is there. It turns out, it was Wu Wu with her biochemical beast. Duan felt more scared thinking that she came there just to bite them one by one. A student ordered everyone to move aside and be wary of Wu Wu as she walks through the crowd. Duan Lion acted so bravely and warned Wu Wu to not go overboard or else something will happen. He also told her that she can't just act so arrogantly but Wu Wu doesn't seem to care less about what he was saying since her full attention was locked on Meng Kao. All of a sudden, Wu Wu brought out something and handed it to Meng Kao saying it is his clothes and then waited for him to take it back. Everyone, including Meng Kao himself, was so shocked after hearing what she said. None of them expected her to go there with Meng Kao's clothes. She even told him that she found it in the forest last night looking so bad and so she tried to sew it for him. All of a sudden, her face turned red while saying that she doesn't like wearing clothes and it is her first time, first time sewing clothes. Everyone else's faces also turned red and some even spurted out blood out of shock into feeling so elated. On the other hand, Meng Kao could not do anything but act normal and smile but deep in his mind, he felt so awkward for what she has said. With her face still blushing, Wu Wu thinks that Meng Kao was trying to troll her since he still has not spoken a word. She then bit her lips and she suddenly rushed towards Meng Kao. Subsequently, she grabbed his hand and forced him to put it on her head. Meng Kao was so clueless about what Wu Wu wanted him to do and so he just pats her head a few times like petting a cat which Wu Wu definitely loved. After a few moments, Meng Kao asked if they could have a moment for a while. He then grabbed Wu Wu's hand and he dragged her somewhere far from the students. Meng Kao asked her what was she planning to do. He asked her if she was strategizing to take revenge on him. But Wu Wu explained to him that what she did was just another spirit leopard's culture. Another spirit leopard lowers its head and lets another nether spirit leopard place his claw on its head to represent surrender. Having him imagine that he has a face like another spirit leopard, he now thinks that it is, indeed, their habit. But then he remembered that the nether spirit leopard also has a habit of making a new king eat the old king to succeed authority. It means she already ate an old leopard king before. Wu Wu immediately disagreed with Meng Kao's accusations, and so he breathed a sigh of relief. However, Wu Wu was actually just tricking him because she actually ate not just one, but two. She ate the old king and became the leader then she also ate the one who wanted to be the leader who challenged her. So that means accepting her surrender and becoming a king has no benefit at all because you will be eaten, Meng Kao asked. Wu Wu hesitated a moment before she agreed to what Meng Kao said. After a few seconds, she told him that he is wrong, there is still a benefit since she could help him sew his clothes. And then she smiled from ear to ear as she thinks about Meneg Kao's destiny on her hands. On the other hand, Meng Kao doesn't really want to think about it anymore since he was already tired of it. Meanwhile, on the field, Teacher Lai was about to announce the 21 people who are qualified to officially participate in the battle after one and a half months of thorough inspection. She brought out the list and then proceeded with the announcement. The students who are picked are Sunya, Sai Feng, Jai and Rui, Du and Lion. Then it came down to the last name. Everyone wonders who will it be. Finally, the teacher announced that Meng Kao is the one who is going to complete the list. 
The student didn't seem to like how things turned out. They think that Meng Kao didn't deserve to be listed since he didn't participate in the fight yesterday. He was always missing. Meng Kao also herded Duan Lian's accusations over him that he used his connections in order to get qualified but he just smiled over it. Because of the sudden commotion, the teacher shouted to bring the students back to silence. She then explained that the list was drawn by the dean and course instructors and is done after considering various factors. It means that every student on the list has a reason to be selected. But, in order to achieve the greatest fairness and openness, everyone will have an opportunity to challenge anyone on the list if he wishes to. If one defeated the student on the list, he will replace him and along with his qualification and may go to the front line and fight. However, the challenge has its own rules. First, the timing, location, and rules are decided by the person who gets challenged. Second, the challenged person can only accept one challenge each day, and after three challenges, he may then refuse those challenges that will come afterward. Third, the person who got challenged can suggest a bet. The defeated one must pay a certain amount of monster coin to make up for the efforts of the one he challenged. After hearing the rules, Meng Kao raised his hand and asked if the rules can possibly be changed. Instead of answering the question, the teacher told him that he can directly give up his slot if he doesn't want to accept any challenge. Thinking that Meng Kao did not want to get challenged, he accused him again of knowing only some speculative conspiracy and tricks. Meng Kao steps forward, until he got close enough to teacher Lai and then explained that what he means is that he thinks one challenger per day is too less and having three at most is too boring. He looked down and then he said that he wants to fight ten challengers. Duan Lion and the other students could not bear the arrogance of Meng Kao. But Meng Kao wasn't finished yet. He also wanted to spar with those already on the list, indirectly pertaining to Duan Lion, just to show them the newly developed martial art. As for the rules, he pointed his two fingers sideways first before he continued speaking. Then he told everyone that from then on, ten people will attack him together at once. And if in case he defeated all of them, they will have to give him 3,000 monster coins, each. In return, if he loses, he will give them 30,000 monster coins and will give up his slot for them. Meanwhile, Teacher Lai thinks that Meng Kao must have 35 main vessels. She thinks that he cannot withstand 10 opponents even if his support vessel cultivation has progressed. She then told Meng Kao that martial artists are not monsters so they should not kill each other. Actually, Meng Kao already expected that the instructors already knew about the matter yesterday. But, Meng Kao believes in himself and his limit type flow power even more. He then asked the 10 students who wants to challenge him to come. Duan Lion was eager to test the limit type flow Meng Kao keeps on talking about. That's good to hear. Meng Kao then told him that he will let everyone know the future combat style and understand the profound meaning of limit type flow. Suddenly, Duan Lion had second thoughts. He wonders if he truly understands the profound meaning of some martial arts. Meng Kao then leaps off the ground as his main vessels activated. Duan Lion commended his nice stance as he prepares himself for a battle. Eventually, Meng Kao lifted his arms up and aimed to throw a punch. It seems like this attack will be so powerful as he approaches Duan Lion. However, Duan Lion could not believe what happened next. Instead of actually attacking him, he ran as fast as he could. Even Teacher Lai was shocked by what he just did. Meng Kao continued running like a mad person leaving everyone behind after all the boasting he told them. Duan Lion was disappointed. He thinks that he has been tricked again after realizing that Meng Kao never mentioned where the fight is supposed to happen. That means that he has no plan to fight 10 persons at once alone. He also thinks that he just made up the limit type flow in order to run away from the start. Meng Kao could not hide his happiness while walking for making Duan Lion look like a complete fool after he tricked him. Suddenly, his phone rings. Brother Bo texted him saying that he has to come to the hospital for a while because he has something important to tell him. And just like that, Meng Kao's free time is gone. In the agricultural department, Meng Kao noticed something. He then went to check at Tea the Plant General Store where a lot of strange-looking foods are sold. Meng Kao even saw the new product, the Surprise Fruit Basket, which was being sold with a 50% discount. He finds the deal fine and so he decided to buy it. He then went straight to the agricultural-affiliated hospital after buying from the store. He searched for the room where Gu Jai and Bo was in. Luckily, he found his room fast. While looking at the door to check if the room was correct, Someone grabbed him from his back and asked him what was he doing. It was him, Brother Bo. He then asked Meng Kao why was he acting so sneaky like that. But instead of answering his question, Meng Kao decided to tell him that he is sure that Teacher Lai is amazing which causes Brother Bo to feel a bit uneasy. After teasing Brother Bo, Meng Kao gave the strange-looking foods he brought from the store earlier. There were blue apples, purple watermelon, and some bananas with some kind of short curly vines that surrounds its body. Out of all the food in the basket, there is one that looks normal. 
The orange. He then picked it out of the basket but all of a sudden. The orange bit his hand before he even touches it. Brother Bo screamed and complained about the orange who bit him. Meng Kao on the other hand could not hold out his laughter then he explained that those are products made by the plant course. Even if they are weird, they are still nutritious, he added. Brother Bo suddenly became serious and asked Meng Kao to stop that nonsense and told him also that he surely knows how to create trouble. However, Meng Kao did not agree with him. He told him that he has been cultivating, experimenting, learning, and sparing all this time and so he has no time to cause any trouble. Brother Bo then told Meng Kao about the Tamer course and the martial arts course as well as his plan of beating 10 of the martial art and Tamer course students. Meng Kao just smiled over it and did not even try to deny any. Brother Bo also told him that he bullied the Tamer course and made the freshmen depressed, then he made their secret weapon, Wu Wu into that state. He was bothered by the fact that he could not save him anymore if ever a hundred of them will try to beat him up. But Meng Kao told Brother Bo that he could just run away if that happens. He explained that limit type flow is originally created to run away, if he wants T run, no one can stop him. Brother Bo told him that he is confident with the limit type flow if he wants to promote it but it might touch the interest of many others and so he must not act too hastily. He also told him about the saying that when a tree is too beautiful in the forest, the wind will destroy it. Meng Kao sighed after hearing it. He then recalled the fall of Senior Zhang Yi which happened 10 years ago. He questioned Brother Bo if they really have to wait for years to let those people blinded by greed accept them. Meng Kao believes that the path they are on is the only right path. If they will use all their courage and power and break all difficult, they can promote the limit type flow. That way, they will not disrespect and waste the sacrifices made by those people for the limit type flow. After hearing what Meng Kao has to say, Brother Bo could not decide whether he will praise his smartness or scold his stupidity. He then told Meng Kao that what happened between him and Wu Wu actually made the principal of the Tamer course talk with their martial art course principal for half a day. However, Meng Kao is confident that he would not be in trouble because he believes and trusts that their principal will support the limit type flow. On the other hand, Brother Bo still thinks that Meng Kao might be daydreaming still because of his arrogance over that matter. While Brother Bo was scolding him, Meng Kao thinks about how the past agricultural academy relied on the limit type flow to rise but he cannot tell him this. After all, Meng Kao believes in Principal Zhang's vision to let the Dragon City become stronger and let the Earth civilization spread in the world, and with that, he is sure that he will support him. Brother Bo then asked him to go inside the room and tell everything he just said to Principal Zhang himself because he has been waiting for him, actually. Meng Kao froze after discovering that the principal was there. Also, he already said what he said so loudly that he must have heard all that, didn't he? While Meng Kao was whining, Brother Bo turned the doorknob to open it. He then called the principal and told him that Meng Kao wanted to say something to him. And Meng Kao tried to calm himself down before entering the room. Principal Zhang immediately invited Meng Kao to have a seat and watch TV for he has been running around the school for half a day as he entered the room. Meng Kao is seated on a chair with both his hands on his legs as if to show that he is a well-behaved person. The principal showed him something on the television and asked him if he also thinks that those people looks dumb. That is the tactic of the invention of firearms in the Earth era, the line of infantry tactic, also known as queue up and shoot. Having them relied on that dumb tactics, they still managed to defeat the old traditional army and took down the entire kingdom. Meng Kao knows that Dragon City relies on super killer flow and beast soul flows and hangs on for over 50 years. It's like his line infantry tactic propping up a powerful kingdom. But, after innovating the weapon, the powerful kingdom paid a huge price and then carried out the new tactic which slowly replaced the old queue up and shoot tactic. Meng Kao also knew that they cannot suffer such a price and can't wait until it happens. The principal realized that that is why he rushed and challenged the students then. He also commended Meng Kao's confidence in this matter. Meng Kao then made it clear to the principal that the only goal of the limit type flow is the Dragon University martial art course. However, the principal thinks that he was just being so boastful about his goal. His results only prove that he is a special genius, and he is even better than Wu Wu. But still, he can't show the advantage of the limit type flow. His results also can't prove that those who are two stars, three stars Sky Realm, or God Realm experts can have the same performance. The principal also explained that in the wild, he needs to fight against ferocious beasts then it will be the best proof for the limit type flow. Then he asked Meng Kao if he understand what he was trying to tell him. Meng Kao confirmed that he understood and then he asked the principal why he agreed to have him fight to the front line in the north. The principal told him that it is good that he has the confidence, but he must remember that when the god realm experts grasp the profound meaning of life, it's the true profound meaning of martial art he can't grasp. 
He also reminded Meng Kao that if he wants the limit type flow to exceed the killer flow, then he has to face them one day, and it will be harder to reach the space. Meng Kao knew that Earthlings have already proven that they successfully reached space before and so he believes that this day isn't far away that the Dragon City will, too. Because of what Meng Chap said, the principal burst into laughter saying that it has been years since he met a student like him. Because of that, Principal Zong decided to let Meng Kao witness the beyond top-notch power and show him how it looks. Meng Kao could not believe what he was seeing in front of him at that moment. A black turtle. It is towering over him and also shows a great power as it stood. Meng Kao thinks that it is just an illusion however, he could not wake up at all. As he looks at the black turtle, he noticed that it lifted one foot up over him. Then the black turtle put its foot on Meng Kao's back. It was so powerful but Meng Kao tried to endure its weight. He then tried to put the foot out of his back since it feels real at that moment. He also told him that he will also destroy it during the real apocalypse and show him. He then unleashed his full strength in order to get rid of the black turtle activating his main vessels. Then the black turtle completely became shattered into pieces. After that, Meng Kao felt so exhausted that he just lay on the ground. The principal commended Meng Kao's bravery in attacking his beast's soul which he cultivated and extracted from an eight-rank apocalypse murderer. Actually, he was just imprinting part of it into Meng Kao's brain in order for him to be able to perceive its presence by just entering a meditation state. The principal will use the black turtle beast's soul to test him, and if he passes the test, then he will grant him the support that he wanted to get. Meng Kao wondered how is that even a test when it's just letting him cultivate better. As expected, because of Senior Zhang Yi, the principal Zhang will support the limit type flow, he thinks. Meng Kao called the principal once more before he left the room. The principal stopped and then he told Meng Kao that he should not be mistaken that he helped him because of Zhang Yi. However, standing on the peak of Beast Soul Flow, he can see more clearly than anyone else. That Beast Soul Flow has reached the end. There is nothing in front but a dead end without a path. Finally, he told Meng Kao that he hopes the limit type flow can barge open a new path. Then he gave Meng Kao good luck and asked him to defeat him and all the enemies that are stopping in front of the Dragon City and preventing them from becoming better. Meng Kao felt more courageous and confident than he already is after hearing those words from Principal Zhang. When Brother Bo and Meng Kao met again, Brother Bo told him that he was just so lucky. It has been 10 years since Principal Zhang personally has thought of any student. He also told Meng Kao that this time, he will surely be corrected as he showed him a purple banana with some hairs around its body. Meng Kao then told Brother Bo that he doesn't have to worry about him because he will perform well in the North front line in order to keep him and Principal Zhang from disappointment. However, Brother Bo reminds him that he still needs to get his qualification first at the field plaza in order to promote the limit type flow as Teacher Lai told him. Meng Kao answered that he was just using the rules reasonably and winning the wisdom. Rules that were set by you, Brother Bo told him. However, the last qualifications right is in the hands of Teacher Lai. Meng Kao became frozen for a moment, and then he suddenly moved quickly as if he was planning to do something that might cause trouble again. He then told Brother Bo that he will finish the unfinished fight and will also destroy Duan Lion and the others. That night at the Agricultural Martial Art Course, Duan Lion was sleeping in a single-person luxury dormitory room. All of a sudden, his phone rang. His face turns into a frown after hearing the sound that disturbed him while asleep. He answered the call and yelled at the caller saying that he must start talking now if he has anything to tell him. The caller answered. He advised Duan Lion to be careful because Kui Jai and the Xiao family brothers and those who challenged Meng Kao have been sent to the hospital. After ending the call, he noticed that his body is still sore and his head hurt even though he finished recovering his energy. He also noticed the weird smell in there. He immediately put on his uniform and prepared himself to go someplace with many people. Meng Kao is despicable so it is not a good idea to stay alone because he might attack at any moment. All of a sudden he felt something on his feet. Sharp objects pierced into his feet when he put on his shoes. He thinks it was Meng Kao who placed those sharp objects inside his shoes. Because of that, he thinks that he has to call people to come and save him. He then reached out to get his phone. But someone told him that he cannot do it. The person was behind him. It was Meng Kao dressed like an assassin. He even aimed a knife at Duan Lion's neck as he told him that he already won. However, Duan Lion told him that it should not be counted as a profound meaning of limit type flow. But Meng Kao disagreed with him telling him that it is, indeed, the profound meaning of limit type flow. With the 1024 support vessels. Meng Kao managed to sneak into six people's rooms without a sound and defeated one. Because of his muscle and nerves perfect control, he climbed up to the ninth floor, entered a small window ending up in a bathroom where a man was taking a bath. The man did not notice him. Then he struck him from the back, knocking him out before he even noticed that Meng Kao was there. 
The war has changed, he told Du and Lion. In the past war, they could obtain time to rest and supplies anytime. The sound and light effect of that killer move was effective and increased miracles. It was all worth it. But in future wars, they might fight alone. Enemies will not care about what you are doing when they attack. Meng Kao knew that he and Duan Lion had some misunderstandings at the start of the academy when he failed because of him and when he did not get an ace instructor's guide. However, he must believe him in order to win. He told him that he has no bad intentions and as redemption, he asked Don Lion to be his friend and he will teach him the limit type flow. But despite all Meng Kao said, Duan Lion just told him to stop daydreaming and that he will destroy him and his limit type flow. With Du and Liam still not believing him, he thought that he was such troublesome. With that, Meng Kao has no other choice then. He then quickly slit the knife he has been holding. And then after that, blood scattered all over the room. Du and Lion's eyes widened as he sees the blood scattering. He then told Meng Kao that he had gone completely crazy. Meng Kao even asked Du and Lion why he must die. He thinks he must die because he is such a narrow-minded person. It has been two months since the freshman test and yet, he still holds a grudge against him. Meng Kao wipes the knife covered with blood with a white cloth while telling Du and Lion that he actually thought that time will let them clear up the grudge. But since he doesn't change, he now has to kill him since he is a lunatic who might one day attack him from his back. And Meng Kao thinks he won't be able to predict him so he might as well just end him now. He said all these to Du and Lion while he was lying on the bed, so scared for his life. He started to get sweaty out of fear, and then he wondered how Meng Kao will kill for something like that. After a few moments, Meng Kao remembered something. He wants to give Duan Lion a reminder. Then in the next life, when he stretches his hands, it is better if he will just smile and ask him to be his friend. He should grab it next time. Duan Lion shouted for help while the slit on his neck is still gushing out of blood. His helpless voice echoes around the building. His eyes widened even more than it was earlier. Finally, he asked Meng Kao to save him and admitted that he was wrong. He also promised him that he won't provoke him ever again. After that he felt different, he thought that that is how it feels before dying. A few moments passed and yet Duan Lion was still able to open his eyes. He is still alive even though he already lost a lot of blood. Also, he felt that his limbs recovered some energy. He then sit up from the bed where he was lying. Meanwhile, Meng Kao suddenly turned the light on in the room. Then he said sorry to Duan Lion and asked him if he would mind if he tells him that it was all just a joke because it is. Duan Lion then realized that the skin Meng Kao slit with the knife was just a fake. Everything was fake even the nearing death was just caused by perception medicine. Meng Kao explained that they were still classmates and asked if he really thinks that he could do that to him. Now that everything is clear, Meng Kao believes that the matter about the freshman test will be over from now on. After that, Meng Kao offered friendship again to Duan Lion as redemption. He also promises to teach him the limit type flow. Will Duan Lion accept the offer now? At the Agricultural Martial Art Course office, a few students gathered to see Teacher Lai. Teacher Lai could not keep a straight face as she sees the exhausted faces of the students. The students went to her office just to tell her that the battle against Meng Kao was over and they all lost because he was just too strong. All of a sudden, Duan Lion barged in and asked Teacher Lai to make Meng Kao the representative of the Agricultural Martial Art Course. He was supposed to tell another thing but, he noticed that Meng Kao was outside the office observing everything that he does and so he changed what he was about to say and tell another, a good one. He then told Teacher Lai to make those monsters have a taste of Meng Kao's wisdom. Teacher Lai got confused by how Duan Lion behaved that day. Meng Kao was happy that he successfully got qualified and he even got three days worth of holidays. There is a lot of food on the table. Certainly, anyone would eat more seeing how appealing the foods are. Meng Kao's mother offered him a bowl full of rice even though he had already eaten a lot. She told him that it has been a few months since she last saw him and he got so skinny. Unlike her mother, his sister thinks that her brother became even fatter as she devour her food. His father asked him to share something about his school life and if he got any friends. He then told him that he is quite popular so everyone wanted to be his friend. However, his sister told their father that he was just boasting only. Because of that, Meng Kao told her sister that it has been two months and she dared to talk back to him just like that while he was tingling her. Because Meng Kao and his sister were quarreling again, their parents became happier because they felt like their house started to get lively once again. However, their happiness immediately turned to worry after the two siblings started being too mean to each other. And because of that, their mother commanded them to settle their fight and get back to eating their food in their respective seats. She then put another piece of food in Meng Kao's bowl despite the fact that it was already full. She also told him that his sister did great at school, and she's even stronger than him. Because of that, Meng Kao's sister started to boast that her school is full of weaklings and that there is no male there who can beat her. She also said that she needs to eat more because she is still growing. 
Having said that, her dad also has to keep on cooking a lot of meat every day for her. After what she said, everyone thinks that she was so cringe. To cut the awkwardness, Meng Keo's father just asked him how did he get three days of earlier vacation. Meng Keo then explained to his father that he actually won the qualification to represent the school that is why. All of a sudden, his mother got worried about the fact that her son has to go to the front line even if he is just a freshman. She then added a huge piece of chicken to Meng Keo's bowl while asking why he only remembers to eat and not remember that he got injured. Meng Keo explained to her that that were two different things. The last time was an accident. 100 dumb and weak high school students facing hundreds of blood moon demon wolf? Definitely. It's dangerous. This time it will be different. The north frontline attack scale is huge. In addition, the Red Dragon Army sent many elite teams and Super Being Tower also has sent 10 God Realm experts. And it is not only the Agricultural University and Dragon University that will participate, a lot of universities, too. Everyone will go to the battlefield to fight and defend. With the torrent of human steel, there will be no monster who can stop their steps. The plan is while moving with the team, Meng Keo will cultivate techniques and gain new knowledge. He can even earn cultivation resources and gain connections. After all that has been said, his mother was still hesitant about the idea of her son going on the battlefield. She then asked her son if he can't just wait for two more years after graduating from the university before fighting along. That will be safer and better, she said. But his sister told their mother that it will not happen because they will certainly open up today. She then suggests to her mother that if she wants to blame someone, she can then blame her brother for going to the agricultural university. She clears her throat before explaining why she said that. Twenty or thirty years ago, agricultural old principal Jin Zhang Lin invented many new techniques. The three-dimensional farm technique developed by the agricultural has completed the honeycomb and can even perfectly meet the needs of hundreds of millions of people. No more survival crisis, and so they will need a better life, better job, and larger space, and the most simple way to achieve that is to open the outside or to be build a new era. She then told her mother to stop complaining because this is a sign of Dragon City becoming better. In two years' time, she will also participate herself in the front line. With that, Meng Keo thinks that maybe it was because of Zio Kao's inner darkness which bloodline. Suddenly, Zio Kao asked them all why are they staring at her as if she did something wrong. Her mother then tried to comfort her saying that she is so amazing and she knows many things that she herself has no idea at all. Her father also added that after Meng Keo's little sister studied at year 3 in high school, her knowledge has grown and is like an adult now which made her feel prouder of herself. Zio Kao then started to act so humbly saying that she just inherited her mother's wisdom. However, her mother doesn't even know that she does. Zio Kao left them all for a moment because she will go get the evidence. Their mother then told Meng Keo that his sister is like an adult now but can't take praise as his father did. Zio Kao gets back with a dusty box after a few moments. She told her mother that found it in the corner partition of her bed when she went for treatment. And then she also asked her if she had forgotten already that she put those things there. As soon as Meng Keo sees the box, he immediately suspected that it has something to do or it is somehow related to the darkness witch. When she opened the box, they discovered that it contains things like an old letter, a watch, and other pieces of stuff. Turns out, it was actually the first birthday gift Zio Kao's father gave her. Her mother also told her that she was actually looking for it. She has no idea that it was in there all this time. Zio Kao's father blushed after hearing and discovering what his wife did to his first birthday gift to her. Zio Kao then realized that all those letters are actually letters that her father wrote for her mother which made their father a little worried. He then immediately grabbed the letter from Zio Kao to stop her from reading the letters he once sent to their mother. However, she told her father that it was too late, for she already read those letters before. She never thought that her father was so romantic when he was young, she added. Meng Keo also started to tease their father by asking them to stop hiding the letters from him and let him see them. Because of that, their father kept the letters safe and away from his children as he asked them to stop daydreaming. Zio Kao also told Meng Keo that she is their father's cute daughter, and that is why she would never betray him even if he offered her 1,000 yuan, expecting that he might offer more. Their mother then told Zio Koa to stop playing around and just show her the evidence that she talking about earlier. But before showing her the evidence, Zio Kao teased her mother too saying that she only know how to care for her dad. Then she presented a notebook as her evidence. However, her mother doesn't remember that she had a notebook like that. She wasn't familiar with the notebook. When they look at the notebook, they discovered that it contains questions requiring a zero-gravity environment, the function of the fine-tuning force formula, and other stuff. Their mother was so clueless about what they are saying. Clearly, she has no idea about the contents of that notebook. 
Zio Kao then explained that the notebook contains questions about how martial arts are applied to the universe environment. Although Dragon City still has no ability to send people into the universe, the notebook is still very helpful. Actually, they think that it is top-notch martial art research. Meng Kao also discovered that there is a model of spiritual energy conduction drawn there that seems to be some kind of activation device used to detonate something. Their parents were so shocked by what they were saying. Everything was fine but not until Meng Kao discovered a familiar sign drawn on the notebook. Eventually, his head started to hurt and his vision was slowly becoming blurry. After that, he had a vision of his sister in the form of the darkness witch who called him brother. She was lifting Meng Kao by his neck above the ground who was bleeding at that very moment. She then told Meng Kao to get lost from her sight as far as he could. And there, he discovered that the mark drawn on the notebook was actually marked on the witch's hand. The witch then warned Meng Kao that if she happens to see him once again, it will be the end for him. At that moment, he realizes everything. It was that picture, he said as he woke up lying on the floor and while his nose was bleeding. Sai Okao asked Meng Kao why he suddenly fell down to the ground and got a nosebleed which really scared their parents. She also asked him if he visited some dirty sites again while they were not around. Meng Kao then explained that those were not dirty sites but were all life science forms. Zai Okao then ran away from Meng Kao after he flicked her on the head saying that she will one day get her revenge when she grow up. After some time, she urged her brother to hurry because he might miss the bus again if he did not. Meng Kao then ran towards her after throwing the garbage into the trash bins. He thought to himself that even though the darkness witch's problem seems complicated, he still have to solve it for she is her sister. Yesterday, Meng Kao had a very long chat with his mother, but because things are from way back, she can't remember much. All that had been known is that it seems to be pointing at the mysterious hospital from 20 years ago. His mother worked at that hospital before and there. She began to have knowledge about generational knowledge. But it has been closed long ago because of the non-stop invasion of the beasts and Dragon City's integration of medical resources. That means Dragon City's enemies aren't just beasts. The team has arrived at the Super Being Tower station. The passengers who are about to get off were asked to bring their belongings with them as they go in to pay attention to safety. Lu Hai immediately invited Meng Kao to come with him and he has something to show him. He then brought two long boxes and placed them on the table. Meng Kao asked him what are those. He explained to Meng Kao that those are new types of swords based on a hundred swordsmanship enhanced editions as he slowly opened the boxes. It was called the Rush Thunder Sword, Youth Edition. It is expected to be launched in the market soon. There will be four types to choose from. There is Moonlight Silver, Volcanic Ash, Scarlet Red, and Starry Black. He adds that he can even use laser printing to print text and patterns on the blade scabbard and handle. There is even a promotional poster that says from now on, killing beasts is much simpler than drinking coffee. Lu Hai continued to advertise the sword to Meng Kao by telling him all the good stuff he could get from using the sword. Eventually, Meng Kao stopped Lu Hai in the middle of speaking. He already knows that the sword is good but he asked Lu Hai what was he trying to tell him really. Lu Hai hesitated for a moment, and then thinks of a better way to say it that is why Meng Kao told him to just say it. In that case, Lu Hai chose to be straightforward. He then told Meng Kao that he needs him to use the Rush Thunder Sword in frontline battle. They will let a professional team film the battle into video which will be used as a promotional video for the Rush Thunder Sword. The plan is to make Meng Kao the main character of a documentary, and make him as popular as he could. During then, selling swords will be something easy. Meng Kao already imagined himself doing things in order to promote the sword but he feels like it is not giving. He just felt awkward at the thought of it. Lu Hai then explained to him that he is a role model and an idol in people's eyes and the main users of the sword will be the normal public. That means he is truly fit to be the main character. Because of that, Meng Kao agreed saying that it was reasonable. The poor boy who fought against the son of Lu Wu with the Rush Thunder Sword, he defeated the noble young master. He told Lu Hai that if he really want to film, why not use that as an opening? Lu Hai immediately agreed and suggested that he will be the young noble master. He wanted to see how much the monster has grown. Lu Hai and Meng Kao proceeded with their fight. Meng Kao lunches from the ground and smashed Lu Hai with the Rush Thunder Sword. Again, Meng Kao interrupted Lu Hai and made him unable to build a spirit magnetic field. He then wonders what technique was he using. Meng Kao teased him by not answering Lu Hai's question and urging him to guess it instead. Meng Kao strike again using the Rush Thunder Sword and Lu Hai successfully stopped him using his sword. This time Lu Hai takes his turn to strike as he told Meng Kao that it must be the limit type flow that he and the others have researched recently. However, it is known that even if he knew what technique he was using, he still cannot win against Meng Kao. But Lu Hai doesn't believe it. He thinks that he still has a shot to defeat him and his limit type flow. 
He then suddenly launches from the ground and rushed toward Meng Kao for a quick attack. Meng Kao seems to be not so prepared for Lu Hai's next attack. He seems worried. Fortunately for Lu Hai, he managed to disarm Meng Kao with his attack. Meng Kao has lost a grip on the Rush Thunder Sword. As Lu Hai passed through him, Meng Kao also spurted out some blood from the front side of his body. Meng Kao's clothes even got shattered into pieces. After the attack, Lu Hai was not able to land successfully. Instead, he crashed on the ground. Both of them lay on the ground after that. Lu Hai immediately tried to stand up as he bet on who will be the one to recover first between them. Meng Kao answered him that he will surely lose against him. He then explained to him that the durability and recovery ability of the limit type flow far surpassed the super killer flow. In that case, he will certainly win in the end. He then grabbed the Rush Thunder Sword back as he stood. He commended the greatness of the sword as he gazed over it for a few moments. All of a sudden, Meng Kao's neck started to hurt and a few beasts were wandering around the forest. All of them looked at the man that resembles the face of Meng Kao. That was his first time participating in a military operation in his previous life. At that moment, he was ready to ambush a magical village. He used his special binoculars to see the creatures living there nearer. He then discovered that the villagers in that village are creatures that look like slender humanoids with pointy ears. Their skin is as red as blood covered with dense gorgeous patterns that resembles a spiritual pattern. The man also noticed that they were not even speaking any earth languages nor do they use earth's weapons. All of a sudden, the captain ordered the man to leave no one alive. He hesitated to follow the order since he knew that there were kids together with those creatures. The captain, who referred to him as 99, called him crazy and blind and then told him that there are no kids in there, only cubs of other world creatures. 99 was still hesitant even after hearing that and so the captain let him remember that during the training, he was someone he truly admired. Be it shooting talent or the delicate knife technique evolved from the harvesting technique. At his age, he thinks that it was a miracle. However, his personality is too weak. The captain told 99 to keep his untimely humanity and think of the difficulties and dangers that the Dragon City is facing now. He also reminded him that their actions will determine the lives and deaths of many of their companions. He let him remember that even if they become despicable cockroaches, brutal demons, or cold machines, it is all worth it as long as the Earth civilization will continue to arise. After hearing that, 99 then agreed to him and told him that he now understands. Having said that, the captain then ordered him to deal with those cubs of alien creatures with his own hands later on. That way, he believes that he can leave the training camp and get stronger. However, it seems like 99 was not ready to do what he was asked to do just yet. The captain understands since everyone in the training camp started preparing from a young age unlike him who started in the middle. 99 told the captain that it was just human nature not to be ready. All of a sudden, blood scattered all over. Turns out, it was from him, especially from his neck. Someone told him that if he wasn't prepared for it, then he is useless. It was the captain who killed him hard-heartedly. Before he died, he told himself that in his next life, there will only be one answer no matter what he say. Yes, Instructor Roger, Meng Kao said as tears flow slowly from his eyes. The captain reminded the troops again to not speak the Earth's language. All of a sudden, Meng Kao was there and was struggling to breathe. He said that he will stop them and then he asked the kids to quickly run away. Meng Kao was having a really hard time breathing and he was also holding his neck which was hurting. Someone was calling him but he cannot hear him. He continued to call Meng Kao but still, there is no response. It was Lu Hai who was calling him. He suspects that Meng Kao has become crazy due to cultivation failure. Meng Kao was gasping and his eyes widened as he realizes that in his past life, Dragon City and the whole civilization has become something for the sake of survival. After a few moments, Meng Kao gets up from where he lies telling Lu Hai that he is fine now. Lu Hai gave him his clothes and asked him to wear them immediately. He also told him that his wounds have been treated. Lu Hai's father said that everyone has a monster in their heart, but it is suppressed by rules and regulations, so it cannot make any trouble. However, each super being is breaking those rules and regulations. That means that one day, they will have to face their inner monster. He then tossed Meng Kao a solution to drink. Meng Kao caught it. Lu Hai asked him if he knows why his dad stopped in Heaven Realm for so long. Meng Kao didn't know and so he asked him why. Lu Hai then explained to him that his dad was afraid. After he becomes God Realm, he will see the inner heart's deepest part. That monstrous self of him. He then told Meng Kao that the cultivation is not only meant to increase combat ability, but also become stronger mentally, and be wary of the deep parts monster. He then asked him to take it easy if it is still possible, and remind him to not rush to increase his realm. Meng Kao then wondered if he was really prepared to face his past life 99 Apocalypse's remnant soul. He sighed after a few moments of thinking deeply. 
And then after that, he drank the solution that Lu Hai gave him. It seems like Meng Kao had a blast after gulping the solution. He then told Lu Hai that after hearing his words, it seems like his past one month of cultivation was a little impatient as he flicked Lu Hai's leg. Lu Hai smiled towards him and told him that it is good to hear that he doesn't think he is being so knack. Meng Kao stood up and started a speech telling Lu Hai that at first, he thought that they were simply just business partners. But after saying all those words to him that day, he now thinks that they are true friends. He then offered his hand to Lu Hai and Lu Hai stared at him for a moment. Then he grabbed Meng Kao's hand showing that he is accepting their newly formed friendship. As they walked the hallways, Meng Kao asked Doya where will he find the news from 20 to 30 years ago because a friend of his asked him to thank the doctor who once treated his father. Oya then told him that he should go to the library on Super Being Tower's third floor if he really wanted to find information about years ago. However, those who were able to open temporary hospitals or underground clinics back then were either dead, had become crazy, or had become strong experts in God realm. Apparently, it would be very hard for Meng Kao if he will continue looking for the information for his friend. But still, Meng Kao wanted to give it a try even if it was up to fate. Oya then told him that he would bring him there since he was free at that moment and he had nothing to do. He also told Meng Kao that 20 to 30 years ago, the spiritual interference had not been solved. It is popular though. He is going to look at it in the hope of discovering the XI mark. They went straight to the front desk and the assistant asked them if there was anything she could do to help them. Straightforwardly, Meng Kao told her that he wanted to read newspapers and leaflets written 20 or 30 years ago. The assistant agreed to retrieve the relevant material from that time but she told them that the data between July and September of the 22nd new era may not be retrieved. Meng Kao then asked why it would be impossible to retrieve data from those years. He wondered what happened in those years. The assistant told him that it might be burnt. In the explosion in June, somehow the ground fire escaped into our warehouse affecting a batch of materials. She then asked Meng Kao if he was specifically looking for the data from those months of data. Meng Kao calculated the time and he thought that his mother would not have encountered that X-eyed picture so early so he told the assistant that he probably didn't need those. All of a sudden, he realized that she was talking about the explosion that happened in June. He asked the assistant again just to confirm if she was talking about the explosion that happened in the Super Being Tower, and then he asked when exactly did it occur. The assistant then answered that it probably happened on June 7 or June 8. Boya realized that Meng Kao has been acting weirdly the whole day, and so, he suspects that there might be something wrong that happened with the explosion he has been talking about. Because of that, Meng Kao asked him if he also knew something about that explosion. Oya told him that he did know something about it since it was the first explosion that affected the above ground after Super Being Tower was built. His father told him about it. He also explained to Meng Kao that the damage was not that serious. Meng Kao sighed after hearing about it. After the two finished discussing about the matter, the assistant was shivering in fear as she asked them if there was anything else she could do to help them. Meng Kao thought to himself that Lu Wu was dispatched only once in early June, and that was the day that he was reborn. It was during the afternoon, the Super Being Towers but Ancient Experiment Lab had a strange explosion at the same time. Meng Kao started to sweat after realizing those things. That was the time when he got reborn and came back from the apocalypse. As they went out of the building, Oya told Meng Kao that he knew it. That information about years ago is really hard to find. Then he tried asking him if the friend he had been talking about was a girl. Meng Kao hesitated and then he answered him that the friend he was talking about was not a girl. After saying that, Oya weirdly told Meng Kao to not worry because he understood it, but he did not specify what it was that he understood. And then he left Meng Kao without explaining. Because of that, Meng Kao could not help but think about that thing that Oya said he understood. Meng Kao also gets on a vehicle to go somewhere. Inside, he was in deep thinking. Thinking about the things that are waiting for him to solve such as the XI, his reborn, and even Dragon City's future. He thought it would be hard so he needed a higher position to do all that in that short amount of time. The vehicle he was on then rushed quickly just as thoughts on his mind do. Three days later in Dragon City's north area, because there are rich mineral deposits and spiritual veins underground, various magnetic fields collide fiercely, resulting in the endless ground releasing violent energy. There are countless, peerless, and powerful beasts with ability. That place is a restricted area for humans. It is the monster's paradise but more importantly, it is their hunting field. The machines were firing the beasts nonstop that day. Various kinds of beasts were there. Meanwhile, flying vehicles emerged behind the clouds. These vehicles were also used to fire at the beasts. There were a lot of them, enough to battle with the number of beasts there were. Thunder continued cracking the sky but it would not stop them from firing those beasts. One of the vehicles is carrying Xi Feng inside it. 
At that moment, he seemed amazed by what he was seeing. He immediately called Meng Kao who was just sitting next to him. He wanted him to look at the large rune array outside but Meng Kao could not care less and just said that it sure is amazing. He was looking at a map. He was trying to find out exactly what went wrong to let all the steel torrents in Dragon City come back in vain. By doing so, his head soon started to hurt. He was also thinking about the XI and the Last Life's instructor which all shows that the war will definitely be a loss for them. But even if he already knew what would happen, he could not just tell the instructors about it unless he wanted to be treated as someone with neuropathy. He then decided to hunt at Shatterstar Lake first to train his sword technique and then increase his combat ability. The crux of the battle will be the confrontation between Gold Realm experts and Apocalypse Ferocious Beasts on the Ranging Waves Mountain. While Meng Kao was thinking about what he should do in order to turn the events, Sai Feng let him know that they were already at the Dong Lake base. Meng Kao peeked at the window to see the base from up there. The Dong Lake base seemed very busy with people doing their thing in every corner of it. Meanwhile, their aircraft started to slow down and prepare for its landing. The students held tight on the ropes as the aircraft opened its way out. They then hanged their arms on one end of the rope and secured that it would not open by itself or whatever. Meng Kao felt courageous all of a sudden after doing that. He told himself that he needed to become stronger in order to find the answers to all his questions. Subsequently, they all jumped together. Teacher Lai then called the attention of all the Agricultural Martial Corps students and asked them to gather next to her as well as the Agricultural Resource Course and asked the Tamer Course to form a queue. The students responded to her call immediately and obeyed exactly what she said. Behind their back was a machine that still kept on firing. A girl was even in distress hearing it. In the meeting of wind and cloud, the young eagle shall spread its wings and become famous in the present. Teacher Lai then asked the students to follow her closely and advised them to not get separated from each other. They entered a building with a lot of fancy things around. On one side of it, there was a display of Lin Chuan. Written below his name are the words Engine Sky Organization Dragon Tiger Tempest Cloud Ranking Number 1. A few students recognized immediately that it was Lin Chuan and were all amazed by how handsome he was. A group of girls were even screaming in front of his picture thinking that he was looking at them. Meng Kao on the other hand seemed a little indifferent about their idol. He thinks that he was a commoner who became a Sky Realm expert, the hero who fought at the front line. Lin Chuan, the super being who rejected the offer by the major organization and stayed with the common people. Turns out, he was also his idol. He then screamed together with the girls. Teacher Lai dragged him by his ears since he seemed out of his mind screaming and crying for their idol with those young girls. She dragged him until they reached the entrance where Teacher Lai told a guard that they were from the Agricultural University and that they had come to register. Meng Kao was thinking. He never heard the name of Senior Lin Chuan in his past life before. According to his talent and fame, he would at least be on the same standards as Soul Breaker Luo Wu. Does it mean that he was killed in the war? He asked himself. All of a sudden, a crying huge guy approached Meng Kao as if he was going to tell him about his bullies. Having that thought in his mind that Lin Chuan might have died, he promised him that he would do everything to change his fate so he would not die. Meng Kao was really enjoying his daydream. However, Sai Feng interrupted him to tell him that Teacher Lai said that she was going to take them to the cafeteria for lunch and to introduce them to their comrades from other universities as well. At the cafeteria, everyone was busy with their food. However, Meng Kao noticed that a group of female students, again, had been looking at him in a strange way since Teacher Lai left. Suddenly, Sai Feng walked with him. He told Meng Kao that he had a friend who wanted to know how he broke into the girls' dormitory. He then asked for some enlightenment. Meng Kao told him that he doesn't have full control over his muscles since he doesn't practice the daredevil. It would be useless even if he told him unless he wants Meng Kao to teach him that. But Sai Feng made it clear to Meng Kao that he was not the one who wanted to know what he did but a friend of his. Meanwhile, Sun Yu was stopping a girl who wanted to beat the hell out of Meng Kao that day. Sun Yu explained that she wasn't stopping her, she was actually saving her from getting beaten up. Meng Kao and Sai Feng quickly escaped the danger they were in. Meng Kao then explained that he only sneaked into the girls' dorms just to confront Zhu Yan. All of a sudden, someone with a huge arm grabbed Meng Chu on his shoulder. He turned his head to check who was it. He was a huge man with a pink hair. Out of nowhere, the man started crying out loud. On the other hand, Meng Kao had no idea who he was. The guy then explained that he was Big Bear and then he gave Meng Kao a very tight hug as he asked him how he got so buff. While being choked by the tight hug, Meng Kao thought that since he was here, that meant he had become exalted too. Meng Kao then started to tease Big Bear telling him that it took him too long before telling him what happened. Big Bear then asked him to stop teasing him. Then he told Meng Kao that it was true that he found his own heroic spirit and became a heroic spirit envoy. But all he wanted to do now was to cry. 
Meng Kao asked him what exactly happened and why he was so. Big Bear explained that he did not listen to Mr. Yan and insisted on joining the Heroic Spirits course through extra credit but he could not keep up with them. Although he was making rapid progress with the help of his team, still, he still could not keep up with those monsters who had been consuming nutrient solutions as water since they were kids. Then their instructor paired him up with their class monitor and told her to be his mentor. But she gave him an impossible list of tasks and accepted no excuses. He started crying again as he told Meng Kao his story. He also told him that he now could not run away with his tail between his legs after being underestimated, mocked, and abused. Meng Kao commended him for not backing down from a challenge. Big Bear continued the story saying that they had a bet. If he could run 100 kilometers while carrying 300 kilograms of weight, she would admit that he was a diamond in the rough and that she was the one who was incompetent and if not, he would willingly drop out of the heroic spirit course. Meng Kao reminded him that he was a university student now so he should act as one but Big Bear just could not swallow the humiliation. In fact, he already signed and fingerprinted the transfer application and he was carrying it in his pocket. He plans on slapping it to her face once he wins the bet. Meng Kao thinks that he is being so dramatic and so Big Bear asks him if he still wants to hear the story or not. Meng Kao begged him to continue. While the two of them were talking about her, a female student showed up behind them. She had green hair and she was carrying a gun. She heard Big Bear tell Meng Kao that if it weren't for Xiao Jiang, he would not end up in that situation. As expected, the girl with green hair behind them was her, she was Xiao Jiangking. If that were a normal situation, Big Bear thinks that he must be crying now but the thought of her thinking that he was a coward was stopping him from doing so. At that time, every time he finished a lap, he would turn and catch her gaping at him. The thought of her apologizing to him in regret after finishing the laps filled him with power. Meng Kao then asked him if he finished the bet or not. Big Bear proudly told him that he did not just finish the laps, he did more than the required laps. If Giant King had not called the instructor to carry him to the hospital, he would have gone more laps. In the end, he did not just prove his worth to her, but he also got acknowledged by a heroic spirit and became exalted. Meng Kao cheered for his achievement. Before Big Bear continued speaking, Meng Kao stopped him to say that he should be proud of himself since he mentioned that he wanted to cry. Big Bear just sighed to Meng Kao after telling him that. Then he told Meng Kao that it was a very long story as the tears in his eyes started to gush out. It seems like Meng Kao did not have enough time, so he tried to ask Big Bear to make the story shorter if it was that long. Sadly, Big Bear still thinks that he is just slightly stronger than a commoner even though he has become an envoy. He also thinks that he is no match in front of super beasts. And then he slammed the table out of anger and regret. He blamed all these on Xiao Jianqing. If he had not made that bet with her, he would not be stuck with that stupid heroic spirit. He then promised himself that he would take his revenge upon her to the point that even her father, Raiden Xiao Jingyang would not be able to help her. Meng Kao noticed the girl behind Big Bear, and then he asked something about the class monitor he had been talking about. The girl was holding a huge sword stained with blood. She then got closer to where Big Bear was seated. Meng Kao then asked if the class monitor he was talking about was that lady. Big Bear was so clueless but he immediately felt he was done for. He turned his face behind his back to see who was Meng Kao talking about. Unfortunately for Big Bear, it was really her. Xiao Jianqing smashed the chair using her sword making Big Bear to be thrown away. Big Bear tried to stop her and told her to stay away from him because she already promised him that she would stop beating him after finishing the run. Meng Kao was disappointed because Big Bear's words now did not match his bravery and what he said earlier when Xiao Jianqing was not there. However, Xiao Jianqing assured Feikong that she would not beat him that day. Actually, she was just dropping by to tell him that she had overfulfilled the task that was assigned to them so he could go and collect his share of iron blood coins later. But instead of being relieved that the assignment had been finished, Big Bear got angrier at her for doing it all by herself. She then explained to him that their enemies were the three-eyed sphinxes. It would probably take a whole night to defeat one with his military boxing. And that is why she acted alone. Then she told him that she would share half of the gains with him for the next few days and to consider her advice to leave the heroic spirit since it would not benefit him now anyone on the team. Big Bear could not hold out his anger any longer for all the insults that Xiao Jianqing was telling him so he gestured like he was about to crush her by his hands. He then told her that one day, his heroic spirit would be stronger than her Valkyrie. I would be even stronger than her father's Raiden. They stared at each other and the tension between the two of them was very noticeable. She then turned to Meng Kao and told him that as his friend, he should help her persuade his friend to consider her advice for the better. All of a sudden, it seemed like she recognized him. She asked him if he was Meng Kao from the Agricultural University. Meng Kao told her that he was. However, he could not believe that she knew him. 
Unfortunately, it seemed like she did not know him because of his greatness since she told him that jerks were attracted to other jets before she left and go. Because of that, Meng Kao could not help himself but ask Big Bear what was wrong with his class monitor. Big Bear then realized that Meng Kao had no idea that he had a bad reputation within the Five University Union. Apparently, there was a rumor going around the Five University Union that a student named Meng Kao from Agricultural University had been practicing the daredevil style just so he could sneak into places he should not be such as bathrooms. Because of that, many girls see him as a monster now and the boys want to capture him to learn the techniques. Meng Kao grinned as an evil. He does not believe that the boys want to learn the techniques just to criticize him, but to do something else. On the East League camp, Meng Kao was complaining about using almost all of the B-coins he earned at Agricultural University after renting his tent and buying all the food that he was pushing into his tent. After some time, he finally reached his tent. He sat down on the chair and prepared himself for a very big meal. Before eating, he told Big Bear, as if he was there with him, that he owes him big for this. Then he got notifications congratulating him for obtaining novice rank in military boxing that soon upgraded some level until he reached the rank of intermediate. At that moment, he swallowed all the food in front of him as if there was no tomorrow coming next. In a matter of a few minutes, Meng Kao had already eaten all the food he bought. He cleaned himself with all the residue of the food right after finishing eating. All of a sudden, a memory from his previous life popped out of his head. It was a memory of him in military boxing training from his previous life. He was in some sort of basement. He did not notice last time that he was actually wearing a uniform which is completely different from the Vermilion Army. He wondered what kind of organization was he in. He even got a tattoo on his chest. It was a skull that was emerging some sort of smoke that is color red. All of a sudden, a pig head was in front of his face, close enough that it blocked his sight. He was frightened by the pig head and so he shouted a little. Turns out, it was Wu Wu who brought the pig head. He asked her what was she doing there. Wu Wu answered that she went there to give him the pig head and also to learn the daredevil technique. She then explained that being defeated by the strong, learning from the strong, defeating the strong, and then eating the strong is the law of survival. She then stopped for a moment when she placed her hand over her chest. And then she continued, telling him that he could eat her whole if he managed to beat her. Before he knew it, Wu Wu had already started again with the whole eating thing. Because of that, he asked Wu Wu to stop making such misleading remarks. All of a sudden, he realized that Wu Wu was a special student enrolled in the beast taming course and also, she would be a great asset in spreading the daredevil if he taught it to her. He then tells Wu Wu that he would agree to teach her the daredevil but on one condition, she has to promise him one thing. She has to beat the other special students, including Xiao Jianking, who are in the East Lake basement ranking. Wu Wu smiled all over her ears as she immediately agreed with his deal. Now that it was settled, Meng Kao stood up to fix himself, and then invited Wu Wu to go to the training room because he would now show her the power of the daredevil. Wu Wu hesitated for a moment and turned her face towards the pig head she brought him. She then munched the pig head as fast as she could. She even filled her mouth with it leaving Meng Kao in awe. When Meng Kao looked back at the pig head, half of it was already gone. Three hours later, the students gathered inside Meng Kao's rented tent. They were all busy talking to their friends and it seemed like everyone was having fun. Someone told Xi Feng that Meng Kao was a real legend. He heard that he was severely punished after getting caught red-handed trying to sneak into the girls' bathroom. Someone also told him that the information he got was that Meng Kao was not caught on the spot. People only found out what he did later. The other students then realized that there were a couple of versions of the story and so they asked the other students to tell it. After a few minutes, Meng Kao came into the room. He asked if everyone was there yet. Xi Feng whispered to Meng Kao. He asked him why are those students there. Those fellows were notorious troublemakers back in their high schools. However, it seemed like Meng Kao did not care at all. He just smiled at each and every one of them. He even shakes hands with the others. A student with white hair told Meng Kao that they didn't care about the daredevil. What they want is to know how he managed to sneak into the girl's bathroom. Meng Kao just laughed after hearing it. But a few moments later, he shouted out of anger and asked who the hell said that. The room was immediately covered with silence after Meng Kao shouted as if everyone was too afraid to get on Meng Kao's nerves. However, the one who said was not afraid at all. He presented himself to Meng Kao. His name was Zhang Hongji, and he was the one who said it. He actually came there to see how powerful Meng Kao is. He then urged Meng Kao to show them some skills since the clock is ticking and time is precious. In exchange, he would give him iron blood coins, monster loot, or martial arts techniques. But he also told him that it was just okay if he was just boasting about his skills. After all, they went there to support Feixing. Meng Kao just smirked after hearing that. 
And then he started removing his uniform as if he was preparing himself to show off some skills. Zhang Hongji turned red and felt awkward for him. He wanted to stop him since there were a lot of people inside the tent. Meng Keo was almost fully naked when he told Zhang Hongji that actions are better than words and then he urged him to come and get a taste of the daredevil himself. Zhang Hongji also removed his clothes and then he urged Meng Keo to show whatever petty tricks he had on him. He also told him that he was not scared at all. Meng Keo immediately got into his combat stance showing Zhang Hongji that he was ready for a fight. Big Bear was there and he recognized the stance. He wondered if Meng Keo was going to use military boxing for the fight. Zhang Hongji told him that he would not go soft on him just because he would be using military boxing. He launches towards Meng Keo for an attack. Meng Keo did not move even if Zhang Hongji was getting closer and closer to him. Sai Feng thinks that it would be bad for Meng Keo since he is more of an agility fighter. He might run into some mobility constraints in this small tent. Meng Keo crossed her arms on his chest, and then he stomped his foot in front of him. It was the military boxing sixth form which is called the block and hook. Using that move, he managed to dodge Zhang Hongji's attack. Zhang Hongji could not believe that he was able to do that. Sai Feng also realized just now that military boxing could be useful in some ways just like in this situation. Zhang Hongji was now fired up. He was ready for a real fight as his main vessels showed on his skin. Meng Keo's main vessels also showed around his body. Zhang Hongji tried to kick Meng Keo in the face but luckily, Meng Keo managed to block it with his hand. Another kick on his body but Meng Keo seemed to not feel anything at all. Zai Feng shouted to tell Meng Keo that it was a block and uppercut. Meng Keo then gathered his strength in his right hand and prepared himself for an attack. One blow on Zhang Hongji's body, and he was done for. Meng Keo's punch was too powerful for him. Big Bear realized that Meng Keo's military boxing is a killing technique and not the real military boxing. After knocking the hell out of Zhang Hongji, another student, named Chen Jianzhen, presented himself to Meng Keo. He was a new intake from the engineering course. He then got into the little battlefield Meng Keo had set up inside his tent to start the fight. Just like earlier, Meng Keo stopped his opponent's attacks and then followed with an uppercut. However, Chen Jianzhen managed to dodge Meng Keo's first attack. He then prepared for another attack as soon as he could. This time, the punch successfully hit Chen Jianzhen's belly making him spurt some saliva due to its strength. The two of them could not stand up after getting beaten up by Meng Keo. Miraculously, Meng Keo was not exhausted at all. He asked the crowd if there was still anyone who wanted to go next. The other students now realize and prove with their own eyes that Meng Keo truly is something. They think that even their instructors could never execute a punch that way. A student with yellow hair told another student that they could go ahead if they wanted to fight Meng Keo. He was not up for it because he said he was a wise general. Meng Keo then explained to every one of them that just like what they saw, all their abilities would be improved by the daredevil. Even the most basic martial arts techniques. All of a sudden, Big Bear raised his voice and told Meng Keo that he wanted to fight against him. Meng Kaho could not really tell whether he was just messing or he just seriously wanted to fight. Big Bear told him that he was sure. He was also a student of the military school after all. He wanted to prove something to Meng Keo. He told Meng Keo that the real military boxing is the fist of protection. It should be used to protect their home. The crowd then cheered for Big Bear after saying those words. It seemed like Meng Kaho had no other choice but to fight against his friend, Big Bear, since everyone was already hyped up. He then glared at him as he told him to start the fight at once. In an instant, Meng Keo as well as Big Bear have positioned themselves for the battle. Meng Keo was ready to use military boxing again for this one. Big Bear also confirms that his military boxing skills are ready for the battle as well. Meanwhile, Meng Keo was having a dilemma about whether he would go easy on him and let him hold on for a few moves. All of a sudden, Big Bear lounges from the ground for an offensive attack called a lunge punch. Luckily, Meng Keo was quick enough to notice it and defend himself against the attack. Meng Keo punched him back, but Big Bear grabbed his hand. It was bad news for Meng Keo. Big Bear then pulled him towards him and then he struck him with a second form piercing kick. Meng Keo managed to block the kick, however. Quickly, he threw a punch again but Big Bear moved backwards to dodge it. It seemed like it was a fair fight. Everyone was cheering for both of them. Actually, the crowd was not expecting Big Bear to be that good against Meng Keo because some of them had already seen him fight and he only had a mediocre skill. Meng Keo and Big Bear simultaneously throw a punch at each other making their fists meet halfway. The impact of the collision of their fist was great showing how strong the attacks were. After that, the both of them stopped for a while to take a breath. But after a few minutes, Big Bear urged Meng Keo to come at him again. Meng Keo asked him what was he up to. He thought that he would help him promote the use of the daredevil. Big Bear explained that he doesn't like his military boxing, that is why. 
In an instant, Mang Kao disappeared as if he blinked from Big Bear's front towards his back. Mang Kao had locked Big Bear while telling him that his talk was rubbish. The only reason why the soldier wants him to beat him up is because he subconsciously wants to beat him up. Big Bear then revealed that he actually wanted to beat him up since the time he started acting so cool before the exams. Meng Kao seemed to be caught off guard by Big Bear after telling him that. He was able to escape from being headlocked and also managed to turn the tables. This time, Meng Kao was held captive by Big Bear with his hands on his back. Big Bear then prepared for an attack called Gallop Leap, Whooping Smack. Unexpectedly, Meng Kao did a backflip to dodge Big Bear's approaching attack he still was holding him in his other hand. Meng Kao landed successfully. He then grabbed Big Bear's head using the hand held by him. Big Bear was left in awe by how fast Meng Kao was. And all of a sudden, Meng Kao promised Big Bear that he would never act cool again in front of him and he asked for a favor to stop the fight. But still, Big Bear wanted to spar with him. Meng Kao was pissed by what Big Bear told him. He explained to him once again that that thought was not because of anything but because of his subconsciousness. Having said that, Big Bear lifted Meng Kao off the ground and was about to slam him back into the ground. It seemed like Meng Kao got caught off guard again and it seems like he won't get away this time. But after being tossed and slammed into the goring, Meng Kao still managed to land perfectly. He then asked Big Bear to call it a day for the both of them. He just wanted to spar with him and not to find who was stronger. More importantly, Meng Kao just showed him all that, that everything could be lethal even the basic military boxing, with the support of the daredevil. He then presented a study carried out by Master Luo Wu and his teacher Gu Jianbo about the future changes in Dragon City's fighting style. He showed him an expiest found in the fog's depth. It was discovered by Master Luo as they headed deeper into the fog. The monsters became faster and more alert. More and more exalts were killed while they were charging up their ultimate skill, or when they were in cooldown with no ultimate skill to use. Then he asked everyone if they understood what that meant. Someone answered that it means that they have to be more adept at using their ultimate skills and mastering them to avoid long cooldowns. However, they were wrong. It meant that in the future, they needed to be faster in both offense and defense. Control will be more important than the output. He then explained to them that the prodigy of the Agricultural University's martial arts course, Senior Zhang Yi, had foreseen such a future. That is why he sacrificed himself to build a foundation for the Daredevil. It was so Mr. Gu could complete the first stage. Using 1042 submeridians to cultivate is no longer a fool's errand. Finally, he told them that he knew that what he was saying didn't prove anything yet but they would soon witness the true power of the Daredevil once he fought at Star Crush Lake three days from now. When that time comes, he hopes that they will give the Daredevil and themselves a chance. Three days later, at the Star Crush Lake region, nameless Lake Number 421, machine guns have been firing continuously, splashing the calm water of the lake and disturbing the beasts living underwater. On the land area, beasts with four legs were running for their lives. They don't even have the time to mind bumping their heads from one tree to another as they run. All of a sudden, one beast has been pierced from its back through its abdomen by a huge chunk of something. Turns out, it was the leg of a multi-legged armored vehicle called a long-legged arachnid. It resembles a huge spider that's why it was called that way. But it was not alone, there are a few other long-legged piercing the beasts running with them. All of a sudden, a compartment from the side of the long-legged vehicle opened up and a scanner-like device came out from it. Subsequently, a green light emerged from it as it scanned the area in front of it. Not long after, a few figures started emerging from the lake. They were creatures which had a very thick gray skin with scales that covered their whole body. They also have long sharp claws. It resembles a crocodile because of its body and its long powerful tail. Inside the vehicle, Meng Kao and the others were analyzing the kind of species. Its details were flashed on the screen. Teacher Lai told them that those were the most significant threats and the geographical environment in Zone 421 that they will be facing. She then ordered Meng Kao along with the other crews to use their heads to make sensible judgments and choose the right equipment. They will leave in 30 minutes. The exosuits started to clang after the students wore them. Sunna seemed to be enjoying the moment because she always dreamed of wearing those suits out in the field. On the other hand, Zai Feng noticed that the suits have improved a lot. Despite all the compliments from the other students about their equipment, Meng Kao still thinks that he would never wear that kind of suit on him, after all. All of a sudden, Duan Lion agreed with Meng Kao and told everyone that they should leave all of the equipment in the warehouse just to sympathize with him. However, Meng Kao then told them that that was not like the entrance exam's combat test and then he sighed as he wore his equipment. Duan Lion was sad that Meng Kao did not want to use the equipment. He could not understand him since the equipment was great and cool looking. Zai Feng told him that maybe they just could not understand Kao the Great's mind. 
The vehicles that looked like military tanks approached the lake where the beasts were situated. After some time, they finally reached the area. Someone gets off from the vehicle thudding his foot to the ground with his exosuit. It was Du and Lion who was in the middle and the one who told the other guys to keep up with him since they were already outside the base at that time so they should never be left behind. This is now a real fight, and not just a mock battle. According to the classification of the Dragon City, that place is a deep yellow zone. Other than a few boss-level monsters, there aren't any super beasts there. Afterwards, Teacher Lai ordered the students that their goal is to kill 90% of the monsters before dark and turn the area into a light yellow zone. She then explained that once their mission is done, the regular troops of the Vermilion Dragons will enter and conduct a deep cleanup. And then she reminds them to be cautious because every oversight they make could cost the lives of the Vermilion Dragons' regular troops. The students agreed with her as they understood the importance of their mission. Teacher Lai then told them to spread around and start killing those monsters. All of a sudden, a man with long white hair noticed the lively students and youngsters which reminded him of him of that year. He also told his companion that they only needed to support the main troop and scout the wilderness back in the day. They weren't as lucky as them. Teacher Lai agreed with him telling him that it was fortunate and unfortunate to be involved in a battle that would determine the future of the Dragon City. The man answered her that after all, all it takes is just a little beating to make them all obedient. Teacher Lai sighed as she murmured her hope that there would not be too many casualties. Strong winds rolled out the field that day. Meanwhile, Zai Feng swings his sword in order to kill the beast in front of him. He could not hide his joy after killing his first beast. He even thinks that it was just a piece of cake. Not long after, Duan Lion killed his moment by telling him that he had only killed one beast yet Sunya had already slain five. Duan Lion then told him that he needed to charge and since he was slowly plotting everyone behind, which is why he only got the leftovers. After having a short discussion, Duan Lion then asked him to continue the mission. Unlike anyone else, Sunya was showing great skills and seriousness about the mission as if she wanted to prove something. She continued slaying beast after beast in a very short manner of time. It seemed like she was really enjoying her time slaying those beasts. Turns out, she was actually slaying as many beasts as she could so that she could make it to the top of the leaderboard and be noticed by the hotspots. However, she noticed that she could not move her feet. Unfortunately, they got stuck. While she was stuck, a number of beasts suddenly emerged and approached to attack her. She was helpless at that time and so the beast successfully launched towards her making her fall to the ground. Fortunately, Sunya still managed to save herself from that situation by pushing the beasts away from her. After clearing the area around her, she immediately called everyone. She warned them about what happened to her when the grass got into the spherical joints of the mechanical exosuit it jammed up. Ying Rui was the first one to answer Sunya's call. He then checked his suit but there was nothing inside his suit's spherical joints. He thought that it was just a low probability event. All of a sudden, he started sinking down. He had just realized that he was standing in a swamp all this time and now almost half of his legs were submerged underwater. Meanwhile, someone behind the long grass shouted for help because his exosuit had been jammed too. Zhu Ying Rui also called for help as he got stuck in the swamp. They then called Ms. Lai for help. Meanwhile, Teacher Lai was more ready to respond to the call of her students than they were expecting. Her surroundings started to light up with fire extending upward. From afar, Sunya seemed to notice the fire but she did not have enough time to pay much attention to it because she was busy fighting with the beast. The fire turned into something that resembled a huge phoenix. It flashed its majestic wings and long sharp claws as it floated behind Teacher Lai. All of a sudden, it released a powerful sound that echoed around the area. The beasts that Sunya was fighting heard the sound. And soon after they heard it, they all ran away as if they knew they would surely be done for if they did not. Finally, Sunya got the time to take a breath and rest for some time. She was not expecting the beasts to be that annoying. On the other part of the lake, Duan Lion stepped into something that was slowly sucking him down beneath the ground. Jiang Rui was experiencing the same as him. Still, he was stuck there and could not move his legs. All they were hoping was for Teacher Lai to come over and help them with their situations. Meanwhile, Zai Feng noticed that Teacher Lai had started making her move as he noticed the phoenix above the sky. Having the knowledge that Teacher Lai was doing something, he inferred that maybe, the situation was that bad. All of a sudden, he heard something behind the tall grass. He wondered what was it. Turns out, it was a beast and it was quickly running towards to attack him. When it reached the open area where Zai Feng was standing, it quickly jumped off the ground towards Zai Feng. Luckily, he was able to dodge the beast by lowering his body down. However, a bunch of the same beasts ran quickly following the first one who attacked him. It turns out that the first one was not really attacking Zai Feng, but instead, it was running away to escape and so are those bunch of beasts that did not even notice Zai Feng there. 
But still, Zai Feng was scared for his life seeing the amount of beasts that ran past him. All he wished for was for those beasts to not step on his face. The students were exhausted after fighting with those beasts. They have the same thoughts about those beasts being so scary when they come in groups. On the other hand, Teacher Lai was kind of disappointed with their behavior earlier. She told them they should know how to deal with those small groups of beasts, as Exalta. On the leaderboard, Jiara Wu has already killed 63 beasts in just 30 minutes making her name to be at the top of the list. Zai Feng was wondering if Meng Kao was right after all. He remembered that Jiara Wu did not put on her exosuit either. Meng Kao was in 6th place earlier with 7 kills, but he eventually went up the leaderboard to 3rd place following Sun Yin the 2nd. After some time, a student asked Teacher Lai to switch the camera feed to Jiara Wu. He explained to her that he wanted to observe and find the gap difference between them. They then witnessed how easily it is for Jiara Wu to slaughter those beasts using her claws and with the help of Leopard. It seemed like no beast could ever escape her sharp claws. Every one of them suffered a quick and painful death. After seeing that, the other students could not look at how brutal her killing skills were. All of a sudden, Sai Feng noticed that Meng Kao had gone up the leaderboard again. He was now in the first place. They thought that it was impossible because it had only been two minutes. Because of that, Duan Lion requested to change to camera feed to Meng Kao because he wanted to see what kind of tricks he was using this time. They saw green beasts on the screen and they recalled the one responsible for damaging their exosuits by spraying its poison in midair. After being shot, it exploded making the poison get all over them. They also noticed that Meng Kao was using the rocket step. They think that he was using it to speed up getting closer to the beast and kill it before it spews poison. But Duan Lion thinks that it is useless because the beast will explode after dying. They noticed that Kao used the first form of the 100 combat sword technique called the lunge stab. It was exactly done the same as in the textbook. Next, Meng Kao did the sidestep which was taught to them by their instructor. Turns out, Meng Kao actually did the sidestep just to avoid the liking gator at the back. They then wondered whether he had eyes on his back. He thinks that someone must be helping him since he heard that Master Luo Wu is planning to film a documentary of him on the battlefield to promote a new sword. And because of that, he asked for a drone view of Meng Kao. Other students could not believe that Duan Lion would say something like that to Meng Kao. However, Duan Lion had his reason to think that way. Zai Feng asked Duan Lion why was he spreading rumors against Meng Kao again when he already made up with him a couple of days ago. But Duan Lane defended himself that he was not saying he was cheating. He just wanted to see how he did all those impossible moves and to learn from watching him as well. All of a sudden, Teacher Lai told them that she was getting curious about it, too. And so they switched to the drone view and connected to his communicator. Teacher Lai also thinks that it would be beneficial to everyone to gain some pointers from watching how Meng Kao fights from the drone view. On the battlefield, Meng Kao thinks that the beasts in the wild are not the same as those they encountered in Drek. Meanwhile, something was watching him while hiding behind the grass. Meng Kao thinks that their, their abilities blend perfectly with the environment making them more dangerous than those in Drak. He seemed not to notice the beast at his back. All of a sudden, the beast at the back revealed itself and roared. Very simply, Meng Kao raised his sword and put it over his shoulder and the beast was killed. The sword pierced into the beast's mouth. He did not even flinch a little by doing so. However, Duan Lion was still unimpressed even after seeing how Meng Kao easily killed that huge beast. Meng Kao doesn't know how to kill a calamity beast but the beast in front of him that time. A simple swish of his sword would get the job done so easily. They do not have to rely on any sure kill moves for the beast like that one. Sun Yin now noticed how quickly Meng Kao had been killing all those monsters so, she asked him to teach her the moves in order for her to kill as much as he could. However, Meng Kao told Sun Yin that he was not killing that fast. The reason behind that sudden increase in his count was the error caused by data latency. The wounds that he caused to all those monsters were too minor leaving them alive and kicking for life for half a day before succumbing. Sun Yin then wondered how was he able to control the size of the wounds all the time despite the number of monsters and such a chaotic situation. A beast attacked Meng Kao but he was able to easily dodge it by just leaning on his side. He then explained to Sun Yin that by learning the Daredevil, he gained the same control over his body that he has. Then he proceeded for an attack called the Rocket Step as quickly as he could. He pierced his sword through the beast's side and made his way through its heart. He did it so easily because he already dissected thousands of monsters making him too familiar with it. Meanwhile, Duan Lion asked him how was he able to dodge in advance as if he could see what was behind him. Zai Feng thinks that he might have stolen the thunder again. Meng Kao then explained to them that that was the biggest advantage of the Daredevil. He then asked Teacher Lai to change the view from his first-person view. He told everyone to watch closely as he adjusted the thing on his arm. 
There, the students saw that Meng Kao's body hair was knotted in different styles showing that he has full control over his body. Moreover, his senses were also greatly enhanced. So no matter which direction the monsters attacked, he could easily feel the wind generated by their attacks and thus dodge them. After hearing that, Duan Lion then realized that the Daredevil seemed to be more suited for escaping because it didn't have any sure kill moves. Meng Kao agreed with him. However, he would cultivate all 1024 submeridians with the Daredevil. Thus, there would be no issues with cultivating their styles too. While explaining all that, Meng Kao was able to have another monster suffer. He kicked it so hard. And then he brought out his sword and used the demon crushing slash. What he has been doing is first, he would restrain the target. When they were hanging in midair, he would construct a magnetic field to unleash the killing move to increase accuracy. After all, he explained that they were still freshmen and they were not combat geniuses like Ms. Lai so they probably cannot put out more than 80% of their killing moves in effect in their first battle. Teacher Lai then ordered him to stop beating around the bush and spit his point directly. Meng Kao knew that some people thought that he was a trickster and that he was not as strong when it came to real fighting. But in the real battle, they can lose their lives at any moment and the monsters would be more cunning than him. He knew that the Daredevil was not as flashy as they expected but it could definitely increase everyone's survivability on the battlefield tremendously. Now, Du and Lion seemed to be considering it. Ming Kao then mentioned to Ms. Lai that it would take a while for the Daredevil training equipment to arrive but they can start changing their battle move as early as now. So, he looked at Ms. Lai as if he was telling her that she knew what she had to do. Teacher Lai suddenly told everyone to try finishing their fights using only normal attacks from then on. The students agreed with what she told them. However, Teacher Lai added that that was not an order, but just a suggestion, and then she ordered them to go back to the battlefield. Meanwhile, at the Sky Bliss Garden, Xiao Kao and her mom were having a conversation about the rainstorm that fell on the Star Crush Lake and the large number of monsters that suddenly appeared along with the fog. The same thing was also discussed on TV with the expert from the survival committee, Liu Ren, telling the fact. Zio Kao then asked her mom if she heard anything from Meng Kao recently since he had been at the front line for almost three months now and yet he had not called even once. Despite Zio Kao's worry, her mom just poked her on her forehead for addressing his brother by his name and not with honorifics. She then gave Zio Kao her lunch and told her not to be like his brother. She explained to her that he had not called home but he had been actively promoting the daredevil. He should be just fine. Zio Kao then told her mom not to worry because when she became exalted, she would bring his brother home and tie him up so that he could not leave home anymore. Her mom just pinched and stretched her checks from side to side knowing that she just really wanted to tie her brother down and not because of her. Afterwards, Zio Kao then left and went off to school with a big smile on her face. But as soon as he closed the door, her face went down and she could not hide her sadness any longer. Her mom was doing the same as her. She looked out the window and thought of her son. She was obviously worried for her son but she could not do anything but wish for her son to be just fine. At the East Lake base's outskirts, machine guns were positioned outside and were continuously firing at the beasts who were approaching the area. Aside from those machine guns, a train comes and is also firing beasts along its way. After a few minutes, the train successfully entered the building. The bridge has been cut to keep anything outside from approaching the building. Inside the train were the students who were busy unloading the medicine packs the train brought. Meng Kao then thought that after that rainstorm in November, the environment had become harsher than it already was and the monsters had grown and evolved at a rapid pace. He was thinking about how the monsters endlessly attacked the highway as if they knew how important it was to the front line when one of the doctors asked him to put the box over there. The monster's intelligence must have grown. Some species even learned how to cooperate, and the number of student casualties had been rising. On the other hand, there was a significantly higher survival rate among those who adopted the daredevil. He hopes that this small change might overturn the overall situation. Just right in time, Zai Feng asked Meng Kao if he wanted to tag along after they finished moving all the supplies for a different mission. Meng Kao agreed to join and asked Zai Feng to let him know when are they going to depart. At the deep yellow zone near the Star Crush Lake, Meng Kao jumped from one tree root to another in order to get to the spot where they would do their mission. Duan Lion hates to admit it but it really seems like the Daredevil is a great help to deal with the regular monster now that they are getting smarter. It is also much more reliable. Zhang Rui immediately followed Meng Kao as he also jumped from one route to another. Zai Feng then asked the others to hurry or else they would not be able to discern the path that Kao discovered. He doesn't want to scout his way through that damp swamp himself. Sunya then advised them to observe Meng Kao closely. If there are no problems, then they should bring him with them when they go to the tombstone forest. Zai Feng told her that it would not be necessary for Meng Kao with his capability. 
he can easily get away from a super beast if he cannot beat it. Du and Liam agreed with Xi Feng. The daredevil is, indeed, well suited for escaping. For the last two months, he had already seen many who had learned the style get back to base alive. Jai and Rui suddenly told them that Kao was a great harvester while all of them were running with all their speed. Xi Feng answered him. He told him that he almost forgot about that. And then Sunya noticed that Meng Kao had stopped running. She then asked him what was the matter as Meng Kao stayed still at a branch of a tree looking afar. Meng Kao told the others to keep their voices down and listen carefully. All of a sudden, there was a rustling in the grasses near where they were at that moment. Du and Lion thinks that it is a snake monster based on its sound and then he told everyone to be careful. After some time, snake monsters started to emerge from the trees. They have purple scales and glaring red eyes. The hissing of the snakes echoed around the forest bringing terror to everyone. All of a sudden, it seems like the snake monsters have already surrounded Meng Kao as well as the other students. Indeed, it was a bad news. Sunya then just discovered that it was a horde of blade scourges they were about to deal with. In an instant, Meng Kao launched from where he was standing holding his swords on both of his hands. Xi Feng was worried about Meng Kao so he asked him immediately to come back at once because there might be a super beast among that horde. However, Meng Kao just smiled at him and asked him to not worry about him for he knew exactly what he was doing. As Meng Kao launched, the snake monster subsequently opened their mouths as wide as they could and reached for him. He landed on the snake monster's body, and then he jumped once again. This time, he reached for the snake's lower body part and injected something into it. After injecting all the solution, he then landed on the ground with no damage taken. All of a sudden, the snake monster started to growl as if it was in great pain. Then its eyes widened and its body started to get paralyzed. Finally, the snake monster bent itself as if it could not control its body anymore. Xi Feng was so proud of what Meng Kao did but Sunya was wondering how was he able to do that. He explained that it was just because of a little footwork, a little preparation, and along with a quick-acting muscle hardener he injected into them. Before everyone had caught up, he already discovered the snake monsters and sprayed more than 20 kinds of biological agents on their bodies in advance. Shatter Sword Python mainly relies on the sense of smell and heat changes to perceive the enemy. The extreme current can temporarily regulate the body temperature to a certain extent, and those biological agents can paralyze the Shatter Sword Python's sense of smell. All he had to do was to find the special round scale near the python's heart. With the right vibration frequency, the syringe can be easily pierced and inserted into the skin through the meshes deep into the heart, and then draw its heart blood. With the precious blood drawn, the Shatter Sword Python would become weak for a long period of time. This will cause them to be eaten out by other monsters very quickly. To better reduce the monster's amount as the fog thickens, Ming Kao often injects that slow-release poison that he concocted himself into the monsters that can't be transported back to the base. But that's not it. The biggest specialty of that kind of poison is that it's difficult to decompose into the monster's body. It will slowly grow until it reaches the lethal dose. Xi Feng believes that Meng Kao's method was definitely useful, but he could not stop himself from worrying about what would happen if they accidentally consumed it by mistake. Meng Kao then explained that the biggest advantage of the poison is that it is not resistant to high temperatures. It will lose toxicity after being boiled in water for 5 to 10 minutes. After all that he had said and done, Sunya thinks that it is not Meng Kao's first time to do it. He even seems proficient with it. He sure is. Basically, he has to hunt monsters every day. 10% will be brought to the base, and the others will be handled in a similar way leaving some surprises for those monsters. Du and Lion could not really believe that Meng Kao had been bringing on 10% of the monsters he hunted and yet, his results are almost the same as the four of them. Meng Kao just shook his shoulders as if to show that he could not do anything about it. After the discussion, Sunny invited Meng Kao to come with them to the Tombstone Forest to slaughter monsters. She thinks that they can make names for themselves there. However, Meng Kao doesn't want to go. He thinks that it is too dangerous. Du and Lion barged into the conversation telling him that he knew his limit type flow was not strong enough against the super beasts, but they could definitely win if they formed a team with them. However, that was not what Meng Kao was trying to tell them. He meant that it was too dangerous to team up with him and go to the Tombstone Forest. In the northwest direction, 3 to 5 kilometers from there, there should be the Overlord Reptile Monsters and there might be a dragon-type super beast. Meng Kao had been waiting for so many days for it, and now it has finally appeared. Everyone was rushing in the northwest direction where the dragon-type monster might be. They took the swamp in order to get there. It was difficult for them to run fast in their current situation. All of a sudden, Meng Kao felt like someone was fighting against a super beast somewhere. With that in mind, he ran faster in order to catch up. Xi Feng noticed that Meng Kao was running even faster. He then wondered what might be the reason for that. 
Sunya thinks that he might discovered something urgent, and so she urges the others to speed up and follow him. On the battlefield, people who were wearing exosuits seemed in trouble. The woman behind the other then told her teammates to crawl down as if something was about to hit them. They all dropped at once as fire emerged from somewhere behind them. The fire was powerful. There was even a magma-like material gushing out from somewhere. It has caught up, someone said as they saw the sharp claws of a beast in a huge bird form with fiery feathers. She ordered everyone to run as the beast started growling and emitting fire from its body. She also requested reinforcement but it seems like no one was getting her message. Rescue came for them, however, the vehicle exploded after the beast fired it. They are done for, they said losing hope of surviving their current situation with the fire dragon. The man helped the woman get up and asked her to run because the fire feather dragon would chase up soon. They tried their best to get up and run even though they were both hurting from their injuries because if they did not move, the fire feather dragon would surely slaughter them both. All of a sudden, someone was firing the fire feather dragon. Actually, there were a number of crab-like vehicles firing the dragon continuously. They were shooting the dragon in all directions. Eventually, the fire feather dragon started to cry in agony and pain. Because of that sight, the crew thinks that they were already saved. It was a fire feather dragon, said the man who was riding one of the vehicles. He added that it was rare to encounter it at Shatter Star Lake today so he thinks that he was quite lucky. The man with green hair was named Su Shang and because it was he who came, the crew thinks they were, indeed, saved. The vehicles continued firing the beast nonstop. Zhu Shang who was on land also shoots the beast. All of a sudden, the fire feather dragon started channeling its strength, and then it released fire from its mouth towards Zhu Shang. Bad news, the signal is concealed by the fire feather dragon's spirit fire so Zhu Shang could not control it properly. Because of that, Zhu Sheng tried to move in a different direction. However, the fire feather dragon seemed to be calculating his movements. It then channeled a ball of fire again in its mouth and released it powerfully towards Zhu Sheng. He was surprised that it can predict so far. It should not be happening. The power and the attack range were different from the data storage information. It means that it is really a fire feather dragon. Even though its body is huge, it can still turn around in a short period of time and also, its combat intelligence is so high. He then decided to get out of his spider war vehicle to lure the fire feather dragon away. However, not even a minute had passed and the vehicle had already been torn up by the fire feather dragon making him be thrown away. Before crashing to the ground, he aimed his weapon towards the fire feather dragon and wished the beast to die. The weapon attached to his hand activated. It eventually released a ball of energy towards the mouth of the fire feather dragon. The ball of energy became massive as he shot it towards the beast. The impact of the attack was too powerful which is why he crashed to the ground after dealing the damage. Zhu Sheng grinned as he thought of how strong the fire feather dragon was that he needed to use his trump card. Such a pity that the beast got killed by his ultra-high voltage arc cannon. After some time, the smoke cleared out and the fire feather dragon emerged behind. It roared very loudly out of anger. Turns out, it did not die from his attack. The fire feather dragon then searched for its enemy with glaring eyes. All of a sudden, bullets were fired towards the beast. The fire feather dragon did not have a chance to dodge the bullets, but it seems like it endured all the damages dealt to him. The bullets then explode as they collide with the beast. Zhu Sheng and the crew were behind meaning that they were not the ones who shot those bullets but the person in front of them. He was Han Zing, the military academy martial arts special recruit student. Zhu Sheng told Han Zing to stop being so cocky for if it wasn't for the recent spiritual disturbance in the Shatter Star Lake, the fire feather dragon would have been long crushed by him. The other crew were very happy to see Han Zing. Once again, they told each other that they were saved now. Because of the malfunctions, Han Zing then told Zhu Sheng that they, the mechanics, have too many limitations and should not be classified as a combat profession. He explained to Zhu Sheng that in the wild, the more monsters they ate, the stronger the spiritual magnetic interference is. And then he told him to just sit there and watch how his brother Han Zing would kill the monster. He aimed his two weapons at the fire feather dragon as it approached him. Then he started shooting the monster again continuously each bullet hit the monster successfully and each bullet exploded as it hit the monster. The eyes of the monsters were so bright that it was still visible even when the monster was covered with thick smoke due to the explosion. It glared at Han Zing and then it flew downwards to him. Han Zing then fired his weapon again at the monsters hoping that it would stop the monster from getting closer to them. In the end, it seemed like his tactics had failed to serve its purpose. The fire feather dragon was still alive and still powerful. It should not be happening. Han Zing's bullets were specially made. He used spiritual energy to control it to have 100% accuracy. It should not be affected by high temperature turbulence. Soon, he figured out that the fire feather dragon's talent ability was not fire breathing, high temperature turbulence, 
and flame dance. He also noticed that there was something wrong with the fast speed regeneration. The fire feather dragon landed on the ground making huge cracks on the land. Han Xing moved back a little but was still continuously firing at the monster. He then asked Zhu Sheng to quickly think of a way to support the nearby experts because they were certainly no match for the beast. Zhu Sheng immediately obeyed his order. Han Xing ordered Zhu Sheng one more time to hurry up because he thought that he would not be able to hang on much longer. All of a sudden, Zhu Sheng unexpectedly called for help and saving that shocked all the crew members. Han Xing asked him what he was doing and he proudly answered that he was contacting nearby experts. Shouting was the best way to communicate now that the magnetic interference got worse. Han Xing told Zhu Sheng that he would provide him with firepower to cover, so he should bring them to retreat. Zhu Sheng noticed that Han Xing was really in a very serious situation now. All of a sudden, he noticed the spider war vehicle behind him. He then commanded the vehicle to activate human milling mode which surprised everyone. Meanwhile, Zhu Sheng became a part of the spider war vehicle connecting his upper body to the vehicle itself. He then asked the crew members to sit on tight and be ready to leave the battlefield. All of them looked for the best position outside the vehicle where they could hold on tight because the vehicle unfortunately doesn't have a co-pilot. Now, Han Xing can go all out fighting against the monster. All of a sudden, someone appeared on the battlefield. She was the glorious cross slash and Shao giant king. They bravely faced the fire feather dragon so closely and dealt a significant amount of damage to the monster. Along with her, Wu Wu also showed up with Leopard. She immediately attacked the Fire Feather Dragon with a corrosive claw. The monster roared in pain after receiving those attacks. The three women stood fiercely in front of the monster after dealing with their attacks. The crew members looked back and wondered if they really had to run away now that the special recruitment students had gathered. Because of that, Zhu Sheng made them lose grip on the vehicle, and they were all thrown away and left there. The special recruitment students gathered and walked towards the Fire Feather Dragon. Xiao Jian King told them that the Tomb Forest's outer area would be open soon, and then she asked them to kill the beast and exchange credit for qualification to freely explore the outer area. Han Xing turned to Zhu Sheng and told him that he could retreat first if he wanted to since he didn't have a mechanic army. Zhu Sheng answered that he thought he could not defeat the monster too, so he should definitely not leave. Now that they were all gathered, it seemed like the monster would be done for. The Fire Feather Dragon got so angry after all their attacks. Its roaring was so loud that it could literally deafen everyone nearby. Han Xing was worried that his bullets would just be deflected by the turbulence, and because of that, it would not cause any damage anymore. Having said that, Xiao Jian King told him that she would try to break it using her sword. She used her glorious cross clash which was a very powerful move of her. The Fire Feather Dragon had no time to dodge the nearing attack and so it was hit by Xiao Jian King's attack. The impact was so massive and there was also an explosion after it that blinded everyone who looked. Han Xing was happy now that he thought that Xiao Giant King had dealt enough damage to the monster. He then told the others to watch him make his move this time. He then used his guns and fired at the Fire Feather Dragon continuously using all his bullets. However, the monster saw the bullets coming and it immediately thought of a counterattack for that. It then released a massive fire from its mouth that stopped the bullets from hitting it. Zhu Sheng grinned and realized that his mechanized troops could also be effective since the heat turbulence was already broken. After some time, he then deployed his mechanized troops into the battlefield. Han Xing was happy about what Zhu Sheng did. He was sure that Zhu Sheng had prepared for this. Zhu Sheng felt so proud about what he was about to do. Meanwhile, he asked Wu Wu, Xiao Jian King, and Han Xing to get ready to give the beast a fatal blow while he was covering for them. Xiao Jian King attacked the beast first while the mechanized troops have been firing at the beast for a time now. She used her technique called Sword Wind Storm to deal enough damage to the beast. After that, Leopard and Wu Wu rushed toward the beast to attack and to avoid losing momentum. They gave the beast a nice scratch that definitely caused so much pain. After Wu Wu and Leopard, Han Xing appeared near the beast. He loaded his machine gun and aimed it directly at the Fire Feather Dragon. Right after making sure that it would be Bullseye, he immediately shot the machine gun at the beast. He successfully hit the beast in the mouth. After all that attack, the Fire Feather Dragon fell to the ground. Xiao Giant King and the others landed on the ground also surrounding the fallen beast. She could not help but wonder while looking at the dead beast. She wondered what kind of beast was it, that the four of them had to cooperate with one another to kill it. Since she was wondering, Zhu Shang went near the beast to check what was so strange about it. He then pierced the flesh of the beast with the sharp leg of that thing connected to his body. Wu Wu immediately Zhu Sheng to be careful looking into the beast. All of a sudden, the flesh of the monster started changing its form into a vine-like one that circled around Zhu Sheng's legs. The other vine-like flesh even moved up to his head which scared the hell out of Zhu Sheng. Because of that, he detached that particular leg from being interlocked with the other legs. 
and then he immediately let go of the leg covered with flesh from his body. They figured that the beast had mutated. Xiao Jian King was so surprised because she thought that a beast would usually need six or more hours to mutate but that one did so fast. The monster then stomped its foot to the ground as it stood. Now, the fire feather dragon has completely mutated into another form. Unfortunately, it looked stronger and more buffed this time. Xiao Jian King was worried so she immediately asked Zhu Sheng to retreat quickly. But still, Zhu Sheng did not want to. He told her that he would try to lure the mutated monster away so they could leave first. All of a sudden, the monster released a green energy from its mouth towards Zhu Sheng. It was bad news for Zhu Sheng because it was such a strong corrosiveness. He then leaped above the ground and let go of the vehicle attached to his body down to the monster's mouth intending for it to be swallowed by the monster. However, the mutated monster made it burst into pieces by blowing a fire again before it even got close enough. After blowing the thing up, the monster glared at Zhu Sheng looking so terrifying. Zhu Sheng could not believe how the monster was still able to do that even though it was in a completely different form. He was thrown afar after the explosion. He thought it was the end for him. He then warned his teammates that the monster they were dealing with at least ranked three undying monsters so they really had to run now. Meng Kao appeared on the battlefield out of nowhere. He got too excited after hearing about the rank of the monster he would possibly be dealing with. He immediately brought out three crystal balls before engaging in the battle. Namely, Fire Flow Crystal, Green Frost Stone and Dinosaur Crystallization Neverball, which he will try to use to fight against the mutated monster. He then incorporated the three crystal balls into his sword. Then he rushed towards the monster ready to fight. He slashed his swords in the wind as he was getting closer and closer to the monster. Not long enough, the other students caught up with Meng Kao. They were all exhausted from keeping up with his speed all this time. Sunny immediately noticed the monster and identified that it was a mutated fire feather dragon which was a rank 3 undying monster. She thought that Meng Kao was no match for it. However, Meng Kao was not discouraged by what Sunya told him. He then told her that there was no need for him to run. Xiao Jian King just discovered that the person who rushing toward the monster now was the person called Meng Kao. Meng Kao had a plan and he was confident that he would execute it properly. After getting close enough to the monster, he slid his way forward not to be noticed by the monster. Now, he successfully got literally under the monster. From there, he slashed the monster near its neck and its belly using his two swords. Because of that attack, the monster roared in pain. Meng Kao continued slashing the monster down its leg as he came down. The monster got angry out of pain so he glared down Meng Kao with its fiery green eyes. Unfortunately, the wounds that Meng Kao caused to the mutated monster just healed so quickly. Meng Kao smirked thinking that that was not so bad and that was a really quick recovery. He then swirls his two swords from his hands very fast as he walks towards the monster again. Then he told the monster that however fast it was, his swords were still a lot faster. He rushed to the monsters while still swirling his swords and by doing so, he was able to continuously deal damage to the monster. Xiao Giant King could not believe what she witnessed. The ghost fire dragon that they had trouble dealing with was restrained by Meng Kao with his dual sword. She then wondered if limit type flow is really that strong. The mutated fire dragon was injured severely but it could still stand on its feet and was ready to attack back. Sunya immediately warned Meng Kao to be careful with the monster's breath as it condensed a ball of energy in its mouth. On the other hand, Meng Kao was actually using himself as bait to exhaust the ghost fire dragon's poison. Meanwhile, Zhu Sheng wondered if Meng Kao could really hold a fight with the fire feather dragon for so long while Wu Wu was busy with her thing in the background. Consequently, the fire feather dragon has finished channeling the poison breath and released it immediately. For a moment, Meng Kao just stood there. All of a sudden, he moved very quickly to keep himself from being hit by the poison. Xiao Jian King was so surprised by how fast Meng Kao moved. Then after some time, she smelled something good. She wondered what it was. When she looked at her back, she saw Wu Wu cooking meat and she realized the smell came from it. She then asked where did she get that meat from. And then she yelled at Wu Wu telling her that it was not the time to be doing that. However, Wu Wu disagreed with her. Meng Kao already came which means there is nothing else she could do other than to eat food. Xiao Jian King then told her that even though Meng Kao's limit type flow helped a lot, he still needed some help to deal a fatal blow against the fire feather dragon. All of a sudden, Xiao Jian King was alarmed when Sunya shouted in urgency to look in that particular direction. Meng Kao was rushing again towards the ghost fire dragon with his sword. They noticed that the ghost fire dragon's flesh and vessels got inflated and now Meng Kao launched from the ground towards the direction of the monster. He lifted his sword as high as he could and aimed at the head of the monster. With the power of Green First Stone, Fire Flow Crystal Boost, and Dinosaur Crystallization Neverball, he used the Demon Slash technique to chop off the monster's head. 
However, they warned Meng Kao to be careful because the monster's abdomen had already mutated, too. The ghost fire dragon's head was already chopped off yet it was still alive. There were vines coming out from the monster's abdomen that rushed towards Meng Kao but only hit the ground making it to be shattered. Meng Kao also rushed towards the ghost fire dragon aiming his sword at the monster's abdomen. Using the technique called Green Frost Condense, he pierced the sword into the ghost fire dragon's abdomen. After that attack, the ghost fire dragon became frozen cold. Meng Kao then pulled out the sword after making sure that the monster would not be able to move. Sunya advised Meng Kao to get the flame drake back to base as soon as possible and exchange it for a lot of credits with its high degree of mutation. However, Meng Kao explained to her that although the carcass had been frozen with liquid nitrogen, its cells were still alive with the influence of the bloodmark Roselle. Xiao Jian King asked Meng Kao what bloodmark Roselle he was talking about. He explained that it was the evolved form of the bloodmark grass. The probability of mutation upon death in monsters parasitized by that fungal creature increases by at least 50%. He then cut the monster using a small sharp knife. After opening the skin of the monster, the flesh vines immediately came out of it. With a few slashes using the same knife he used to cut the skin, he was able to chop the flesh vine into small pieces. Then he placed one part inside a test tube with some liquid inside. While doing so, Han Xing was worried about the danger of harvesting mutated beasts. Meng Kao told him not to worry because he knew what he was doing. He read the process of how to harvest such beasts in the books. Meanwhile, Zhu Sheng was wondering where might be the three crew members he saved earlier. Zai Feng answered that they saw some people running toward the base on their way there. All of a sudden, Meng Kao removed something inside the monster's body from the opening he made. Meng Kao and Wu Wu observed the heart-like thing closely. After some time, Wu Wu thinks that it is bad news. Meanwhile, a whole group of different kinds of beasts behind the grass have been watching them all along. Their eyes were glaring as they observed the people. Meng Kao soon realized that the bloodmark roselles that enhance the beasts are probably the reason why they could not defend the northern front in his pernicious life. He told the others that the thing he removed from the monster was a fungal nucleus of the bloodmark roselle. Bloodmark roselles are a parasitic fungus. Their fungal nucleus will find a host before dividing into large clusters. After parasitizing the flame drake, a large number of mycelium began to expand from the core and spread over every inch of the flame drake's muscles. The fungal nucleus will create a colony. When the colony becomes too large, the nucleus will initiate mitosis and create a new nucleus and cluster to avoid the death of the host. A newly split nucleus will find a suitable host to parasitize. They will eventually split again only after both nuclei are capable of surviving independently. In other words, there is a similar monster nearby. Meng Kao then immediately ordered everyone to run for their lives. All of a sudden, a group of rat-looking beasts revealed themselves and went after everyone who was there. Du and Liam thinks that they are just a mere bunch of rats so there is no reason to be scared of them and because of that, Zai Feng dragged him away. Xiao Jai and King together with the others ran as fast as they could just to escape the rats who were chasing them. Meng Kao noticed that Xiao Jai and King was catching her breath already which is why he asked her if maybe she would be interested in the daredevil to improve her stamina. Xiao Jai and King told him that it sounded good. When Meng Kao turned his face behind him, he saw Wu Wu looking so weird and exhausted. Meanwhile, Du and Lion accidentally stumbled on a stone on the road. Sunya and Sai Feng immediately noticed what happened to Du and Lion, and were both worried about him. Du and Lion asked for help because his legs got injured. On the other hand, the rats were about to catch up with him. However, they soon figured out that those swamp rats were not really following them. Wu Wu noticed that Meng Kao was not coming with them. Meanwhile, Du and Lion was complaining about Sai Feng who threw him carelessly after carrying him. Giant Rui on the other hand asked him to stop complaining. He was also wondering about how Meng Kao is going to deal with all those swamp rats now. Xiao Jai and King noticed Wu Wu on her side. She then urged her to stop whatever she was doing because they really had to hurry and get out of there soon. She could not help herself but be amazed by Meng Kao's sword skills when she saw him doing such crazy sword techniques. Zhu Sheng and Han Xing agreed with her. They both said that his skills were really terrifying. All of a sudden, the swamp rats were flying in all directions while Meng Kao was in the middle surrounded by dead rats. Some swamp rats were still fighting and were very aggressive. They were trying to scare Meng Kao away with their sharp teeth. Meng Kao then swished his sword again and they were dead. He was just casually swinging his sword side by side in a very swift manner, and yet the rats could not get away from it. The swamp rats continuously squeaks as they suffer miserable death at the hands of Meng Kao with his sword techniques. Meng Kao kept on slashing his sword and chopping the rats into pieces. It seemed like the rats were no match against him even though there was a large number of them who were fighting with him at the same time. 
All of a sudden, the chopped off parts of the rats grew a vine-like flesh that moved like snakes just like what happened to the fire feather dragon. Meanwhile, Han Zing and Zhu Sheng did not like how they were being underestimated because, in the past, it was others who were in that position of being dumbfounded. Wu Wu on the other hand told Leopard that the punishment was done. Having said all that, Xiao Giant King then asked them to take action immediately. She then urged everyone to show those rats who was the boss. Du and Lion and Zai Feng were both surprised after seeing those three rushing back toward Meng Kao all of a sudden. Du and Lion then asked Zai Feng who was still carrying him to put him down at that very moment. He then grabbed a solution from his things and then he opened it. He told him that he didn't care what the others would think as he injected the solution into his neck. He wanted to fight along with those five freaks for the sake of not hurting his pride by running away while seeing the others fight. He then rushed back to where Meng Kao was currently fighting the rats along with those four whom he called freaks. Jiang Rui, Zai Feng, and Sun Yu were left there but they all agreed to go with the others. They all rushed back as fast as they could. Du and Lion even grinned showing that he was not feeling terrified by those swamp rats. Everyone was ready to fight along with Meng Kao. Meanwhile, the rats seemed to be mutating into another form. The shattered parts started connecting with the other shattered parts with the vine-like flesh. The small swamp rats earlier had grown so much now that they merged their bodies with the others. Xiao Jian King was so surprised as she looked at how the rats somehow built another entity by combining their shattered parts. She wondered what happened with those rats. Now each rat has two heads and four hands with very sharp claws attached to a very huge body. Du and Lion who was grinning earlier now could not help but ask Meng Kao to come up with a plan to deal with those rats because he won't be able to last long in that situation. Meng Kao thought that his idea was correct that the swamp rats had been parasitized by the fungus which means there is no end to them if the fungal nucleus would not be killed first. He stopped at one point and stared at the rats for some minutes. On the other hand, Duan Lion was crying out loud while calling Meng Kao when he noticed that he was doing nothing and then he urged him again to think of a plan for the situation. Meng Kao shouted back at him and told him to keep his silence because he was actually thinking of a way. Meng Kao knew that using his eyes only would not be enough for this. He knew he had to rely on his hearing and sense of smell to find the one that was commanding those rats. The swamp rats then rushed towards Meng Kao as he stood there in the middle of the field. Each of them was eager to get a hold of him as if they had the same thoughts. All of a sudden, Meng Kao finally spotted the rat that he was looking for. It was the white-colored rat among others. It was the creature commanding those rats. Meng Kao was so happy that he managed to figure out which one was which. Immediately after confirming to himself that it was the rat, he rushed towards it and told the others to just hold on. He slashed all the other rats that he came across on his way towards it using his sword. It seems like no one was safe with Meng Kao's unbelievable sword skills. Finally, the white rat appeared among the other rats. The white rat was significantly larger than the others. Meng Kao immediately launched from the ground towards that rat. He discovered by the looks of it that that white rat was really commanding those other rats. With that in mind, he inferred that the fungal nucleus must be inside of its body. With a swift and practiced motion, he unsheathed his gleaming sword and brought it down in a powerful arc, cleaving through the rat's fur with a resounding, echoing slash. Right after doing that, he positioned his sword in a defensive cross, channeling his inner power for the legendary Demon Crushing Slash. With his mighty Demon Crushing Slash, he struck down the rat, ending its threat once and for all. The rat's body had been shattered into pieces and blood scattered, confirming its defeat. Duan Lion's face broke into an exuberant smile, and the joy in his eyes was unmistakable, unable to be hidden, as he witnessed the heroic feat accomplished by Meng Kao. However, Meng Kao seemed bothered even after defeating the rat. He wondered why that rat king was too weak, maybe it was not the fungal nucleus host. He thought to himself that the real host of the fungal nucleus who was commanding all the other rats was a crafty fellow. In an unexpected turn of events, a wave of rats suddenly surged forward, sending a shiver of alarm. Amidst the chaos, Sunya urgently alerted Meng Kao to look at his back. Luckily, Meng Kao managed to successfully dodge the attack for him, thanks to Sunya. In a sudden, fluid motion, Meng Kao twirled the pair of swords gripped in each of his hands, a mesmerizing display of deadly grace, ready to defend against the encroaching enemy. He then bent over to dodge another attack and thought that the situation, indeed, getting a lot worse. The leader of a species usually is of the same family, but for this one, it was not the case. He could not believe the leader of the swamp rats was a golden shiver. However, if they encounter their predator, the golden slither, they may form a strange symbiotic relationship. All of a sudden, the golden slither started to move in a weird manner as if it was arranging itself to its best form as it hissed. The swamp rats will periodically offer up fat and delicious members of their colony in exchange for the survival of the majority. 
When the blood mark Roselle encountered a rat colony ruled by a golden slither, it was obvious which one to pick as a host. Meng Kao was taken aback, his surprise evident in his widened eyes, as he had never expected that these rats would yield to the allure of a golden slither. The thing is, he already used up a lot of energy to kill that white flamed rake and also wasted the last bit of his inner energy on the rat king. He was confused and he could not think of what to do next. He doesn't want to exit the stage as soon as he starts the show. Meanwhile, Wu Wu and the others are all being held up by those rats so he cannot rely on them to assist him with his situation. He then thought to himself that it now all depends on whether they get there first or he loses the battle first. Meng Kao swiftly wielded his sword to sever the vine-like tendrils of flesh that were rushing rapidly toward him. His frustration and anger boiled over as he realized that this golden slither was so powerful. His breath grew labored as he struggled to evade the relentless attacks of the golden slither. Every dodge he did was taking a toll on his stamina. All of a sudden, he heard a nearing sound of hissing vine-like tendrils of flesh on his ear getting louder. Because of that, he immediately crossed his swords as a defense and by doing that, he successfully protected himself from being pierced. Unfortunately, the vines immediately changed their direction which Meng Kao had not calculated well enough, and that is bad news for him. Meng Kao finds the golden slither to be so annoying as it circles its vines on both his hands. As the golden slither attempted to pull him towards its grasp, Meng Kao planted his feet firmly in a determined stance, refusing to be drawn in. Even though Meng Kao had honed his daredevil, it was essential to remember that these abilities did not grant him boundless strength and inner energy. Sadly, he chose the wrong target since the beginning and now, it is too late to step back. A doubt lingered in Meng Kao's mind, as he wondered if this moment might be the right time to consider relinquishing the battle. Suddenly, an enigmatic object, bearing a pointed tip at the end of a long crimson chain, began to whirl around the golden slither. The mysterious object continued its dance, coiling around the golden slither until the creature was completely ensnared, immobilized by the constricting chain. Meng Kao then wondered if this object circling around the golden slither was the one called the Crimson Tail. When Meng Kao raised his gaze, he beheld an image in the likeness of a phoenix, its radiant form hovering above, casting an aura of awe and reverence. He immediately realized that it was, indeed, a phoenix. And the man in front of it who was in control of the Crimson Tail was no other than Senior Lin, the Weeping Slayer. Meng Kao couldn't restrain himself from uttering a heartfelt thank you. Filled with gratitude and respect as he saw Senior Lin for he knew that he was saved now. Meng Kao was in awe as he realized that the person he had always looked up to had arrived to rescue them all. He is also the only handsome guy that he doesn't have, he said. Xiao Giant King thinks that this is great now that they have a Sky Stage fighter fighting on their side. She thinks that they are going to win the fight. On the other hand, Wu Wu who was, again, busy eating, thought that the Sky Stage fighter that Xiao Giant King had been talking about sounded tasty. As Senior Lin tugged on his crimson chain, he urged everyone to step back, his voice resolute and commanding, ensuring their safety. Then, with a swift and practiced motion, Senior Lin unleashed his formidable technique, known as the Shadow Dance Dragon Dance. As the eclipse calamity unfolded, the surroundings were bathed in the resplendent flames of a magnificent phoenix, a breathtaking spectacle that left all witnesses in awe. The Golden Slither did not have any chance to retreat in the hands of Senior Lin. For that reason, it was burned alive with the mighty fire of the phoenix. After some time, everything seemed burnt. The surroundings were filled with the haunting sound of ashes swishing and echoing. As a result, Meng Kao found himself liberated from the clutches of the golden slither, for the creature had met its demise in the wake of the powerful Lin Chuan. He was so happy to witness how senior Lin Chuan fought and proved to himself why he could freely fly through the sky like a sky stage fighter despite being just an earth stage. Following the dramatic spectacle, Senior Lin Chuan descended gracefully to the ground. He then took back his weapon mid-air. He swung his weapon from side to side, his unwavering gaze fixed upon the swamp rats showing a clear message of readiness and determination in his stance. He then told everyone that they could come out now since it was over now. He said those phrases in a very cool way that made Meng Kao fall head over his heels even more. He immediately approached Senior Lin as soon as he got an opportunity to do so. He told him that it felt so nice that he met him finally. Surprisingly, Senior Lin knew he was Meng Kao from the Sky Bliss Garden and that they were neighbors. He then told him to rest up and just talk in the car later. All of a sudden, they heard a rumbling sound near the area. It is the Caterpillar Tracker. Lin Chuan told Meng Kao that those are the Vermilion Dragons and they are probably going to chew him out again. The crew quickly got out of the vehicle hoping to see anything that they could harvest. The one who seemed to be the leader of the group even told the other to keep an eye out for the nucleus of the Bloodmark Roselle. However, the crew members don't think that there is anything left to harvest in the area since Lin Chuan has burnt everything to a crisp. 
On the other hand, Mankeo was holding a container containing something that resembled the nucleus of the bloodmark Roselle. And it was, indeed, the nucleus. The crew members stared at Mankeo for some time and wondered which made Mankaho feel weird so he asked them what was the matter. They could not believe that Mankeo was able to harvest the nucleus of the bloodmark Roselle amidst the chaos happening. Mankeo just smiled and told them that he just did what he had to do. All of a sudden, Lin Chuan told Mankeo that he saw how he killed the flame drake and how he fought off those rats. He realized that Ms. Lai was right that you are a really great student. Everyone could not believe what Senior Lin Chuan told them especially when he told them that Ms. Lai had been singing praises for Mankeo telling him that he was better than him. Mankeo could not help but feel very honored after hearing that. He even thought that maybe Ms. Lai had a crush on him. When he came back to his mind, Mankeo told Lin Chuan that he had been admiring him for a long time now. He was in elementary school when he got accepted into the agri use martial arts department. However, Lin Chuan told Mankeo to stop praising him because it was making him blush. Mankeo had no idea that his idol would be this easygoing. He even told Mankeo that they were brothers in arm and that he might treat him to a fancy meal when he visits home. Half a month later at East Lake Base, under the watchful guidance of Lin Chuan, Mankeo diligently practiced the art of the crescent cleave. Each swing of each of his weapons was a step closer to mastering the skill. Lin Chuan couldn't help but wear a proud smile as he watched Mankeo's rapid grasp of the technique, a mentor's joy welling up inside him at the sight of his student's quick progress. Mankeo attributed his swift progress to the two remarkable chains crafted from the vertebrae of a Class V super beast, which Lin Chuan had generously gifted to him. However, with a wise and knowing expression, Lin Chuan advised Mankeo that weapons are just tools, and they should still focus more on their inner energy during training. He then told Mankeo that he had to go now since he had already spent a month resting at Starcrush Lake and he was now itching to fight some monsters at Tombstone Forest. He also advises Mankeo to not worry about him because he feels like being in the wilderness is really in his blood and staying in Draken only makes him feel hollow or empty inside. Pondering Lin Chuan's words, Mankeo hesitated for a moment before gathering the courage to ask his mentor a candid question if he has PTSD which senior Lin Chuan didn't like. In the middle of their conversation, a distant vehicle's roar disrupted their quiet dialogue, prompting Mankeo and Lin Chuan to turn their heads in surprise and curiosity. The source of the sound became clear as the Dina Sky Air Fortress passed overhead. Mankeo was so marveled at the magnetic levitation technology that kept the fortress afloat. Suddenly, Mankeo's gaze fixed on the emblem adorning the aircraft's side. He then realized that it was the logo of the Dynaski. He was so amazed by how it looked giving off such a majestic aura. Dynaski is one of the most powerful forces in Draken, and Mankeo thinks that it would be great if he could get to know some of them through Lin Chuan. With a thunderous roar, the vehicle made a ground-shaking landing, a resounding bang echoing through the surroundings, leaving no doubt of its arrival. Suddenly, the door of the vehicle began to creak open revealing a glimpse of what lay within. Once the walkway was in place, a brilliant red carpet unfolded which made Mankeo think that it was too dramatic a way to make an entrance. Out of the blue, a girl adorned in red high heels gracefully walked upon the vibrant red carpet, her every step exuding an air of elegance. With her striking purple hair and a face of remarkable beauty, her name is Elvisia, one of the third-generation heirs of the Dynasty group. All of a sudden, her face transformed into a vivid shade of red as soon as she saw the thing or the person she had been longing for. Indeed, it was Lin Chuan. She immediately rushed towards him and told him that she actually came to pick him up. Lin Chuan got a bit awkward for what Ms. LV did suddenly and so he asked her to settle down first. He tried to introduce Meng Kao to her but she immediately cut him while speaking saying that she already knew he was his assistant and then asked Lin Chan why he didn't tell him she was his best friend. Ms. Elvisia kept on blabbering those words to Lin Chuan which made Meng Kao feel a bit sick of her and her presence alone. Inside the air fortress, the crew members were all busy doing their things. There were three guys talking. They were having a fistfight while commending each other about how good their mechanical arms were. On the other hand, a woman with mohawk hair told the guys that those arms were just purely decorative as she chewed his bubblegum acting so unbothered. In a sudden and surprising interruption, a loud clap reverberated, causing them to cease their activity and turned their attention toward the unexpected sound. A collective sense of curiosity covered them as they wondered about the significance of the sudden clap. Some of them even got a bit angry about it. By then, Ms. LV told them that all of their team members were already there. Next up, she will tell them about their next target and why she called upon experts from different fields. She then continued speaking. As they all know, the main purpose of the battle is to explore and exploit the mineral deposits all the way from Starkish Lake throughout the mountain range. However, the number of bloodmark roselles there is growing. With the use of some samples of it, 
Dynasky's lab was able to identify trace amounts of ruby jade inside it. Then she presented Meng Kao to everyone and she told them that it was all his work. Because of him, they were able to get their hands on such a perfect bloodmark sample. The guys replied that ruby jade can stimulate the evolution and the variation of the fungus from Starcrush Lake to Tombstone Forest. Sure, there will be a lot of ruby jade ore veins lying there. The Mohawk girl suddenly spoke. She said that ruby jade is extremely valuable, and this information is likely not only known to them. Ms. LV then revealed to them that she is actually a feeler, a natural-born individual who is extremely sensitive to inner energy. Mohawk girl was astonished as she received the revelation, her emotions a mixture of shock and wonder. She knew that having a feeler on the team would make the mission a lot easier. She also invited the weeping slayer Lin Chuan to join their operation. He doesn't only possess the formidable combat power of a four-star exalted, he knows this land better than anyone else. Lastly, she also invited all of them who are experts in their different fields whom she carefully handpicked. Certainly, she thinks that they are better than her original team at Dynasty. Now that they have senior hunters, elite mechanics, and a gemstone expert, Ms. LV believes that under comparable circumstances, her team is absolutely invincible. In response to her encouraging and persuasive words, a chorus of applause and cheers erupted from her fellow team members, their enthusiasm echoing through the surroundings. On the other hand, Meng Kao told Lin Chun that he thinks that there would be a lot of parasitized monsters near it since they rely on ruby jade ore to evolve. However, Lin Chuan told Meng Kao that it is very unlikely to happen since the evolution stimulated by the ruby jade will also cause them to have difficulty surviving in the long term. In the middle of their conversation, Ms. LV interrupted them and asked Senior Lin Chuan if she could have a minute with Meng Kao because she needed his help with something. Lin Chuan nodded in agreement, allowing them to have their discussion, and then he departed to inspect the ongoing preparations. Ms. LV asked Meng Kao if he could introduce her to a reliable harvester from the East Lake base. They don't need to be very strong but it's better if they have some combat power. Turns out, she was asking Meng Kao about this matter because the two experienced harvesters she originally contacted had something going on, and they could not make it. With that in mind, Meng Kao then asked Ms. LV what she meant when she said that they don't have to be very strong. She then explained that the environment is enclosed so the magnetic field around it will be easily disrupted. In that case, a 1 or 2 star Exalta will be a great use than a 4 star like Lin. She then urges Meng Kao that if humanity wants to achieve a complete victory, they need to pay a high price. But they could end the battle at the northern front with the use of ruby jade ores. Meng Kao thought that the failure of the battle at the northern front in his previous life was probably related to the resonance of the underground energy veins. However, it is uncertain whether Ms. LV's trip is related to the success or the failure of the battle at the northern front. He must not miss this opportunity, or else history will just repeat itself again. However, he made it clear to Ms. LV that he was unaware of any one-star harvester who could surpass his strength and abilities. Ms. LV then told him that after she checked his background, she immediately knew that he was the perfect candidate for this mission but she didn't think that his instructors would allow him to do this. Meng Kao knew that she was trying to make him volunteer himself and yet she still put up an act. Still, he thinks that locating the ruby jade ore veins is important for the battle at the northern front. He then told her that he would gladly talk to his instructors about the matter. Actually, Fakeshin, Wu Wu, and the others all fought in the Tombstone Forest which was just as dangerous as this mission. Ms. LV couldn't contain her happiness upon hearing his statement. She also reassured Meng Kao that his compensation would be more than sufficient, given his connection to Lin Chuan. On the contrary, Lin Chuan advised Meng Kao that he should not volunteer himself to join. It is known that Ms. LV just loves taking advantage of people like them which puzzled Meng Kao. He then explained that when he said people like them he meant people like them who don't have any backgrounds or family to back them up. She is certainly using them for her own good. Because of that, Meng Kao tells Lin Chun that he doesn't care much about those details. He just wants to fight alongside him and he also wants to have a chance to see the legendary underground infernal beast. Upon hearing Meng Kao's response, Lin Chun let out a weary sigh, his thoughts and concerns weighing heavily on his mind. In a solemn tone, he emphasized to Meng Kao that he would undoubtedly come to regret this choice he made today. Outside, the relentless rumble of thunder persisted, casting a foreboding atmosphere of dread. Three days later, at the Tombstone Forest's forward base, all of a sudden, a silhouette of a woman along with two other men appeared as the entrance slowly opened. They were Ms. LV, Lin Chuan, and Meng Kao. Ms. LV was so happy that day. Some people have already arrived at the forward base and now they are going to meet them first. Among the people on the forward base, their attention was fixed on two individuals. The guy with a firm stance and the woman wearing glasses with pink hair. Ms. LV went straight to the man and faced him so closely. 
She then told the man that he was too late, and that many exploration teams had already left two days ago. She knew that those idiots went the wrong way but her only task was to make sure that he would not get eaten by the beast. The man looked at Meng Kao and told him that he should not put himself in any danger because he would not dare risk his life trying to save him if that happened. Meng Kao replied in a very confident tone that he didn't need to worry about him because he could take care of himself. The guy seemed to not take it so well and so he told Lin Chuan that he better keep an eye out for his pet, pertaining to Meng Kao. However, Lin Chuan just told him that it would be better if he just focused on his job instead of trying to intimidate people who want to do their assigned task. In response to Lin Chuan's words, the man turned his back and huffed in annoyance. After the man left them alone, Lin Chuan told Meng Kao that that guy was Wan Dao, the captain of the Razor Squad. He is also a four-star like him with a strong combat power. While the two are talking silently with each other, they suddenly hear Ms. LV call their names as if she has something important to tell them. She introduced the woman with pink hair named Professor Yi. She is an expert studying the blood mark Roselle, and who will play a very significant role in their mission. After a few minutes, Wan Bao abruptly commanded Ms. LV to make her team move the necessary supplies and equipment onto the mule now since they had to depart as soon as possible. Ms. LV agreed with a sign of anger on her face. In the tombstone forest, some people have been roaming for some time now. As they continued their walk, the constant rumbling of thunder accompanied them. All of a sudden, a man informed the others that there were vines everywhere and it is getting harder to walk. Wan Bao told him to pull himself together as he tried to explain what those are but he was not able to finish his sentence. His expression grew serious, his face flushing with realization as he comprehended what those vines really were. They were viper vines. With a swift change in demeanor, he urgently cautioned everyone to be vigilant and on high alert. All of a sudden, the viper vines started to move at a rapid speed. Wan Dao issued a stern warning, advising them to avoid touching the vines because they are extremely poisonous as he demonstrated their danger by swiftly slashing one with his sword. He also told them to stay alert, and that they should protect the non-combatants. And then he warned them to be watchful of their feet and heads and asked them never to let the viper vines get near them. On the other hand, Ms. LV shouted out a directive, stressing the need to prioritize the protection of the experts and mineral prospectors above all else. All of a sudden, something that resembles a vine or a snake and has a very wide mouth which was covered with sharp teeth emerged from the ground and rushed toward Ms. LV. Because of this sighting, Lin Chuan quickly alarmed Ms. LV to look under her feet as he threw his chains towards the beast which is, apparently, a level 2 super beast, the branch-toothed boa. It is not a monster that a feeler like Ms. LV Sia can handle, and that is why he immediately did something to get her out of her situation. Nevertheless, he harbored doubts about his ability to rescue her as she had ventured dangerously close to the gigantic boa. He thinks that he won't make it. All of a sudden, Meng Kao appeared in front of Ms. LV right before the branch-toothed boa was about to have Ms. LV. Meng Kao then explained that what they were doing was useless and that the branch-toothed boa and the viper vines had a symbiotic relationship. Viper vines come from the viper vine tree. Hence, the only thing that would stop the viper vines from coming at them is cutting the viper vine tree. But the thing is, which tree is which? Meng Kao then brought out his flashlight and directed the light on a tree from afar. He told them that if he was not mistaken, the viper vine tree was the ninth tree from that side, the one he was pointing at with the searchlight. It's camouflaged to look like a crooked pine tree. Wan Dao took Meng Kao's word for it and rushed toward where Meng Kao was pointing at. He planned to destroy the heart of the viper vines which is the tree along with all its colonies. Wan Dao approached his task with great eagerness determined to carry it out with utmost dedication. Upon reaching the tree, he swung his sword with all his might, unleashing a powerful strike that cleaved through the woody trunk. Now that the tree had been chopped down to the ground, the vines slowly intertwined with it began to wither and die simultaneously. The vines seemed like they went with the wind as their thick bodies earlier had become too thin to even notice. Wen Dao's crew were all happy with what he did. They commended him for it as they showed him how glad they were for him. Then he asked Meng Kao how was he able to determine that that was the tree among others. Meng Kao then told him that he did it through his daredevil ability and his strong sense of smell for blood. Wan Dao was unsure about the daredevil style, but what he was sure about was that Meng Kao really did a great job. After dealing with the threat, Wan Dao swiftly advised everyone to leave the forest in an instant, for it could grow even more unpredictable if they stayed. However, Meng Kao suddenly asked him to stop while he was about to walk away. Wan Dao asked him if he noticed something again and Meng Kao said that he did. He noticed that there was something under the bushes he was pointing at. Wan Dao's curiosity got the better of him. With his sword, he carefully moved the foliage aside to reveal the mystery that lay beneath. His eyes widened in shock as the bushes gave way, revealing an unexpected and startling sight hidden beneath. 
It was the blood mark Roselle. Meng Kao explained that it was a hatchling colony that had not found a host yet. His heart pounded with fear as he couldn't help but imagine the horrifying outcomes that might await him if he dared to touch the blood mark Roselle hidden beneath the bushes. With that thought in mind, he suddenly became determined to learn Meng Kao's daredevil thinking that learning it would prevent his imagination from coming to life. From a distance, Meng Kao extended his finger, indicating the direction from which he suspected the blood mark Roselle originated since the red plants run through that direction. Simultaneously, Ms. LV sensed a huge amount of inner energy gushing from the ground in front of them like a volcanic eruption. She thinks that must be where the mineral veins were. The relentless rain showed no signs of relenting. Amidst the downpour, they unload boxes one by one onto the drenched ground. Meanwhile, Ms. LV expressed her gratitude to Meng Kao. Meng Kao told her not to mention it because anyone would have done the same thing to save her. However, Ms. LV was not talking about that but about him tracing the blood mark Roselle. After talking to Meng Kao, Professor Yi called her attention saying that she wanted to have a word with her raising the tablet she was holding. She then showed her the result of the analysis of the sample they took from the fungal strain of the blood mark Roselle. It shows that it grew out from the bottom of the lake and not on land. Ms. LV was glad to hear that from Professor Yi, which means her assumptions were correct. She then ordered Wan Dao to gather his men and asked them to bring the big boys over there. These were the latest crystal bombs developed by the Vermilion Dragons. These bombs are capable of emitting very powerful shockwaves. The men carefully lifted the boxes of bombs as Wan Dao told them that they should protect their eardrums, teeth, and organs with their inner energy when moving those boxes. Ms. LV explained to Meng Kao that they were placing the shockwave collector and depth charges into the water to get an accurate reading of the landscape at the bottom of the lake. Although the blood mark Roselle likes dark and humid environments, it can't survive in water for a long period and it is also impossible for it to grow out of the bottom of the lake for no reason. In simple words, Ms. LV thinks that there must be an underground stream at the bottom of the lake. And at the end of that, there's a large underground cavity that contains fresh oxygen and veins of easily extractable ruby jade. Wen Dao gathered the attention of everyone. He then asked them to protect their organs and more importantly, their eardrums. They must brace themselves from the shockwave to come. He then counted backward from three up to one bringing both excitement and fright to everyone and then finally he detonated the bombs by pressing the button in the controller. Subsequently, a colossal explosion shook the surroundings, sending shockwaves through the air and casting a veil of chaos over the scene. Ms. LV and Meng Kao both struggled to conceal the agony that the shockwave had inflicted upon them. Their expressions seemed to be contorted with pain as they covered their ears. Meng Kao then got curious about what happened next. He thought that those bombs were so powerful yet they only managed to kill those low-level monsters. Following the explosion, Ms. LV's excitement surged prompting her to command Meng Kao to go and see the contents of the shockwave collector picked up with urgency. However, Meng Kao stopped her. Seeing that there are so many carcasses after the detonation, he thinks that there's something strange in that lake so they need to be cautious. Hearing Meng Kao's theory, Wen Dao could not help but ask if they were saying that there was a big monster that survived that explosion which Lin Chuan was also thinking so. All of a sudden, a massive fish burst from the water's surface, its presence looming over them. They then figured that it was a level 5 super beast, the Manticora fish. Lin Chuan immediately ordered Wan Dao to get his men and follow him to the beast. Wan Dao on the other hand was so eager to do so. In a daring move, Lion Chuan leaped through the air, hurling his chains toward the monstrous beast as he soared above the ground. While having the beast chained up, he immediately commanded Wan Dao to quickly restrain it and warned him to never let it get back into the water. With unwavering confidence, Wan Dao followed Lin Chuan's command and launched into action joining the effort to defeat the Manticora fish. Without hesitation, he swiftly swung his sword, aiming to strike down the gigantic fish. He wanted to kill it right away for the mission to go on without halting and waiting any longer. His sword sliced through the flesh so smoothly which created a vulnerable opening in the Manticora fish's skin. Wan Dao's men attacked the Super Beast too following his command they were all leaping through the air as Lin Chuan did. Meng Kao was so amazed by the scene. He figured that they all were Sky Stage Overbreaker users. All of their spears pierced the manticora fish's skin causing it to have a very painful death. Meng Kao then thought that it was the real overbreaker, that it really lives up to its name as the strongest technique in Draken. After all the attacks, the manticora fish seemed to be shattered in a cellular level of destruction. He then realized that his decision to join them was the right thing to do. He sure will learn a lot from the three sky stage powerhouses battling together in a battle. Indeed, it is still impossible to look for the charging freeze, and cool down phases of overbreaker users with the current daredevil since it is still in the budding phase but who cares. 
All of a sudden, Ms. LV figured something out as she stared at the findings on her tablet. She was right about the existence of an underground stream down there. However, Lin Chuan advised her that they should be more careful after the occurrence of the manticora fish. He thinks that there are more dangerous creatures at the bottom of the lake. Despite what Lin Chan said, Ms. LV was still so over the clouds as she showed him the map of the lakes underneath confirming the idea of an underground stream down under. She then urges Lin Chuan to not stop at this point since they are getting closer to what they want. Also, she thinks that there is nothing more dangerous than the manticora fish. After saying all that to Lin Chan, she ordered everyone to move quickly and bring the diving equipment with them because they were now going into the lake to get their treasures. She gave her orders to everyone. Four people will share one diving device and their task is to find the cracks leading to the underground stream as stealthy as possible. With an air of urgency, she prompted everyone to ready themselves for a dive, inquiring if there were any last-minute questions before they took the plunge. Lin Chan told Meng Keo that they should go with the other. He also warned him that they should stay on their toes when they got there as the lake might contain other beasts. Meng Keo nodded in agreement, assuring Lin Chuan that he comprehended all the precautions and was ready to proceed. They were now 13 meters below and the oxygen and blood pressure were normal. Meng Keo then announced that they had found the cracks that led to the underground stream. He asked them to follow the information on their tactical watches and regroup up ahead. All of a sudden someone tapped Meng Keo's shoulder to get his attention. It was Lin Chuan. He told Meng Keo that something was not quite right and so he warned him to stay sharp. Meng Keo understood his agitation. Drawing near the underwater crack, they collectively scoured the surroundings hunting for any resources or clues that might help them in their endeavor. They looked into the crack as soon as they reached it. Miss LV commended everyone for all they did and told them that they were now one step closer to their treasure. However, the crack is too narrow for the diving gear to go through. Miss LV then suggested that they need to hurry up and finish the mission before their oxygen reserves are depleted. At that moment, the drones have been reserved by someone. If everything goes smoothly, the preliminary exploration can be completed within two minutes, he explained. Everyone watched the drone as it went through the crack. While doing that, Lion Chuan suddenly asked Meng Keo if he felt something strange. Meng Keo then told him that for some reason, he felt uneasy whenever he looked down at the bottom. Wen Dao asked Lin Chuan to make Miss LVC sense because, without the logistical supply, it will be very difficult for them to continue the exploration. However, it seemed like Lin Chuan could not do anything to persuade Miss LV because if he did, their exploration operation would not have happened at all. On the other hand, Miss LV told them that they now have the results. The drones have reached the exit of the underground stream. They looked at the results. Just as what they all expected, the findings show that there is a huge underground space up there and plenty of fresh air to breathe. The crew member told Miss LV that the specific route and the scouting results have been uploaded to her terminal, and everyone could see it too through their tactical watches. Out of nowhere, a swirling vortex materialized in the water, catching them off guard. The object spun in chaotic disarray, caught within the unpredictable whirlpool. Wen Dao urgently cautioned everyone to step back with a sense of urgency, as he had spotted another monstrous threat looming nearby. He then stressed the need for a hasty retreat, urging them to escape from the area without delay. On the other hand, Miss LV asked everyone to go into the underground stream since the stream is rugged and narrow, and the beast at the bottom of that lake can't get in. Lin Chan then urges everyone to go ahead as Miss LV said. Wen Dao and he will stay there for a bit to cover the rear for their safe escape. Wen Dao recognized that they faced yet another manticora fish as he slashed it using his sword of formidable adversary they had to confront. However, the manticora fish did not even recognize Wen Dao. Instead, it swam up towards the exploration team and so they asked them to get away from the diving gear. Regrettably, they were not swift enough to distance themselves from the diving equipment. The manticora fished and destroyed the other equipment using its mouth and teeth. Out of nowhere, a rope-like object began to whip through the water, where the manticora fish is located. The rope snaked into the fish's mouth, preventing it from biting one of the crew members. In light of the escalating situation, Meng Keo swiftly instructed all the non-combatants to evacuate as fast as they possibly could as he pulled the chain sword towards him. Unfortunately, he can't use his full strength while he's under the water. It seemed like the manticora fish was about to get free from the chain sword. The fish proved to be incredibly agile underwater and it also has a lot of advantages against them. Meng Keo thinks that it is completely different from fighting above the water. Meng Keo found himself in a tough struggle. Lion Chuan, concerned for his safety, asked Meng Keo if he wished to meet his end, extending a hand to assist him. The other are now surrounding the manticora fish, and everyone are being too careful to attack as they knew the manticora fish might be stronger against them there underwater. Meanwhile, Lion Chuan asked Meng Keo to follow Miss Elvi and the others into the underground stream. 
They will soon follow right after they stop the beast. Miss LV advised Wen Dao to be careful since it is going to take more than a few sky stage Exalta to take down a manticora fish while underwater. The combat personnels are having a hard time figuring out how to deal with the beast. They could not even construct a magnetic energy field as it kept on stirring up the water. Meanwhile, Miss LV asked everyone to move quickly one at a time. The faster they move the more likely it is for the Exalta that protected them to escape safely. All of a sudden, Meng Kao asked Miss LV to go follow the others escape safely. He wanted to go and assist his brother Lin Chu and the others on dealing with the Manticara fish. Miss LV and Professor Yi think for some time but could not say any word after Meng Kao told them what he planned on doing. Finally, Miss LV allowed him to do as he say but she asked him to be totally careful because Lin Chu and might kill her if anything happens to him. After hearing that he will take extra care for himself, Professor Yi then told him to go and take his equipment and get out of there quickly. Meng Kao agreed and took his equipment that he needed among others. After doing that, he then went straight towards where the others are. Meng Kao's heart swelled with pride and excitement as he prepared to join forces with the other Exalta, relishing the prospect of this collective battle. Meanwhile, while everyone was fighting against the Manticora fish, Lin Chuan issued a direct order to Wan Dao, instructing him to lead his team in a swift retreat with a sense of urgency. He asked him this while keeping the Manticora fish still with his chains. On the other hand, Wan Dao appeared puzzled and uncertain in response to the abrupt command. In response to Wan Dao's reaction, Lin Chuan explained that he was the swiftest among them, and as a result, he would stay behind to confront the beast while the others retreated. All of a sudden, Lin Chan unfortunately, and abruptly clashed against the Manticora fish. He did all that he could so he wouldn't be injured due to the impact of the collision. After that, Lin Chan held the Manticora fish's gigantic tail and circled it with chains. He circled around the Manticora fish, maneuvering as if attempting to bind or restrain the creature. Before they made their way out, Wan Dao exchanged a nod with Lin Chuan and told him they owed him one, silently signifying the unspoken agreement that a favor had been earned. And then he asked him to go. On his way, he saw Meng Kao and so he told him that he should come inside too since he would not be of any help if he stayed. But Meng Kao did not and just asked him to go first. He then told Lin Chuan that everyone had already evacuated. On the other hand, Lin Chuan seemed to be having difficulty because the water was disrupting the magnetic energy field. Due to that occurrence, he was not able to use his full strength. He also theorized that if that goes on the manticore fish will soon gather enough strength to get away from being held up. And just as he was thinking about it, the manticore fish started gathering its strength and energy. After channeling enough, the manticore fish unleashed a powerful energy from its mouth making the chains to be removed from its body, and for Lin Chuan to immediately withdraw. Lin Chuan swam as fast as he could to get away from the manticora fish who was following him. Its mouth was widely opened as if it was ready to swallow him whole the moment it caught up. The manticora fish tried to bite him thinking that its distance from Lin Chuan was enough but luckily, Lin Chuan quickly got rid of the fish in an instant. Turns out, Meng Kao pulled him towards him which is why he was able to quickly dodge the manticora fish's bite. Lin Chuan recovered quickly from what happened and now was swimming towards Meng Kao at his own pace, and at will. Behind him was the manticora fish who was still eager to swallow them whole. Its eyes were glaring which would bring terror to anyone who looks at them. Meng Kao then told Lin Chuan to hurry up and get the hell out of the manticora's fish's sight. The manticora fish then swam faster than it used to which caused it to crash on the floor underground. The impact was so intense making the underwater floor rumble, and the rocks shattered into pieces. Meanwhile, the other members had already reached the underground stream exit. With a slow and deliberate pace, they emerged from the water one by one. The moment she stepped out of the water, Miss LV wasted no time and immediately ordered the men to prepare the mining equipment because they would start the exploration right away. Wan Dao on the other hand, demanded Miss LV for a brief explanation about something before they continued with the exploration. Miss LV then turned her face to look at Wan Dao and inquired about the nature of the explanation he was seeking. Without hesitation, Wan Dao told her straightforwardly what he wanted to know. He wanted to know why she gave up the supplies. Aside from that he also wanted to know about her plans for later. Miss LV answered him that if she had not evacuated the logistics personnel, they might have been inside the manticora fish's belly right at that time. She also explained that the bombs had already weakened the structures of the lake's bottom part. She would never risk losing the only entrance to that underground stream by widening the crevice. All of a sudden, a personnel called for Miss LV's attention and then she showed something to Miss LV which she said was found in the deeper region. Miss LV was glad for what she saw. She believes that having that thing appear near the area only means that they are really getting closer to their target. She also told them that she was certain of their way and that as long as nothing happened, those supplies would be of no use after all. 
which made Wen Dao react with a bit of hostility. It was revealed that the red object was, in fact, a scarlet jade, a mineral closely linked to the ruby jade they were seeking. One of their team members just found it in the deeper region, so that proves that they were, indeed, getting closer to their target. After saying that, she then admitted that the decision earlier was too risky. In that case, she pledged Wen Dao that she would pay him double once the mission was over. She also glared at Wen Dao as she offered him another option which was to end the mission right at that moment. However, he had to find his way back to the surface on his own. Wen Dao's face contorted with anger as he felt Miss LV had left him with no choice but to press on with the mission. The water on the surface of the underground stream exit remained still not until Meng Kao along with his senior Lin Chuan dramatically and suddenly emerged from it. The sudden splashing sound of the water immediately grabbed Miss LV's attention. As soon as she turned her back to look at the water, she instantly recognized his familiar face, and then she shouted his name out of excitement and gratefulness that he was safe. On the other hand, Lin Chuan immediately thanked Meng Kao for saving his life as soon as he was able to mutter a word. Meng Kao didn't say a word, instead, he responded with a simple smile which said it all. Meanwhile, Miss LV extended a hand for Lin Chuan saying that she was certain he would just be fine. However, Lin Chuan did not take it immediately. Instead, he told her first that the Manticora fish had destroyed the entrance so they had to find another exit in a cold tone. Nonetheless, Miss LV beamed with happiness and informed him that her team was already scouting the area, assuring that they would depart once the ruby jade vein had been located. Lin Chuan regarded her with a disappointed expression and was not able to finish his sentence. All of a sudden, the personnel came back to tell Miss LV that Professor Yi had made another new discovery which she needed to check in an instant. Excitement surged within her, and she promptly rushed to see Professor Yi telling herself that she was, indeed, her lucky star and leaving Lin Chuan there half-submerged in the water. By then, Meng Kao urged Lin Chuan to get on the shore and replenish their energy. Within that short period of time, the two of them have already consumed a few cans of energy drinks. All of a sudden, Lin Chuan got a message on his watch from Miss LV saying that they would be departing in 30 minutes and that they had to take the opportunity to regain some energy. Wen Dao harbored dissatisfaction with the message, but he had little choice but to comply with it since he was on a combat team and that's his life. On the other hand, he wondered why Lin Chuan who was a senior student and Meng Kao, an up-and-comer would choose to jump into that mess. Lin Chuan couldn't help but chuckle at what Wen Dao had been thinking. Meanwhile, Meng Kao explained with a deep sense of seriousness on his face that his actions were driven by his desire to aid Draken in winning the war. Hearing that statement of him left Lin Chuan and Wen Dao bewildered and filled with confusion. Thirty minutes later, they were all gazing at a crimson flower that had sprouted from the wall. They knew there was something behind it so they started to use a laser-like weapon to open the wall by engraving some runes on it. After some time, the personnel announced that the rune engraving had already been completed and could be activated at any time. She then manipulated a mechanism on her arm-mounted weapon, as though switching it to a different type. The formation would be done soon so she ordered everyone to stand back. After a few minutes, the magnetic field has been linked. Right after that, there was an explosion. It was so powerful yet so magnificent. Miss LV, elated with their accomplishments, then encouraged everyone to move forward. Meanwhile, Meng Kao asked something to Lin Chuan about the miraculous rune technology after seeing it, and about the extinction of a great civilization. But Lin Chuan had no idea. That's why Draken can only find ways to become stronger so that its people would be able to deal with all sorts of unknown disasters. On the other hand, Wen Dao was over the clouds after seeing what was in front of them at that moment. He thought it would make them rich. The rest of the group was just as mesmerized as he was after seeing it too. It turned out that the entire area was covered with an abundance of red ores, a stunning and unexpected discovery. Meng Kao, too, was mesmerized by the sighting. His gaze was locked on it for a few minutes. Miss LV suddenly stepped forward and delivered a speech, expressing how their sacrifices had been undeniably worthwhile. Then she told them to go ahead and look for the jade. According to the act, as the first to discover that vein, each of them could bring home a souvenir. All the team members couldn't resist the temptation and indulged themselves in gathering the ores they found most beautiful in the area. Meanwhile, Miss LV told Lin Chuan that they call that type of mineral vein formation the flock that worships the phoenix which means they are not far away from the ruby jade vein. Lin Chuan foolishly stared at Meng Kao who looked just as foolish as he was and expressed his congratulation to him. Meanwhile, the personnel came back to call Miss LV. She also did not want to tell the matter to Miss LV, instead, she wanted her to see it for herself. Miss LV did not even hesitate for a moment. She immediately proceeded to where the personnel asked her to go as she ordered everyone to make way for her. Professor Yi was waiting for her. Her facial expressions were not that good showing that it must be bad news she would tell. 
Indeed, it was bad news. Professor Yi thinks that they are going to lose the priority mining rights to the cave they are exploring. Miss LV wore a look of shock and worry on her face upon hearing the news. There was a plate in the area. Written on it was the name of the first mining team to discover the area. Unfortunately, based on the plate, Miss LV's team was one day late. Miss LV came back to her team who surrounded the huge pile of minerals they discovered. She then asked everyone to stop what they were doing and they were not allowed to touch anything. Lin Chuan stared at Miss LV as she was giving the order witnessing the disappointment on her face. All of a sudden, a member of their team went up the pile of minerals and told them that he would not allow such a thing to happen. He grabbed the plate and stared at it as if he planned something bad to do with it. On the other hand, the other members were asking him to get back down at once. He suggested to Miss LV to just pretend that they never saw the plate or worse, he suggested to her to just destroy it. However, Miss LV told him that all mining team would record the markers they leave behind as evidence. In that case, destroying the plate would do nothing. He then turned to Wen Dao and told him that they just needed to catch up to them because, after all, dead men cannot talk anyway. However, Wen Dao was not swayed by his suggestion. By then, he asked Xiao Jia to calm down. However, Wen Dao's other men agreed to Xiao Jia. They all think that securing the ore vein would give them the money they needed. There was something wrong with them. At that moment as they were talking, Wen Dao seemed to be getting affected by it, too. At first, his face was steady or serious. And then suddenly he grinned and turned his face to where Miss LV was. Now he also looked foolish when he told Miss LV that his team had a point, which they just needed to kill those bastards from the global group who came first ahead of them. Lin Chuan noticed the strangeness on them and because of that, he unleashed a fire phoenix and let it screech a deafening sound for them. Wen Dao and his members were hurt by it. Lin Chuan was aware that as they got closer and closer to the treasure it would be more likely to affect their brain or might even take away their sanity. Wen Dao was able to go back to his senses after what Lin Chuan did. He was aware too that they could have done something unforgivable if it was not for Lin Chuan. Meanwhile, Lin Chuan was also aware that he was the one to be thanked and so he waited for them to do so. He even forced a cough that made Wen Dao say thanks to him at last. Wen Dao then turned to Miss LV and expressed his apology for what he did and might have done. Miss LV understood that it was not his intention. She then explained to him that they often encountered such situations. The disturbance near the veins was too dangerous for Exalta above the sky stage. After that, she spoke to everyone. She told them not to worry about the matter too much because those minerals were nothing compared to the ruby jade veins. As far as she knew, the global group's mining team left last week. She then asked them if they knew what that meant. The members exchanged uncertain glances, revealing that they were all equally clueless about the situation. She continued speaking. It only meant that they caught up to their six-day progress in just one day. And at that time, she proudly said that they were just one day ahead of them. She then suggested an idea that if they moved forward at full speed, they would be the first to discover the ruby jade ore which is more valuable to those ordinary crystal veins. Her speech rekindled the team's morale, prompting cheers and reigniting their eagerness to continue their quest for the treasure. On the other hand, Lin Chuan smiled and told himself that he was just like his father. Meng Keo heard it and so he asked him what does that mean. Lin Chuan turned to face Meng Keo with another smile before he told him it was nothing. Miss LV told the team that they would take a half-hour break and then after that, they would continue what they started. She is certain that they would be the first to find it. Another order echoed around the cave. They have to maintain the formation and they have to make sure that they can see their teammate at all times. All of a sudden, Wen Dao noticed something that made him feel strange and uneasy. Right after feeling that, a megabet appeared in front of him. Luckily, he was able to stop it from attacking him using his sword as a shield. He wasted no time in issuing a stern warning for everyone to stay vigilant and ensure the safety of the non-combatants while they continued their mission. After that, Lin Chuan asked Meng Keo to take the non-combatants into the cave ahead. There were too many megabats there and there was no time to construct a magnetic energy field. Meanwhile, Miss LV and the others were all running as fast as they could in order to get out of there quickly. On their way, Miss LV saw something that caught her attention and so she asked the others to look at it, too. They all stopped and gazed for it. Those were mushroom, but the thing is, they were huge. Wan Dao rushed towards Lin Chuan, and as he did, he told him that they already got rid of the bats, and then asked him if he was just alright. Lin Chuan told him he was. In response to that, Wan Dao suggested scouting the area first just to make sure that the area was completely safe for them. Meanwhile, someone noticed a human-like structure near the mushrooms despite its appearance, she still wondered what it was. Miss LV lowered herself near the structure. She then touched the cloth that was not covered with the mud-like thing and told them that he was a member of the global group's mining team. 
Upon rejoining the group, Wan Dao immediately advised everyone to exercise increased caution with the beast with petrification ability in the area. Meanwhile, Meng Keo was staring at the mushrooms and was wondering as he repeated to himself the words mushrooms and petrification. He repeated it again as if he was trying to figure something out of these words, or if in any case, the two words have something to do with each other. He thought of these, but then he stopped when the mushroom suddenly unleashed something like liquid from the holes under its umbrella. Menkeo was wearing a piece of equipment that covered his eyes, yet the worry on his face was clear. The warning came to them so abruptly that they did not even notice who said it, but they knew they had to run. Those were gargoyle mushrooms, and their spray seems highly dangerous. However, one fellow was quite unlucky. He was not able to dodge the spray from the mushroom, and now he was almost completely covered with goo. Another man was ready to rescue him, but Meng Keo stopped him from doing so and advised him to wait for the goo to solidify first before helping him. The man wondered, and so Meng Keo explained. The goo was disgusting by sight, but rest assured because it was not toxic or corrosive. And then he pushed the man forward and told him to watch out from above. Turns out, he saw something coming down on them. They both landed safely. By then, they both looked up from the ceiling of the cave and saw a huge spider on it. They immediately recognized it by the way it looked. It was a blade jump spider. Blade jump spider has sharp silk, and the gargoyle mushroom's goo can quickly solidify into a crust stronger than a concrete. Meng Keo was right. They relied on each other. The gargoyle mushroom continued spitting sticky goo to the people under it, and they all tried their best not to be caught by it. Another warning from Lin Chuan was raised again. He told them to watch their steps as well, and he pulled Miss LV closer to him. All of a sudden, something huge and powerful landed on the ground. It was the level 2 spider nightmare beast, Acrolith Spider. It was gigantic, and everyone suddenly became extra careful. Wan Dao told everyone that they would hold it off so that the others would have time to run and head forward. Behind the spider were Lin Chuan and the others and in front of it were Wan Dao and his men ready to fight against the beast. On their way out to the gargoyle forest, they discovered that the way out was covered and blocked by a spider web. Behind the spider web were the spiders gaining on them, and at that moment they knew they were surrounded. Due to her fear and agitation, Miss LV suddenly commanded Lin Chuan to kill all of them which Lin Chuan agreed to. He started channeling his power bringing the phoenix out again. However, while he was trying to unleash his full potential, he struggled. He felt pain from doing so as if something was keeping him from using his power. And finally, he lost his balance and fell on the ground. Turns out, there was a powerful inner energy disturbance inside the cave. Seeing what happened to him, Miss LV panicked and immediately ran toward Lin Chuan who was still on the ground. He then explained that the resonance between the crystals in that vein was too strong therefore he could not use any powerful move. Now, Miss LV looked more worried than she already was. The others were panicking as well especially when they noticed that the spiders were getting closer to them. Knowing that Lin Chuan could not do anything for their current situation, Miss LV now thinks that she is going to die there. But Meng Keo was thinking of a plan. He recalled the things he had once done in his previous life. Maybe he could remember. And then suddenly, an image came to his mind, spiders screeching with fire. That was it. Meng Keo's eyes widened as he realized fire was the key. He immediately announced it to everyone. He asked them to use anything with fire to those spiders because it was what they were afraid of. Miss LV repeated the order and asked those who had flamethrowers to quickly burn the spider webs that were blocking the way and the spiders that were coming after them. Without hesitation, they fire the flamethrowers as Miss LV told them. The attack was successful, and now the way is clear. Miss LV then ordered everyone to quickly get out of the area while the spiders were nowhere to be found. However, Lin Chuan moved towards the opposite way. He wanted to join Wan Dao because they did not have someone who had fire skills. But since Lin Chuan was hurt, Meng Keo volunteered himself to help instead of his brother Lin. However, as he made his way to rejoin Wan Dao and his team, he was suddenly seized and shackled, finding himself trapped in the unyielding grip of chains. Meng Keo kept on whining as Lin Chuan asked Miss LV to help him keep an eye on him, which he referred to as a stupid kid. Miss LV agreed immediately to Lin Chuan taking the chain from him and then dragged Meng Keo, who was still whining over Lin Chuan's decision, away from where the spiders were. 
Meanwhile, the huge spiders inside the cave have been, continuously, spitting out their sharp spider webs. On the other hand, Zyogia was worried, because he didn't know how they would be able to get through their problem when their swords could not be pierced through their shells. Wan Dao answered him while carefully dodging the spider webs. He told him that they just needed to hold them back. They would retreat as well after the others had successfully retreated. After some time, Zyogia informed Wan Dao that they had already retreated. Wan Dao then decided to command his team to retreat as well. They stealthily maneuvered beneath the spider's body, ensuring each movement was cautious and deliberate, so as not to alert the spider to their escape. Despite their careful efforts, the spider detected their presence, its keen instincts catching the subtle movements as they attempted to slip away unnoticed. Wan Dao looked up and noticed that the spider was, again, going to spit out its web from its bottom. He then alerted everyone to watch over their heads and warned them that they should not let themselves be caught in the web. However, it seemed like the spider web had no end as they tried to escape again and again. Zio Jia lost his confidence right away, thinking that they could not get out of that thing. In the midst of the escape, Wan Dao contemplated that continually avoiding the spider's web might deplete their energy reserves over time. Faced with no alternative, Wan Dao issued a solemn warning to his comrades, instructing them to brace for an imminent battle against the spider until their last breath. As if in eerie comprehension, the spider mirrored their preparations by firmly planting its feet on the ground as it readied itself for the impending battle. Suddenly, a flame emerged, casting a fiery glow that consumed the spider webs, freeing Wan Dao and his comrades from the chaos that might happen. It was Lian Chuan who did it. He then informed Wan Dao that LV and her team had already retreated, and they should get going too. Gradually, the fire that Lin Chan had ignited began to dwindle, its once vibrant flames slowly diminishing. Abruptly, as the flames subsided, Wan Dao discerned a peculiar form resembling a sea anemone squirming side to side, manifesting in the fading glow. Observing the mysterious entity, Lin Chuan contemplated the possibility that it was an undead creature, speculating that a Roselle nucleus might reside within the beast's body. The global mining group mining team must have killed the stone troll tarantula and transformed it into an undead that is even more difficult to kill. He then asked the guys to run while he kept it held off. Zyogia complained about the global group mining team for them being safe while they had to deal with the monster they left. Wan Dao agreed with him as they made their way out. Lin Chuan sternly instructed them to stop talking and just get the hell out of that area. Wan Dao agreed to him, and so he urged the other guys to run faster and shake off the beast, because they could not let that beast go after Miss LV and her team. Despite their best efforts, the creature remained an unyielding adversary, incessantly tracking them no matter how swiftly they attempted to escape. Lin Chuan got worried even more when he turned his head to face the beast and saw that it was too close to them, so he asked them to really run faster this time. The four men were all thinking the same in the midst of chaos. They were mad for what the global group had done, or rather what they had not done which is killing all the mushrooms and beasts inside the area. Instead of doing that, they even left a super undead behind for them to deal with. They couldn't shake the suspicion that their every effort was a deliberate scheme to eliminate competition rather than a mere escape from danger. All of a sudden, the vine-like thing from the spider started circling around small red stones. And then eventually, the spider beast shoots the stones towards the men. Wan Dao suggested burning the mushroom, but Lin Chu encountered that such an action could lead to a loss of oxygen, presenting a new set of challenges in their already perilous situation. The red crystal ores were continuously being shot toward them and through the mushrooms. When Lin Chuan took a look at the mushrooms, he realized that the mushrooms had also evolved in that cave filled with crystal ores, seeing how deformed they were. After passing the mushrooms, Lin Chuan urged them all to continue running fast since they had nothing to do in that situation. Oddly, Meng Keo was also running with them. One moment, Lin Chuan took a look at his back, as if he saw something from his peripheral view. When he completely turned his head to face what was coming to him, he found himself bleeding already on his shoulder because of a vine that struck him. Wan Dao also looked back and immediately got worried when he saw that Lin Chuan was injured. Despite that, he still told him he was fine and then advised him to just keep on running. However, Wan Dao knew that at that rate, they would not be able to get rid of the spider in time. 
Witnessing the unfolding events, he implored the Razor Squad to halt their escape and draw their swords, realizing that a confrontation with the pursuing threat was now inevitable. In a decisive moment, he rallied everyone to his side and then ordered them to do everything to make the roof of the cave collapse and bury the creature alive. Everyone agreed. He then asked Lin Chuan to fling back the acrolith spider into the mushroom forest, but the thing is, he only had five seconds to get out when they blew the roof. Lin Chuan agreed to Wan Dao's suggestion, saying that he could do what he wanted him to do in return. He asked them to do what they needed to do as he locked the spider in his chains. In that instant, Wan Dao harbored a confident belief that the plan would be successful. With assurance in his actions, he commenced blowing the roof as planned. After doing what would make the roof collapse, he immediately instructed Lin Chuan to hurry and get out of the mushroom forest right away as the roof started collapsing. Lin Chuan was still holding the acrolith spider to make sure that it would not get away from his death this time, but the debris was already falling from the roof and Lin Chuan had so little time. Huge rocks also started falling from the roof covering the area and burying what cave along with the things inside it. Wan Dao shouted to call Lin Chuan no, there was no response. What was left after that was a pile of rocks that had once served as the roof of the cave. As worries dissipated, Lin Chuan ascended from the apex with graceful fire wings, a spectacular sight that banished uncertainty and brought a newfound sense of hope. In the sudden surge of excitement, Wan Dao hurried towards Lin Chuan, eager to lend a hand and assist him in getting up. He then apologized for what might have happened to Lin Chuan because of his plan, but Lin Chuan told him it was fine and they just needed to get away from that place first. He was certain that they would be safe as soon as they got out of the beast's sensory zone. At that moment, he also told Wan Dao that they should catch up with the others quickly. Meanwhile, a member of their team wrapped his hand around Meng Keo as he thanked him for saving their lives. However, Meng Keo told him that it was all because of Lin Chuan and not him. All of a sudden, Meng Keo finally figured out that Lin Chuan was a circa heroic citizen. On the other hand, a message popped out saying that the Razor Squad members survived, thanks to your advice. Meng Keo knew it. Lin Chuan is special. He is a circa heroic citizen just like Mr. Sun and Ning Shuo. For the time being, Miss LV suggested her people take a break there and wait for Lin Chuan and the others to catch up. Everything appeared to be in order, but suddenly she caught the ominous sound of rumbling nearby that made her feel a bit of uncertainty. Professor Yi noticed that something was bothering Miss LV, so she asked her what was wrong. Finally, Lin Chuan arrived at their location, Wan Dao by his side, providing assistance because he was injured from holding off the beasts. Miss LV immediately rushed towards him asking him what happened to his arm. Lin Chuan explained everything and told her that he was embarrassed by it. Following their ordeal, Miss LV expressed gratitude that they all made it out alive. She then emphasized that their top priority was to locate the ruby jade veins, which must be just close. As a concluding statement, she requested everyone to take a two-hour rest, emphasizing that after the brief respite, they would continue with unwavering dedication to their mission. Some of them were gathering around a stone, but it was glowing like it was on fire. Subsequently, someone said that they had lost quite a lot of supplies and devices, so they would have to make use of those fire elemental crystals to keep warm. On the other hand, Meng Keo thinks that it is a perfect time to sneak and find a secluded place to start healing himself since everyone is taking their rest now. However, while he was trying to sneak out of that place, Miss LV suddenly appeared behind him and called him asking him to wait up. Meng Keo stopped sneaking and asked Miss LV what was the matter. Miss LV did not answer him yet, she just asked him to walk with her and talk by that side. The two of them eventually went somewhere they could talk without anyone hearing them. They sat next to each other while Miss LV was trying to find a way to start speaking. At last, Miss LV brought out a small gorgeous looking dagger and asked Meng Keo what he thought about it. Meng Keo was struck with awe upon laying eyes on the magnificent dagger. It was familiar to him and so he tried to recall what it was called. It was the Crimson Inferno. The third last piece of work by the rune master Shizunlo before he retired. He still could not really believe how amazing the dagger was. The blade of the dagger is made from the fang of the Crimson Inferno Tiger, a level 6 infernal beast. A single piercing into its target's body is sufficient to destroy its life magnetic field and drain its life force. The target's life force will be absorbed into the body of the person who wields the dagger. 
Finally, Miss Elvi continued speaking saying that she heard Lin Chuan give him a set of chain swords and even taught him how to wield them. Miss Elvi stared at the right sword which Mang Keo placed just near where they sat and said that it was still usable. She then explained that she was giving him the Crimson Inferno to replace the piece of scrap metal on his left hand while smirking a bit. Awkwardness settled over Mankeo as he observed Miss Elvie's actions. He couldn't shake the feeling that she might be attempting to sway him by giving him such a precious item. Reluctantly, Mankeo accepted the gift for the sake of the hundred million citizens in Draken City. He then thanked Miss Elvie for giving him such an item. After discussing about the dagger, Miss LV asked Mankeo if he thought she was a heartless person who would do anything to achieve her goals given the sacrifices that it would cost them. Mankeo paused for a moment, contemplating the best way to respond to her question as he stared at Miss LV. Miss LV then clarified that she would absolutely love to devise a safer strategy, however, time was a luxury they couldn't afford at the moment. Time was not on their side. Every minute or even second is important, because the longer they stay there, the greater the number of soldiers who might die due to the extreme weather raging above the ground. Not just that, because in every second that passes, a combat vehicle is incapacitated by the energy vein's resonance. In a dramatic turn, she conveyed to Meng Keo the urgency of her need, emphasizing that she truly required his assistance. Meng Keo felt a bit foolish, witnessing the seriousness in Miss LV's demeanor. Their motives are the same, but he thinks he should be seeking Lin Chuan's help instead of his. Meng Keo wanted to explain why he thought that, but Miss LV interrupted him before he even finished his sentence. Miss LV told Meng Keo that he was right, that she and Lin Chuan were close to each other as she looked closely at Meng Keo. And then she looked down looking so sad as she told him that maybe they were not that close anymore. Miss LV reminisced about the way things used to be with her eyes, reflecting the sadness she felt as she recalled. Miss Sia's father was apologizing to Lin Chuan's father. He was taking all the blame for what had happened, saying it was all his fault. Poor Mr. Lin was tearing up because he knew he would not be able to survive, so he asked Mr. LV instead to get the stuffed bear he bought as a birthday present to his son and give it to him. He instructed him that if he would make it out alive, he had to give it to his son, Lin Chuan, for him. Miss Sia recalled their times together when they were a kid and used to be best friends. They even spent high school years together, and they both thought that their friendship would last forever no matter what happened. Unfortunately, after they entered college, they became so busy and occupied with their own matters. And from that day, they started drifting apart from each other. Further and further as days went by, they became what they are now. Initially, Miss Sia thought of taking advantage of the mission to reconcile their friendship, but it seems like he doesn't really agree with the way she handles things. Meng Keo was about to say something about Lin Chuan, but Miss Sia immediately stopped him saying that he doesn't have to put in a good word for him. She then explained the reason why Lin Chuan once called her aggressive and unscrupulous, but she assured Meng Keo that she never meant things to be that way. She had to do it. On the other hand, Meng Keo was getting a bit confused about why Miss Sia was feeling that way knowing that she was, still, one of the LVS. But who cares if she is an LV? It is true that her grandfather founded the Dynasty Group, but many factions have formed over the years, so the LVS do not hold sole control over the group anymore. Even within the LV family, they have elders and senior relatives who are hungry for power. Also, there are third generation members of the LV family who share a similar background as her. Miss Sia was regarded by everyone as a thorn in their eyes since she was the best among the third generation to outsiders as a scion of a wealthy and influential family. She may appear as if she was living a luxurious life, but behind her pretty face was all the hardships she had to endure all along. Despite everything that she had done and achieved, Lin Chuan, whom she referred to as their weeping slayer, still doesn't understand her at all. She revealed to Meng Keo that even though Lin Chuan can slay monsters as easily as slicing a vegetable, he has the softest heart and he was always been a crybaby since young. After saying that, he asked Meng Keo about what the Weeping Slayer said about her to him. She specifically asked if he tried to discourage him not to participate in the mission. Meng Keo immediately shook his head to disagree, then he told her that Lin Chuan only told him that she was a good person. However, it appeared that Miss LV wasn't entirely pleased with Lin Chuan describing her as a good person to Meng Keo. Disappointed with what she discovered, she dropped the solution pondering the years of friendship and realizing that she was merely regarded as a good person. 
Lin Chuan, who was being treated by Zio Jia, seemed to overhear the conversation between Miss Sia and Mang Keo and noticed how disappointed she was. However, he had nothing to do about it rather than saying sorry to Miss Sia in his mind. They were not from the same world after all. Subsequently, Miss Sia let out a sigh, as though she could sense the regret in Lin Chuan's words. Since the ambience was getting sadder talking about her unhappy story, Miss Sia suggested talking about Meng Keo. She then asked her if he had ever wanted to join Dynasty. Suddenly, Meng Keo found himself bewildered once more. He had initially believed their conversation was centered on helping Miss Sia mend her relationship with Lin Chuan. He then told Miss Sia that it never crossed her mind, but Miss Sia suggested that he should think about it now given that he was also in Exalta with highly developed brain cells. She then proceeded to tell him how early the other students were starting to interact with other Exalta teams that would grant them additional resources and training. This is the perfect opportunity for ambitious young adults to make their mark and build up their careers. Miss Sia thinks that spending four years in an ivory tower is too wasteful of his talents. She then stood up and she told Meng Keo that she would be frank with him this time. The truth is, she had always wanted to recruit Meng Keo ever since she saw his mental aptitude test results and his performance during this mission proved her right. Extending her hand, she made a persuasive gesture to Meng Keo, urging him to trust her. She also assured him of a long-term contract that seemed impossible to decline. Meng Keo gazed at her outstretched hand, contemplating the decision of whether to accept it or not. In his previous life, Dynasty still stood strong after the battle with the beasts. They are definitely a force to be reckoned with that he can rely on for opportunity and benefits. However, he cannot remember a woman there named Miss Elvisia in Dynasty's top management. He then thinks of the possible scenarios that might happen if he helps Miss Seer rise to the top which are mostly positive things. However, he just thanked her and said that he would consider it. For Miss Sia though, usually, people who say those lines already decided against something. Miss Sia became a bit aggressive telling Meng Keo that she already did her research about him. She knew he was working with persons who could not offer him more than what she could. Despite the unease settling within him, Meng Keo chose to adhere to what his instructor told him which is to follow Lin Chuan's guidance no matter what. In response to his words, Miss Sia fixed her gaze directly on Meng Keo, almost as if she continued to persuade him, this time utilizing the intensity of her eyes. And then she let him go. She also praised him for being too cautious despite being so talented. She also told him that they are friends now, so he could ask her for help if he needed something. Awkwardly, Meng Keo bid farewell to Miss LV, who was already walking away to take a rest since there was still a long journey ahead of them after all. But after a few seconds, Miss Sia looked back at Meng Keo which made him wonder. Afterward, she retrieved something from her dress and requested that Meng Keo pass it on to Lin Chuan on her behalf. It was a blood chalcedony. It has the ability to stimulate cellular activity and promote the healing of wounds and others. With a hint of reluctance, she instructed Meng Keo to relay to Lin Chuan the message to hold on to the item when he was in the process of healing himself. However, her demeanor shifted abruptly to fury when Meng Keo simply responded with an O oh to her request. She thinks that he really wants to annoy her. There is a theory going around in the life form. They said that crystals like the one he was holding were actually made from the remains of powerful intelligent beings. Following that theory, Meng Keo thinks that if that was the fossil of an ancient being then the veins of crystals are the blood veins of that ancient being. He then figured out that the hallucinations that humans see under the influence of the crystal resonance may be the murmurings of a spirit from ancient times. The path of human civilization's rapid advancement has always been paved by the corpses of billions. It is the same whether on Earth or in the Altermension. So, no matter how many sacrifices lie ahead, he reassures himself that he will march forward for the sake of Draken City. Caught in contemplation, Meng Keo was approached by Professor Yi, who was curious about his deep thoughts, and asked him about his intended destination as she passed by. Foolishly glancing back at Professor Yi, Meng Keo admitted that he had been lost in thought and distracted by something else. Professor Yi had a clue why Meng Keo was suddenly acting weird. She instead told him that they were getting more visible traces of the blood mark Roselle. She also asked him to be careful. Meng Keo expressed his gratitude to the professor. Then he explained that he needed to continue on his way as he had something to deliver to Lin Chuan. 
Professor Yi was relieved that Meng Keo had not entirely lost his sanity under the influence of the crystal resonance after their short conversation. Meng Keo finally reached Lin Chuan. He called his attention as soon as he saw him. Lin Chuan asked him to sit down then Meng Keo told him that Miss Sia asked him to give the blood chalcedony to him. He also told him her message to hold it whenever he heals himself. Suddenly, Lin Chuan removed the bandage that covered his wound, leaving Meng Keo taken aback by his unexpected action. To clear things up, he immediately explained to him that it is better to leave the wound uncovered when healing using blood chalcedony, otherwise it may cause irreparable damage. Meng Keo wondered what kind of irreparable damage he was talking about, so he explained that it would completely fuse with the wound at the molecular level. As he listened to Lin Chuan, Meng Keo couldn't help but vividly imagine the gruesome and painful nature of the wound might be saying it was no joke. Because of that, Meng Keo told Lin Chuan not to worry and then placed blood chalcedony near the wound. Almost immediately, the blood chalcedony went to work and the wounds began to heal rapidly, showcasing its remarkable effectiveness. Within a mere matter of minutes, the wound underwent a miraculous transformation, fully healing as the opening sealed itself shut. On the other hand, they noticed that Miss Sia was talking with the other members. They then think that maybe she was planning to push the departure time ahead. Miss Sia knew that it was an emergency operation and each of them had already taken a lot of risks. Then she started giving her promises to them, which was a promise that if any of them didn't get out of there alive, she would pay three times the agreed compensation. She would also personally cover the cost of the ruby jade they deserve and compensate their families with twice the amount. She then admitted that she might have been stubbornly persistent, but she would continue to lead the charge and would never give up for the sake of having a better, brighter future for them. Convinced by Miss Sia's persuasive words, Wan Dao made a resolute statement, declaring his commitment and expressing that he was fully on board. All of them ended up cheering for Miss LV and her hopes to achieve their common goals. Meanwhile, Lin Chuan who was just watching them from afar thinks that Miss LV was indeed just like her father. Meng Keo realized that that was the second time Lin Chuan mentioned Miss LV and her father's similarities. He wondered what was beneath those words and so he asked him so. However, Lin Chuan decided not to explain himself for saying that. All of a sudden, Lin Chuan came to ask what they were talking about earlier. Meng Keo told him that Miss LV gave her a dagger to thank him for saving her life. He also told him that she asked her what he thought of her and even tried to persuade him to join Dynasty. Lin Chuan chuckles at Meng Keo's revelations and then he asks him if he was smitten by her. Meng Keo vehemently defended himself, asserting that he would never be smitten by a woman, even her. In his conviction, he declared it an impossibility. However, a sudden realization struck him and he acknowledged that his words might have come across in a way that sounded quite inappropriate. He then became more defensive and tried to explain himself more saying that he was into women but not Miss LV. Besides, he turned down her invitation. Lin Chuan wondered why he turned down that offer. It was the dream of every Exalta to get a job at Dynasty. In fact, it was not easy to come by an offer. Before delving into the reasons, Meng Keo asked him for assurance that he could be honest and share the true reasons behind his refusal. The truth is that Meng Keo feels like there is something going on between Lin Chuan and Miss LV. It almost feels like the two of them may have had a melodramatic love-hate relationship full of intense passion. But for some reason, they had to part ways. And since she cannot have Lin Chuan anymore, he feels like she is trying to have him as Lin Chuan's replacement. With that, he concluded that he was a hot-blooded young man with great ambitions, but he would not let Miss LV come between them and ruin their brotherly bond. On the other hand, it seems like Lin Chuan was cringing to what Meng Keo was saying and Meng Keo noticed he truly was cringing. In that instant, Lin Chan told Meng Keo that he was overthinking it. He then made it clear that he and Miss Sia were just friends and that she would never take him as his replacement. On the flip side, Meng Keo asked him why he thought she would never do that happen. In a rather peculiar response, Lin Chuan chose not to address the question and instead fetched a mirror to indulge in admiring his own reflection, showing off his handsomeness to him. Recognizing Lin Chuan's jest, Meng Keo played along by shielding his eyes, pretending to protect himself from the overwhelming sight of Lin Chuan's perceived handsomeness. At last, Lin Chuan told Meng Keo that after all, it was still his decision to make and that he would give him his full support no matter what he would choose in the end. 
Menkeo asked him what suggestions he would have for him if in case he indeed joined the Dynasty. However, instead of answering the question, Lin Chuen just stood up and asked Meng Keo if he wanted to hear they became such good friends, which he already knew. Lin Chan was delighted that he already knew that his father saved Miss Sia's father before, but that is not all. There is still more to tell expressed Lin Chuen. Before his death, Lin Chuen's father was an ordinary miner working for Dynasty Mining Company. He didn't possess any extraordinary skills and was illiterate. His only strength was being hardworking, tough, and strong which he used to support him along with his four other siblings. His arms also became extremely thick and strong due to the radiation from the crystal veins in the mine. At that time, Alessia's father had just been tasked with taking care of the mining company and was in charge of managing the operations of his father's sector. Her father had exceptional talent and was a top-notch prospector. By relying on his experience and intuition, her father soon discovered a new vein near the mining site he managed. The new vein may have contained rich energy crystals sandwiched between two mining areas. Reporting the discovery to higher-ups would cause them to face endless bureaucratic red tape. To avoid unnecessary compilation, her father organized a survey team to secretly map out the vein. His father was one of the team members to do that specific task. At that time, his father had been working endlessly and hadn't been home in months. He promised him he would come back on his birthday though, he even got a present for him. A second-hand teddy bear from the Earth era. However, they were attacked by a horde of super beasts. They had no choice but to fight against them even though they seemed outnumbered. The intense battle caused a phenomenon known as crystal resonance and the resulting energy surge caused the mine tunnel to collapse. In a surprising twist of fate, the lone survivor of that incident turned out to be Miss Sia's father. On the other hand, the only remnant of his father was a teddy bear, a saddening reminder of the tragic event. The public was immediately snatched by the publicity made by the heir of a wealthy family, L.V. Fang Hui. He remembers the birthday present that an ordinary miner left to his son during those moments of danger. When the news of this spread, L.V. Fang Hui immediately won the general public's favor. Even the Dynasty benefited from his good publicity. Although almost the whole mining team was wiped out, they managed to complete the mission. As a result, LV Fang Hui was granted priority mining rights. With his down-to-earth public image and the priority mining rights to a whole mining vein, LV Fang Hui's career rose rapidly and he became the general manager of the mining industry. Behind all the achievements of her father, his father, on the other hand, would never come home ever again. In a single blink of an eye, he and his four other siblings were left on their own. In those few years, her father had been very kind toward him and his family. Actually, he can say that without them, there would be no weeping slayer walking the earth. But still, the pain of losing a father is unforgettable. As he grew older and learned more about them, his emotions toward Elvisia and her father became increasingly complicated. Men Keo noticed the unusual glow in Lin's eyes. Lin Chan explained that humans are not rational animals. He knew it was wrong, but he could not get himself to interact with her father or even her like back when they were children. He didn't know how to face her which is why he avoided her for several years until that moment. He thought he could improve their relationship however. Seeing how she handles things to achieve her goals makes him wonder if her father did the same and ultimately brought harm to everyone involved. Hearing all that Lin Chuan said, Meng Keo could not help but wonder whether he was just affected by the magnetic energy, so he asked him to take a rest for a while. Lin Chuan comprehended Meng Keo's unspoken thoughts. In response, he affectionately patted Meng Keo's head, conveying reassurance that everything was alright. Following the gesture, Lin Chuan let out a deep sigh before resuming his speech. He told him that he was just saying those stories to remind him that his life belongs to himself and his family and that no one else is worth sacrificing his life for. Meng Keo understood what Lin Chuan was trying to say, so he assured him that he joined that expedition not to sacrifice his life, but to change the situation of the Northern Front. He also told him that he had a little concern over how many benefits Miss LV would gain from that all he wanted was to end the extreme weather on Starcrush Lake and Tombstone Forest. Having uttered those words, Lin Chuan fixed his gaze on Meng Keo for an extended period, causing Meng Keo to wonder if he had unintentionally said something wrong. Lin Chuan shifted his gaze away from Meng Keo and began absent-mindedly scratching his forehead. 
After that, Lin Chuan suddenly erupted into uncontrollable laughter. The abrupt shift caught Meng Keo by surprise. Curious, Meng Keo found himself wondering about the source of Lin Chuan's sudden burst of laughter. Lin Chuan's laughter didn't go unnoticed, drawing the attention of Miss Sia, who became equally curious about the cause behind his sudden amusement. Realizing the attention he had drawn, Lin Chuan ceased his laughter and proceeded to explain something to Meng Keo. He told him that he should never fight for his fellow countrymen, humanity, or even for civilization. He said that he would rather fight for the concrete interests of someone like L.V. Sayoli than his countrymen, and he was saying it from the bottom of his heart. Perplexed, Meng Keo couldn't help but be curious about why Lin Chuan had made such a statement. Without hesitation, Lin Chuan explained that he said all those things because, for him, there is no such thing as human civilization or humanity. Following his profound statement, Lin Chuan gestured towards the mushroom forest, questioning Meng Keo if he noticed the monsters in there. Clueless of what Lin Chuan was trying to say, Meng Keo confirmed that he had indeed observed a variety of monsters in the gargoyle forest. However, Lin Chuan disagreed with him, saying that there were no monsters, there were only insects, praying mantises, lizards, venomous snakes, spiders, and mushrooms. Meng Keo, filled with curiosity, couldn't help but wonder why Lin Chuan would make such a statement, given the evident presence of monsters in the area. He then started to do an analogy using a snake and a lizard. The snake wanted the lizard to sacrifice himself by jumping into the snake's mouth so the snake would be able to kill more humans. The snake was luring the lizard to do as he said for the sake of millions of fellow monsters. The lizard seemed to be clueless about what he was going to do or what he should do. At this point, he then asked Meng Keo if he thought the lizard would trust the snake. And also at that very moment, while listening to him, Meng Keo was certain that there was something off with Lin Chuan's logic and emotion. Lin Chuan then answered his own question, saying that the lizard would never believe the snake, no matter how stupid it is. Lizards are lizards, and snakes are snakes. Every species has their own interest, and they may even be natural enemies. Lin Chuan continued saying things like these. He even told him that for the razor hogs, humans are far less scary than the diamond high dragons who devoured them countless times already. Even if they joined forces to eliminate humans with the diamond high dragons, would they stop eating them? After all, the wisest move the razor hogs could do was to show a fearless and decisive attitude without showing the slightest bit of hesitation. And just like the hogs, he wanted Meng Keo to only fight for himself, or at most for the same species as him, but never for those insects or snakes that are collectively called monsters. Appearing as if he had lost his sanity, Lin Chuan finally revealed to Meng Keo that, in reality, there were no monsters. He reiterated the statement, emphasizing the words as if determined to make Meng Keo fully grasp the concept. Sensing the need to dispel the tension, Meng Keo raised his hands and advised Lin to calm down saying that comparing humans to monsters in such a manner might not be appropriate. After all, humans are different from those monsters, they have the same appearance, speak the same language, and are able to understand each other. If in his logic Meng Keo was a razor hog, then everyone in Draken was also a razor hog. Everyone should fight side by side and move forward hand in hand. Nevertheless, Lin Chuan remained steadfast in his perspective, seemingly unaffected by Meng Keo's viewpoint. At some point, it seemed like Lin Chuan was having a headache remembering the time after his father passed away and got invited to the LV family to celebrate their birthday. He would never forget that small swimming pool that was twice the size of his kitchen and bathroom combined. The thing is, the pool was not meant for humans to use. It was for their dogs. It was for two dogs that eat only the most tender razor hog loins. Lin Xuan could not help but laugh out of envy because neither he nor any of his family members eight generations up have ever eaten such high grades of meat. That birthday celebration was an absolute dream for anyone who witnessed it. However, by the time he was sent back home after the celebration ended, he suddenly realized the extent of the problem they all were facing. At his very young age, he couldn't shake the feeling that either he or Miss Sia might not be human. Meng Keo suddenly remembered his sister, the time Lin Chuan told him that laws are toys for the rich and that poor people can only depend on themselves. He thinks of the man who handled the letter to his sister, showing how their father signed up for the contract that eliminated them as the one responsible for their father's misfortune. 
Same as Lin Chuen, they were both young and had nothing to do with the situation they were currently in, but to go wherever the flow moved them and wait for what would happen next. Even he thought too that way in his past life. Then he questioned himself, were they really the same as those high class people? The thought never changed until that moment happened. All of a sudden, Lin Chuen seized Meng Keo, yanking him away from his profound contemplations. After the sudden interruption, Lin Chuen chuckled lightly, expressing confidence that Meng Keo would comprehend his perspective. However, Meng Keo, in contrast, contemplated the grim possibility that if Draken were to be destroyed, both he and Lin Chuen would perish, leading to the extinction of humanity. Upon releasing Meng Keo from his grip, Lin Chuen remarked that it was good for Meng Keo to recognize his true peers, like him, at an early stage, and that he would never harm him. Meng Keo conveyed to Lin Chuan that he did, indeed, trust him. This declaration brought a profound sense of happiness and relief to Lin Chuan. Subsequently, Lin Chuan returned the blood chalcedony given to him by Miss Sia, instructing Meng Keo to conceal it somewhere on his body without disclosing he had it to Miss Sia. Uncertain about whether to accept or not, Meng Keo hesitated, considering that Miss Sia had specifically instructed him to hand the chalcedony crystal to Lin Chuan. Lin Chuan, employing persuasion, convinced Meng Keo that he needed the blood chalcedony more since he was almost fully healed and already in the sky stage. Acknowledging Meng Keo's perspective, Lin Chuan instructed him once more, emphasizing the importance of never letting Miss Sia see him using the chalcedony crystal. Meng Keo then asked him if he really thought he would have to use it in the future. Lin Chuan stared at him for a moment before answering his question. Lin Chuan elaborated on his reasoning, explaining to Meng Keo that being prepared was always the best since danger lurked around every corner. In conclusion, Lin Chuan requested Meng Keo to return to the group with him, as Miss Sia might summon them shortly. It became apparent that Lin Chuan had been genuinely influenced by the magnetic field interference, leading him to disclose more information to Meng Keo than intended. Now, all he hoped for was Meng Keo's discretion in keeping the information to himself. All of a sudden, Meng Keo called him back. Meng Keo then agreed to all Lin Chuan had told him. While acknowledging the multitude of issues in Draken, he highlighted two specific points that stood out and deserved affirmation. First is that the strong ones from prestigious families earned their resources by putting their lives on the line in the war, fighting monsters, and not through theft or robbery. Second, everyone has equal chances to make a name for themselves as long as they have the skills and are willing to work hard. However, Lin Chan could not agree with what Meng Keo said. He instead told him that he would slowly discover for himself what those powerful families did in the past. For Meng Keo's second point, Lin Chuan asked him to look at himself and ask himself if he is still sure that everyone has an equal chance just like what he said. In his case, he was able to stand out because of his father's death, which drew LV Fang Hui's attention and afforded him much resource support. Then he questioned Meng Keo if he thought he could still be successful based only on his abilities and hard work, and not on the mysterious old Sparky who taught him secretly. In the end, Meng Keo conceded, admitting that Lin Chuan was right. He recognized that without luck, they might never have the opportunity to change their destiny. Lin Chuan has been thinking about it, their fights, their struggles, it seems like those don't mean anything, really. Even if they fight for their whole life, in the end, the child of a razor hod will always be a razor hog. Then he asked Meng Keo what was the point of it all then. Meng Keo exclaimed that it indeed meant something. He reiterated to Lin Chuan that their fights held significance and meaning. Meng Keo continued explaining that since they were constantly under attack from those monsters, they needed to allocate the resources to the stronger individuals. And because resources were limited, it was impossible for Draken to meet everyone's basic needs. Meng Keo believed that when they had eliminated all the monsters that threatened Draken. When Earth's civilization had spread to every corner of the Altar Mansion, which is when he believed that all their problems would be solved. He imagined that the lives of ordinary people would become better and Draken City would become more prosperous, powerful, and fair. He believes that at that time, people will once again experience the beauty and glory of Earth. People will not be like the Razor Hog and Diamond High Dragon anymore, but instead, an Earthling. After Meng Keo delivered a heartfelt speech, Lin Chuan sighed, perhaps reflecting on the weight of their situation, and had a breath of relief. 
He then admitted that Meng Keo was right and acknowledged that perhaps he tended to overthink things due to spending an extensive amount of time in the wilderness. Expressing gratitude, Lin Chuan thanked Meng Keo for what he said offering his hand, acknowledging that it had lifted his spirits. Meng Keo humbly dismissed the gratitude, telling Lin Chuan not to mention it. They sealed their camaraderie with a handshake, recognizing each other as comrades. In shared laughter, Lin Chan felt a warm invitation from Meng Keo to visit more frequently, fostering a newfound connection between them. After the laughter subsided, Lin Chuan earnestly conveyed that he required a favor from Meng Keo, underscoring a shift in their interaction. Lin Chuan's only request to Meng Keo was simple yet profound, to prioritize self-care and resist succumbing to the demands of others, ensuring he wouldn't be worked to exhaustion. All of a sudden, Miss Sia interrupted everyone from what they were doing, telling them that the rest time was over and it was time to get back to the mission. Resuming their quest, the team delves back into the dark cave, determinedly searching for the elusive treasure that awaited them in the shadows, not noticing the monster lurking behind. Aware of the peril in the dark surroundings, Wan Dao instructed Zio Jia to lead the way, taking on the role of a scout to ensure the team's safety as they advanced. Without hesitation, Zio Jian followed Wan Dao's command, dashing ahead to inspect the area, prompting the team to pause and await his findings before proceeding. Meanwhile, Meng Keo, filled with concern, feared for Zio Jia's well-being, he was convinced that the darkness might necessitate backup to ensure his safety in the unknown terrain. Lin promptly scolded Meng Keo, reminding him of their agreement and emphasizing that his sole task was to harvest resources from the defeated monsters, not to meddle with anyone else's danger. Observing Lin Chan's evident regard for Meng Keo, Miss Sia pondered whether winning over Meng Keo could potentially alleviate the tension between her and Lin Chan. Suddenly, a resounding noise echoed through the cave, jolting the team into heightened alertness as they strained to identify the source of the disturbance. Eager for answers, Miss Sia anxiously questioned whether the echoing sound originated from gunfire or if it signaled the presence of the global group they were pursuing. Swiftly, Wan Dao directed Miss Sia to remain in place, assuring her that the team would take charge and manage the unfolding situation. Nevertheless, Miss Sia implored Lin Chuan to join her, concerned that if her suspicions were correct, Wan Dao and his group might be ill-equipped to handle the situation on their own. Lin Chuan swiftly agreed to accompany her, recognizing the potential gravity of the situation at hand. Amidst the ongoing deliberation, Wan Dao's team faced a fierce confrontation with another group of men, the cavern echoing with the sounds of a high-stakes struggle for dominance. In a tense moment, a silent threat loomed as an unknown man attempted to harm Miss Sia without a sound. Fortuitously, Meng Keo's heightened senses detected an ominous presence nearby. With swift reflexes, he unsheathed his sword, poised to defend Miss Sia from the lurking threat. The clash of swords echoed as the assailant launched an attack, and Meng Keo skillfully defended himself, their blades colliding in a tense struggle for control. As the confrontation momentarily halted, Meng Keo recognized the man's face, revealing him to be Kin Hu. Kin Hu also remembered Meng Keo. Curious, Meng Keo inquired about Kin Hu's unexpected presence underground, questioning why he chose to be down there when there was seemingly plenty to harvest above ground. A sense of unease gripped Kin, who as Meng Keo deliberately provoked him. His anger for him was aggravated more by what Meng Keo had done to him before. Consumed by anger, Kin, who unleashed a forceful attack on Meng Keo driven by his intense emotions, hoping to kill him in an instant. Surprisingly, Meng Keo seemed stronger than him, despite Kin, whose higher three-star energy fusion ranking, while Meng Keo with only a one-star energy mark. Exerting his strength, Meng Keo forcefully pushed Kin Hu away, creating a brief respite in the heated confrontation between the two. Kin Hu believed that he could definitely kill Meng Keo if he would just go all out. However, he was hesitating to do it because of Meng Keo's dagger. He thinks that he could fight back fiercely before dying and might have some hidden tricks up his sleeve. Before Kin Hu could launch another attack on Meng Keo, he noticed Lin Chuan standing beside him. His mere presence instilled a sense of terror in Kin Hu already. Lin Chuan was tearing up as he asked Meng Keo if he needed his aid. Upon realizing that Lin Chuan was a Sky Stage fighter, Kin Hu hesitated to engage in further combat, recognizing the significant difference in their martial prowess. Acknowledging the formidable presence of Lin Chuan, 
Kin who chose to retreat for his own safety. He told Meng Keo he should be grateful for having a Sky Stage fighter on his side. With a chuckle, Meng Keo playfully cautioned Kin who that any further use of the term rascal would result in the swift demise of R3. He will make sure no one in Draken will hear R3 again. Kin who felt a twinge of nervousness with Meng Keo's threat and confidence. He wondered when he became so cocky when it was only been a while since they last met each other. Fueled by a mix of nervousness and resentment, Kin who hastily retreated, reminiscent of a child seeking refuge with his mother as he warned Meng Keo to just wait for his revenge. Curious, Lin Chuan inquired if the man was indeed Kin who from the Valiant Saber Squad, a query that Meng Keo affirmed with a nod, confirming the identity of their recent adversary. All of a sudden, Miss Sia addressed someone named Shen Yulong and asked him what was the meaning of all that. On a different note, Lin Chuan asked Meng Keo to come along and find out what was happening, their curiosity propelling them into action. Shen Yulong's intuition proved correct. He had always had a feeling that someone was sneaking up behind him, and it turns out it was her, Miss LV the Ninth. Shen Yulong is one of the third generation heirs of the global group controlling family and is fifth in line. Lin Chan explained who Shen Yulong is to Meng Keo telling him that his status was similar to Miss Sia. They grew up competing against each other just like what is happening now. LV Seer ranks ninth among her peers. Shen Yulong is mocking her for not having a prominent status within the third generation of the LVs. Suddenly, Shen Yulong told Miss LV he was sorry she was too late. All the crystals and the ores in the cave belong to him, just like what was written on the sign he put up outside. However, Miss Sia was not easily swayed by his words. If he showed her proof that he had found the ruby jade veins, she told him she would leave right away. In a serious tone, Miss Sia emphasized that without concrete evidence, the ultimate victor in the game they were playing is still unknown. Tension escalated between the global group and Miss Sia's team as the leaders engaged in a verbal exchange, tightening the grip of conflict between the two factions. Suddenly, Lin Chuan emerged with the fiery presence of the Fire Phoenix behind him disrupting the escalating tension and injecting an unexpected element into the confrontation. Lin Chuan's gaze descended upon the global group, showing confidence and implying that his team held an advantageous position in the heightening competition. However, Shen Yulong just smirked as he mocked Miss Sia for even bringing her loyal dog, pertaining to Lin Chuan, which showed how determined she was to get what she wanted. In that instant, Shen Yulong urged Miss Sia to have a fair competition and to let their abilities speak for themselves. Miss Sia agreed to compete fairly, and then she urged him back to follow the rules of prospectors. Whoever discovers the Ruby Jade Vein first, the other party will leave voluntarily. As Lin Chan descended, Miss LV asked him what he thought about the agreement, and Lin Chan replied that he was not very optimistic. Shen Yulong's people are not weak, and he himself is a Sky Stage fighter. He worried that he might strike them at the most unexpected moment. Grasping Lin Chuan's concern, Miss Sia acknowledged his sincerity, commenting that such a proposition was indeed in line with Shen Yulong's character. Continuously, Miss Sia explained to other members that they have been caught up with the global group's prospecting team and had a nasty brush with them. She reminded her team to be sharp, that in case those enemies refuse to follow the rules, they must fight back. All members agreed with eagerness to fight along. Meanwhile, Meng Keo asked Brother Lin if they are really going to fight them, and he replied that it's hard to say. Because of what happened, he is unsure that they will be able to move forward together happily. Meng Keo added that they are in the middle of battling the monsters, then how they can fight each other at critical moment. Lin responded that monsters are also at war with humans, but it doesn't stop the Diamond High Dragons from eating dozens of Razor Hogs every day. Unconvinced Meng Keo was interrupted by Lin Chuan saying that he should not be worried because even they were in the wilderness without spotlights or cameras and everyone may reveal their less than perfect side, they were still rational beings. As long as nobody incites strife, they will not attack each other, he added. He also said that Kin Hu from the Valiant Saber Squad has a bone to pack with him besides Shen Yulong and LV aren't on good terms with each other. He is just worried that Kin who may instigate Shen Yulong to launch a surprise attack against them. Meng Keo asked Brother Lin if it is really impossible for them to cooperate and explore together. They can share the mining rights of the Ruby Jade Vein. But Brother Lin explained to him that even if they choose to trust each other for the sake of Draken, what about him and Ken Hu? 
he needs to understand that suspicion is contagious. If one person harbors suspicion and something becomes the spark, it will ignite everyone's suspicions. He already told Meng Keo that he will regret participating in that mission, but Meng Keo is confident that we will not regret it because he believes in humanity. That they can definitely come up with solutions to overcome difficulties even in the darkest of times. Lin Chuan is speechless when suddenly one of their members interrupt and told them that it's time to go. He also added to save the chattings later because they were falling behind the team. As they walked deeper into the cave, the temperature rose noticeably, signaling the presence of magma and adding a heightened sense of heat to their surroundings. Unexpectedly, the temperature plummeted within seconds, causing annoyance among the group as ice crystals formed in the surroundings, creating a sharp contrast to the previous heat. Miss LV turned to Professor Yi and inquired if she had found the way out. Professor Yi replied affirmatively, assuring the group that they were on the right track. Doubtful, Miss LV questioned Professor Yi once more, expressing uncertainty about the chosen path. The tight and impassable terrain made her question if they were indeed on the right track. While she was having difficulty on the challenging path, Miss LV suddenly sensed something that sparked excitement and joy within her. With excitement, Miss LV called for everyone's attention and gladly shared the good news that they were nearing the ruby jade vein. Finally overcoming the narrow passage, Miss LV emerged on the other side. To her surprise, they discovered other individuals in the area they had reached. To their astonishment, the global group stood before them, mirroring the surprise felt by Miss Sia's team at the unexpected convergence in the cave. Meng Keo, Lin Chuan, and the others remained calm, while Miss LV herself exhibited visible signs of growing anger at the unexpected encounter with the global group. Expectedly, Miss Sia and Shen Yulong quarreled once again, accusing each other of following their paths, making the tension between the two teams grow more intense. Following the childish quarrel, both leaders recognized the urgency and urged their respective teams to move on, not willing to let the other team gain an advantage in finding the vein. Seeing Miss Sia still annoyed by the encounter with Shen Yulong, Professor Yi gently attempted to soothe her emotions, offering support and understanding amid the tense situation. Upon reaching a cliff, Professor Yi took a moment to examine the terrain, assessing the possibilities and challenges that lay ahead for the team. Having surveyed the surroundings, Miss Sia issued a command for the team to descend with her, indicating a new direction for their exploration. Prepared for the descent, Miss Sia donned her harness, signaling her readiness to jump down the cliff and lead the team to the next phase of their exploration. Finally, she jumped off without hesitation to see what lay down there. Before reaching the bottom, she noticed something below her. The cliff featured a remarkable ice crystal formation in shades of pink, characterized by sharp edges and spikes, creating a visually striking and unique landscape. Miss Sia seemed to be captivated by the mesmerizing ice crystal formation. Following that, she urged everyone to join her down there to collect samples. Professor Yi agreed to her order immediately without hesitations. The ice crystal-like formations gave a really beautiful ambience to the area. Confident in their chances of success, Miss Sia believed that victory was within reach, as long as the collected samples met the required standards. Eager to assess the results, Miss Sia inquired about the concentration of the collected samples, anticipating crucial information for their mission. The staff reported that they had successfully collected the required ore samples, but the concentration of the samples collected did not even surpass 10%. Disappointment clouded Miss Sia's expression as the realization set in the low concentration of the collected samples meant that they had not truly discovered the ruby jade vein yet. The staff attempted to offer additional information to comfort Miss Sia, but she interrupted her from doing so. Miss Sia asked everyone not to worry about anything. She still believed that the main vein was still in close proximity, fostering hope for a successful outcome despite the initial setback. Determined to persevere, Miss Sia urged the team to press on, emphasizing that they couldn't afford to fail at this crucial juncture in their mission. On the other hand, Lin Chuan suggested to take a break before continuing the mission. It has been over 30 hours since their encounter with the global group. Lin Chuan believes that they cannot keep going when everyone's nerves have been under high pressure the whole time. The members have been intensely patrolling the area to prevent any surprise attacks from the global group, if they will not rest, they will not have the energy to fight back. Following Lin Chuan's discussion, Miss Seer reluctantly conceded to taking a break, 
recognizing the wisdom and pausing to reassess their approach. She allowed everyone to have a three-hour break, and after that, they would depart. Lin Chuen, taking charge, advised Wan Dao to take a break while he handled the situation alone, ensuring that everyone had a chance to rest and recover. Lin Chuen was happy that everyone would get to take a rest as he guarded them in their sleep. Confident in Lin Chuan's capability to handle the situation, Meng Keo felt reassured, believing that with Lin Chuan's standing guard, the team could rest without concerns. Meng Keo thinks that with so many merit points, and as long as there is enough energy supply, his survival should not be a problem. He then exchanged some of his merits for basic healing. During his two-month stay at the East Lake base, he over-fulfilled the requirements in the Devil's Challenge chain missions second and third stages. Although he can claim the rewards at any time, it is better to wait a little longer to have a higher chance of getting the mission's special rewards. During the rest period, Meng Keo experienced a sense of well-being as he focused on healing and recuperating from any strains or injuries, taking advantage of the break to rejuvenate. Amidst the collective rest, including Lin Chuen, a man quietly and suspiciously crept around, raising questions about her intentions during the team's break. Silently, the man stealthily approached the area where Miss Sia was sleeping. With stealth, the man opened the box resting next to Miss Sia. He then grabbed the tablet inside the box slowly to avoid making any sound. After securing the tablet, the man swiftly ran toward the narrow opening they passed earlier, skillfully sneaking away without anyone in the team noticing the actions he had taken. Lin Chuen's eyes widened with a heightened sense of awareness, sensing that something was amiss signaling a realization that all might not be as it seemed. He quickly woke up Wan Dao with a sense of urgency, which made him think that an enemy was attacking them. He then explained to Wan Dao that he saw someone run away and asked him to protect the other because he would go after the man who ran. In response to Lin Chuan's directive, Wan Dao swiftly commanded the Razor Squad to assume a defensive formation and to be ready for potential challenges or threats. Reacting to the suspicious events, Miss Sia urged everyone to inspect their equipment and partners, striving to identify the culprit who had run away with the tablet. A staff member suggested that Hu Peng might be the one who ran away with the tablet, noting his absence during the inspection. Another one was wondering if he was a traitor. Concerned by the situation, Meng Keo questioned Miss Sia about the potential loss of something crucial. Miss Sia, in response, inspected her things to identify any missing items. To her astonishment, Miss Sia discovered that her terminal, containing crucial data on the ore vein, was missing. The realization heightened the urgency to recover the device promptly. Concerned by the missing terminal, Professor Yi speculated that Hu Peng might have stolen their data and fled, entertaining the possibility of him aligning with the global group. Fueling the suspicion, another team member shared a long-standing belief that Hu Peng was unreliable. He even thought that he might be spying on them for the global group. On the other hand, Miss Sia took the blame for what had happened since she was the one who chose him. She then asked everyone to be ready to depart once Lin Chuan came back. Meng Keo agreed with Miss Sia, emphasizing that if Lin Chuan could capture Hu Peng and retrieve the missing data, everything would be resolved. All of a sudden, Lin Chuan returned, urging Miss Sia to leave immediately as he discovered people in the creek where they entered, signaling potential threats to their safety. Lin Chuan thinks that they are from the global group. As he spoke, he realized the paleness on everyone's faces, so he asked them if they lost something important. Miss Sia then told him that it was Hu Peng who ran away with the tablet that they used to record the exploration route and data. Lin Chuan immediately understood that what Miss Sia suggested was that Hu Peng was a spy hired by the global group, which made him disappointed at him and himself. For a moment, Miss Sia stopped talking and thought of a strategy. Seeking reassurance, Miss Sia turned to Professor Yi and inquired whether there was a backup or copy of all the information from her missing tablet and Professor Yi looked for it quickly. She was aware that Shen Yulong was fond of playing such petty tricks, but that will not stop her from continuing. She then looks for the data on Professor Yi's tablet. In a tense atmosphere, the team waited anxiously as Miss Sia meticulously navigated the tablet. All of a sudden, Miss Sia's face started to change. There was a light that was slowly emerging. As she continued navigating the tablet, the light coming from it also brightened more and became more vivid. An aura of focused determination surrounded her, giving the impression that she was tapping into some latent power within. The mysterious aura continued circling around her body. 
Finally, she announced to everyone that it was here. She told everyone that if they were going to dig downward from where they were, they would get closer to the ruby jade vein even faster than their original plan. The team immediately responded to her with agreement, and then they started digging right away. Miss Seal was aware the journey ahead may be very dangerous, and although they have found a faster route, Shi Yulong might still be able to get ahead of them. Then she told Lin Chuan that he was the only one she trusted among all of them, and so she entrusted him with the safety of the team. Lin Chuan then assured her that she could definitely trust her in that aspect. Meanwhile, the team skillfully used their tools to create a hole in the entrance of the passage. Finally, the team immediately informed Miss Sia as they successfully opened the passage, ready to embark on their journey. Stepping forward with determination, Lin Chuan volunteered to scout the path ahead, while he tasked Wan Dao and his men to cover the rear. Wan Dao then agreed to do as Lin Chuan said. On the other hand, Meng Keo could not help but think that he missed something since things were going too smoothly which made him suspicious. All of a sudden, the team heard a signal from Lin Chuan saying that he found the mining team's runes and that it was the exit. He then ordered everyone to keep up with his pace and avoid getting separated from the team. At that moment, as Lin Chuan took one more step, the ground beneath him started to creak. Because of that, he warned everyone to stay alert since the rocks there seemed to be a bit loose. He also advised them to not get too close to the edge. Even though the team discovered that they reached a dead end, Lin Chuan still advised everyone to stay calm. Miss Sia, on the other hand, took a moment to just stare at the cliff for some time. Suddenly, excitement surged within her as she sensed a powerful energy reaction below the cliff. She speculated that the ruby jade vein might just be lying down there. Miss LV turned to Lin Chuan, looking so happy upon making a discovery. It seemed as though she was subtly urging him to proceed or take action based on what she had found. However, Lin Chuan disagreed with what she seemed to be suggesting for the reason that the resonance of the crystal below might be too strong as it already is where they are. Miss LV then told him that the ropes may not be long enough for them to reach the ground below, and they cannot dig a passage to the bottom, either as the rocks there are too fragile. After that, she then commanded the team that they would head in one direction first and see if they could find a way down. Meanwhile, as they were trying to find a way down, Lin Chuan gave an order to everyone to stay close to the rocky walls because the terrain they were walking on was quite complex. And as he was just giving that specific instruction, a member of them got really terrified of the danger they were in, and then the ground below him suddenly collapsed. Meng Keo quickly turned around after noticing that one of their team members was about to fall down to the unknown ground. The man thinks that he is going to die at that moment until he notices a rope connected to a sword circling around his waist. Instead of falling below, he was left hanging in suspense. And just like that, he was saved. After ensuring the man was securely tied to the rope, Meng Keo exerted strength to hoist him back up. The man landed awkwardly, crashing onto his face, yet he paid little heed to the pain. His sole focus was on the overwhelming relief of finally being saved. He then thanked Meng Keo as soon as he had the ability to do so and Meng Keo smiled back at him saying he was always welcome. With the unexpected incident resolved, Miss LV instructed everyone to return to their business. She also told them to be careful knowing that it might be more dangerous down there. As she conveyed her instructions, a sound echoed that sent terror through all of them freezing them in fear and wonder. As they looked upward, they realized the entire wall was beginning to collapse, instilling a sense of urgency and fear among them. Lin Chuan immediately made use of his chains to hold the slowly collapsing wall as he asked LV Fenjing to protect the young miss and instructed Wan Dao to check the surroundings. But not long enough after the rumbling sound, the wall up above them totally collapsed this time. It seemed like Lin Chan did not know what to do anymore in the situation as he stared at the area falling apart. Wan Dao saw what was coming so he quickly reminded his brother Lin Chuan to watch out as he grabbed his sword. He used his sword in order to protect the team not by slashing off enemies, but by slashing the falling debris this time. Recognizing the burden already on the Razor Squad who were trying to minimize the casualties, Miss LV urged everyone to move swiftly and to avoid becoming a hindrance to them. With urgency and with Razor Squad's protection, everyone hastened in the same direction, propelled by the imminent threat of the wall above them crumbling and falling apart. At one point while they were on the run, a member of the team urged everyone to look above because he noticed that there was a person up there. The man quickly escaped as the man pointed a finger in his direction. 
He seemed to be avoiding being noticed by anyone. With that, Meng Kao could not help but theorize that the rockfall might have been caused by that person up above. On the other hand, Lin Chuan suggested he would go after the man. Meng Kao gazed at Lin Chuan as he ascended toward the man. However, in the midst of this, something unexpected occurred once more. The man who had initially spotted the figure above was struck by falling debris, leaving him immobilized with his feet trapped. He immediately called for Meng Kao to save him. Wan Dao exerted all his strength, driving his sword through the rock with an unwavering determination to collapse it manually. On the other hand, Wan Dao thinks that the wall will not hold out for much longer, so he advises Meng Kao to go get him from being stuck and take Miss LV to a safer place. Meng Kao carried both of them thinking it would be faster if they escaped that way. On the other hand, Miss LV seemed a bit annoyed after Meng Kao told her she was heavy. The wall collapse is getting serious. Meng Kao thinks that even with their strong physiques, Exalta will not hold out for long. With that in mind, he advised Wan Dao and his guys to evacuate too, saying that the ground beneath them would not hold much longer. Wan Dao agreed to him and instructed the guys to quickly keep up and protect everyone as they moved. The Razor Squad immediately obeyed their leader and did their best to protect everyone. Following Wan Dao's lead, the Razor Squad persisted in shielding everyone from the falling debris as they sprinted forward. Urgently seeking to ensure everyone's safety, Miss LV commanded everyone to accelerate their pace and run faster. While making their escape, the shattering of the wall intensified to the point the place was unrecognizable anymore. Even though they made it out alive, Professor Yi could not help but tremble in fear due to the trauma brought by their near-death experience inside. Miss LV checked on her. She said she was okay, but she could not believe that they tried to kill them just because they wanted the ruby jade veins for themselves. All of a sudden, Lin Chuan descended, and Miss LV immediately came to ask him for some updates about the situation above. But the more important question she wanted him to answer was if he managed to catch the man who did all that. However, Lin Chuan failed to do so. He did not even see his face clearly, but he seemed to be Nai Quan from the Valiant Saber Squad, and he only retrieved a piece of rock from there. From the way it looked, he thinks that the rocks seemed to look like the runes that those prospectors had set up. That means that what happened was not an accident, they planned it all knowing they would pass through there. Knowing this, Miss LV was determined to show no mercy to Shen Yulong. On the other hand, Meng Kao was still wondering how they did it, and then asked Miss LV if they would launch a preemptive attack on the global group's prospecting team. Miss LV grew angrier noticing Meng Kao's apparent disbelief that the global group was responsible for the catastrophe despite the apparent pieces of evidence. Meng Kao thinks that after all, suspicion is contagious. But there is no time to hesitate, if Shen Yulong discovered the ruby jade vein first, he would be the hero and no one will believe them. Meanwhile, Miss LV was encouraging everyone to kill the bastards from the global group. She would even give additional rewards for every man they would be able to kill. While everybody was cheering for Miss Sia, Meng Kao thought that there was no way to quell their anger at that time, but still, he had a feeling that something was not quite right. Amidst the chaos happening and what might happen next, Lin Chuan stood to the side, wearing a smirk, seemingly unfazed by the unfolding events. Once the commotion subsided, Meng Kao turned to Lin Chuan and inquired whether he shared Miss LV's perspective of holding the global group accountable for the unfolding events. Lin Chuan told him that he was. However, they did not have any concrete evidence to say that Shen Yulong was behind all that happened to them. He might deny it, of course. The positive outcome of the speculation was that everyone believed they stood on the side of justice, that they were ambushed and seeking vengeance unites them tighter. A member of the Razor Squad even made a threatening statement that he would smash the skull of anyone from the global group he ran into with a pickaxe. Back to the two, Meng Kao figured that Lin Chuan's words only mean a single thing, which is they had no other choice but to continue forward. On the other hand, Lin Chuan advised Meng Kao to remember his promise that he would prioritize his safety first before anything else. Meng Kao then agreed. On their way to continue the mission, Miss Sia told everyone that they really needed to find the ruby jade vein before Shen Yulong and set up a defensive formation to secure a win. Suddenly, a team member noticed the mist created by the diffusion of geothermal fluid. She then warned them about the possible effect of the microorganisms that might be thriving there. And also, the mining lamps cannot penetrate the fog. 
Thankfully, they have Miss Sia, who can feel the surroundings. As she tried to feel the characteristics of the geothermal fluid, she figured that it was nothing to be worried about because it didn't have a strong toxicity or corrosiveness. She can feel it. The main vein of the ruby jade must be deep within that area of the geothermal fluid. There's a strong energy emanating from there. After that, she ordered everyone to activate the environmental monitoring function on their tactical watches and stay alert of their surroundings as they press on. Wan Dao also ordered the Razor Squad to follow closely and monitor the surroundings. Lin Chan advised Meng Keo to keep his mind index stable because even though the toxicity of the geothermal fluid there is low, the resonance of the crystal is still there. On the other hand, the injured member was scared about the number of the luminescent microorganisms, but his comrade told him it was better to be poisoned than to be buried alive. All of a sudden, he heard a voice in his head saying that his team member might abandon him because of his leg injury and that he should chop off the leg of anyone who would try to do so. The man wondered where the voice was coming from. It is like he is going insane. He told his comrade that it was Shi Yulong and he was going to kill him. The man carrying him then reminded everyone to pay attention to their mental indexes. All of a sudden, the man shouted and ordered the voice he was hearing to stop telling lies to him. And then he moved his pickaxe side by side as if he was trying to drive some imaginary demons away from him. All of a sudden, his delusions came to an end after someone smacked him on the back of his neck. It was Wan Dao. He had to do it because he was experiencing visual and auditory hallucinations due to the impact of the resonance on his visual and auditory nerves. Wan Dao hopes that he regains his senses and becomes clear-headed again when he wakes up later. At the same time, a woman stepped on a cliff and almost fell below, but a man grabbed and pulled her up before she completely dropped. They then informed Miss Sia about this and asked her to take a look at it. It seemed like they had reached a dead end. Wan Dao suggested throwing a stone down the chasm to see how deep it is. Unexpectedly, after he dropped the stone, there was no sound of the stone hitting the ground for a very long period of time. It is either the sound absorbed by the geothermal fluid or the chasm floor is really far. In any case, the magnetic interference there is unusually high. They cannot go down from there no matter what. They have to look around and search for other places with flat surfaces. Suddenly, Lin Chuan told Miss Sia that according to the terrain there, there should be a relatively gentle slope over there that they could use to go down. Miss Sia informed everybody about the cliff up ahead, and that they could not go down from there, they needed to change their course. On the other hand, Meng Keo was still wondering because Lin Chuan had been acting weirdly ever since they entered the underground, and now he's acting like nothing happened. Be that as it may, he still didn't rule out the possibility that he might be imagining things at the moment. He then stopped for a moment and listened to the sound he was hearing. He figured that the number of footsteps was incorrect. The sounds of people breathing and heartbeats have also significantly increased. He thinks that their team has been infiltrated and there are several of them. He also suspected that it was a part of the global group's plan. They took advantage of the mist caused by the geothermal fluid and infiltrated their team. They are attacking them, he thinks. He imagined the global group trying to kill every single one of them. However, the Razor Squad would not make it easy for them. He could not believe that this had happened. He then wondered why they were suddenly attacking them when there was no reason for them to do that. He also wondered why is it that even though he returned from the apocalypse, he still could not change anything. All of a sudden, Lin Chuan appeared in front of his face, and he asked him if he was alright. Meng Keo replied that he was, and then asked about the situation with the Razor Squad. Lin Chuan explained that they were currently fighting against the global group mining team and they may end up being wiped out. He then gave him a bag with bombs and other tools and asked him to go around the cliff and use it to blast open a path. Meng Keo immediately realized what Lin Chuan was asking him to do which was to run while everyone was in danger. Lin Chan explained that he had to do, he had to make it out alive in order to report Shen Yulong to the Exalted Tower. That way, Shen Yulong's scheme would be thwarted. However, Meng Keo was worried about what Lin Chuan would do once he left. Lin Chuan asked him not to worry about him after all, his beast soul is a phoenix. He assured Meng Keo that Shen Yulong would never be able to hurt him. Then he commanded Meng Keo to stop talking and just go instead or else. He would not consider him his brother anymore. Meng Keo agreed, but he had one last thing to tell him. 
He then told the information about the fungus that secretes a sticky mucus and its relationship with the gargoyle mushrooms and the blade jump spider. I was called the acrolith spider. It is a rare evolved mutant and the leader of both species. He then received a message thanking him for the information he told the special citizen, Lin Chuan. Lin Chuan then thanked him for it. On the other hand, Meng Keo wondered why he was addressed as a special citizen. It was the same as Jiakao. He thinks that it could possibly mean that Lin Chuan is going to encounter something later. All of a sudden, Lin Chuan asked Meng Keo to watch out. Before he knew it, a bullet made from an energy stone was coming towards him. It contains the power of a four stair exalted. Unexpectedly, Lin Chuan swiftly moved towards Meng Keo, pushing him forward and taking the bullet himself. With a sense of urgency, he asked Meng Keo to run. It seems like Meng Keo has no choice at all but to leave Lin Chuan and the others there in order to make things right. It was the lone gunman Lai Xin who shot the bullet. He was a four-star exalted. Lin Chuan assured that he would hold him off while Meng Keo ran. Despite Meng Keo's attempt to stay by Lin Chuan, the injured Lin Chuan firmly ordered him to go and run. Lin Chuan was right, Meng Keo would not be able to change the outcome, even though he intervened in the fight between Sky Stage fighters. But still, he wondered how Lin Chuan, his neighbor, senior brother, and his idol, became a special citizen. Suddenly, the sound of the wind shifted noticeably, leading him to believe that someone was approaching. Out of nowhere, he heard a familiar voice. He threatened to kill Meng Keo after he ambushed him earlier. It was Qin Hu, rapidly advancing toward Meng Keo with a drawn sword. With agility and quick reflexes, Meng Keo skillfully stepped forward avoiding the lethal swing of his sword. Meng Keo swiftly leaped away from Qin Hu, putting distance between himself and the oncoming threat. Despite the tension, Meng Keo implored Qin Hu to cease the attack and urged him to listen for a moment. However, Kin Hu remained unyielding, expressing that Meng Keo might not have envisioned that he would meet his demise at Kin Hu's hands. Undeterred, Meng Keo persisted, urging Kin Hu to halt the aggression and questioning if there was a misunderstanding between them. Despite Meng Keo's pleas to settle their score another day, Kin Hu persisted and escalated the situation by launching an attack with his sword. Meng Keo was astonished and found himself taken aback by the formidable strength and ferocity exhibited by Qin Hu. Qin Hu, in a forceful motion, pushed Meng Keo away with his sword. Qin Hu conveyed to Meng Keo that he wouldn't succumb to any tricks or deception. On the other hand, Meng Keo worried that the distance between them widened. Despite Qin Hu's apparent simplicity, Meng Keo did not expect that he would face a notable challenge in dealing with him. Still, Kin who was determined to take Meng Keo's life. By then, Meng Keo apologized for what happened between them. He took all the blame for it. He already reflected on his mistakes at night and wanted to sincerely apologize to him, but he feared his unparalleled strength and dared not to visit him in person. While Meng Keo was saying all those things, Kin who kept on attacking him and determined that he would never fall for Meng Keo's schemes. He also thought that he was just doing that knowing that Lin Chuan could not come to rescue him since he was busy dealing with his captain. Nevertheless, Meng Keo asked for Kin Hu's forgiveness and pleaded with him to be the bigger person. He also asked him to just sit down and have a sincere conversation instead. He told Kin Hu that he was not afraid to die, but if he was to die, he wanted to die with meaning, he didn't want to end up as a lifeless body in that dark underground. Kin who knew that it was him who fooled him into giving him the crystallized nerve orb of the Golden Spectre, which made people laugh at him for months. So this time, he would never fall for his tricks again, no matter how hard he tried. The ground where Meng Keo was standing shattered after Kin who smashed it. Meng Keo now figured that Kin who was just an idiot. He was simply unreasonable. That means he has no other choice but to fight. All of a sudden, Kin Hu smirked as he sensed that Meng Keo was now ready to fight saying that he would like it better that way. He urged Meng Keo to fight like the Exalta they are to their heart's content. Meanwhile, Meng Keo thudded Kin Hu's hand with his sword. He then called him an idiot. On the other hand, Kin Hu told Meng Keo to stop wasting his time and that he cannot stand cowards like him who are afraid of death and beg for mercy on their knees. He would not be bothered to do anything to him since he was just an ordinary citizen back then. But now that he had become an Exalta, he wanted Meng Keo to fight with him to death. Meng Keo let Kin who call him names whatever he wants and then hint him that there is something fishy going on. 
Nevertheless, Kin who doesn't care if there is something fishy going on or not. He then told him that he has to defeat him first if he wanted to talk. When Mankeo take another step, he realized that there is no ground anymore. He was at the edge of a cliff now. Kin who was just a tough nut to crack. There is nothing he could do to reason with him. Menkeo was worried that he ended up in a dead end. For a moment he stopped and think of another plan. But he was too late, Kin who grabbed his head and aimed for an attack. All of a sudden, Menkeo made himself fall off the cliff purposely dragging Kin who with him. He used his rope tied to Kin who's foot to make him fall with him. Kin who was not expecting him to do this move which made him angrier at him and promised himself that he would make Menkeo pay for it. Mankeo found it incredibly difficult to walk again, nearly all of his bones shattered after his fall from the cliff. He then called Fire Spark to exchange into basic healing. Not long enough, the basic healing started and in just a few minutes it was almost done. Mankeo was bathing in his own blood during the whole process. After a few moments, the healing process was completely done and once again, Mankeo felt alive again. Rapid self-healing requires a lot of energy. On the other hand, Mankeo still had not eaten anything in a while, and he was currently starving at that moment. Fortunately, he remembered that still had the pack given to him by Lin Chuan. He immediately opened the bag, he retrieved a vial containing a solution that might suffice his hunger. Without a moment's delay, he drank it immediately, hoping to alleviate the hunger that gnawed at him. Finally, he feels a lot better after consuming the solution. He was amazed by how prepared Lin Chuan was for having compressed food and other survival supplies at the ready. He could not stop himself from worrying about the situation up there and whether Lin Chuan and the others were okay. As for the idiot Kin who, he remembers him holding on to his chain blade when they fell. He wondered whether he survived or not. All of a sudden, he heard Kin who calling him to come out. Menkeo thinks that Kin who must use all his inner energy that should have been for his brain for his muscles instead. Kin who persistently called out Meng Keo's name, leaving Meng Keo puzzled about how Kin who appeared unharmed when he himself had to resort to using Fire Spark to heal himself. For a moment Meng Keo was confident that Kin who would never be able to find him because of the geothermal fluid, but he remembered that the Crimson Inferno was still chained to his leg. He figured that all he had to do was follow the chain to find him. Faced with this realization, Meng Keo had no alternative but to flee to keep Kin Hu from finding him. However, Kin Hu had already found him. Luckily, Meng Keo was able to dodge him just in time. Kin Hu's attacks are too powerful for him, now which left him no other choice but to hide. Out of nowhere, Meng Keo's head eventually started hurting. In his head, he saw his past life talking with another man about death stealth and guile thrust. Those are two of the most essential techniques to ensure a mission goes smoothly. The technique combines various secret arts and it allows anyone to suppress all physiological activities to a minimum while allowing him to fight like a cold-blooded stable killing machine. Back to reality, Meng Keo unlocked the novice rank of death stealth with a 9% proficiency level. He then retrieved another vial containing a purple solution. Simultaneously, he beseeched Fire Spark to enhance death stealth. Without much care, he consumed the contents of the vial, breaking the mouth of it in the process. Now the death stealth has been successfully upgraded to the intermediate rank with 1% proficiency at the moment. On the other hand, Meng Keo seemed a little bit lunatic. Meanwhile, Kin who was wondering what kind of nasty stuff Meng Keo used to make his wound continue bleeding even after a long period of time. He also was wondering whether he killed him with his strike because he could vaguely sense his presence just a few minutes earlier, but then he was completely gone now. While grappling with the turmoil in his mind, he suddenly lifted his gaze which made the furrowed lines on his face deepen into a frown. He just realized the immense height from which he had fallen with Meng Keo, causing his anger toward him to intensify. All of a sudden, he saw something that resembled Meng Keo and immediately thought that it was really him. He swiftly aimed his sword, thrusting it towards Meng Keo, only to find that Meng Keo was not there. The sound produced by the sword's strike further confirmed that it was not him. It was an ex-beast. The level 2 super beast branch toothed boa eventually showed its full body after Kin who pulled his sword and let out some hisses to scare him off. In an unexpected turn of events, the branch toothed boa suddenly bit Kin who on his shoulder. Kin who was unable to evade the ex-beast's attack. 
In return, Hen swiftly sliced the creature into pieces even as its mouth remained clamped onto his shoulder. Despite losing an eye to the branch-toothed boa, which impressed him since it was only a level 2 super beast, Kin who emerged victorious, ultimately slaying the formidable ex-beast. However, any sense of victory quickly dissipated as he realized that the branch-toothed boa he had slain was not alone. Actually, he had just walked into a branch-toothed boa nest. Meanwhile, Menkeo, who was just lurking around, could not believe how foolish Kin who was for using his energy flame recklessly in a place that has such a complex ecosystem. Aside from the fact that he hurt Kin whose leg, he also fell off the cliff with him and lost an eye due to his stupidity when he went against a level 2 star branch toothed boa. Because of these, Menkeo calculated that he could now only use 30% of his total strength. Now, he had a whole group of Xpeas to go against with. Unfortunately, Kin who was bitten by two branch toothed boas simultaneously on his back, which caused him so much pain. On the other hand, Mankeo thinks that going against a group of branch toothed boas is no different from seeking death. Clearly, he would not be able to survive battling with them. Despite facing an overwhelming number of enemies, Kin who displayed no sign of worry or fear. Relying solely on his strength and unwavering fighting spirit, he systematically tore the creatures apart one by one. Even as some of the X-Beasts managed to bite Kin who, he refused to surrender, relentlessly tearing them apart despite the wounds he endured. Meanwhile, Mankeo was feeling happy because he thought he would save a lot of energy if he let those branch-toothed boas take care of Kin who for him. All of a sudden, his head started hurting again. He saw in his head himself arguing with another man about eliminating unnecessary emotions and distractions and transforming themselves into dependable and committed killing machines. The man did not agree with him, but he kept on insisting that they needed to put aside all their prejudices when facing the X-Beasts. However, Mankeo was resolute in not repeating the same mistake again. He was determined not to let himself become a cold-blooded bastard. He then rushed towards Kin Hu. He stepped onto the battlefield, prepared for his enemies, and now he was willing to fight on their side. Kin who was surprised that Mankeo finally showed himself. At first, he thinks that Mankeo was just afraid that he could not take on those monsters alone if he died battling with them was the reason why Mankeo suddenly went out of hiding. However, Mankeo explained that it was just because his stealth skills were not good enough. He was afraid that the beasts he attracted would discover him anyway. Nevertheless, Kin who believed that Menkeo was merely attempting to gain his favor, a tactic he was determined not to succumb to. Eventually, Kin whose anger towards Menkeo intensified when he sarcastically commended him for being wise that he would never be fooled by him in any case. Kin who was determined not to let Menkeo get away after the mockery. But Menkeo could not care less, he even mocked him again because he now can recognize a mockery. Both of them stood amidst the boas, their swords interlocked as they crossed blades against each other, as if they were going to end each other. All of a sudden, both of them simultaneously launched their attacks eager to end their enemies. They then sliced through the boas one by one. In a matter of a few minutes, they had already killed a significant number of X-Beasts because of working together. After killing too many branch-toothed boas, the other rest eventually retreated which left them in wonder. Mankeo then threatened to kill Kin who if he ever called him a bastard again. On the other hand, Kin who remained indifferent to Mankeo's threats. He asserted that he would call him whatever he wanted. Shortly after, Mankeo asked Kin who whether he preferred to continue their fight or to call a truce and rest over the rocks for a bit to stop worrying about sudden attacks. Kin who responded that Mankeo's group was the first to attack them but now they were attempting to flip the situation and portray themselves as the good guys. Kin Hu's revelation didn't truly shock Mankeo, because he had always harbored a suspicion that Kin Hu's group might also face attacks. Mankeo recounted the various attacks perpetrated by their group, from sending a spy to the bombings, but Kin Hu simply suggested that they might have been manipulated by Ness, LV. Kin who then tossed the map they had which includes the exit routes and demonstrated that they wouldn't stoop to stealing their map because theirs was better. Upon inspecting the map, Menkeo realized that Kin whose group had not entered through the underground stream. Kin who told him that he would have preferred the underground stream he was talking about rather than squeezing through the narrow escape routes which made Menkaho more curious. 
Kin who then explained the reason why he said that which was because they had arrived at the bottom of the deluge mountain range, which is the lair of many calamity beasts. Even if they climb to the surface, the calamity beasts will trample them to death long before that. After explaining, Kin who told Meng Keo to upload the data of those routes on his tactical watch so that he could have access to more escape routes in case of an emergency. In gratitude, Meng Keo handed Kin who a first aid spray. Kin who acknowledged the gesture, expressing that he owed Meng Keo one for the help. Now it is clear that Kin whose group did not steal their map, but Meng Keo's team still had a spy who defected from their team, and they were ambushed. Upon hearing this, Kin who speculated that there might be someone manipulating events and creating conflict between the two teams. Someone within their respective teams is trying to make them fight each other. Meng Keo already has a culprit on his mind based on the events, but he was still not sure about it. Even without saying a word, Kin who sensed from Meng Keo's expression that he suspected Lin Xuan might be the culprit behind all the manipulation. As they conversed and took a break, an explosion resonated from the top of the cliff. Debris rained down from the cliff, and several individuals were also seen plummeting from the top. Meng Keo immediately thinks that they have to go up there to stop the meaningless fight, but Kin who discourages him from doing so because there is a powerful magnetic force up there. Meng Keo's eyes widened as a sudden realization struck him. Kin whose mention of the powerful magnetic field interference caused him to come up with an idea. Meng Keo was so happy that he even called Kin who a genius seriously this time. He then asked for some time to mitigate the magnetic energy interference effect. Kin who on the other hand was puzzled about Meng Keo's reaction after he belittled him that he could not do anything to help them up there. Meng Keo and Kin who are now filled with excitement as they work together on their new plan. For a moment, Meng Keo seemed to have been carefully studying the bodies of the branch-toothed boas they killed earlier while Kin who was just lying low. Meng Keo slit the outer skin of the boa and saw the inside of it. At this moment, it seemed like Meng Keo was trying to separate the outer skin of the boa from its flesh. He then pulled out a part of its flesh with a knife and closely examined it. While marveling at Meng Keo's impressive harvesting skills, Kin who couldn't help but admire Meng Keo's ability to efficiently harvest the monster using just a single knife. Without them knowing, a group of branch-toothed boas had been silently lurking in the shadows, patiently waiting for the opportune moment to launch a surprise attack. Seizing the opportunity while Meng Keo was best at harvesting monsters, the branch-toothed boas struck with sudden and coordinated attacks. Seizing the opportunity while Meng Keo was engrossed in harvesting monsters, the branch-toothed boas struck with sudden and coordinated attacks. Kin, who was overflowing with powers making the other boas, seemed to understand the consequences of challenging him. So instead of pursuing their attack, they retreated swiftly. Out of nowhere, just after the boas escaped, a removed skin of boa was thrown towards Kin, who which awkwardly landed directly onto his face as if intentionally placed. Kin who argued with Meng Keo about using the skin of the boa as their armor since the skin itself was too soft and flabby. It could even be cut by just using a knife. Meng Keo agreed with him that it would not serve as a good shield, but the skin could weaken the magnetic interference which was proved by Kin who after he wore the skin over his body. All of a sudden, Meng Keo brought out a thing that eventually turned into a slime-like glue. He then started rubbing it to the piece of the branch-toothed boa which had some sharp horns on it. Meng Keo explained to the curious kin who that he was using the hardened slime of petrification grass. It hardens with air but softens when exposed to acids. He noticed some people were using it, so he grabbed some of it for future usage at times like this. Kin who was amazed by how many tricks Meng Keo had. Suddenly, another person plummeted from the cliff, catching the attention of Meng Keo and Kin Hu. Kin Hu recognized the falling individual as Shan Yulong's bodyguard. He pondered whether the person had met their demise during the descent. Meng Keo hurriedly approached the man and seized his equipment. Kin Hu was taken aback and urged Meng Keo to cease his actions, insisting on showing respect for the deceased. But Meng Keo thinks it is better to pool all the available resources and strengthen their combat powers now that there is chaos up there. Kin Hu then suggested that they have to find a way to end the chaos above, while Meng Keo found a gun which he thought was a self-destructing rifle. Kin Hu quickly urged Meng Keo to lower the rifle. 
The bullet in his hand might be a crystallized organ of the apocalyptic threat or an ancient stone fragment from the distant past, containing a power capable of destroying the world. When the bullet is fired, it will unleash magnetic spiritual energy that has a detonation range farther than the ordinary crystal bullets which would affect the brain of whoever fired it. Menkeo then told him that he never intended to use the weapon but only to scare people. I also gave Kin Hu a weapon that he might use. Kin Hu immediately tried the weapon on as Menkeo told him that he was hoping that they would have a chance to settle their scores outside that place. But with both Yan Liu Wu and Ning families supporting Menkeo, Kin who thinks it is foolish if he would still think of settling things with him in particular. They then continued their journey to the top of the cliff. While climbing the wall, Kin who asked Meng Keo if he was really scared the first time he saw him. All of a sudden Meng Keo felt something that alarmed the both of them. Feeling a sense of foreboding, Meng Keo sensed that the troubles they had faced so far might only be the beginning of a series of unfortunate events. As the debris started falling from the wall once again, Kin Hu urged Meng Keo to hold on to the rock wall. Kin Hu thought that those guys up, they were doing their best to the point that they even smashed the rock wall, but Meng Keo told him it was self-motivation. Meng Keo told him that it was just some minor disturbances in the rock formation. On the other hand, Kin Hu wondered what might the main formation look like. When self-motivation reaches its limits, it would develop into uncontrollable psychological madness. He doesn't want to talk about destroying the underground cave because a lot will be affected by it. The weight of Meng Keo's revelations left Kin Hu in despair, and all that escaped his lips were curses, reflecting the gravity of the situation. Kin Hu then climbs the rock well quicker this time and urges Meng Keo to keep up with his speed. Meng Keo wondered why Kin Hu suddenly accelerated. He wondered why Kin Hu was too affected by what he said. Maybe he had an innate talent for sensing danger. In his past life, Meng Keo was severely injured and hospitalized by Zuo Heorin. After getting out of the hospital, he went with his father to the resource retrieval company Jirshin to become a harvester. It was not until his father was injured that they had a legal dispute with Jirshin, including winning the lawsuit and demanding money from him later. As he watched Kin who rushed towards the top of the cliff, Meng Keo finally figured that in his past life, Kin who might be one of the few or even the only one to survive this conspiracy. The current Kin who is not as aggressive as he was in his previous life. He is also not the deputy of the Wild Dagger Marshal team. Meng Keo wonders if this has led to a radical change in him. In Meng Keo's head, he remembered the people arguing about going into the wilderness to chase and kill the white ghost. Remembering this made Meng Keo what white ghost means or what it is. Bai Jiakao told the man that Kin who was just a five-star transcendent awakener. On the other hand, the white ghost is one of the nine great demons, so it is impossible for him to kill the white ghost. She then crumpled the document she had been holding, and she tears due to her anger towards the people from the survival committee. She told them that those people were just a bunch of useless individuals who could not protect the interests of ordinary people like them as she swore not to rely on them ever again. Back to reality, Meng Keo shook his head frantically, attempting to retrieve the memories that he could not bring himself to remember. Due to this, Kin who threw a rock at his head to snap him back to consciousness. Then he asked Meng Keo what was bothering him and what made him act that way. Meng Keo then told him that he was thinking of a way to resolve the situation in the most accurate and safe way, but then he interrupted him by throwing a stone on his head. Kin Hu, skeptical of Meng Keo's effectiveness in solving any problem above, feels that he must be the one to step in and handle the situation appropriately. Meng Keo saw Kin who was a three-star awakener in the heavenly realm, but in his memories, he could actually ascend to the transcendence realm and reach level five-star spiritual insight. He couldn't help but believe that he might stumble upon something unexpected by chance. He was also happy that he had talked with Kin Hu earlier and repaired some aspects of their relationship. If the worst case happens, he could use his good luck and escape with him. Upon reaching the cliff's summit, they carefully inserted a tool through a rock crevice, hoping to catch a glimpse inside the cave and discover any hidden surprises. The gadget descended gradually into the crevices. Eventually, the camera-equipped device reached the cave's interior, allowing Meng Keo and Kin Hu to witness its secrets unfold before their eyes. Anxiously, Kin Hu asked Meng Keo what he saw inside as he peered into the device. As he gazed at the device, Meng Keo's face suddenly changed, 
causing Kin Hu to believe that he had encountered something dreadful within. Kin Hu swiftly grabbed the device from Meng Keo, eager to witness for himself what had prompted such a sudden change in expression. Peering through the lenses, the sight of lifeless bodies covered with blood unfolded before Kin Hu's eyes, revealing a chilling and unsettling scene. Kin Hu felt a wave of sadness as he witnessed the lifeless members of the Wild Dagger Marshal team, including their leader owed him a meal after losing on the bet he made with him. Meanwhile, Meng Keo pondered whether any surviving Heavenly Realm experts remained, a question lingering in his mind amid the unfolding scene. Peeking into the camera, they witnessed another explosion and heard a man belittling another, addressing him as if he were nothing more than a mere dog. Meng Keo looked at the camera closely, trying to discern the identities of the speaker and the person being addressed. In a brief moment, his eyes caught sight of Shen Yulong, who carried the helpless Lin Chuan on his side, which made him wonder what must be really happening. He couldn't bring himself to believe that the person he looked up to, Lin Chuan, was up there, appearing so helpless and vulnerable. Eventually, Shen Yulong called out for Miss Sia to emerge, mocking her for being scared now that her dog, Lin Chuan, couldn't come to her aid. Shen Yulong issued a final call for Miss Sia to come out, warning that if she didn't, she would have to bid farewell to her beloved dog, a threat that made Meng Keo agitated. Growing desperate, he contemplated intervening in their fight, willing to go inside and meddle to save them all from the escalating conflict. However, Kin Hu remained wise, restraining Meng Keo from acting on his emotions and impulsive instincts. Meng Keo quickly grasped Kin Hu's message and made an effort to calm himself down, understanding the need for restraint in a tense situation. He repeated the words to himself, whispering, I need to calm down, again and again, trying to regain control of his emotions. Nevertheless, Meng Keo still thinks that Lin Jai is the planner behind this conflict. He could not have died so easily at the hands of Shen Yulong, a mere teenager from a wealthy family. He thinks that he definitely still has a trick up his sleeve. On the other hand, Kin who was wondering where Meng Keo learned his strange movements. If he was not by his side, he would not even feel his vital signs. Within the cave, Shen Yulong called out to Miss Sia once more, attempting to instill fear and uncertainty in her with his persistent summons. As Shen Yulong's anger intensified since Miss Sia still had not shown herself, he grew more furious, leading him to forcefully throw Lin Chuan onto a pile of rocks. It turned out that Miss Sia had been hiding behind a rock, witnessing Lin Chuan's suffering. Realizing the situation wasn't improving, she understood the gravity of the circumstances. Suddenly, she freed herself from hiding and rushed towards Lin Chuan, driven by a surge of determination to help him. Just in time, before Lin Chuan could crash into a rock, she covered him with her body, shielding him from the impending impact. The impact was severe as both of them crashed, but miraculously, they emerged unharmed and safe from the ordeal. Unable to control himself, Shen Yulong couldn't help but cringe at the scene he just witnessed, dismissing it as what he sarcastically referred to as LV family drama. He then began channeling his powers, preparing for the next phase of the unfolding confrontation. He then told Miss Sia that her dog would not have fallen because of his flying star blade treasure if she had just equipped her dog with better equipment. Unfortunately, Shen Yulong told Miss Sia that there is no place for wishes now. With slow and deliberate steps, he proceeded to approach Miss Sia and Lin Chuan, who were still on the ground. Miss Sia then attempted to persuade him, urging that he had the power to undo what he was about to do and reconsider. However, Shen Yulong remained determined not to change his stance, fueled by the belief that he held the upper hand, with the coveted ruby jade vein right within his reach. Miss Sia gazed at Lin Chuan, who remained unconscious. Leaving Lin Chuan behind, she bravely stepped forward to confront Shen Yulong to face the unfolding challenges head-on. Repeating her plea, she implored Shen Yulong to halt his actions while there was still time, summoning her own power in a determined effort to make a stand. Her aura overflowed as if casting a mystical spell, beckoning the earth to heed her command and follow her lead. Suddenly, the ground beneath Shen Yulong rose abruptly, piercing him on both sides and catching him off guard, causing him to feel intense pain. Shen Yulong couldn't believe that Miss Sia had the ability to control the earth and launch a surprise attack, leaving him astonished and vulnerable. Shen Yulong thought that her job was to provide support to her people, he could not believe that she had been hiding her trump card in her possession the whole time. 
Enraged by LV Sia and Lin Chuen's actions, Shen Yulong unleashed his formidable power, sending his flying star blade treasure hurtling toward them. Anticipating Shen Yulong's ruthless nature, LV Sia braced herself for the inevitable harm he would inflict without remorse. In a defensive move, she swiftly summoned her power, erecting a barrier spell around her while also seizing control of Shen Yulong's blades. Shen Yulong's blades scattered in all directions, but nothing went straight towards LV Sia. Shielding herself successfully from Shen Yulong's assault, LV Sia now had the opportunity to counterattack. Miss LV Sia seized control of the rocks once again, determined to make Shen Yulong pay for all his misdeeds. Upon facing the ceiling, Shen Yulong was met with the sight of massive rocks descending upon him. Regrettably, Shen Yulong had no time to escape the impending shower of rocks. All he could do was cover his head and brace for the inevitable. With the final collapse of rocks, Shen Yulong vanished from sight, concealed by the thick smoke resulting from the ceiling's collapse. In the aftermath, it became clear that Shen Yulong had survived the collapse, but he found himself trapped and immobilized under the weight of the rocks. Enraged by the situation, Shen Yulong harbored intense anger towards LV Sia for orchestrating the collapse that left him trapped and powerless. He was also furious about the fact that Miss Sia hid her true nature of being a fighter, pretending to be an ordinary prospector, and only showed it when the victory was assured. With a sudden motion, Miss LV directed her index finger toward Shen Yulong, unleashing yet another powerful attack. With that simple gesture, Miss Sia was able to make the rock with a pointed end pierced through Shen Yulong's stomach, leaving him writhing in pain and agony. Shen Yulong fell to his knees, writhing in pain, while Miss Sia revealed that it was indeed her trump card. She naturally waits until the last minute to ensure that no variables remain before using them. Meng Keo and Kin, who were shocked by the revelation, realizing that the so-called elites could be so cruel and ruthless, each one worse than the last one. Meng Keo then realized that Miss Sia was truly a poisonous snake since she just left everyone out to fight their enemies by themselves to death when she herself was actually a fighter. Miss Sia was startled when she heard a cough coming from where she had left Lin Chuan to rest. Worried, she rushed toward Lin Chuan to find out what was wrong with him. She swiftly handed Lin Chuan a serum and assisted him as he took it. The serum promised to accelerate his healing process. Miss Sia thinks that Lin Chuan might not understand her reasons for concealing her true abilities. Nevertheless, she explained to him that she had just found out she could gain control of the rocks. Lin Chuan smiled at her and asked her not to explain herself further, assuring her that he already believed her. Lin Chuan stood up, and Miss Sia, concerned about his not fully healed wounds, urged him not to exert too much pressure on himself. However, Lin Chuan insisted on standing up. He went straight towards Shen Yulong, who mocked him for being a truly loyal dog to Miss Sia. Ignoring Shen Yulong's mockery, Lin Chuan approached him with determination, ready to confront the taunts and defend his loyalty to Miss Sia. As Lin Chuan closed in, Shen Yulong grew increasingly nervous, realizing that Lin Chuan could still move despite his injuries. Meng Keo couldn't fathom how Lin Chuan recovered so rapidly, considering even the most advanced genetic medicine and high-energy treatments hadn't achieved such results. In a swift motion, Lin Chuan seized Shen Yulong by the neck, sending a shiver of fear through him. With a smirk, Lin Chuan sarcastically asked Shen Yulong who was the human, and who was the dog now at that very moment. Shen Yulong, overcome with emotion, began weeping and pleaded with Lin Chuan not to end his life. He was so determined to beg him that he even barked like a dog to plead with Lin Chuan. In tears, Shen Yulong offered Miss Sia the radiant red jade veins, confessing that it was all hers now as he pleaded for mercy from Lin Chuan. He told her that he would never argue about it again for the rest of his life. Overwhelmed with fear, Shen Yulong became so nervous that he started to pee his pants in front of them. Unexpectedly, Miss Sia asked Lin Chuan to release Shen Yulong. Lin Chuan's eyes widened, seemingly in disbelief at what Miss Sia had just ordered him to do. Unable to believe Miss Sia's request, Lin Chuan asked her to repeat herself, and she did. She insisted on sparing Shen Yulong's life, not wanting him to die there. Miss Sia revealed her plan. She intended to bring Shen Yulong to the Tribulation Committee, exposing his malicious actions of attacking fellow humans underground. Once again, Lin Chuan widened his eyes in surprise after hearing Miss Sia's unexpected plan. Eventually, he let out a sound that seemed to be a laugh, 
but he was controlling himself not to burst into laughter yet. In the end, he couldn't hold back his laughter any longer and burst into laughter, the sound echoing like he had lost his sanity. Miss Sia couldn't comprehend why he was suddenly laughing, puzzled by the unexpected outburst. Lin Chuan then explained that he was laughing because, in his analogy, demonic pigs always fought to the death, while the nine-headed dragon stayed above, allowing them to spare each other's lives. Miss Sia wasn't pleased with his statement. In fact, it angered her. Meanwhile, Lin Chuan asked her if she had always just considered him as her guard dog. Lin Chuan continued his speech, pointing out to Miss Sia that she never refuted Shen Yulong despite his insults about Lin Chuan being her loyal dog. He even added that during their school days, she stayed silent despite her classmates calling him her family's servant. He then asked her if she ever defended him. Miss Sia went closer to Lin Chuan and told him that she did defend him. As she held his hand to calm him down, she told him that was the reason why she fought with them back then. She asserted to them that Lin Chuan belonged to her, assuring everyone that she would always have his back. All of a sudden, Shen Yulong spoke up and testified that Miss Sia had indeed spoken those words back, then which seemed to please Lin Chuan. Suddenly, Lin Chuan smacked Shen Yulong's face against the wall beside him after realizing the root of the problem. Miss Sia seemed not to understand a single thing from beginning to end. Lin Chuan pointed out to her that she didn't own him. He belonged only to himself. Nevertheless, Miss Sia still tried to calm Lin Chuan down, suggesting that he might be thinking that way and acting a little crazy due to the effects of geomagnetic radiation. She eagerly persuaded Lin Chuan to calm down and listen, expressing her wish for him to release Shen Yulong and come back to her side. Miss Sia tried really hard, but Lin Chuan was still letting Shen Yulong go from his grasp. Once again, Miss Sia ordered Lin Chuan to let Shen Yulong, as if she were forcing him to obey her, suggesting that something would happen if he didn't comply. Eventually, she started summoning her power and asked the earth to answer her prayers. As Lin Chuan stood there, the ground beneath him suddenly began to shift. Abruptly, a sharp-edged rock turned and moved directly toward Lin Chuan, causing him to be wounded by its unexpected trajectory. Lin Chuan could not believe that Miss Sia would harm him for the sake of Shen Yulong. He then reassured himself that she was meant to act as she did. After all, they were the same kind, they were both nine-headed diamond dragons. Miss Sia wasn't intending to hurt him, it was simply because she couldn't control the stone snake perfectly. She then begged Lin Chuan to not make her do that again. On the other hand, Shen Yulong started calling everybody crazy. He even called Miss Si a crazy woman who would fight him to the death for that raw vein. Miss Sia then asked Shen Yulong to stop talking nonsense and urged him to admit that he was the one who sent the white-coated prospector who blew out their sight. However, Shen Yulong denied her allegation, insisting that none of his companions wore white clothes. He accused Miss Sia of framing him up. Shen Yulong's revelation left Miss Sia in shock her eyes widening at the unexpected turn of events. She then turned to face Lin Chuan and asked him who really caused the disturbance in the rock wall. Lin Chuan's smirk persisted as Miss Sia attempted to extract answers from him once again. Meng Keo glanced at Kin who, thinking that the evil Lin Chuan now looked uglier than him. He then told him to just be careful not to be discovered by the people above who are all evil. Meanwhile, Shen Yulong told Miss Sia that the matter between her and Lin Chuan was resolved by themselves. And then he quickly ran away from both of them, excluding himself from their drama. He didn't even listen to Miss Sia, who warned him not to go in that direction, as the place was dangerous due to the lava flow. Lin Chuan just watched him walk away. On the other hand, Shen Yulong told her they were in more danger than he was while escaping, feeling ecstasy. All of a sudden, Shen Yulong was caught off guard by something. His head was struck by an unseen force, causing it to almost fall off from his neck. The creature that caused Shen Yulong's demise had a monstrous leg with razor-sharp claws. Kin Hu seemed to know what that creature was. He suspected that it might be the white ghost. Kin Hu's suspicion proved accurate. The creature's jaws remained clamped onto Shen Yulong's neck. Meng Keo, on the other hand, was so surprised that that ghostly three-tailed wolf is the white ghost they were talking about. Meng Keo's head seemed to ache just by hearing the words, White Ghost. White Ghost was one of the nine demon beasts. It was able to manipulate the mind of his prey, a terrifying existence. It deeply understands human civilization and can transform a monster horde with its power into the ultimate civilization of monsters, 
a true monster. On the other hand, Miss Sia was asking herself whether Lin Chuan's mind was affected by the white ghost because it seemed like it was. Finally, she figured out that all this time, Lin Chuan was actually the one manipulating the situation behind the scenes. With that realization, Miss Sia gained the ability to cast a spell that gave life to a stone snake, which immediately rushed toward the white ghost. However, the white ghost managed to dodge Miss Sia's attack by effortlessly jumping over the stone snake. It then launched a counterattack on Miss Sia, jumping towards her and sending her flying. She was flung away by the force of the impact. The white ghost, eager to kill immediately, was halted by Lin Chuan. They couldn't kill her yet, moreover, they still needed her to locate the radiant red jade vein. Lin Chuan, with a calm demeanor, inquired if Miss Sia was interested in hearing the story of both him and the white ghost before addressing any further matters. Miss Sia, on the ground and seemingly left with no other choice, conceded, allowing Lin Chuan to go ahead with the storytelling. He asked he if she still remembers the first mission he did because it all started there. Lin Chuan was escorting her cousin Lu Cillian to the depths of the wilderness for training. That was where he met Zio Bai, the white ghost. At that time, Lin Chuan was ordered to go deeper inside the Kinshin group. And to please her, her father offered Lin Chuan to her group as if he were a gift to her. He then ordered Lin Chuan to protect Lu Cyan, Sia's cousin, during the whole process. Lin Chuan agreed immediately with his order. Lu Cillian smirked a little before asking him if he was Sia's dog, commenting that he didn't look bad, but she wondered how useful he actually was. Lin Chuan then assured her that he would just do as he was ordered, which was to protect her. However, it seemed like Lu Cillian had no belief that Lin Chuan could actually protect her. She then told Lin Chuan that all he needed to do was to keep her satisfied, just like a real dog does, and she would make her father deal with this old man, Lu Fengwei. Lin Chuan was aware that except for Miss Sia, no one in the family treated him as a human. He was just a gift, he needed to know that. To reach his dream, he would bear all the embarrassment as long as she did not see it. However, he did not expect that something big would happen when he faced a radiant feather blue dragon one night. Lucillian was even mocking him about his abilities while he was struggling to deal with the monster alone. Equipped with mediocre gear, Lin Chuan faced an added challenge in his battle against the dragon, intensifying the struggle he already confronted. Nevertheless, he persevered, and in the end, Lin Chuan managed to defeat the radiant feather blue dragon all by himself, extracting a blue crystal from its defeated form. Lin Chuan was obviously exhausted from battling the dragon as he walked towards Lu Cillian, holding the crystal. It was the first time he got the blue agate crystal. Although it looked like a common material that could be bought by rich kids with some pocket money, for him, it was a rare material that could make him advance in his cultivation. The other member of Lu Cillian's team asked him why he hadn't given the crystal to the miss yet, suspecting that he was thinking of taking it for himself. The other one argued that he should give the crystal to Lu Cillian because she was their leader. However, Lin Chu encountered, arguing that he defeated the monster alone. Then Lu Cillian suddenly spoke amidst the argument, accusing him of planning to keep the crystal for himself. Suddenly, Lin Chuan started begging her, pleading to let him have the low-grade crystal because it was important to him. Lu Cillian agreed, telling him that she wouldn't be bothered with that junk, but she was just testing his loyalty to the Lu family. His behavior revealed that he was not entirely loyal to her family, disappointing her greatly. She then threatened Lin Chuan, stating that she would inform Lu Fangui about his behavior and ensure he was disciplined accordingly. She even dared to involve Lu Xia, which angered him. Due to a sudden rush of anger, he abruptly slapped her in the face, telling her that she could go to hell. At that moment, his mind went blank and all he could think was killing Lu Cillian. Unfortunately, he forgot that that girl had four other dogs with her, her true loyal dogs. As a result, Lin Chuan was beaten by them all. He thought they would just give him a lesson after all. They were all humans, but apparently he was wrong. The dogs dragged him somewhere after he became helpless due to the beating. After a few days, he was speculating on the cliff and witnessed a fierce battle between Golden Sun Lions and Mirage Wolves. He immediately informed Lu Cillian about this. However, instead of being grateful for the information, Lu Cillian decided to push Lin Chuan down the cliff, wishing him to join the fierce fight beneath. At that moment, as he was falling down the cliff, Lin Chuan realized that Lu Cillian was indeed a heartless person. 
Lucilian even laughed at him and told him that anyone who offended her had one way in front of them, which was death. Lucilian pushed Lin Chuan off the cliff, expecting that he would fall to death or that those monsters would tear him apart. Unfortunately for her, her expectations were not met. The sudden growth of plants slowed his fall. Driven by the instinct for survival, he grabbed the plants and rolled over the cave. Deep inside that cave, he met Zio Bai. The monster was currently dealing with two other monsters when he came into the cave. Zio Bai was just as shocked as Lin Chuan himself by Lin Chuan's presence inside the cave. In order to survive, he had to join Zio Bai and kill the two golden sun lions. In a coordinated effort, Lin Chuan and the white ghost Zio Bai joined forces to rapidly bring down the two golden sun lions. Those who wanted to kill Lin Chuan were those who claimed to belong to his kind. And those who wanted the white ghost are the ones with the same kind. Lin Chuan then thinks that maybe they were the ones who should be the real kind. So, neither she nor he should care about that monster war. They need to fight just for themselves now, for the real kind. And so he contemplated that maybe it was fate. When they got out of the cave, they saw Lu Cillian's group. They faced the terrifying monster called the Six-Armed Devil, and some of them got some serious wounds and were forced to retreat. Very unexpectedly, Lin Chuan, who was at the edge of the cliff, suddenly stomped his feet to dislodge a rock from where he was standing. Lu Cillian and her group were immediately alerted when they heard the sound, obviously frightened by it. Lu Cillian then looked up, and just as she turned her head, the rocks were already very close to them. Nevertheless, she still had time to order her group about the impending danger. But it seemed like it was too late. A lot of her men were being hurled in every direction due to the impact revealing them from their hiding from the six-armed devil who was looking for them. Lin Chuan pondered that he had just paid her for pushing him off the cliff by pushing the huge rock where she was hiding, which was his depiction of justice. They got ripped apart by the monster, and that was why he thought that if they wanted revenge, they should find it instead. In the present, Lin Chuan couldn't help but burst into laughter as he reminisced about the chaotic moment with Miss Sia's cousin. Miss Sia finally realized that all Lin Chuan wanted was revenge on Lu Cillian. Everything that had happened was part of his plan, and he was the one who had orchestrated the murders of all those people. Lin Chuan affirmed her insight, admitting she was right, but emphasized that his targets were not ordinary people. Rather, they were individuals of wealth and influence like her. He used to test them to see if they could control their greed for treasures. Unfortunately, none of them passed the test when it came to what they considered treasures. Some even attempted to ambush him first. Miss Sia also discerned that the conflict between her group and Shen Yulong's was another test strategically set by Lin Chuan. However, Lin Chuan told her that it was neither him nor Zio Bai who killed all those bodies around the area. Instead, it was their greed, selfishness, and fear that led to the deaths. He emphasized to Miss Sia that the true monsters reside within the hearts of humans. Miss Sia was disappointed. She never thought that Lin Chuan could be this ruthless and devoid of any moral limits. But he reminded her that she was actually warned by Meng Keo. Unfortunately, she did not listen to his advice. Lin Chuan then told Miss Sia that she caused their deaths, and they also caused their own demise. Kin Hu, on the other hand, wondered how Meng Keo could give such advice about innocence and kindness as Lin Chuan mentioned, given what he experienced with the boy. He knew she saw him as a demon with a human face, but he wanted her to believe that he didn't want to hurt her if she just gave up the red jade vein which is important for his dream. However, Miss Sia argued that he could still achieve his dream of rebuilding the Fuchai Street School with her. She insisted that together, they could make it even more advanced. But Lin Chuan doesn't see it the way Miss Sia does. He actually wants the poor kids of the Dragon City to enjoy the same educational resources as the rich kids do. He was fighting for them to have equal access to training, cultivation materials, and the same campus, starting from the same point as the privileged students. He longed for a day when equality prevailed, with people freely sharing without any restrictions or conditions. All of a sudden, Meng Keo was tearing up, hearing Lin Chuan's principles, proving that it was not that simple. Kin who on the other hand made him choose whose side is he, noble or bastard. Meng Keo undoubtedly chose his master, Kin Hu, without a doubt and with a smile on his face. Lin Chuan wanted to start a revolution and change everything, which is why he needed unparalleled power. He then urged Miss Sia to look for the red jade vein with him. 
However, Miss Sia vehemently opposed the idea of assisting him in the search for the Red Jade Vein, knowing that it would only make things worse as it was then. Lin Chuan then offered her the chance to take complete control of the Dragon City, as long as she was willing to help him attain absolute power and let Xiao Bai become the King of Monsters. Together, the three of them could potentially conquer the other world by triumphing over the Beast Mountain, presenting a promising future ahead. Lin Chuan knew that Sia had always loved him, and he reciprocated those feelings. However, the timing was never favorable, which is why he chose to hide his emotions. Miss Sia seemed amused by this revelation, telling him that she finally understood why he used to share the bed with Mang Keo and ignored her hints all this time. Kin Hu playfully teased Mang Keo, expressing disgust, but Mang Keo defended their actions, emphasizing that they were merely discussing martial arts and practicing sword techniques. Unfortunately, Kin Hu teased Mang Keo even more when he told him they were just practicing sword techniques, expressing what it really meant, and assured him he would never tell anyone. Kin Hu continued to playfully tease Mang Keo, suggesting that their discussion on sword techniques would be the topic of their interviews once they escaped the place. Lin Chuan suddenly told Miss Sia to cut the nonsense and wanted her to answer if she would help him or not. Miss Sia firmly stated that she would definitely not help him. He grew angrier when she told him he wouldn't understand because they were really not of the same kind. Somebody like him, self-deprecating and arrogant, would never comprehend their perspective. Lin Chuan was left speechless, taken aback by Miss Sia's words. Lin Chuan felt a sharp pain, shaking his head, but then he looked at Miss Sia and simply said he didn't care and didn't need to understand because she would end up helping him anyway. Confused by Lin Chuan's words, Miss Sia found herself at a loss, but her attention swiftly shifted when she spotted the white ghost quietly advancing toward her prone figure. The white ghost locked its gaze onto Miss Sia's eyes, and she too was unwillingly locked into the monster's eyes. Enchanted by the allure of those captivating eyes, Miss Sia found herself irresistibly drawn to their beauty. Recognizing the white ghost's attempt to manipulate Miss Sia, Meng Keo determined that swift action was necessary, resolving to eliminate the threat by killing the monster now. Perplexed, Kin Hu questioned the White Ghost's capacity to control minds, pondering how an entity with the sole power of crafting illusions could exert such influence over people. Meng Keo clarified, revealing that high-level super beasts such as Xiaobai, the White Ghost, wielded multiple abilities, encompassing both the creation of illusions and mind control. Currently, the White Ghost's mind manipulation is relatively weak, while Miss Sia's formidable power appears to resist its influence effectively. In its attempt to brainwash her, the White Ghost would need to expend a substantial amount of its energy, rendering itself vulnerable in the process. With the monster weakened by the energy expenditure, they could execute a decisive strike, leaving only Lin Chuan as the remaining challenge for the trio to confront. Kin, who inquired about their odds of success, prompting Meng Keo to adopt a serious demeanor as he calculated, only to deliver a nonsensical answer of a 100% chance. Dumbfounded by Meng Keo's math skills, Kin Hu jokingly questioned if he had learned math from his P-teacher, to which Meng Keo responded with a chuckle, admitting he might have. Kin Hu, considering their options, proposed abandoning the confrontation and instead escaping to report the crimes to the Exalted Tower, letting the authorities handle the situation. Meng Keo, reflecting on Kin Hu's suggestion, realized that it might be the same strategy that had saved Kin Hu in the past but he remained hesitant, wary of risking the ongoing war on the Northern Front. Feeling the weight of responsibility, Meng Keo stressed the necessity of immediate action, underscoring that the safety of their loved ones and Draken hung in the balance. There was not much time to call for reinforcement, and now he is the only one who can save Draken. Kin who hesitated to embrace Meng Keo's suggestion, but appeared gradually swayed by the persuasive conviction in his words. Ultimately yielding to Meng Keo's unconventional plan, Kin Hu, finding it challenging to resist the persuasive force, inquired about their next course of action. The devised plan entailed Meng Keo aiming the grenade launcher at the White Ghost, while Kin Hu seized the opportunity to spring into action. Surprisingly, Miss Sia appeared aware of their rescue mission. As Meng Keo aimed the launcher, her gestures seemed to convey a plea for him to stand down. Following a brief pause, Miss Sia remained silent, giving the impression that she was portraying a sense of calm, as if signaling that everything was now okay. 
her gaze shifted towards Lin Chuan and told him he was right. She confirmed that the vein's abundance of ruby jade was sufficient for all three. She revealed ambitions to ascend to the highest seat of power in Dynasty with their combined efforts. Both of them were happy, especially Lin Chuan since Miss Sia finally understand that once they complete all of this, they would be the same kind and be together forever. Miss Sia happily embraced Lin Chuan's envisioned future, affirming that she, too, could sense the same promising destiny unfolding before them. Pointing below, Miss Sia indicated the location of the ruby jade vein and urgently urged Lin Chuan to take swift action, fearing that another team might discover it before they did. Agreeing with determination, Lin Chuan swiftly prepared the harness needed for their descent to the ruby jade vein below. Eagerly, Lin Chuan spurred his newly formed team into action, urging them to move swiftly and accomplish their mission. With determination, Miss Sia and Lin Chuan descended the cliff using the prepared harness. The towering height of the cliff rendered Miss Sia and Lin Chuan invisible to anyone looking down, disappearing from view as they descended to the hidden depths below. Conversely, Meng Keo and Kin who ascended above the cliff. Exhausted from the demanding descent, Meng Keo and Kin who found themselves breathless upon reaching the top, gasping for air after the strenuous climb. As Kin who recuperated from exhaustion, he abruptly turned to Meng Keo and posed a sudden question. Curious, Kin who inquired why Meng Keo hadn't pulled the trigger. Meng Keo clarified that Miss Sia was aware of their presence all along, prompting restraint in their approach. Despite Meng Keo's explanation, Kin who struggled to believe the revelation, dismissing it as impossible. Meng Keo urged Kin who to believe, citing Miss Sia's encouragement for Lin Chuan to disclose his vulnerabilities and things that showed what was truly bothering him. Kin who questioned if Meng Keo was suggesting that Miss Sia sought to uncover a weakness in Lin Chuan's mind to free him from the White Ghost's mental control. Affirming Kin Hu's insight, Meng Keo proceeded to elaborate on their predicament, shedding more light on the intricate details of their situation. Below the cliff near the ruby jade vein, numerous diverse beasts inhabited the area. He emphasized that traversing through them would demand a substantial amount of physical strength and energy. The discovery of the ruby jade vein brought a silver lining. The magnetic energy field interference weakened the white ghost's mind control and diminished Lin Chuan's strength offering a strategic advantage. Meng Keo assumed that Miss Sia intended for them to seize the opportunity, recognizing that the circumstances presented a favorable moment to take decisive action. Kin Hu, with a serious demeanor, asked Meng Keo if he genuinely trusted Miss Sia. Meng Keo assured Kin Hu of his trust in Miss Sia, expressing his willingness to collaborate with both him and her to bring a decisive end to the ongoing challenges they faced. After all, Meng Keo was certain Miss Sia did not join forces with Lin Chuan in the past life. Otherwise, she would have not been an unknown person and Lin Chuan would not have met such a tragic fate here. Confused, Kin who sought clarification from Meng Keo, uncertain about the deeper meaning behind his statement. Meng Keo, evading a detailed explanation, cryptically emphasized to Kin who that time was of the essence. Meng Keo urgently instructed Kin who to search for weapons, potions, explosives, mining tools, or any useful resources in their surroundings. Together, they conducted a thorough inspection, diligently searching for the materials they needed. Kin who thought that the White Ghost must be controlling Lin Chuan as he collected a familiar weapon. He said so given his unwavering focus on the Ruby Jade Vein. Otherwise, he would not leave Shen Yulong's incredibly powerful Star Blade Furies. Meng Keo believed they left the weapon behind because they prioritized the necessity for a considerable number of explosives over relying on a specific weapon. After inspecting the packages, Meng Keo discovered that the weapons were still present, but all the crystal bombs were gone, implying that they must have taken those with them. Kin Hu questioned the purpose of the crystal bombs, considering their impracticality for mining the ruby jade vein because it is one of the most unstable crystals among others. Suddenly, the realization dawned on them. The intention behind taking the crystal bombs was to blow up the entire vein. Panicked by the revelation, both Meng Keo and Kin who hastily reacted. Kin who immediately lined up the blades on the floor in front of him. Requesting a brief reprieve, Kin who asked Meng Keo for 10 minutes to mend the Star Blade Furies, having accidentally cut his hand with one of the blades. Assuring Meng Keo that he could restore the weapon's functionality within the given time, he promised to make it usable again. 
Meng Kao agreed, setting a departure time of 10 minutes. While Ken, who was repairing Shen Yulong's Starblade Furies, Meng Kao seized the opportunity to replenish his energy, taking a moment to eat a piece of bread. Recognizing the critical importance of being in peak condition, Meng Kao acknowledged that a decisive battle was imminent. Initiating the process of replenishing his energy and restoring his main meridians, Meng Kao focused on acquiring essential skills, including Mind Breaker and Beast Blood Ignition. Upon completion of the restoration process, Meng Kao experienced a sense of full recovery, his energy now surging and overflowing once more. Realizing the truth, Meng Kao understood that Lin Chuan had packed the package for him as a means of escape, preventing him from witnessing Lin Chuan's vulnerable or ugly side. Devouring the food voraciously, Meng Kao, in his mind, made a silent promise to Lin Chuan that he would bring him back to the right path. Suddenly, a mission presented itself, Slay an infernal beast, promising rewards of 30,000 mep, a connection with a dragon meridian, and the enhancement of any three skills by one level. Ecstatic about the reward, Meng Kao understood the significance of the dragon meridian as the key for an exalta to break through to a higher stage. He then realized that the white ghost currently has only three tails, which mean it is not in its complete form, yet so it is still considered an infernal beast now. That mean that Meng Kao really had a shot on killing that white ghost and freeing his brother Lin Chuan from its mind control. With their equipment prepared, both Meng Kao and Kin who descended down the cliff, ready for the impending challenges ahead. Their descent was swift, and it didn't take them much time to reach the ground below. Upon reaching the ground, Meng Kao immediately noticed the scent of blood in the air. Sensing danger, Meng Kao urged Kin Hu to keep his voice down and stay low, as they cautiously examined the area. Kin Hu, irritated by Meng Kao's instructions, felt angered, believing he knew what he had to do without being told. They discovered numerous carcasses of dead branched toothed boas scattered across the area. Meng Kao approached one of the lifeless bodies and examined its flesh. Kin Hu, on edge, urged Meng Kao to stop dawdling as the geothermal fluid was closing in on them they would certainly lose them if they would not move faster. Ignoring the urgency, Meng Kao persisted in assessing the injuries of the branch-toothed boas, discovering that both Lin Chuan and the white ghost were injured leaving Kin who wonder how does he know. Meng Kao then explained that Lin Chuan, being a perfectionist, typically finishes off his targets with a single, precise strike. However, as the battle prolonged, Lin Chuan's stamina started to diminish, causing a decline in the sharpness and accuracy of his strikes. In the end, Lin Chuan was unable to land a fatal blow with a single strike, and his left shoulder suffered a wound from a branch-toothed boa. Similarly, the White Ghost found itself in a challenging situation, not well suited for prolonged battles. Surrounded by the branch-toothed boas, the White Ghost's stamina dwindled, and eventually, one boa bit its left hind leg. Meng Kao inferred the injury to the white ghost's left hind leg by observing the meat taken from the mouth of the specific boa he was pointing out. After all, the elasticity of the skin varies across different parts of an ex beast's body. Suddenly, Kin Hu's demeanor turned serious, which made Meng Kao ask him what was wrong. Kin Hu suddenly realized the malicious intent of Shen Rongfa in pitting him against Meng Kao. Determined, he vowed to give him a thorough beating if he managed to survive the ordeal. However, Kin Hu swiftly reconsidered, thinking that his wife would be displeased if he carried out the revenge, prompting him to abandon the idea. Kin Hu suggested to Mang Kao that he could ask his father and the other harvesters to deliver the beating on his behalf, providing an outlet for his anger. Mr. Kin Hu continued sharing his rather eccentric revenge plot with Mang Kao, leaving him cringing at the audacity of the plan. After laying out his elaborate revenge plan, Kin who finally asked Meng Kao if he agreed to the proposed scheme. Without hesitation, Meng Kao immediately affirmed his agreement. Now, armed with one more reason to fight, they set their sights on overcoming the white ghost, determined to live on with a smile. The gap in the middle extends all the way down, and there are streaks of red light emerging from inside. There was also faint bloodstain and wolf fur there, Kin who guessed that that must be the way to the main ruby jade vein. However, Meng Kao disagreed with him, prompting him to come and take a look on the path on the left. Turns out that the white ghost used wolf fur and blood stains in an attempt to confuse them, but Miss Sia secretly left some markings on the rock for him, a harvester, to see. 
This revelation affirmed Miss Sia's formidable nature. It hinted that she had engaged in a battle of wits with the white ghost in her past life, although luck had eluded her as she lacked assistance back then. This time, the white ghost would surely face its demise for underestimating the intelligence and determination of humans. Following the markings left by Miss Sia, they skillfully navigated through the terrain, successfully steering clear of potential dangers. Suddenly, both of them witnessed a bright red light emanating from a distance. Alongside the sighting of the bright red light, they felt a potent magnetic interference, a strong indication that they were very close to the ruby jade vein. Kin, who anticipated that it would significantly increase their chances of ascending to the next stage of fighting there. However, Meng Keo requested him to wait a moment first. Prioritizing caution, Meng Keo utilized a device to thoroughly assess their surroundings before deciding to proceed further. Meanwhile, Lin Chuan felt immense joy as they finally discovered the main vein of Ruby Jade while Meng Keo was spying on them using his device. Overwhelmed with joy, he contemplated the promising future this discovery held for the entire younger generation. He even imagined breaking through to the celestial stage and revolutionizing Draken. Contrastingly, Miss Sia's expression remained enigmatic as Lin Chuan envisioned a future where all the kids could compete equally and fairly under the sun's light. He was imagining of saving the Draken city and unite for equality. Repeating the words incessantly, it seemed as if Lin Chuan was on the verge of insanity, fixated on the vision he had envisioned while holding the bomb in his hand. Suddenly, Miss Sia realized that Meng Keo and Ken, who had successfully reached their location. Interrupting Lin Chuan as he planted the bombs, Miss Sia questioned why he used so many explosives when the Ruby Jade Vein couldn't be mined using such methods. Lin Chuan clarified that only by becoming a Celestial Exalted could he change Draken's future, and the Ruby Jade Vein was crucial for his ascension to the Celestial Stage. Attempting to bring Lin Chuan back to his senses, Miss Sia pointedly questioned if he was even aware of what he was doing while holding the crystal bombs in his hands. She told him that the beast never intended to use the ruby jade vein. All it wanted was to completely destroy the place. Miss Sia's revelation angered the white ghost, prompting it to rush towards her in a fit of rage. Caught off guard by the sudden aggression of the beast, Miss Sia found herself unable to react or dodge its impending attack. Suddenly, a splash of blood stained the area, marking the aftermath of the unexpected attack. But the blood was not Miss Sia's, it was from Lin Chuan who took the attack shielding her. Lin Chuan looked at Miss Sia as he bore the pain from the beast's bite. Then he turned to face the white ghost looking disappointed. Blood continued to gush out from Lin Chuan's shoulder after the white ghost released its grip on him. It became evident that Lin Chuan and the white ghost had an agreement not to harm Miss Sia, but the white ghost blatantly violated this pact with its recent actions. Miss Sia, on the other hand, persistently attempted to free Lin Chuan from the white ghost's control, realizing that the beast was merely using him to destroy the vein. Growing angrier, the white ghost refuted Miss Sia's claim, insisting that it wasn't using Lin Chuan as a mere tool. It pointed that Draco's Celestial Fighter and Deluge Mountain Range's Calamity Beasts have to be eliminated to realize Lin Chuan's dream. It appeared that the White Ghost was indeed exerting control over Lin Chuan, compelling him to launch an attack against Miss Sia. However, just before he could lay his hand on her, Lin Chuan abruptly stopped, as if some internal struggle momentarily overcame the White Ghost's control. Lin Chuan seemed to retain a degree of control over himself, as he refrained from harming Miss Sia despite the White Ghost's influence. Suddenly, the beast headbutted Lin Chuan out of its way, displaying a forceful and unexpected action. Then it turned to Miss Sia, telling her she knew nothing. They have to destroy the vein. It is the only way to push Lin Chuan to the top of the world and fulfill his long-standing wish. Amidst the perilous moment of Miss Sia's potential demise, an unexpected attack from an unknown source intervened, preventing the beast from ending her life. As expected, the unexpected attacks originated from Meng Keo and Kin Hu, who had entered the scene to disrupt the White Ghost's lethal intentions toward Miss Sia. Meng Keo urged Kin Hu to restrain Lin Chuan, and Kin Hu immediately agreed, having harbored a desire to confront and beat him up for a long time. At this critical juncture, Meng Keo didn't care about Lin Chuan's ultimate goal. However, he was determined not to let him bring destruction to Draken. Lin Chuan urged Meng Keo not to harm the White Ghost, noticing that Meng Keo had been relentlessly attacking the creature. 
On the contrary, Qin Hu called Lin Chuan's attention, declaring himself as the opponent and wielding Shen Yulong's star blade furies in a confrontational manner. Fueled by Meng Keo's relentless attacks, the White Ghost grew increasingly furious. Meng Keo launched towards the beast, but it had already executed its own attack against him. With a sense of urgency, Miss Sia warned Meng Keo to be cautious and watch out for the White Ghost's illusion attack. Unfortunately, it appeared to be too late, and Meng Keo seemed captivated by the White Ghost's illusion. Meng Keo found himself ensnared within the illusion crafted by the White Ghost exclusively for him. The White Ghost, appearing as if ready to engulf Meng Keo whole, launched itself forward. However, Meng Keo, undeterred and without hesitation, continued to advance. Meng Keo unleashed the hellish descent for his counterattack. Witnessing the intense battle, Miss Sia and Kin, who were overcome with fear, worried that Meng Keo might not survive the encounter with the ferocious beast. There was a silence in the area that seemed to last almost forever. But it did not last long when Meng Keo finally broke the silence, freeing himself from the illusion created by the White Ghost. He struck it with a gun in its right, I wishing for its death. The White Ghost let out a loud, agonizing sound in response to the severe pain caused by Meng Keo's attack. On the other hand, Lin Chuan's right eye also burst out, mirroring the White Ghosts, as if their bodies were magically linked to each other leaving him in shock. Lin Chuan recovered quickly, but still endured the pain in his eyes when Kin who called for his attention, hoping he would duel with him alone while the others fought with the White Ghost. But Lin Chuan did not even look at him which angered Kin who so much. Instead, he rushed towards the White Ghost and urged Meng Keo and Miss Sia to stop attacking it. Meng Keo informed Miss Sia that the White Ghost was not dead yet and urged her to hurry. Miss Sia nodded in understanding, realizing her task was to deliver the final blow to the beast. She then channeled her power and cast a spell, summoning a stone snake with multiple heads and fierce red eyes that rushed immediately toward the White Ghost. The snake simultaneously attacked the helpless White Ghost by biting it, leaving it even more vulnerable. Lin Chuan's world almost crumbled into thin air as he witnessed how the White Ghost suffered from their relentless attacks. Just like what happened earlier, the damage taken by the White Ghost also manifested on Lin Chuan's own body. The White Ghost then collapsed from the damage. It was so weak that its tongue uncontrollably hung out of its mouth while Lin Chuan stared at it in despair. He then placed his forehead against the beast's forehead, asking it not to worry no more. He slowly stood up and promised the beast that he would not falter this time. All of a sudden, Lin Chuan seemed to be absorbing something from the beast. Meng Keo then figured out that the beast was not dead yet and was using the bloodmark Roselle to fuse with Lin Chuan. Miss Sia, on the other hand, was asking him if there was a way for them to stop it. Lin Chuan promised himself as well as the beast that he would realize their dream, and he continued to fuse with the beast. Kin who tried to use his sword to stop Lin Chuan from merging, but Lin Chuan's defenses were too powerful to break. Meng Keo immediately tried to acquire some skills that could be helpful in their current situation. He acquired the Mind Breaker skill and Beast Blood Ignition skill. After doing so, he immediately informed everyone that he had a plan, but he only had one chance to do it properly. However, it seemed like it was too late for them to stop the fusion, as it was almost done after Lin Chuan released a powerful force around the area. Lin Chuan then called Meng Keo and Miss Sia slowly, telling them they could have lived. He also told them that they were the ones responsible for his actions, pointing out that they made him do what he did. Lin Chuan was different now. He had a human body, but a face that resembled the white ghost. He let out a fearful expression as he threatened them to witness the terror of illusions and perish together with the ruby jade vein. All of a sudden, Meng Keo noticed that it was engulfing him and wondered if it truly was the power of a nightmare class X beast. Lin Chuan even laughed hard as he witnessed them suffer, expressing a desire for everyone to die for Draken City. Meng Keo then realized that the White Ghost's illusion attack got stronger after fusing with Lin Chuan. The vines from the Bloodmark Roselle slowly circled and squeezed Meng Keo, immobilizing him. In a state of despair, Meng Keo found himself unable to break free from the constricting binds of the Bloodmark Roselle, leaving him powerless and trapped. All of a sudden, it seemed like Meng Keo found himself in a whole new world, suspended in the middle of a vast and unknown realm. 
Beside him, a massive, wild creature that resembled Lin Chuan's new form explained that the black tortoise wasn't Zong Yu's beast, shaking Meng Keo's newfound reality. The imprint master Zong Yu planted in his mind is fighting against the illusion. Out of nowhere, a dragon lunged and bit Lin Chuan, a surprising twist in the tale that unfolded for Meng Keo. The sudden event shattered the illusion, freeing everyone. Miss Sia, visibly shaken, and Kin who concernedly asked Meng Keo if he was okay. Finally, he managed to break free from the illusion. The challenge persisted, they got stronger after the fusion. Now, Meng Keo has to devise a plan to separate them once again. Meanwhile, Lin Chuan nursed a throbbing headache, disbelief written on his face as he realized they had successfully dispelled his illusions. He burst into laughter, insisting they were powerless as he proclaimed, with a chuckle, that it was already too late for them to do anything. Suddenly channeling his strength, Lin Chuan unleashed the power, causing vines to lash out in a forceful manner in every direction. The vines swiftly entwined themselves around the crystal bombs strategically planted by Lin Chuan on the cave walls. He laughed, mimicking the sound of an explosion, and proclaimed that their dreams could only come true by detonating the celestial parasites and calamity beasts. Meng Keo believed Lin Chuan had gone completely mad after merging with the White Ghost. The skill he had mentioned earlier seemed to be their last hope in this desperate situation. Kin who urgently urged Meng Keo to quickly devise a plan, warning that they were at risk of being either blown up in the explosion or crushed by the collapsing rubble. Meng Keo felt about 90% confident in his plan, convinced it could break the fusion between Lin Chuan and the beast. However, he had to get up close to make it work. Kin who offered his assistance by clearing the path for Meng Keo, confident that Lin Chuan wouldn't notice him in his mentally compromised state. Meanwhile, Miss Sia explained that if Meng Keo succeeded in breaking the fusion, her naga could take care of the white ghost. With everything seemingly in order, Meng Keo declared that the time had come to set their plan into motion. As Meng Keo, Kin Hu, and Miss Sia collaborated as a team, Lin Chuan grew increasingly irritated, finding them too annoying for his liking. With determination, he raised his weapon and declared that they would perish for what they had done. Suddenly, Kin who appeared next to Lin Chuan, pointing his sword and taunting him about his handsome yet deceptive appearance. Lin Chuan attempted to sway Kin who, highlighting their shared humble backgrounds, but Kin who, without hesitation, asserted his indifference to Lin Chuan's plans. Kin who unleashed a series of determined attacks, driven by the resolve to stop Lin Chuan's plans, as the destruction of the ruby jade vein would jeopardize his son and wife. He vowed not to let anyone harm his son and wife, fueling his unwavering determination in the fierce confrontation with Lin Chuan. As Lin Chuan grappled with Kin who, Miss Sia focused on casting another spell, summoning the stone snake to aid them in the unfolding battle. As anticipated, the stone snake swiftly targeted Lin Chuan and the fire phoenix, lunging at him from behind and delivering a decisive bite. Turning to face Miss Sia, he questioned why she was aiding their cause, a perplexed expression on his face. Miss Sia, seemingly oblivious to Lin Chuan's inquiry, proceeded to cast another attack, unleashing a rock blast aimed directly at him. The force of the explosion sent Lin Chuan tumbling away, caught in the aftermath of the powerful rock blast. In the midst of the chaotic events, Meng Keo hurriedly sprinted to approach Lin Chuan from behind, aiming to seize control of the situation. Caught off guard, Lin Chuan found himself entangled as Meng Keo swiftly looped a rope around his neck. With a skilled maneuver, Meng Keo managed to land on Lin Chuan's back, causing him to tumble to the ground. Without relenting, Meng Keo pressed on, ensuring Lin Chuan's immobilization by securing the rope tightly around his body. With determination, Meng Keo employed the skill known as the Mind Breaker, aiming to release Lin Chuan from the grip of insanity that had taken hold. Their voices echoed loudly as the struggle intensified, the clash of strength between the two creating a cacophony in the chaotic scene. As the fusion began to unravel, Lin Chuan, amidst the chaos, questioned Meng Keo about using the weapon he had provided against him and the White Ghost. Lin Chuan's cries intensified as the White Ghost became separated from him, the tumultuous event echoing through the cavern. Following the separation, both the White Ghost and Lin Chuan lay on the ground, rendered powerless by the aftermath of the intense struggle. Meng Keo put an end to the White Ghost and proclaimed that it was time to rouse Lin Chuan from his lack of consciousness. 
On the flip side, Lin Chuan gathered his remaining strength and managed to stand up, displaying resilience despite the challenging circumstances. Lin Chuan remained visibly angry at Meng Keo's actions. With determination, Lin Chuan wielded his scepter in an attempt to harm Meng Keo, who skillfully dodged the attack, urging him to cease the aggression. Despite Meng Keo's plea, Lin Chuan persisted, insisting that he had done nothing wrong. He insisted that his actions were for the benefit of the common folk of Draken City. As a result of the impact, Meng Keo crashed into the wall, the force of the collision reverberating through the cavern. Recovering from the impact, Meng Keo conveyed to Lin Chuan that having the right principles mattered little if the execution was fundamentally flawed. Meng Keo emphasized to Lin Chuan that destroying the vein would inflict the greatest suffering on the very common folks he claimed to care deeply about. However, Lin Chuan appeared unmoved by Meng Keo's words, dismissing them as useless and remaining steadfast in his convictions. Particularly now, with the white ghost fallen and sacrificed for his dream, Lin Chuan remained resolute in his pursuit, unmindful of the consequences. With a demeanor more unhinged than ever, Lin Chuan declared to Meng Keo that his sole option was to forge ahead and persist on his chosen path, seemingly unsaid by reason. In response, Meng Keo asserted that it was Lin Chuan who had ultimately caused the demise of the White Ghost, preventing it from leading a dignified and fulfilled existence. He accused Lin Chuan of transforming the White Ghost into a feared and despised entity, robbing it of the chance for a respected and honorable existence. He confronted Lin Chuan, questioning whether causing the White Ghost's death was not enough, and if he truly wanted to turn it into a destructive demon that would annihilate Draken. Despite the accusations, Lin Chuan remained steadfast in his belief that he had done nothing wrong, vowing to kill Meng Keo for what he perceived as wrongdoing. Sensing the opportune moment, Meng Keo aimed his gun at Lin Chuan and unleashed the beast blood ignition skill, ready to execute his plan. His only hope rested on the power gained from the beast blood ignition, trusting that it would enable him to endure the powerful recoil of the cannon gun. And finally, he fired the cannon at Lin Chuan, unleashing the culmination of his plan. With a resounding bang, Lin Chuan was caught off guard, unable to mount any defense or response. Before his eyes, Lin Chuan witnessed the devastation brought by Meng Keo's skill. He witnessed the disappearance of the White Ghost, its presence erased in the aftermath of the powerful attack. In a desperate attempt, Lin Chuan tried to cling to the last remnants of the White Ghost's existence, but it was too late everything had vanished. Immediately afterward, Miss Seer rushed toward Lin Chuan, hoping to provide assistance in the aftermath of the intense ordeal. On the flip side, Kin who assisted Meng Keo, recognizing that staying in that state would be a burden, he suggested using basic healing to address the immediate concerns. Assuring Kin Hu that he would be fine, Meng Keo instructed him to go help Sia and clear the way out. Kin Hu hesitated to do as Meng Keo said, accusing him of bossing around. Eventually, with a sense of urgency, Kin Hu implored everyone to hurry, emphasizing that they would all perish if the vein continued to explode. In unanimous agreement, everyone hastened their pace, propelled by the shared understanding of the impending danger. Kin who took the lead, inspecting the path, while Miss Sia and Meng Keo provided assistance to the still-recovering Lin Chuan. Suddenly, Lin Chuan unexpectedly freed himself from being assisted by Meng Keo and Miss Sia, surprising them both with his sudden and unanticipated action. Not only did Lin Chuan break free, but he also shielded them from falling rocks that could have posed a threat. He then admitted they were right, acknowledging that he needed to atone for the mistakes he had made. Lin Chuan urged them to hasten and revealed his plan to detonate the passage, intending to buy them enough time for escape. As the rocks descended upon him, Lin Chuan offered a heartfelt apology to Meng Keo and Miss Sia for all that he had done to both of them, bidding them a final farewell. Meng Keo and Kin who accepted Lin Chuan's fate, though it was a tough pill to swallow. However, the loss was especially difficult for Miss Sia, grappling with the reality that Lin Chuan was now gone. Inside the cave, Lin Chuan planted more bombs on the walls, possibly setting the stage for another significant event. Turning sideways, Lin Chuan's face lit up, as if he had caught a glimpse of someone dear to him one last time before carrying out his final actions. At that moment, Lin Chuan envisioned seeing his father holding the second-hand teddy bear he had bought for him on his birthday, a gift never given directly as his father had passed away. 
Even though he had never witnessed such a sight before, it became the last image etched in his memory, bringing him a sense of happiness as he faced his final moments. Finally, the cave exploded with him inside it. Meng Keo and Siya, amidst the aftermath of the explosion, would never have the chance to hear Lin Chuan's final apology for leading them into that perilous situation. Along with his wish for them to live on and change Draken. In respect to Lin Chuan's sacrifice, Qin Hu, Meng Keo, and Miss Sia made a concerted effort to escape the rumbling cave as swiftly as possible. Suddenly, Meng Keo noticed a crack in the wall, with a blue light emanating from the opening an unexpected discovery that piqued their curiosity. The three of them examined the opening closely, and Miss Sia soon realized it was a pure natural cave of azure primal stone. This revelation signaled their salvation. They considered themselves fortunate to stumble upon another hidden cave filled with precious gems just a hundred meters from the ruby jade vein. However, the crevice proved a bit small for them. In an instant, Meng Keo urged them to move aside. Once Kin Hu and Miss Sia cleared the way, Meng Keo gathered his strength, readying himself to launch a powerful punch. Finally, he unleashed the punch with all his strength, striking the wall in an attempt to widen the crevice. However, the attempt proved fruitless, and the crevice remained unchanged. Kin who disagreed with Mang Keo's idea of using his body to widen the opening. Despite already seeming exhausted from the previous attempt, Men Keo summoned the last of his strength and threw another punch at the wall, determined to make a way out. The punch was powerful, but unfortunately, it wasn't enough to widen the crevice. Kin who bluntly told Meng Keo that he was being foolish if he believed he could widen the gap just by using physical force. Undeterred, Meng Keo refused to give up, displaying a relentless determination that bordered on madness. Taking a brief pause to gather his strength, Meng Keo, determined as ever, unleashed another potent punch at the wall, hoping for a breakthrough. The punch was so forceful that the wall began to crack, indicating a potential breakthrough in their efforts. Eventually, it was revealed that the crevice had widened. Kin Hu, astonished by Meng Keo's accomplishment, couldn't believe how he managed to achieve it. Without wasting any time, they swiftly entered the hidden cave. In the serene beauty of the cave adorned with numerous dazzling blue gems, the three of them lay on the ground, taking in the tranquil surroundings. Mesmerized by the enchanting beauty of the place, they couldn't help but be captivated, their awe even manifesting in drooling admiration. Kin who observed that the pain from his wounds had significantly diminished, possibly influenced by the unique properties of the gems in the cave. Meng Keo then affirmed that the Azure Primal Stones possessed exceptional healing effects and a stable nature. Kin who became curious about the implications of Meng Keo's statement. He picked up a gem and explained that if the magnetic energy interference of the Ruby Jade Vein and Azure Primal Stone could neutralize each other. It can transform raging and destructive energy into absorbable energy. That natural mind would not be their tomb, but an unparalleled super training room. Kin who cheered at the revelation, expressing that he had been waiting for such an encounter his entire life, and now it had finally come to fruition. However, Meng Keo cautioned against getting too excited just yet, hinting at potential challenges or consequences they might face. He turned towards the hole in the cave and emphasized the need to seal it, along with fortifying the crumbling wall facing the crevice first. Miss Sia discovered that the wall was too fragile. The plan was to allow the ruby energy to pass through a large quantity of primal stone, creating a chance for it to transform into absorbable life energy when it illuminated them. Meng Keo sought Miss Sia's permission to proceed with her suggested plan to seal the hole exclusively with the azure primal stones. He then began to gather the Azure Primal Stones, preparing to implement the plan to seal the hole in the cave. One by one, he picked up the stones with the help of his sword. Eventually, Miss Sia and Kin, who joined Meng Keo in the tedious task of gathering the Azure Primal Stones for the important undertaking and stacking them to cover the hole. After a few minutes of concerted effort, they successfully sealed off the hole using the gathered Azure Primal Stones. With the hole sealed, their focus shifted to ensuring its stability. Miss Sia, utilizing her power, attempted to reinforce the seal, adding an extra layer of protection to it. However, her attempt to reinforce the seal failed as she discovered that her inner energy had dried up, leaving her unable to exert the necessary power. With the wall still not entirely secure, they realized they needed to use their own bodies to support it temporarily, 
serving as a physical barrier to prevent any potential collapse. The trio then held onto the wall, with Meng Keo assuring Miss Sia that he would not allow it to collapse, emphasizing the importance of the 15% priority mining rights. Almost in tears, Meng Keo strained to hold the wall, passionately declaring that they needed to survive the challenging situation they found themselves in. The walls within where the ruby jade vein lay began to rumble, signaling potential danger and intensifying the urgency of their efforts to secure the cave. Exerting every ounce of their strength, the three of them struggled valiantly to prevent the seal from collapsing, fully aware of the potential consequences. Kin Hu, straining under the pressure, informed the others that he couldn't hold on much longer. Miss Sia, feeling the overwhelming impact, also admitted that she couldn't hold on any longer. Meng Keo, contemplating the situation, believed that the only recourse to withstand the force might be basic healing. Clenching his feet tightly to the ground, Meng Keo made every effort not to lose his grip on the seal. Driven by a deep sense of urgency, Meng Keo was determined not to succumb in that perilous moment, especially with his parents waiting for him back home. Despite the formidable force bearing down on him, Meng Keo endured the pressure, displaying remarkable resilience in the face of the overwhelming challenge. In solidarity, the other two mirrored Meng Keo's determination, striving to preserve their prior efforts and prevent any wasted progress. Outside, the mountain where Meng Keo, Miss Sia, and Kin who were located suddenly exploded, releasing a massive surge of energy from its mouth. The people circling the area on their flying vehicles witnessed the explosion and, assuming victory, declared to themselves that they had emerged triumphant. In the aftermath of the explosion, they also declared that the war was finally over. Five days later, at the Deluge Mountain Range, people were diligently collecting the bodies of the deceased beasts, transporting those using flying vehicles for disposal or other purposes. Amidst the ongoing activities, the reporter Yan Feru was conducting a news report covering the aftermath of the events and the cleanup efforts in progress. With the eruption of the crystal vein beneath the Deluge mountain range, their warriors have gained tremendous power. Many powerful earth and sky warriors have slain countless nightmare and infernal beasts, bringing a perfect conclusion to the war at the Northern Front. The next thing to do is to embark on the exploration and development of the newly opened land. While Meng Keo was attentively watching the news report, Kin who teasingly remarked that the news reporter was Meng Keo's type. When Meng Keo retorted, Kin who burst into laughter. He jokingly told Meng Keo that even though he had become a two-star exalted, he still could not do such a thing to him since he would be a five-star exalted after absorbing all the inner energy within him. Kin who then told Meng Keo that the reason behind his current position is attributed to having many friends, emphasizing the importance of not attempting to do everything alone. Digesting Kin Hu's wisdom, Meng Keo contemplated the idea of building his own team to contribute to the salvation of Draken. In the midst of their conversation, Meng Keo grinned and confirmed to Kin Hu that he was right. With a casual tone, he then offered Kin Hu the chance to join him as his right-hand man. Perplexed, Kin Hu struggled to understand Meng Keo's intentions. To make things clearer, Meng Keo told him he wanted them to join forces and embark on a new career together. Halting Meng Keo, Kin who proposed a strategy. If he successfully hooked Miss Sia, he could expedite his training by a significant 20 years. Kin who urged Meng Keo to seize the opportunity while Miss Sia was now lonely after Lin Chuan's death. However, Meng Keo, puzzled, questioned why Kin who wouldn't pursue the endeavor himself. Suddenly assuming an air of greatness, Kin who asserted to Meng Keo that he, being a married man, would never betray his beloved wife. Suddenly, echoing footsteps from outside interrupted the conversation. Simultaneously, they nervously turned their gaze toward the door as footsteps approached. Relief washed over them as they saw it was her, prompting a shared moment of wonder. Just after discussing her, Miss Sia arrived, exuding elegance in her attire and mask, and catching the attention of both with her graceful presence. Concerned and feeling a bit of awkwardness, Meng Keo inquired if she was okay and questioned the reason behind her wearing a mask. She explained that her doctor had advised her to wear the helmet to filter out excessive information, as her senses had recently heightened by nearly tenfold. With clarity established, she instructed them to prepare, informing them that the Exib airship was ready to depart. The journey to Starcrush Lake would take approximately half an hour. Suddenly struck with realization, Meng Keo asked Miss Sia to pause. 
he had just discovered that they were on an Exib airship. They quickly pieced together that Miss Sia belonged to Exib, the Expeast Investigation Bureau, an organization dedicated to handling intelligent Expeasts capable of infiltrating human society. Miss Sia confirmed that she had undergone a year of training at Exib, transforming from a mere miner into an investigator with combat abilities. Miss Sia extended an invitation for Meng Keo to join Exib. Recognizing his loyalty and abilities from their operation, she assured him of promising prospects within the organization. Meng Keo thought about joining Exib, realizing the organization might hold crucial information aligning with his fragmented memories, crucial in determining the outcome of the Expeast War. As Meng Keo appeared to be staring at something else, Kin who teased him once more, urging him to hurry up seize the golden opportunity and say yes. After some contemplation, Meng Keo finally realized that Kin who was absolutely right. By associating with Miss Sia, he could accelerate his training progress by at least 20 years. Suddenly, as Miss Sia stood waiting for Meng Keo's answer, she humorously asked if he had been checking out her legs. Startled, Meng Keo denied with a hint of embarrassment, but then admitted he had been looking at her legs, clarifying it wasn't what she might think. As Meng Keo stumbled through his explanation, Miss Sia cut him off, assuring him that there was no need to explain, as she had already heard everything. Miss Sia, with her heightened senses, was aware of Meng Keo's thoughts regarding the potential benefits for him. She could hear every sound, even with the helmet on. In embarrassment, Meng Keo declared he didn't know Kin who well and confessed that he wasn't particularly fond of him. He even jokingly proposed deducting 2% from his mining rights. In response, Miss Sia assured Meng Keo that she believed him. However, she emphasized the importance of mutual trust, urging him to trust her as much as she trusted him. Miss Sia clarified that her invitation for Meng Keo to join Exib wasn't a replacement for Lin Chuan. Highlighting their distinct characteristics, Miss Sia emphasized that Meng Keo was uniquely himself, and no one could mistake him for someone else. To unravel the puzzles in Meng Keo's head, he realized he needed higher privileges and access to more information. Joining Exib seemed like a promising starting point for this quest. Meng Keo agreed to join, but considering he was still in school, Miss Sia suggested he become an adjunct investigator like her. This would offer schedule flexibility, but he would be required to partake in secret missions to maximize his value. With everything settled, Meng Keo expressed his reliance on Miss Sia, solidifying their newfound partnership. Meanwhile, deep within the Expeast's mountain, mysterious-looking eggs began to crack, hinting at the imminent emergence of something unknown. Amidst numerous similar-looking eggs in the area, a sudden voice echoed, breaking the eerie silence. The voice conveyed a message, stating that the phantom wolf had failed. The message was addressed to someone or something called the Eye. In urgency, the voice instructed the Eye to pick up the pace, coinciding with the ominous spread of pink veins crawling within the surroundings. The veins continued to wriggle and squirm. Gradually, it became evident that the veins were connected to the Eye, and the voice speaking to it originated from the brain. Meanwhile, the Exid airships reached their destination, landing one by one on the ground. Miss Sia, Meng Keo, and Kin who disembarked from one of the airships. She then told Meng Keo that she had already informed his teacher and classmates about his return. She added that Meng Keo should leave matters concerning the White Ghost and the Ruby Jade Vein rewards to her. Meng Keo smiled and expressed gratitude to Miss Sia for everything she had already done for him. Suddenly, Big Bear appeared, ecstatic to see Meng Keo again. Without hesitation, he grabbed him and gave him a tight, enthusiastic hug, which made him unable to breathe for a moment. Helplessly gripped in Big Bear's embrace, Meng Keo noticed something different about him. Big Bear, surprised, wondered how Meng Keo had spotted the change so quickly. Big Bear then explained what had transpired in the Tombstone Forest while Meng Keo was away. A four-level infernal beast had forcefully pushed him into a crack. However, within the crack in the ground, there was a continuous flow of inner energy. Big Bear found himself immersed in this energy for an entire day and night, resulting in a total refinement of his being. Proud of the transformation, Big Bear beamed and asked Meng Keo to take a guess at his current level. However, he did not even wait for Meng Keo to guess. With excitement rushing, he immediately revealed that he had ascended to a two-star exalted in the energy altar stage. Meng Keo, with puppy eyes, beamed with pride for his brother Big Bear, 
telling him that he had always believed he could achieve such a feat. Suddenly, Shao Jian King appeared and hit Big Bear on the head with her sword. She scolded him, telling him to stop boasting in front of Meng Keo, who had already been through a lot. Xifeng also appeared and spoke with Meng Keo. He shared news about a breakthrough experienced by everyone in the battle, a result of the massive surge of inner energy. Meng Keo finally revealed that he, too, had achieved a two-star energy altar stage. He went on to explain how it happened, leaving everyone shocked by his unexpected progress. He explained that they were trapped inside after the explosion, absorbing an excessive amount of inner energy, and were subsequently compelled to undergo an unexpected breakthrough. As a result, Big Bear jokingly teared up, playfully accusing Meng Keo of once again stealing the spotlight from everyone. While Meng Keo was narrating his story, his teacher and Jiara Wu suddenly appeared. His teacher then inquired if he would be interested in participating in the freshman battle tournament organized by the five universities and Draken Yu. Curious, Meng Keo expressed wonder about the tournament as if he had never heard of it before. He asked his teacher for more details while affectionately petting Jiara Wu on her head. His teacher then presented him with the details. The objective of the tournament was to defeat at least five overbreakers of the same level during the competition. Meng Keo contemplated the rewards of the tournament, particularly the enticing prospect of acquiring a new exalted skill called Guile Thrust, taught by instructor Black Skeleton. While still petting Jiara Wu, Meng Keo declared that he would participate in the tournament. He saw it as the perfect opportunity to showcase Daredevil to the public. Big Bear, Zai Feng, and Shao Jian King expressed joy at the prospect of fighting alongside Meng Keo once again. They aimed to defeat Draken Yu together. While the students were busy catching up, Miss Sia informed Meng Keo that it was now time to say goodbye. On the other hand, Kin who suddenly chimed in, teasingly stating that Meng Keo was quite handsome too. In response, Miss Sia coldly warned Kin who that if he didn't stop talking nonsense, he could kiss his share of the vein goodbye. This threat startled him. One month later, at their home, Zio Kao was excited to turn on the television because the show she had been eagerly waiting for was about to start. Actually, she was waiting for the tournament. Zio Kao then called her mom, who also expressed the desire to watch it live. Before joining Zio Kao to watch the tournament, she sent a message to their neighbors, letting them know that Meng Keo would be participating in the freshman tournament this year. The announcer of the battle began speaking, signaling the start of the showdown. Meng Keo's family immediately gathered around the television, watching closely. The participants in the tournament were the newly emerged exalts from the six universities. The battle was broadcast with the help of drone cameras scattered around the forest. At this point in the tournament, the participants were already gathered inside, eagerly awaiting the commencement of the competition. Yan Feru, the tournament announcer, introduced one of the participants, Wang Dao from Dark and Yu, known as the Super Rookie, to everyone. She requested an interview with him, asking about his thoughts on the transition from a 5v5 battle to a 100v100 melee in the Tombstone Forest. Wang Dao confidently responded that regardless of the challenge, the motto of Dark and Yu's martial arts course was clear which is, one hit ko. Zio Kao was captivated by the coolness of Wan Dao's team, and her mom reminded her that those individuals were opponents of her brother. She advised her to stop admiring them. The other announcer mentioned that there was a new emerging martial arts style in the five universities union known as Daredevil, which was said to be the natural enemy of Overbreaker. Shao Jian King confidently responded, stating that all she could discern was that the days of Dark and Yu's domination in the martial arts world were coming to an end. Zio Kao noticed that Meng Keo was caught on camera. She felt a twinge of jealousy at Meng Keo's height growth, while her mother took a picture of him to send to their family. The announcers now declared that contestants from both sides were entering the Tombstone Forest, and the event was being broadcast live through drone cameras. The entrance of the contestants into the forest signaled the official start of the tournament. The camera showed Wang Dao battling Chu Feixing from the Military Academy's Heroic Spirits course. Spectators wondered if Wang Dao's punch would swiftly end and eliminate Feixing. Zio Kao recognized that it was Big Bear who remained unsatisfied even after consuming 80 dumplings, prompting them to make another two bowls of instant noodles for him. On the other hand, it appeared that things wouldn't unfold as expected, as Feixing managed to stand up after enduring damage from Wang Dao. 
Wang Dao grew angry witnessing his opponent's determination. He pondered whether Chu Feixing would confront his finishing move head-on, or if he was hiding some sort of trump card. Chu Feixing had now transitioned to his military boxing first form. He was ready to execute his attack called Lunge Punch. The announcers were both shocked by this development, pondering whether Chu Feixing's military boxing would truly be effective against Wang Dao's overbreaker. All of a sudden, Chu Feixing was seen flying up and away after Wang Dao punched him with incredible force. The announcers expressed disappointment at what happened, but still commended Feixing for the courage he displayed, despite being sent flying by Dao's punch. However, they soon realized that Feixing had not given up and stood up once again. Sarcastically, he asked if that was what overbreaker punches were supposed to be. As he spoke sarcastically, Wang Dao rushed towards him and launched an attack, causing him to be eliminated. He promised Wang Dao that he was certain Meng Keo would avenge him. The announcers once again expressed disappointment in Chu Feixing's apparent arrogance and foolishness. Yan Feru mentioned that Meng Keo was a participant from the Five Universities Union and a direct disciple of Gu Jianbo, the founder of the Daredevil style. The other announcer then instructed the director to switch the camera to Meng Keo to see what he was up to. However, the camera showed only trees, and there was no sign of Meng Keo. They wondered whether the positioning system had encountered an issue, and so they tried to reposition again. From the top view, they noticed something in the trees and requested to zoom in on the spot. They were shocked by what they saw. It was Meng Keo, dressed in a tree costume and utilizing the trees to conceal himself. He was angry at the cameras and announcers for exposing him from his hiding place. He quickly ended his hiding and swiftly moved to another location. The announcers couldn't believe what they just witnessed and conveyed to the viewers that Meng Keo was truly exceptional while trying to put a smile on to hide their disappointment. Zio Kao also seemed disappointed by her brother. However, her mom was embarrassed by him, asking Zio Kao how to unsend the message she had sent to their neighbors. In the midst of the action, Xiao Jian King appeared to effortlessly excel at slaying her enemies with each move, showcasing her skill and precision. Her enemies struggled to cope with her formidable skills, finding it challenging to counter her every move. Swiftly, one by one, they were washed away by her tremendous strength. The announcers couldn't believe that a heroic spirit envoy like her could wield such power. The Daredevil style seemed to have significantly enhanced her abilities, and she was rapidly approaching Wang Dao's impressive kill count. However, Draken Yu realized that Giant King was not someone to be trifled with, and she was currently spearheading a well-organized counter-attack. In that spur of the moment, Xiao Giant King abruptly raised her sword, displaying sheer greatness and bravery. Then, she suddenly struck the ground with her sword, channeling all her remaining strength into a forceful blow. Very unexpectedly, her HP dropped significantly due to the forceful action she took. Xiao Jian King's strength was depleted to the point where she was considered dead due to exhaustion. It was a shame, but the announcers expressed confidence that she would surely regain the glory of the Valkyrie and emerge as the leading figure of the Golden Generation in a few years. Meanwhile, a rustling sound emanated from the grass as someone hurriedly made their way, running towards a destination. In a desperate pursuit, the man found himself being relentlessly chased by Jiara Wu, accompanied by Leopard from Agri Yu. These two formidable figures were hailed as the last hope of the Five Universities Union. Their duo operated like a ghost team, able to materialize seemingly out of thin air, rendering them a formidable and unpredictable opponent, not to mention their exceptional stamina. As of now, Wang Dao leads the scoreboard with an impressive 15 kills, closely followed by Giant King, who unfortunately got eliminated making the other rookie from both sides to be more cautious. Jiro Wu holds the third spot, trailed by Meng Keo and Zhu Shang securing the fifth position. Yan Furu wondered how Meng Keo had acquired four kills since they hadn't witnessed it in the footage. They promptly attempted to retrieve the footage to review what happened. After reviewing the footage, they discovered that Meng Keo had managed to simultaneously take down four opponents using his strategy of hiding and executing abrupt, calculated attacks. Yan Feru seemed to have no other choice but to explain his strategy, which involved concealing his presence and going for a sure kill akin to an assassin. Once again, Meng Keo found himself on the verge of securing his fifth kill as he lurked behind a lone figure, ready to execute his stealthy approach. While he succeeded in securing the kill, 
The announcers soon realized that it was just a trap for him. Meng Keo found himself surrounded by adversaries, the tables turning against him. The announcers perceived it as a dire situation for Meng Keo, especially considering his proficiency in sneak kills. They fear that he might be eliminated soon in the tournament. Suddenly, a man with an overflowing aura made a dramatic appearance in the vicinity. It was Wang Dao, actively seeking out Meng Keo. He promptly confronted Meng Keo face to face, challenging him to determine which of them was the stronger contender. As if in agreement, Meng Keo smirked at Wang Dao, displaying confidence. Without hesitation, he channeled his strength and assumed a perfect stance, ready for the impending confrontation. Yan Feru couldn't contain his excitement as he observed Meng Keo prepare to face Wang Dao head-on. At the perfect moment, Meng Keo swiftly sprinted, appearing ready to eliminate anyone in his path with decisive intent. And then, unexpectedly, he burst into laughter, his eyes gleaming with an unsettling, almost sinister, gladness. However, it was disappointing to discover that Meng did not run towards Wang Dao's direction, but rather in the opposite direction, seemingly attempting to escape. Once again, the announcers gazed at their screens with disappointment evident on their faces as Meng Keo's actions left them unable to utter a single word. Similarly, his entire family was shocked by what he did. Zhao Kao even attempted to gaslight herself, insisting it wasn't that embarrassing, though it was evident that it clearly was. Just like the others, Wang Dao found himself unable to utter a single word and was left there, hanging in stunned silence. Wang Dao's disappointment and anger reached a boiling point. In a burst of frustration, he loudly yelled Meng Keo's name. Determined to provoke Meng Keo into a confrontation, Wang Dao unleashed his powerful Blazing Sun Strike skill, hoping it would force Meng Keo to halt his attempt to escape. In a swift and skillful move, Meng Keo evaded Wang Dao's attack with a perfectly executed Dragon Thrust, seamlessly transitioning into the agile Mad Tiger Dance skill. Meng Keo, determined to escape Wang Dao's relentless attacks, showcased remarkable perceptiveness. Anticipating Wang Dao's moves, he skillfully evaded every assault. Soon, the announcers noticed a cliff ahead in Meng Keo's path. They speculated if he intended to leap through the waterfall, making a daring escape through the deep pool and river below. Confidently reaching the cliff's edge, Meng Keo made a daring leap, diving fearlessly through the air. Refusing to let Meng Keo escape, Wang Dao relentlessly pursued him. Employing his Star Shatter Strike skill, he chased after Meng Keo with determined intensity. Unexpectedly, Meng Keo grinned slyly and whispered to himself, revealing his anticipation of Wang Dao falling into his carefully laid trap. In a swift move, he plunged his sword into the cliff's wall, securing a strategic position. Stabbing the cliff wall weakened the ground beneath Wang Dao. Meng Keo then proceeded down the cliff, confident that his trap would soon play out. The announcers quickly grasped that Meng Keo's apparent leap off the cliff was a clever ruse a well-set trap. Meanwhile, before Wang Dao could realize it, Meng Keo's rope had cleverly entwined around his right leg, subtly connecting them in an unexpected twist. Completing its circle around Wang Dao's leg, the other end of the rope with the sword firmly lodged itself into the ground, effectively locking him in place. All of a sudden, Meng Keo ascended from the cliff, using his rope to draw closer, brandishing his sword at the immobilized Wang Dao who found himself unable to move. Meng Keo seized the opportunity and launched an unrelenting assault, leaving Wang Dao with no chance to construct his magnetic field. As Meng Keo relentlessly launched a barrage of attacks on Wang Dao, the ground beneath them began to crack and shatter, adding an element of suspense to their intense showdown. Amidst the crumbling rocks and debris, both Meng Keo and Wang Dao tumbled down the cliff, plunging into the river below in a chaotic descent. Submerged in the water, both Meng Keo and Wang Dao disappeared from sight, leaving the outcome of their intense confrontation hanging in suspense. After a tense interval, both Meng Keo and Wang Dao emerged from the water. Both of them continued huffing, visibly fatigued and exhausted from the intense duel and the ordeal they had just faced in the water. After exchanging glances for a while, they both wearily lowered themselves to the ground, surrendering to the need for rest and recovery after their strenuous encounter. In a surprising turn of events, the announcers discovered a twist that added an unexpected layer to the unfolding spectacle. Both drained of strength, they were considered as strength depleted and killed which resulted in a draw. 
That means Meng Keo had successfully achieved a tie with Wang Dao, the Dominator. Lying on his back, Meng Keo received a message declaring his rewards for the victory, a new skill, the Guile Thrust, now unlocked and at his will. As he contemplated their win at the Northern Front War and the success of his Daredevil, he realized that it was different from the fragments of memories he had which worried him somehow. Suddenly, a new mission message appeared, unveiling a quest surrounding the mystery of the Demon Gods. Realizing the activation of the mission related to the Demon Gods, Meng Keo understood it signified an imminent and formidable counterattack from the demonic forces. Confirming his suspicions, Meng Keo realized that the formidable opponents in the next stage would be the nine, no, the eight demon gods, a formidable challenge lies ahead. Adding to the uncertainty, Meng Keo discovered that not only were the opponents formidable, but the mission's difficulty and rewards remained not disclosed in the mission message. At the moment, he did not have much information about the mission yet, so he could only play by ear. He then figured he should start with Exib first. On the other side, Yan Feru marveled as Meng Keo rose to his feet within minutes of the intense battle's conclusion. The prowess of the daredevil left a lasting impression on her. Meng Keo's classmates erupted in cheers, celebrating his accomplishment and the agricultural university's triumph in the tournament. Their joy was profound, as it had been a decade since they last tasted victory over Draken University, making the triumph even more gratifying for Meng Keo's classmates. The reporters were equally thrilled, eager to conduct an interview with Meng Keo immediately after the victory, capturing the excitement surrounding his remarkable achievement. When asked about tying with the top scorer in the college entrance exam, Meng Keo acknowledged the opponent's strength, he immediately said he was not as strong as him. When questioned about his future plans post the Wang Dao victory, Meng Keo suddenly asked if the interview was broadcasted live, and the reporters said it was. In a heartwarming moment, Meng Keo smiled at the camera and addressed his mom, expressing his desire for some hog bones amid the public celebration. Meng Keo's mom, watching with tears at home, wished for her son's safe return. Zio Kao, raising her hands in excitement, joined in, expressing her own desire for hog bones too. Meng Keo's mom promptly acknowledged their request, assuring them that she would make sure to get some hog bones for them later. Seven days later at the Celestial Garden State. In the residence, a guy named Jin skillfully played with three tigers, impressing the two other guys who were delighted about successfully introducing the tigers to a new companion. Curious, the two other guys approached Jin, who was lying on the ground. They were puzzled, wondering why he would choose to rest in a seemingly dirty spot. Upon closer inspection, they discovered the shocking reality of what was happening, leaving them utterly surprised and astounded. To their horror, they realized that the tigers were not playing with Jin, but in fact, were devouring his lifeless body like wild beasts, a gruesome revelation. As the tigers noticed the two other guys, their gaze turned menacing, as if harboring a desire to kill and devour them next, intensifying the chilling atmosphere. The hunger in the tiger's eyes was evident, signaling that they were not satiated and craved more. In mere seconds, blood scattered in the area. Back at Meng Keo's house, his mother requested him to indulge in more meat as she put the meat in his bowl. Since he was an exalted, she thinks he need more nutrition than ever. Zio Kao complained, expressing her need for assistance, citing that she was still growing, while Meng Keo, being an adult, seemed to have fewer dietary concerns. During dinner, a news report on the television aired accidents involving pets killing their owners. Zio Kao reiterated her frustration, expressing annoyance that her father continued to watch disturbing news during meals, dampening the enjoyment of her dining experience. Meanwhile, Meng Keo inquired with his father about their company and offered assistance. His father mentioned the current shortage of manpower. Meng Keo suggested acquiring R3, pointing out that they still possessed various equipment and had contracted harvester teams available. However, his father expressed concern about Kin Hu's influence, considering his position behind R3, which added an additional layer of worry to the situation. But Meng Keo reassured his father, urging him not to worry about Kin Hu. He revealed that Kin Hu expressed a desire to be like an older brother to him, alleviating some of the concerns. After a few days, Meng Keo's father was pleasantly surprised to learn that Kin Hu had agreed to the acquisition of R3, marking a positive development in their business strategy. 
Recognizing the benefits, Kin who agreed to the acquisition, bringing satisfaction to Mankeo as he fulfilled Kin whose desire to be his subordinate in the process. However, it appeared that Mankeo had noticed a potential problem as he gazed at the man behind him. He conveyed that he didn't mind everyone on board, but there was a condition. They had to exclude that man. The man was annoyed at Mankeo, so he called him a brat. In response, Kin who swiftly slapped him across the face, cautioning him to watch his words in the future. Mankeo remarked that it was a bit harsh, but underneath, he couldn't help but feel a sense of satisfaction at Kin Hu's decisive action. Regarding Kin Hu's wife, he might need Mankeo's help to explain the acquisition to her. Besides, Kin Hu had already informed her about losing his influence. With that, Mankeo commended him for his skill in spouting nonsense without batting an eye. Kin who on the other hand told him to stop flattering him since it was just wisdom that comes with age. All of a sudden, Mankeo received a phone call. It was Mr. Ning, and he asked Mankeo if he had time to come to Soulforge Genetics. He also mentioned that he would introduce him to his senior, Gao Yi. It was perfect timing for Mankeo as he was about to finish his tasks there. He was also excited about meeting Gao Yi, the founder of Soulforge Genetics. In a matter of minutes, Meng Keo had finally reached the Expeasts Research Institute, swiftly arriving at his intended destination. He would be escorted inside by a girl named Zushi, who had been waiting for him outside the facility. Zushi promptly informed Meng Keo that Gao Yi had been eagerly awaiting his arrival inside. They utilized the elevator to ascend to the 13th floor. Her grandfather had been invited to see the sandworm experiment. Gao Yi, having heard about Meng Keo's remarkable harvesting techniques, expressed a genuine desire to meet him. In addition, Gao Yi mentioned that he needed Meng Keo's assistance, leaving him in a state of confusion and curiosity. Finally, they arrived, and Mr. Ning appeared excited to meet Meng Keo in person. Without wasting a second, he immediately introduced Gao Yi to Meng Keo, initiating the meeting without delay. Gao Yi expressed joy at seeing Meng Keo and extended an invitation for him to witness the injury inspection of a biogenetic pet, recognizing his extensive knowledge about expeasts. Deep in thought, Meng Keo contemplated Gao Yi's appearance, finding him different from what he had imagined. He also pondered the idea of inviting experts for what seemed like a minor issue. Mr. Ning finally explained the situation, revealing that three biogenetic pets created by Soulforge had unexpectedly gone berserk on the same day, resulting in the tragic deaths of their owners. Meng Keo appeared surprised by this revelation, absorbing the unexpected and unsettling information provided by Mr. Ning. On the other hand, Gao Yi exclaimed, vehemently declaring that it was all lies and insisting that the biogenetic pets he developed were inherently safe. To support his claim, Gao Yi made them watch the safety experiment he conducted for the cyan tiger he had developed, providing tangible evidence of the safety of his creations. The video showed the fate of the biogenetic pets he created if they wanted to hurt their owners. Gao Yi voiced his suspicion, suggesting that Skyward Machinery might be behind the incidents to secure the contract for the underwater excavation of the Vermilion Dragon River. Expressing frustration, Gao Yi noted that after the sandworms, now the biogenetic pets were targeted. He pondered on what methods Skyward Machinery might employ next. On the other hand, Meng Keo was confused as he had no prior knowledge about the sandworms. In response to Meng Keo's confusion, Gao Yi asked him to follow, leading the way to potentially shed light on the situation. He then narrated the story behind the giant sandworms they had created, emphasizing that they were designed specifically for waste management and had always been stable. But a little over half a month ago, several sandworms at Landfill 4 suddenly went out of control and escaped. Fortunately, during the sandworm incidents, there were no casualties, a contrast to the current situation with the biogenetic pets. Gao Yi expressed intense fury towards Skyward, condemning their actions that included endangering lives to achieve their goals. While Meng Keo absorbed the information and processed it, he appeared to be forming his own conclusions about the intricate situation at hand. Meng Keo stared at the giant sandworms in front of him for a moment. Upon gazing at the giant sandworms, a sudden rush of thoughts and worries flooded Meng Keo's mind, possibly connecting the dots or raising concerns about the broader implications. The chaos caused by the giant sandworms unfolded, bringing terror to the citizens and wreaking havoc in their wake. A message popped up, indicating that the progress on unraveling the mysteries of the demon gods had reached 1%. 
Meng Keio, Mr. Ning, and Zhu Xi continued their journey toward the Expeasts Research Institute test site number three. Mr. Ning informed them that Professor Sun Yufeng, also known as the Shadowless Flying Blade, would be in charge of that day's dissection and injury inspection. He then cautioned them to be careful with their words when speaking to Professor Sun Yufeng later, hinting at the professor's potentially sensitive nature or demeanor. Before entering the room, they took the precaution of sanitizing their entire bodies, ensuring a sterile environment for the upcoming dissection and injury inspection. Additionally, they donned their safety equipment, further ensuring protection. Mr. Ning asked if they were ready, and upon confirmation, they proceeded inside. Upon entering the room, they encountered three gentlemen. One of the men expressed surprise, stating that he never expected the renowned Venerable Divine Hand, Ning Shuo, to become involved in this situation merely for monetary reasons. Meng Keo retorted to the man, stating that some individuals are solely focused on money. The man replied to Meng Keo, challenging him and stating that being an internet celebrity didn't grant him the license to speak nonsense to him. In response, he threatened to ruin Meng Keo's career, growing even angrier when Meng Keo encouraged him to go ahead, expressing that it was expected behavior from someone like him. The quarrel came to an end when Sun Yufeng himself commanded them to stop. He then inquired if anyone had objections before commencing the inspection of the biogenetic pets. Silence echoed in the room after Sun Yufeng's statement, indicating a consensus with no objections to proceed with the inspection. Following this, the two other men started whining, urging Sun Yufeng to expose Soulforge's unethical practices and unveil the truth. Zushi, still displeased with their behavior, intervened and demanded they cease their actions, addressing them as scoundrels. Sun Yufeng clicked the button to open the machine containing the three cyan tigers, commencing the observation and examination process, while the others stayed back to watch. Mr. Ning specifically instructed Meng Keo and Zushi to closely observe the professor's dissecting techniques and attempt to learn from the process. When Sun Yufeng raised his hand, the knives placed on his sleeves began to rumble. He then suddenly pointed his fingers towards the cyan tigers, and the knives obediently followed and rushed towards the cyan tigers as well, seemingly under his control. The knives were indeed under Sun Yufeng's control, allowing him to dissect the three cyan tigers without physically touching them, showcasing his extraordinary skill and precision. Zushi wondered if it was telekinesis, while Meng Keo speculated if it was tricentral focus. Both of them were thoroughly impressed by Sun Yufeng's extraordinary technique. While Meng Keo and Zushi observed closely, the two arrogant men were vomiting due to the gruesome scene, clearly unable to handle the intensity of the dissection. Meanwhile, Sun Yufeng raised both hands again, pointing to the shelves, and the knives returned to their designated places, signaling the completion of the dissection. At this juncture, Sun Yufeng informed them that he would now proceed with his conclusion, transitioning from the dissection to the analysis of his findings. Based on the preliminary assessment, Sun Yufeng stated that rabies was suspected to be the potential cause of the biogenetic pet's aggressive behavior and tragic incidents. With that conclusion, Zushi confidently asserted that she was sure it was not Soulforge's fault, making her stance loud enough for others to hear. However, Sun Yufeng mentioned that there were no bite marks from the other monsters or traces of virus infestations on the carcasses, suspecting that there was a problem during the pet's modulation process. After that, Sun Yufeng asked if there were any objections from Soulforge's side, opening the floor for any opinions or additional insights. It appeared that Soulforge was still the one to blame regarding the incident. In response, Mr. Ning gathered Meng Keo and Zushi to discuss their opinions. Zushi suspected that perhaps Skyward had bribed Sun Yufeng beforehand. However, it was impossible since they clearly could not afford him. Meng Keo contemplated Senior Gao's certainty that someone must have poisoned the pets. Additionally, he believed that Senior Gao would not make a mistake. The lingering question was how the pets were poisoned. Meng Keo wondered if it was through a thread, their food, or perhaps their daily use items. All of a sudden, an idea suddenly flashed in his mind. Now certain, Meng Keo believed that the pets were poisoned through their ear canals. He immediately asked Sun Yufeng to check for needle holes in their ear canals. However, Sun Yufeng grew angry, perceiving it as an underestimation of his skills. But Meng Keo remained undeterred. He persisted, urging the professor to open the ear canals of all the tigers to thoroughly investigate and confirm the presence of needle holes. 
In response, Sun Yufeng grew even angrier, blaming Ning Shuo for supposedly teaching Meng Kao arrogance by questioning his skills, escalating the tension in the room. Undeterred by the professor's anger, like Meng Kao, Mr. Ning stood firm. He politely requested Sun Yufeng to follow Meng Kao's suggestion, emphasizing his trust in Kao's judgment. With a consensus forming among those present, the professor had no other choice but to comply with their request. Once again, Sun Yufeng controlled the knives to cut the ears open, revealing a tiny hole that resembled a hole caused by a needle. Sun Yufeng and the others were all surprised by their discovery, which seemed to be aligned with Meng Kao's suspicion of poisoning through the ear canals. Curious about Meng Kao's deductive reasoning, Sun Yufeng inquired how he arrived at the idea. Meng Kao chose not to explain his thought process, but simply stated to the professor that he had no further objections. After the investigation, everyone signed a confidentiality agreement and returned to their respective residences. However, as Meng Kao scrolled through his phone, he discovered news articles about the Celestial Garden Estate pet homicide, potentially unveiling more information related to the ongoing investigation. Some of the articles circling on social media even contained photos of the victims. Suddenly, Meng Kao discovered something unusual about the corpses of the victims, prompting a shift in the focus of his investigation. He immediately sat up in bed and called Miss Sia. He apologized first for probably disturbing her for calling so late in the hour before telling what he discovered with the corpses. The next day at the Agricultural University Cafeteria 3, students focused on their meals, chatting and laughing between bites. Suddenly, in the midst of things, Zai Feng turned to Meng Kao and asked bluntly about his connection with Jiara Wu and how far their relationship had progressed. Responding to Zai Feng, Jiara Wu shared that their relationship had reached a point where, after training and meals, she simply lay next to him, finding peaceful sleep in his company. Out of nowhere, Sonya rushed towards Meng Kao, visibly upset, expressing her anger and disappointment, as she never expected him to be that kind of person. Adding to her outburst, she slammed the table and pointed accusingly at Meng Kao, labeling him a scumbag in her frustration while Meng Kao just eats peacefully. Even Zai Feng, disappointed, accused Meng Kao of mistreating the sweet Jiara Wu. However, Meng Kao insisted, maintaining that they were nothing more than really good friends. He then turned to Jiara Wu and petted her head, creating such a comfortable atmosphere that Jiara Wu even purred with contentment instead of supporting Meng Kao's claimus. Meng Kao, noticing Jiara Wu's continued purring, encouraged her to stop and instead say something to convince everyone that they were just good friends. Finally, Jiara Wu spoke up, declaring to everyone at the table that, to her, Meng Kao was just like her ghost leopard, they were her best friend. Turning her attention to Meng Kao, Sun Ye pointedly blamed him, stating that it was all his fault for not explaining things more clearly. With the previous issue resolved, Zai Feng shifted the conversation to the upcoming debate with the engineering students that afternoon, asking Meng Kao if he wanted to join in. The debate should be done because ever since the incident at the Celestial Garden Estate, the students from Engineering University have been bad-mouthing their university. Regrettably, Meng Kao informed Zai Feng that he wouldn't be able to join the debate due to an important appointment scheduled for that afternoon. Suddenly, while they were outside, a sleek and fancy red car zoomed by at a rapid speed, catching everyone's attention. Screeching its tires, the car came to a sudden stop in front of the group, and its fancy-looking door opened slowly, revealing an air of mystery. All of a sudden, a stunning girl, with an undeniably beautiful figure, gracefully emerged from the car capturing everyone's attention. It was Miss Sia. She then asked Meng Kao what he was waiting for and urged him to hop into the car. Jiara Wu appeared angry at Miss Sia's presence, while the others in the group were left wondering about the unfolding situation. Meng Kao then hopped into the car, urging everyone to go ahead and promising to catch up once he was done with his tasks. Finally, he waved good luck to his friends before the car sped away, leaving the rest of the group with curious expressions. In the car, Meng Kao acknowledged Miss Sia's wealth, however, he also advised her to be more low-key when trying to meet him again. However, in Miss Sia's defense, she explained that the car was actually the cheapest and most low-profile one in their household. Hearing that, Meng Kao seemed embarrassed, realizing why Lin Chuan felt that she and her family were too different from the rest of the people around them. 
Miss Sia finally dropped the nonsense topic and brought up the matter of the strange wounds that Meng Keo discovered on the victims' bodies. Upon getting out of the car, Miss Sia urged Meng Keo to carefully examine the wounds on all three bodies, hoping they could uncover any clues. Meanwhile, Meng Keo wondered why they needed to conduct the examination themselves when Exib had experts for the job. It turned out that Miss Sia hadn't reported it to them. The bodies had been sent for an autopsy, but the judicial court took over the case due to potential involvement with Exalted. With an hour and 44 minutes left, they had limited time to examine the bodies before they were scheduled to be sent to the Exalted Tower. Menkeo then decided to continue with what needed to be done and asked for her assurance that she would cover for him if something went wrong. All of a sudden, Menkeo noticed it was too dark in there for sunglasses, indirectly questioning the need for Miss Sia to be wearing them. However, Miss Sia explained to him that her earrings and sunglasses were specially made for her to shield her from getting excessive information. On their way to the bodies, they discovered guards securing the area. They hid behind a wall as Meng Keo asked Miss Sia what their next move should be. In response, Miss Sia pushed Meng Keo's head against the wall, telling him not to worry and to leave it all to her. Tapping her forehead with two fingers, she began channeling her power. As if cloaked in a spell, they walked past the guards without being noticed, their presence going completely unnoticed. Not only does she have status, money, and ambition, Miss Sia now possesses mind control. Meng Keo contemplated that, indeed, she should not be underestimated. He realized he could collaborate with Miss Sia in investigating the demon gods, but he understood the importance of being cautious. All of a sudden, Meng Keo noticed that Miss Sia seemed to intentionally drop two brown envelopes as they were walking, sparking curiosity in him. Meng Keo promptly informed Miss Sia that she had dropped something. She then revealed to Meng Keo that it was a payment for the guards, shocking him as he hadn't been aware of the arrangement. He thought that she hypnotized them. Miss Sia argued that hypnotizing them was unnecessary when she could solve things with her money. However, Meng Keo still wondered why she had channeled her power earlier. Miss Sia then revealed that she wasn't trying to hypnotize them. Instead, she was simply doing eye exercises because she had been sleep-deprived lately. Continuing their task, Meng Keo slowly lifted up the white blanket covering the bodies. And just as he expected, there was something wrong with Jin Yangkang's corpse. He seemed to have put up little resistance before dying, with very few scratch marks evident. Meng Keo speculated that the pet might have bitten him in the throat to cause the fatal injury. However, he questioned how a crazed pet could execute such a precise attack. It even intentionally gnawed on the fatal wound on the victim's neck to mask it, so that people would not think it was sane. Miss Sia immediately grasped Meng Keo's speculation that the biogenic pet had destroyed evidence and tampered with the crime scene. However, he admitted that he had no definitive evidence to support his speculation. But it didn't really matter to Miss Sia because she trusted Meng Keo's instincts. On the other hand, Miss Sia had already gathered some information about the Celestial Garden Estate last night. Firstly, the three berserk biogenetic pets were infected with an entirely new subtype of the rabies virus. Secondly, the biogenetic pet that attacked Jin Yangtiang had the virus inside its body, but there were no traces of viral injection through the ear canal. Thirdly, Jin Yangtiang was an employee of Skyward, and coincidentally, Skyward and Soulforge were competing for an order that could bring them a fortune. Meng Keo then figured out that the rabies variant infecting the three berserk biogenetic pets was an entirely new subtype. All of a sudden, the mission regarding the mysteries of the demon gods progressed 1% making the current progress 2%. He was right. This case was related to the demon gods. Miss Sia believed that the matter held great research value. She urged Meng Keo that they had to uncover the truth before the judicial court did. He asked her why they couldn't share the information with the judicial court and cooperate with the Shadow Sentinels. She explained that Exib had already undermined their power. Besides, there are formidable individuals within the Shadow Sentinels, and the small needle marks deep in the ear canal were discovered by one of their young experts. She thinks that person has likely used the trick before since they know such subtle techniques. They were not just a harvester, that person was a top-notch assassin. Meng Keo couldn't help but feel proud hearing how Miss Sia described the person who was actually himself. He then advised Miss Sia not to buy that kind of information next time, even though it was obvious she had a lot of money. 
Miss Sia, carried away by her emotions, turned to Meng Keo, grabbed him by the collar, and asked if he knew who that formidable person from the Shadow Sentinels was. Meng Keo admitted that he was well acquainted with that person, but told her that he couldn't disclose their identity. With that, Miss Sia finally decided to leave the place. Meng Keo asked her where they were going. She then revealed to him that she had someone checking the whereabouts of the three victims within the last month. Since Meng Keo suspected Jin Yangqing, she decided to go check out the places he frequented. Their search led them to a location near Draken City Landfill 4. Miss Sia told Meng Keo that was the place they needed to investigate. That was the place Jin Yangqing had frequented, and also the last place he should be at. Both of them seemed to observe the place from the outside first before going in. They finally went in, and there was no problem getting in since there were no guards, which made Meng Keo a bit suspicious. Miss Sia, on the other hand, was eager to confront the individuals responsible for the case. All of a sudden, Meng Keo noticed that the landfill was currently under attack. He immediately urged Miss Sia to head towards the disturbance to offer their help. The landfill was being attacked by a horde of wild rats. The crews dealing with the wild rats worked to keep everyone safe. One of them had already alerted the Exalted Tower and the Vermilion Dragons. On the other hand, one of them advised the others to put their guns away, suggesting that it was more effective to stomp the rats down with their feet. They seemed to be having a difficult time dealing with the wild rats, as there were too many of them swarming around the tunnel. Miss Sia focused and channeled her inner power. After some time, the aura around her lit up, and the ground shattered at her will which made the wild rats run away. The crew were all shocked by her sudden appearance and interruption. Meanwhile, Meng Keo helped Miss Sia make the rats go away by using fire to kill them, causing the remaining rats to scatter. After resolving the problem with the wild rats, the crew remained puzzled about what Meng Keo and Miss Sia had done. Finally, they came to realize that Meng Keo and Miss Sia were Exalta, and they had indeed come to save them. Miss Sia asked who was in charge to explain the situation. The supervisor willingly presented himself, appearing excited to tell her what was going on. He then explained that those rats should have been the ones that hid there during the last monster invasion. However, for some reason, they suddenly went berserk and rushed out from underground. Mankeo believed that normally, these rats wouldn't try to attack humans. However, their nervous system seemed to have been damaged by a virus, possibly a mutated form of rabies. Miss Sia and the landfill supervisor suddenly turned to face Meng Keo. The supervisor was curious about what he was blabbering about regarding viruses and mutations. At that point, Miss Sia asked the supervisor if he happened to see Jin Yangqiang there, as he should have been there recently. The little girl looked at the picture and finally remembered seeing him either last week or the week before. She told them that he was acting suspiciously, wandering around the garbage mountain at night. He also wounded his hand, so she helped him bandage it, but Mr. Tetrasli came, and he ran away before she could finish. After that, Meng Keo asked the supervisor if they found any missing sandworms. However, he acted like he didn't know and told him that they had never had any sandworms there. Miss Sia brought out another envelope, telling the supervisor it would be his if he shared all he knew. She promised that he would not be implicated in the mess. The supervisor suddenly remembered what really happened. About four or five sandworms suddenly went berserk. They escaped through the nearby sewage pipes. Meng Keo asked him why he did not go after them. The supervisor explained that the reason behind it was the sewage may contain highly toxic or corrosive residue. Members of Soulforge didn't dare to investigate deeper due to the potential dangers. All of a sudden, Miss Sia patted Meng Keo's shoulder and he turned to face her behind. She then urged him to go deeper and investigate thoroughly if he thought that this was related to the Celestial Garden Estate. They told the crew they could go now and thank them for their cooperation. Meanwhile, Miss Sia was about to go down the hole that led to the sewage. Down the sewage, the smell was very bad. Meng Keo suggested Miss Sia wait outside since, as a feeler, the smell must be more unpleasant for her. It was really obvious from the way she looked that she was suffering from the extent of the unpleasant smell, but she was enduring it. She was eager to uncover the mastermind behind the White Ghost's production in order to climb Exib's ranks. It was a perfect opportunity for her to gain their trust. Besides, she has to fulfill Lin Chuan's last wish and revolutionize Draken. But she would do it on her own. She would not be stopped by any minor difficulties. Mankeo pitied Miss Sia. 
He thought that although she was ambitious, she truly cared about his brother, Lin Chuen. Meng Keo figured out that the giant mutated sandworms were more than two or more than three meters in body width based on the markings left in the sewage. However, regular giant sandworms should be between 1.5 to 2 meters. All of a sudden, something awful affected Meng Keo, causing him to groan. Subsequently, a roaring, probably coming from a monster, suddenly echoed inside the sewage. Its unpleasant smell also flooded the area. This caused Meng Keo to gain 2% of mission progress at once. He contemplated that finding the sewage pipes might be the key to the mission, but he wondered about the connection. Miss Sia suddenly told Meng Keo that they were still kind of lucky since the giant sandworms were relatively docile and submissive. When he looked afar, he noticed that there were creatures hiding in the dark. In the shadows, eyes aglow with an eerie crimson hue peered out, fixating on Meng Keo and Miss Sia as if they held a profound and ancient malevolence. Meng Keo inquired Miss Sia about the identity of those mysterious creatures. Turns out, the eyes belonged to the wild rats they had dealt with earlier. Meng Keo immediately wielded his weapon, slicing off as many wild rats as he could in swift and precise movements. All of a sudden, a giant sandworm emitted a squeaking sound, capturing their attention. Meng Keo immediately identified that the squeaking giant sandworm was one of the ones that had escaped from Soulforge. Judging from the level of decomposition, it had been dead for at least a week. He hoped that they could still find something useful from its remains. All of a sudden, the ground started shaking. Miss Sia thought it was an earthquake. Meanwhile, Meng Keo suggested that there was no need to continue further since they had already found the remains of a giant sandworm. They would examine the remains first. Miss Sia tried to argue with Meng Keo, but he reminded her of the consequences of her previous recklessness. Miss Sia suddenly shivered upon hearing Meng Keo blaming her recklessness as she believed it was Lin Chuen and the White Spectre's doings. But Meng Keo insisted that Lin Chuen and the White Spectre had just taken advantage of her recklessness. All of a sudden, the giant sandworm moved. Luckily, Meng Keo and Miss Sia were quick to dodge the danger. Meng Keo held Miss Sia's hand tightly, ensuring that he wouldn't lose her amidst the sudden danger. The sandworm did not stop, and it continued to chase them, so they both ran even quicker. While running from the giant sandworm, Miss Sia couldn't help but wonder aloud about how the creature had grown so large. Meng Keo, responding with sarcasm, questioned how he was supposed to have that answer and urged her to focus on running faster. With an unclear intention, Meng Keo took out his rope and made it circle around Miss Sia's waist. He then commanded her to keep on running, explaining that he couldn't hold out any longer. However, Miss Sia told him that she couldn't run anymore. In that case, acknowledging the need to change their approach, they decided to stop running and face the giant sandworm head on. Meng Keo knew that the weakness of the sandworm-like monsters is the pharyngeal ganglion where the esophageal nerve and the ventral nerve cord connect. Only by damaging the pharyngeal ganglion can they stop its rampage. Meng Keo requested Miss Sia's assistance to help hold open the giant sandworm's mouth. Miss Sia immediately channeled her power to provide the assistance Meng Keo needed to hold open the giant sandworm's mouth. At her will, rocks moved and pierced through the worm's mouth, preventing it from closing. She also told Meng Keo to hurry up because she could not hold it for long. Meng Keo made use of his rope, unleashing his inner power that ran through the ropes to the two swords attached to it. He directed the power through the worm's mouth, targeting a vulnerable part of the creature. All of a sudden, the worm started gurgling. Suddenly aware of the potential danger, Meng Keo swiftly instructed Miss Sia to duck, anticipating a possible outcome from the worm's behavior. After a few seconds, green fluid mixed with other materials gushed out from the giant sandworm's mouth. The sandworm has mutated into a mess, which is why Meng Keo was having a really hard time locating its pharyngeal ganglion. Undeterred, he didn't give up, and shortly after, he finally found it. With a smile on his face, Meng Keo wasted no time and directed his swords to pierce the vulnerable part of the giant sandworm, expecting victory with his every move. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe. And if you'd like to contribute further, you can now buy me a coffee. Every little bit helps in creating more quality content for you. Just click the buy me a coffee link in the description below. And don't forget to hit the notification bell so you never miss a new video.